Don't look back into the sun, Libertines on XFM. I'm excited, Steve. It's that time, it's that time of the week. Go on. Well, Carl's in the little film. Oh, that's what you're excited about? Yeah. Sorry, I thought you meant the, the show's almost over. Right? Yeah, no. Come on in, Carl. Right, so, uh, yeah, I'm in, I'm in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Took a scene from it. Yeah. Gotta listen carefully in that. Uh, at the end, there'll be a question on, like, the clip that you've just heard, mm -hmm. is sort of like, what they do in the Krypton Factor and stuff. So do you want to read out the prizes? Or just uh, yeah, there's a few things. It's uh, a couple of rock and roll albums, um, we've got the- Why is it called One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? Um, I can't remember. I think it's explained in the book, but I don't remember. I haven't read it for many years. If someone knows, just a quick email to do. I'd like to know that. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. You can win yourself, if you get the question right, the League of Gentlemen, Series 3. We've got that Rock and Roll Legends again, the Best of Blondie, a Nature Programme, and the Old Grey Whistle Test, Volume uh, 3. So if you're Brilliant, over so 50, well worth, you'll enjoy that. Yeah. And just, uh, if you haven't seen the film, it's just about, uh, uh like a- what, what would you call it? Uh, well, it's a guy who's a guy who thinks he's going to get away with prison by going into a a, a mental institution. Yeah. It was a new experiment, but he finds out he c can't get out and he's sort of trapped. And well, people know it. Everyone knows what. Just uh, play. Just well, play. I saw it last week. So just play. Oh. All right. Yeah. Well, you know, I've uh, been observing you here now for the last four weeks, and I don't see any evidence of mental illness at all. Yeah, no, no, I'm not mental. I never, I never said I was. I mean, all right, I got, I got an E in history, but that isn't why I'm in here. I'm in here because I had to get away from, from the outside world. It was doing me head in. I've been working too hard. I'm stressed out. I've been working like, loads of hours Monday to Friday. I've been working on a Saturday with Ricky and Steve. Right, that's that's been doing me head in. People don't, people think that's a laugh when it isn't. Right? You're busy right now, are you? You got something to do well, right now. See, this is why I'm here today, Doctor, because he's doing me head in. What do you mean, sir? Well, well, he's doing me head in. I came here to get away from Ricky. He is just as bad. I was smarter than him, ain't I? You're, you're an idiot, right? You just... <laughs> ah, we're just good friends. No, we're not friends. And if you were a friend, you wouldn't be doing that to me, Ed. How do you mean that? Well, don't ask... Come on, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes. Look yes. you've got. Get him out. Get him off me! Get him off me! Get him off me! Now, let me just hold it right there. Alright. You get off! Doctor, will you tell him? Take him from. Don't hurt you, does he? Of course it does! That's it. Now, hold on to it. Not too hard, you'll crush all the air out of it with him. I normally do. Get off! I normally do it harder than that. But... No, it's warming up. Warm it up. What's going on? All right, be there. Go. Get off. <laughs> See what I mean, Doctor? That's that's what he's doing every day. The state of this. I don't know why you do it, because it's not as if you're going to crack it open. But I tried, didn't I? God damn it. At least I did that. <laughs> I love it, the effort! Yeah. It's almost, uh, I wonder if it's almost a strange premonition of the future. Yeah. You in some kind of home. Alright, well, uh... What's let, the question? What's the question then? Uh, what result did I get in history? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Alright. Yeah, well, uh, tricky one, that. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Oh, text? Will we take text? Um, I haven't really bothered to check right. the text. Alright then, you know. <laughs> Oh. Thanks for that, Rick. Sneezy. Yeah. Alright, I'll play, uh... Prinny's Brothers, yeah, it's a lovely tune from their album, uh, what's it called? Yours, Mine and Ours. Blinded by the Stars from the Prinny's Brothers. We've, uh, a couple of, uh, texts. I do occasionally have a look at them. Go on. Um, we've had one here complaining. It doesn't say who it's from. It just says, Wow, really clever homophobic material. Genius. Switching off, idiots. Oh, I don't know what they mean. It was not clever homophobic material. <laughs> it was, it was just homophobic. It was... Well, what do they mean, though? But how is it homophobic? We weren't being anti-gay. We were saying we don't understand the gay world. And anything that's... We were querying and questioning and, it. Yeah, and Carl... See, this is what I mean. Carl gets us into trouble. I can't go through Chinatown no. anymore. No. It's not really a town, though, is it? It's not really a town. It's, it's more of a best. novelty street. A novelty street with restaurants. Yeah. But I can't, you know, and when we sort of like talk, we get uh, tarred with the same brush as him because yeah. the man's an idiot. Yeah. But we often say that. 
We're, you know, we are not homophobic. I don't think Carl's homophobic. He's confused. Mm. He's interested. He's got nothing against Chinese people. He's got a little theory that they don't age well. And these are the sort of things that come across. I mean, they're not meant to be homophobic and racist. They're showing that Carl. I don't know the PC term for this. Is a bit mental. Yes. And you know, I think we're doing our bit by letting him on. On the air. On the air as well. Like that complaint he got about that woman on, um, what's it called? Who are you looking at? Yeah. Because he said about, I, I, I don't even want to repeat it, but he said some, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but I never meant to upset anyone with that. That's no, I know you didn't. No, thing. I know you didn't. No. But I mean, it's, it's on a website now. And, you know, to be fair, she does say it was Carl that said it, and, you know, yeah. we were the idiot presenters a little on air. But it's like, uh, Carl is bad for our reputation. Yes. Do you know what I mean? It's funny to be in a room with him, but then I want to sort of shake it off. Yeah. And I don't know what to do about Guilty it. Guilty by association. I know. Have you, what have you got to say for yourself, Carl, for the, all the- some of the stuff you come out with? What have you got to say? I mean, I know the answer. It's absolutely from the heart and genuine- Ignorance. <laughs> and confusion and interest. You- you haven't got a malicious bone in your body. Well. Well. Towards but, me, yes, but yeah, other people. But again, he's just honest with you. He says, he well, well, don't repeat what he says. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't no. repeat it. Just leave it. But it's not as bad as uh, some other things. But he's, you know, he says, remember, you just say that you when you first met him, you look, he looked a bit hard, but you got used to it. Yeah. Now that's from the heart. I said that's like him, sort of like being honest and nice, but he doesn't know what that. And we can take it, of course. Well. What What have you got to say for yourself? I haven't got anything to say really. I mean, <laughs> there's, been, there's been other weird stuff going on in the week and that. Go on. Uh, no, I might as well talk about it next week because we're, we're wrapping up. All I'm saying is I talk about what's gone on. Yeah. Have Do we you got monkey mean? news? Have we left monkey news behind? Monkey news! Come on! What happened? You can't offend monkeys! I'll tell you what is annoying. What? Steve's told me about a film that is about a monkey going off with a woman. Mm. The Charlotte Rampling thing where she. It's a film takes... called Max Monomour. Yeah, she has an affair with a monkey. Go on. Yeah. Oh, what happened? You wouldn't like Don't it. Go, we can't go into You wouldn't like monkeys. it. You wouldn't like it. It's not, it's not like, it's, it's weird and it, you wouldn't, d Carl, it's not like a nature program where he wears a bowler hat and can talk. Okay. The nature programs that you <laughs> seem to see. Yes, yes I'm trying to think I've seen that one. <laughs> yeah, no! Yeah. <laughs> Come on, do monkey news. Well, monkey news this week. Play the um, Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news, you f- Right, it's about this monkey that was knocking about in the 1950s. Right. Um, just, uh, <laughs> it was known in the sort of <laughs> LA area. Right. Um, and apparently, um, again, I haven't really checked all this out, I've just picked up bits that, that look interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, wore a golden mask and like a cape and a, a leopard skin belt and stuff, right? So people didn't know that he was, was a monkey. monkey. Of course they didn't know, yeah. He just thought, they thought he was this bloke who's going around and he was helping out crime situations and stuff. <laughs> right, you're an idiot. So one, this disguise, that, that you see a, a, a three foot six bloke with arms the length of his body. No, but that's the funny thing, right? They knew, they sort of thought, it's a bit odd, you know, he's stocky, yet extremely flexible. Yeah, and hairy, because he only wore a mask and a belt. And a distinctive jawline and stuff. And then, uh, right. apparently, like, he used to sort of get to his Nothing we say gets through, does it? You've 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 decided you can picture this monkey going around going solving on. crimes, just and it's telling you. let him finish the story. Time's running out. So it sort of gets to its crime by like swinging from the trees and of course stuff. Of it would, right? yeah. Well, people just thought it's a normal fella. Of course. Then what happened was he. This is the bit that's going to annoy me, isn't it? He helped some fellas out, like you know, and for a re for a reward. They were like, do you want some money? You know, you've, you've helped save our lives during a crime and stuff. Mm. Do you want some money in that? And he just went straight for the shopping bags, got a couple of bananas and apples, <laughs> right? And as he was bent down, looking into the bag, getting the bananas and apples, they pulled his mask off, little monkey. So he wasn't allowed to work for the police anymore? It, it ended there. Sure. Weird, isn't it? Rick, can I tell you the meaning of One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest? Yeah. Can we never speak of monkey news again? Yeah. It comes apparently from an American children's nursery rhyme, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all good children go to heaven, some fly east, some fly west, some fly over, over the, the cuckoo's, cuckoo's nest. nest. Brilliant. Uh, and our thanks to Ian for emailing that in. Uh, shall I give um, someone the prizes? Phil Corbett, there you are, the first one I've pulled out, he correctly guessed that it was E. It was an E that Carl got in history, the only qualification he's got, and it's an E. Do you know that woman? <laughs> judge, the, judge the monkey news based on that. <laughs> Go on. That woman who went out with the monkey. What? It's a film. It's a film. It was Charlotte Rampling. 
in the film. I don't know who played the monkey. Did she have any kids? What, with the monkey? In the film? Yeah, I'm just- I'm just thinking if I'm gonna get it out and stuff. No. No. Why? Oh, cause that would have been interesting. Well, no, it's just that the problem there is the kids would always look more like the dad. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. Alright. Now, you, uh, probably know me from such works as The Office and Extras, uh, uh Stephen being my, um, co-writer and co-director on those things. For those people who are not so aware of Carl Pilkington, um, he was our producer sort of given to us when we first started on, uh, XFM, um, and, uh, you're thinking, well, why are we doing a podcast? It's because I like to be in a room with Carl Pilkington. Mm. You know, like some people go and help sort of chimps. <laughs> Do they? Yeah. <laughs> well, they go to the, the you know, the, yeah, the and jungles and things. And yeah. How about little sort of endangered Diane species? Fossey or whatever. Exactly, You're yeah. very much a Diane Fossey of the, of the, the, of the Manchester of, scene. Of the, of the uh, little bald mank world. <laughs> and Carl Pilkington is, is an ongoing experiment for me because I've seen him blossom from an idiot into an imbecile. <laughs> and okay. I, wa I want to see it through. Look at the way he's looking at us. Look at that. He's got a perfectly round head. Um, and that's why I'm doing this, um, podcast. Carl, what do you think about all this? Um, it's just, I mean, we are living in that sort of era now, aren't we? Like, you need to be able to listen to stuff on demand when you want it and stuff. I yeah. know, Yuki, you, you're, you're not a fan of the iPod in general, are you? Or any of the MP3 things you're concerned? Uh, it's, I'm warming to it. But this is what's amazing about Carl. Even though he's talking about things like MP3 players, computers, uh, iPods, he sounds like he's he was found in a glacier and, and thawed out. <laughs> yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's sort of taught to yeah. speak. We're, we're a couple of high school guys who found him, and we're, we're trying to ingratiate him in the uh, in the gang, trying to pass him off as someone from the modern day. No, I no. Know. But, but my thing with with iPods is now, do we need them? Do you know what I mean? We're, we're living in that era now where we have invented most of the stuff that we need <laughs> and now we're just messing about they said that in 1900 someone actually said everything that's to be invented has already been invented they what? said that in 1900 and how wrong were they no but what what came out what, at what point what was invented in that year where they went right that's it now the 20th century think what happened in the 20th century go on well planes yeah but is that a good thing planes and that. Do you need to, do you need a plane, really? Wouldn't it have been better if we all stuck where we should be, instead of travelling about? War. Why? War, well look, war's, war's happening, isn't it? Because everyone's saying, well now we can fly, we'll go over there. So I'm, there were no that. wars prior to the invention of the aeroplane? Not like, not like there is today. Right. But what I'm saying is, the more, the, the world's got smaller on it, everyone's saying that, right? Yeah. I, you know, the way I was saying to you the other day, uh, you know, we, we now go to places where we shouldn't go. People go on holiday to places where you've got to have an injection before you go there. Yeah. Forget it then. That, <laughs> yeah. that, that's a warning. Don't well, go there. Well, I'm with you on that. I, I, I don't want to enter a country where I have to have an injection to stop me from dying while I'm in that country. Right, I well, totally agree with you on that. So what yeah. happened is, so they invented the plane and it's like, oh, let's go on holiday. And then they go, oh, to die now. Oh, well, you've got to invent something. Let's invent an injection. And then it's like, right, well, what, what else do we need to go to that place? There's a lot of faffing. <laughs> 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 so what I'm saying is... I'm, is that I'm, a place? A lot of faffing? What, what I'm saying is, you know, Steve's travelled more than I have. You've been to, like, dangerous places. I've been to places where you need injections, yeah. Yeah, but why? Because it's fascinating, isn't it? You know, don't you not believe in that idea of uh, travel broadens the mind? You know, it makes you experience other ways of life, other ways of thinking, it just enriches you as a human being. That's the whole reason people go travelling. Well, since the invention of the telly, you don't have to go that far to see it. You're absolutely it. right. So, there you go, then. The telly was the 20th century, wasn't it? Yeah, it's pretty good. So, where Some would you, stuff. where would you stop, then? You'd stop making stuff now? Stop inventing stuff right now? If we're going to invent something, right, forget, like, the traditional way of people having kids, right? The way they, you know, have it away in that. What do you mean? What do you mean? No, you know, like, the the way that, you know, we we have kids and stuff, if it'd be good if what happened was to, to control it is if man and woman, right, they sort of, they're born and that, they enjoy their life, they learn a lot, they live to be about 
78, I think, by that point. <laughs> so specific. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. but seven, by 78, I reckon you've sort of got to that point where you go, do you know what, I've done everything I'm going to do. If you haven't bungee jumped by the time you're 78, you're not going to do it. No. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like... Your hips you've, come off. You've, you've done it all now. Yeah. And then you die, right? So, say if everyone had that, they lived to be 78. Mm. But then, just as you die, you, you have a little baby inside you. And as you die, your life carries on. Sorry, how is this you, happening? Sorry, are you mental? No, no, but don't you think... I mean, what? I've never heard such drivel. You say, you're saying that, but if Newton said it, you'd go, hmm, interesting. <laughs> that's, that's what annoys <laughs> me. I know it is, Carl. He never would. No, He'd what? never say it. That's the point. I, if you I never don't, say it, if you never I say it... I don't understand what you're talking about there. What, how, how, how was it? How is there a little baby in a 78-year-old? No, what I'm saying is it's like an apple, where... <laughs> The apple grows and it's got its little baby pips in it, and and the apple goes and the seeds are planted and a new one's born. But what that's what happens. But that is what reproduction is. Yeah, but I'm saying babies aren't being born left, right, and centre. It's 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 controlled, so that as someone dies, someone's born. But Carl, stop. Wh whose responsibility is Look, this? If you don't want to do but it, we we'll won't do it. But is I'm it just... supposed to be nature? Has nature got to, to develop <laughs> humans so that we act that way? We, we live that <laughs> way? Or I is like, this a scientific what, experiment? What I like, he said, he said to you then, he said, Look, if you don't want to do it, we don't need to do it. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you were up for it, <laughs> yeah. we'll sort it out. <laughs> yeah. We can do that. We'll have a whit round so no, we can do the research. I, I just think, at the end of the day, we've got to do something. And is anyone keeping an eye on this and, and looking at what we can do next to control the population thing? It does my head in that I've got to live in London for work and what have you, and there's loads of people here, and, you know, forget going out on a Saturday night, it's too busy, and you can't move, and they keep... I mean, what annoys me about London So is, your solution is that 78-year-old women have little babies inside them, and, and as they slip away into death, the yeah. little babies... And how is that baby then Who raised? Looks Who looks baby? after the baby? Because it's a pretty good system, having a baby <laughs> while you're young enough to look after that baby and make sure it lives <laughs> yeah. to, uh, you know, reproductive age itself. I mean, that, one, it's, that's, that system's been working for years. Nature's sort of sorted it out. Natural selection and evolution sort of makes that a, a good model. But wait a minute, Nature. Pop that on hold, because Carl Pilkington's got an idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just, it was just, it was, that's what it was, just an idea. Yeah, well, it was, you know, it was nonsense. But it thank was you for it. The worst <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was the ramblings of it was the ramblings of someone you'd find by themselves in a hospital eating flies. This is the sort of thing you find when uh, if they find uh, maybe a, a pamphlet or a, a booklet written by a psychopath. <laughs> you know, someone just yeah. before they went on a rampage and then turned the gun on themselves, they yeah. go through their possessions and they find a book I and it's got weird drawings, women with knives in their face, yeah. and this kind of guy. In fact, it? I saw uh, I saw a similar sort of theory written out on a wall, but it was written in shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, all I'm all I'm saying is I think it's you know, when people die normally, everyone's fed up about it, aren't they, and a bit down. But <laughs> if when you if if when you pass away, you go, oh, we're gonna miss Gladys or whatever, but then there's this new life brought in, it's almost like a Bad news, but, good but news. you're talking about it like someone could pick this idea up and run with it. Like you've given them enough information <laughs> yeah. to do it. How is this possible? Where does she get the baby from? How, 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 why does it grow? Why grow it in, a, a, in Gladys's belly? Why not have it in a drawer? <laughs> but what I'm saying it, ready to go, just add water. I, I mean, it, who looks no, after son of Gladys? Look, look. There is no theory here. There's no. Th it's the ramblings of a, a madman. What I'm saying is though, the body's always changing in it, from caveman to now or whatever. In it's some changing. cases. And they're always finding out more and more. Like I read the other day yeah. about how um, they're saying, do you know how like they say people have six senses? Yeah. There's loads more than that. <laughs> <laughs> right, and there's this one. I say, like, show me that you've got one. No, right, and, and there's this one that's knocking about. Go on. That, uh, what it is, say if I'm, say if I'm in, a, in a pub, right, mm. and I'm, I'm just doing a crossword or whatever. Unlikely, but go on. And uh, there's some woman who's walked in, right, and she's staring at me. Yeah. I know she's looking at me, and I look up and I look round. She's looking at me, right. and they're saying that's a new sense that they, that they found out from, like you know, doing tests and what have you. Yeah, it's rubbish. And they're um, saying okay. that's been around well, it, since but, since like man and dinosaur was knocking about. They 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 they've stopped. No, they've explained it. I think it. it's safe to assume that. You know that with your perfectly round head, people are always stopping and no, looking. No, but they explain. I mean, you it. just know that there's probably going to be someone there if they, you get right. They said it's from the time when like caveman was like wandering about, and he'd go, "Hang on a minute, 
and he'd look around and there's a dinosaur there or whatever and he'd, right, he'd leg it. This is, this is nonsense. One, one, not... I hate it when people use the term when caveman was wandering <laughs> around. Caveman and dinosaurs, oh, they used to live together, yeah. Oh, that's the same era. Yeah. What have you been watching? Raquel Welsh. What do you mean? Well, what do you mean caveman wandering, knocking around with a dinosaur? You know the Flintstones is only partly based on fact. <laughs> Dinosaurs and man did not coexist. The dinosaurs had long gone before man arrived. Extinct. Kaput. Hmm. You don't, what, you don't believe us? Well, you don't believe because you, you've seen... Because you saw that film where they took pictures of lizards and magnified them and put them next to men in films so they looked like they were fighting. Yeah. No, but why, why couldn't that have happened? What is the film with Raquel Welsh? Um, a Million Years B.C. Year, a Million Years B.C. or something. A Million yeah, Years yeah. B.C. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, but... She had a sort of woolly mammoth bikini. Fact, but why? Why wasn't the dinosaurs back then just like how we have dogs now? In a way, he's watching the Flintstones. He's, watching the Flintstones. he's thinking of the Flintstones. Yeah. That's what he's when thinking. he puts out the saber-toothed tiger. Yeah, and yeah. And he, and he, and he mixes him. his concrete in a pelican. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, just, I just think that they, there must have been a crossover point. Why? Why did you say that? Why do you think there must have been? There a must have been point? because if nothing was knocking about at any point, how did anything carry on? I know. Uh, exactly. Why, why, why didn't Hitler meet Nero? It's weird, isn't it? There must have been a crossover. They must have met somewhere. They must have met at a party somewhere. <laughs> they mixed in similar circles. Yeah. They must have bumped into... S I can't believe it. Yeah, forget it. Oh. Can't what about you, Carl? Would you do it? It, it depends, doesn't it, what your job is and that. If you're a doctor, you've got to get to, you know, go and save someone or whatever. You can't say, oh, just wait ten minutes. Depends. Depends on the situation, depends. Most of the time I've got to get in work early, I can't be hanging around to half But you don't know, do you? I've, so, I've, I've called him when I was uh, uh, so filming, he was out. He, uh, I've seen him do one day, yeah. right? I've seen him for one whole day, he went away, he fell asleep at, um, quarter to eight in the yeah. bath because he was knackered, so, yeah. you know, he has five weeks on a yeah. year, oh, he's taking the piss. Yeah. Feeder, pushing the senses. Quite a food related sort of uh, show, isn't it? It is. It? Yeah, thinking of gluttony, did you Just see in, uh, <laughs> I think it was Heat magazine, huh? um, it was former pop idol winner Michelle McManus. Oh, yeah. She's lost consider she's lost a lot of weight. Oh, yeah. And, she's lost um, five stones, hasn't she? Please see that the headline was, um, I used to eat, uh, twelve packets of Doritos a night. At she's night. Twelve packets of Doritos. I just like the idea that you got to eleven packets and you're thinking, Oh, One more do it. Package. One more do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. But someone sent in a couple of uh, odds and ends news stories. You know, they've gleaned off the web. And apparently, uh, Britain's fattest family have shared twenty-three stone. Um, they what, uh, of them died. Between the five of them, oh come on, between the five of them, the Phillips family from Worcester weighed more than a hundred stone. Jesus. Well, how many are there though? They spent five of them, and they spent three hundred pounds a week on food. Um, an evening meal consisted of an all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet and another ice cream stop at McDonald's. Uh, the mum, she was generally happy, like Carl is, but she said she used to get upset when she couldn't um, buy clothes for her kids because the shops didn't stock anything above XXXXXL. Um, but uh, <laughs> it says here, <laughs> it says Mitchell, 13, was the heaviest of the three, weighing 27 stone. By the age of four, he was Britain's fattest toddler, weighing 10 stone. Is that gone? But this is still going! <laughs> he bro <laughs> he <sighs> broke five bikes. He broke five bikes by uh, buckling the wheels. Oh, that's I know you're always kind of fat kids, Carl. Chasing an ice cream van. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> the bike just fell apart. Yeah. Wow. Who knows, maybe now he's on that new uh, bike ride, you know, because he's lost some weight. Oh, that would be painful, that, wouldn't that it? Would if one of them buckles. Yeah. Well, I've got uh, another food related uh, item here. Now, Carl, I got a little email via um, my agent sent from someone here, okay, so, sent from someone at. Um, XFM, okay, and uh, I won't say it was, she just said, uh, I thought um, this might be uh, good for Ricky to use on Saturday, and obviously what happened is, Suzanne has sent you an email in the week, it was Wednesday, and you've returned it, but I think you've returned it to the wrong email address, you returned it to someone here, who of course immediately forwarded it to my agent for ridicule on the show. Don't panic, it's nothing that bad, okay. It's uh, an email from Suzanne talking about your tea that night. Was Suzanne out on Wednesday night? Was the, uh, an England game or something? Yeah. So you, you were alone. You were home alone, were you, Wednesday night? Yeah. Did you enjoy your meal? Was it, was it a quiche? Go on. Right. From Suzanne to Carl. Take the quiche and put it on the baking tray. 
Cook for thirty minutes on a hundred and ninety. Take lettuce and put on plate. Take three tomatoes, wash and chop into quarters. Place on lettuce. Take an avocado, <laughs> chop in half, remove the stone, <laughs> peel skin and slice. Place on salad. Put salt and pepper on and a dribble of olive and balsamic vinegar dressing. Right? In brackets, small bottle behind the cafetiere. <laughs> Right, in case he's reaching for bleach. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything else away. Right, then sprinkle a smidge of parmesan on top. Remove quiche from oven. Cut into quarters and put on plate. <laughs> Eat. Oh wow! <laughs> Does she have to do that every <laughs> single time? She's like, <laughs> no, it's just that she, I'm not that good at cooking. Right, um, and to be honest, that that was a lot of hard work. I didn't bother warming it up. <laughs> And I did without the avocado. <laughs> Why? Why? Too much messing about. <laughs> he didn't even do that with instructions. It was too much. But, oh. um, yeah, I'm not that. I'm not that good at cooking. And did that, you genuinely? Um, that's not cooking, though, is it, Carl? That's, that's, that's heating slicing. up a quiche. That's co cooking it is making the quiche. Yeah, but I'm. I'm just. Kind so of do you? Like, could you have figured that? Out <laughs> if she had left that note for you. Why did she have to tell you what the olive oil and um, balsamic vinegar was? Because I've, I've, I've put sort of cooking oil on my food once and I said, alright, it's a bit- <laughs> It's ever since, I'm right, year, years ago- I'm gonna die! Years ago- Oh god, it, don't leave it Mr. Magoo at home! It I'm was- just... it was ever since I put sausages in the toaster. That, uh, <laughs> oh god, what I do you mean? I nearly set the flat on fire. What do you mean? Fire. Cause, do you know like when you're grilling food in a pan and all that? Yeah. Sort of sausages spit and it goes everywhere, doesn't it? And it makes everywhere <laughs> greasy. In the so I thought, well, <laughs> just want to warm them up. Yeah. Put them in the toaster. Yeah. What happened? And she sort of caught. Well, they got she, stuck and they sort of caught on fire. I she, imagine. She, well, she came in just as I was sort of plunging it and might have you came in from work. Said, "What are you doing? What are you?" I said, "I'm in sausages." <laughs> well, the oven isn't on. I know they're in here. <laughs> what? Well, turn it off. Uh, panicking and that. But. <laughs> I've, I've never been into it. I've never been into cooking oh, and that at school and oh stuff. I didn't bother doing it. Oh, every time Suzanne comes home, she must think, "Please be the house still there. Yeah. Please, uh, please not let me hear a fire engine as I come round this corner." Oh God, she comes. Oh God, thank God. I bet she's always happy to see you when she gets home, and you haven't burned the place down or introduced some howler monkeys or something. Unbelievable. But I, what I find extraordinary is there are people who are in sort of care in the community who don't need instructions no. on how to prepare food. Oh, they do. They, they can do it. Yeah. You show them once. Yeah, no, they 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 whatever you do, don't put sausages in the toaster, Johnny. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they, and they, they learn it. They don't put sausages in the toaster. Yeah. What what they put their fingers in. But, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> it's a Ricky and Steve classic on XFM Sugar. If I can't change your mind, brilliant. Uh, so listen, it's time, isn't it? We've only got a few minutes left, so you better play the jingle. Oh, oh chimpanzee, that monkey news. <laughs> So, what? Monkey News, if you've uh, only just started listening to the show. <laughs> oh, you poor fool. Um, monkey News is where Carl um, reports for us all the latest monkey activity. A headline or a word or someone, someone, someone that he overheard in a pub and then totally embellishes it and makes it ridiculous and impossible. He <laughs> believes it though. He believes every word he's saying. Let me say that before you hear. When you hear this, whatever it is, I haven't heard it, twaddle. Um, remember, Carl totally believes it. Go on. Right, so anyway, right, I think it's in, uh, in LA this happened, right? I think. Why, why does he think? Uh, so these people are in a, in a restaurant having a lovely meal. <laughs> Is one of them short and hairy but it goes, <laughs> totally covers from top to bottom in a space suit so he didn't know it was a monkey? It's uh, not one of the customers, one of the waiters? So, th so they're having a, having a lovely dinner, probably one of the best sort of dinners they've, they've had, right? Mm. So the waiter comes over and it's like, you know, can we just say that I had a lovely meal and that? Right, it's the chef. <laughs> because it is. So, can we see uh, the chef? Yeah. So, so <laughs> can, can we just, you know, see see the guy who cooked it? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Short fella, hairy. So the waiter, the, said, to be honest, the, waiter, much. the waiter said, look, he's busy, you know, he's got meals to cook and what have you. He hadn't really got time. He said, it only take a minute. He said, no, I prefer, you know. So this I'll, is a restaurant in LA that I'll, serves brilliant food. I'll pass, I'll pass your message on and what have you, right? So, um. So he sends for so, uh, monkey P.O.Y. So it's a bit odd, anyway. <laughs> So, so they go, so they go out, right? they, go, uh, they go out to the car and they notice the, uh, the kitchen doors open. Yeah, right? yeah of course they do, because they're, they're gonna discover something that I don't know. So they they're just- Hold on, this, um, just, just out of interest, this, uh, the, where did this, um, chef train before, before we see him or reveal, you know, what he might look like or mm -hmm. like to eat, yeah, um, um, 
So well. anyway, so uh, so they pop their head in and think we'll just we'll just nip in and go yeah, you know well. love 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 fruit salad or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they stick their see head. See the humans. We better see the humans. Yeah. <laughs> you never guess what? Go on. Monkey stood on a chair, right, cooking veg. <laughs> right. So anyway, so they're like, what's going on there? What do you mean? Questions. What do you mean he's cooking veg? What is he doing with it? Well, he's, he's stood on a chair by the by the cooker and he's yeah. uh, chopping st chopping stuff. Oh, he's, he's chopping as well, now. He's just chopping veg, isn't it? It's got a little, uh, you know, he's, he's got the, the bosses in there. They're they're like a bit shocked, so he's a bit panicking because he's got this monkey working for him. So they say to him, "What's going on? Hey, we didn't know this. This is what's going on. You know, you, why have you got a monkey cooking stuff?" So he said, "Well, incidentally, a monkey, I should point out, probably doesn't need instructions from its girlfriend." <laughs> Oh, forget it. <laughs> An honest mistake by the bravery on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington, yep. our producer. Right. In inverted commas, heat put. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. They, they, they know. They know. How are you doing, alright, Carl? Yeah, didn't they also write something about me, uh, bald round head? Yes, perfectly round little yeah. bald man head, they said, so. Did you need to know that when you listen to the radio on that? <coughs> really matters what my hair's doing. Your hair, if you've, have you given it a little sort of polish, cause you look like a cue ball at the moment and you've had a shave in it, I've never seen such a round head. It looks, it actually looks like a plate with ears. Yeah, well, for those that have never seen Carl, I, I actually, um, if you remember, I think he looks a little bit like, uh, Mr. Spoon from Button Moon. It, <laughs> he does! He so, does! It does! If, you, if you've um, ever seen that show, that's And just... also he looks like, you know when they say, um, they find with a little four foot human and it's actually half a million years old and they give it a name and it's, got, it's the first, you know, Australopithecus into, uh, he looks like one of them as well. Perfect he round it all. He is the missing link. He looks half human, half monkey. Because he's got a slight slouch as well. So yeah, it's know, like yeah. those pictures where you see it going from an ape to a man. And I he's know. Sort of in the middle. Yeah, and he's, and of course his monkey hands, his hairy little wrist to those little, those skinny little things that you can get oranges out of holes with. And it's unbelievable. Why are you so all shaved and polished and everything? Got a wedding. <laughs> what? Got to go to a wedding today, so, uh, thought I'd, you know, clean myself up a bit. Yeah. Shouldn't you be wearing head. a suit or something? No, I'll go home and put some that on. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, Suzanne, uh, said, you know, make an effort. Uh, <coughs> sort of had a shave and that, and then she, I came out of the bathroom, she said, oh, your head looks a bit sort of eggish. <laughs> <laughs> She's right. <laughs> she always worries about when I have a shave, cause I, I just, uh, you know That's I mean? your girlfriend, Carl. I know. Saying that. Yeah. Just think, so don't worry about Heat saying it. And the funny thing is, it's Boyd, Boyd Hilton, I think, of Heat that wrote it. And he's got a little bald head. Yeah, no, don't slag him off. Yeah, but on the end of his review, does it say, you know, written by <laughs> Baldy Boyd? No, because <laughs> it doesn't matter, it's a magazine. Don't worry about it. Looking forward to the wedding? <sighs> uh, a bit boring, isn't it? But <laughs> you've got to do it. Um, <laughs> They're probably listening! Should we do a shot? No, it'll be a great day for them, but I know what will happen. Suzanne will see, you know, all the fuss and that, and then she'll get ideas and I'll have to let her down and all that. Why, mm. uh, why is it you don't want to get married again? I always forget. It's just... It, who's it for at the end of the day? I've been with Suzanne for eleven years, right? Sure. We're happy. Well, I, I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's not the case. You're and never happy. I am. I'm alright. Yeah, no, you're, I know you're happy with Suzanne and everything, but apart from that, you're never happy. You're, you are the most grumpy, moany thing in the world. I mean, I get annoyed. But I'm always happy. I was annoyed here. I was happy coming here, but there was a bloke behind me walking and scuffling his feet. He had a pair of those stupid skulls on. And he, he was clicking and scuffing. Wear some shoes you don't have to click. Pick your feet up. Flip flops annoy me. Yeah. You know? But I'm happy. I'm just annoyed. You are just like, oh, the world's on me. It's rubbish, this. I know the world's great. It's just sometimes people annoy me by <laughs> being there. <laughs> you know? But, uh, <laughs> Steve said I should be locked in one of those towers that princesses used to be in locked fairy in the fairy tales. So, because everything annoys me. Um, but you, you are, you're grumpy. I'm not, I'm alright. Oh, right, okay, listen, we better play a record, um, soon, but, um, coming up, Steve, I went away with Carl. Okay. It was a little present from Jane, it was a golfing day, and I could take someone, took Carl. It was a brilliant day, absolutely, absolutely brilliant, but it ended with us sort of drinking and chatting and me saying, right, I'm going to bed. Because Carl said the most ridiculous thing he has ever said. Think of that. That's something. Oh. Sometimes, Carl, I think you're on another planet. Here's the only ones. Another girl, another planet, by the only ones. What a song. Amazing. One of my favourite intros ever. Um, 
Dr. Fox will disagree with me. His favourite ever was, uh, I think, Money for Nothing, if I remember correctly. Interesting. Yeah. Great, another great tune. Yeah, another great, another great tune. I'm not knocking, I'm not knocking him. If uh, you'd like to let us know what your uh, favourite intro of all time. <laughs> 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 that number again is over. <laughs> uh, uh, right. Well, we got so much to, to get through well, with sorry, this show. Let me just get my. I don't quite understand. You were given a gift. And the gift was a golfing, a golfing a day, day of golf, and, and, and uh, uh, yeah, for my Christmas present, part of my Christmas present from Jane, um, uh, a night away, um, two rooms, two rounds of golf, dinner for two, right? Mm. Uh, uh, but, but not with her, I noticed. Well, she doesn't play. No, she knew. No, it was a present. Right. playing golf. It was. It was a sure. golf event. She doesn't play golf, so um, I had to choose someone to uh, sure. um, uh, take away. Um, sorry, it wasn't a romantic meal. <laughs> no, no, but that was, <laughs> no, that was yeah. my immediate thought. I was... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Carl uh, just uh, getting in there in the jacuzzi together. <laughs> it it would... just sounds like an excuse for Jane to have a day off from you. <laughs> 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 but right. you don't play golf, Jane. I know. I know. Go, <laughs> go, go, go. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> a bowling ball with yeah. my name on it. Um, so <clears throat> I chose Carl. Obviously, um, uh, we went. Well, it was a great day, wasn't it? Brilliant round of golf, absolutely brilliant. Such a beautiful place in Stoke Poges, it's like a really posh place. And does, uh, do, <coughs> are you a good golf, uh, a good golf player? Uh, well, we'll get to that. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 Well, we uh, he bought he we he bought the shoes specially for it. Oh, we could have, I'd love to see him in those little shoes. I know, and they were no good because they were metal spikes. We had to change them. He was annoyed straight away. He, he spent over twenty two pounds on his, <laughs> these golf shoes. <laughs> uh, we hired a buggy that was brilliant fun. Uh, I was bombing along, wasn't I? Mm. I don't drive, but I, I just it was great on that buggy. Well, you've been on a buggy with me. You're a bit scared. Yeah. What? what I nearly killed us once. I was just taking banks and things, but you don't see sort of bunkers, and he'd scream, go stop! And he'd put his foot down the brake, and then went like reverse. Well, at one point, he sort of did a handbrake turn next to the lake, and then we had we had to reverse. Right? And you know, you just flick a switch and put your foot down. He did that without looking. I looked behind. There's a big oak tree there. He screams. <laughs> What's the tree? Right? He was. He was he... So oh, cheap of hazard. <laughs> I kept jumping in and uh, leaving him behind because I had to go to my ball. Because uh, sure. anyway, um, so uh, the first shot, the first shot, I got on my driver. I honestly did one of the best shots I've ever done. It went straight down. It was great. I thought, phew, got away with that because it's always the first one because it's a clubhouse and you yeah, want to look yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> he takes off that, and I've been saying, buy some balls. He just got six balls. I was going, what if you lose me? I want these six balls, right? He gets, <laughs> he tees up, right? Whacks it. It goes miles, like right angles, straight into these uh, the, the woods, right? He turns around. He goes, go and buy some more balls. <laughs> so I'm laughing because it's like impolite to laugh. But he he, he broke the ice for me, and yeah. I was falling around. And then second shot, I go, you know, you're off a three now. If you take another shot, he went, oh, right. So it's his third shot. He puts the ball down. <laughs> he hits the ground before it, and this is the ball off the ground. <laughs> and I was on my back, wasn't I? <laughs> Unbelievable. Actually rolling about on his back. <laughs> <laughs> and then we were the terrible. Tortoise. I went round 107, he went round in like 119 or so much. Sure. We, it was just rubbish. How long but did it take? Five hours. Of course. And there was no one around, luckily. Yeah, um, yeah. But it was fantastic. So then we go and have a, um, uh, our meal. What oh, annoys me, I said, right, I'll go for a run, he went, I'll have a bath. I said, I'll see you at quarter to eight. At five to eight, I have to call him. He's not ready, so he's let me down there. Oh. We I, I can't stay in lateness or laziness. Hate or, lateness. Or, yeah, and he's let me down. Do you know his excuse? He fell asleep in the bath because there was no light bulb. There was no light bulb in the bathroom. So, so he instantly asleep. he fell asleep <laughs> and he was late. <laughs> No, do you know what I mean though, Steve? If you're sort of like nice and warm and what have you. I was tired anyway, I've been stressed out <laughs> for four and a half hours, right? Uh, right. And my life flashed in front of me a few times in that buggy. <laughs> so it's all sort of wears you down a bit. I thought, right, I've got a headache. You're going for your run. I'm gonna have a bath. I walk in, put the light on. For some reason it didn't come on, but I thought, it's alright, I'll just, uh, you know, doesn't matter. You can have a bath in the it's dark. It's summer, so it's light right. anyway. Well, so. there's no windows in the bathroom, so, yeah. So you were in the darkness. So I'm in the darkness. <laughs> I nod off because I'm shattered. <laughs> he calls up, asking me. So I said, well, I won't, uh, you know, it doesn't normally take that long for me because, you know, I haven't got, like, long hair, I've got a dryer and sure. I can sort of one wipe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's uh, already ten minutes late, though, when I called. Well, of ten minutes. Mm, ten well, minutes. lateness is late, this next. Well, it doesn't matter. Dinner mm. wasn't until quarter past, so mm. we had, like, another yeah. twenty minutes anyway. So mm. it doesn't really matter. Yeah, but we said quarter two. So he's calling up, hurry up, hurry up. So I said, yeah, all right. So I get out. I'm drying like my tackle and what have you. Calls back again <laughs> 30 seconds later. You know. No, I don't, no, you know, you I don't, don't like that. You don't do that, no. Give it a wipe. 
30 seconds later, come on! So I end up going downstairs to the to the meal area. Naked. With a wet shirt on and wet socks. <laughs> I've got headache as it is. Meant to be a relaxing weekend. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so we have our meal, which is re really nice. And then, we're, then we're sitting yeah. in the bar. I'm having a, I'm having a cigar by the fire. Yeah. Like we're having a, a rather nice uh, Pinot Grigio. Yeah. He's there going like an ink. Is this 1955 <laughs> that you live in? <laughs> <laughs> It's so right. We, we are knackered because you know he's not used to work. I've seen him moaning, falling asleep. He's sure. not used to it at all. And you've been on your feet for o for over half an hour. <laughs> yeah, right. So um, yeah, we didn't even walk around the golf course. <laughs> we had a buggy. Yeah. Wasn't even exercise. So we get onto conversations. He's talking. About, he's, he's asking me stuff about evolution. What about you? What's the, tell me that? Why? Why did the giraffe? What's that rubbish about the giraffe getting a long neck? I said, well, it didn't. It didn't try and get a long neck. It it was selected. And he said, but. Why would evolution do that? I mean, well, you think that evolution didn't do anything? There's not, there's not this consciousness, there's not this will that a giraffe has to stretch its neck to reach the leaves. One had a long enough neck to survive and pass it. He was going, yeah, but why did evolution? <laughs> the, 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 this yeah. isn't. The, but by the way, this isn't the most stupid thing. This okay. is uh, this is warming up. This is about quarter to nine. Okay. Right? He said, why didn't evolution make a giraffe good at carpentry so it could build a ladder? Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. No. Right. Right. Okay. So he's thinking. He's thinking around it. He's trying to. He's trying to pick holes in evolution. Yeah. Eating knobs. Carol Thatcher, you know, a daughter of uh, one of our leaders. Sure. Well, you saw it in I'm a Celebrity. Get me out of here. She popped a couple of bollocks in the mouth. Oh. Chewed them up. Swallowed them. Oh. Kangaroo uh, penis there dried. She couldn't even get. It was so tough. She couldn't even get through it. And then she <laughs> eventually she <laughs> eats it. What was it like a pepperoni? Yeah. And she. What do you think of that, Carl? What, eating that sort of stuff? Yeah. I just, I mean, I, I, I watch it, I like those little trial bits, right? Yeah. But, what, what I don't think people realise is, right, it is hard eating a little kangaroo knob. Right? Really? How do you know? No, it's just, you know, you think about it and you go, oh, couldn't do that, right? But what they never mention on the TV programme, which I think takes it to the next level, right, they're eating that at like half past seven in the morning. Sure. <laughs> right. Which is worse, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If 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 I was there, and Ant and Dex said, "Right, Carl, eat the knob," I'd go. Hang on a minute. It gives a few hours. Let me get some rice and that on my belly, and just sort of fill me up a little bit more. I'll pop back at about half six this evening. Right. Have it ready. <laughs> and I'd I'd be happier then. It's just it's just that thing of. You know, you, you just, you, just you, don't eat, you don't want to eat, you don't eat animal genitals on an empty stomach. So what are you saying? You could... I'm, I'm I'm saying like I, I could eat I could eat a knob at night, but. Just cut that there. We'll loop that. If any, if any, uh, DJs are listening, no. um, just take that quote, I could eat a knob at night, uh, by Carl Pilkington. No. Maybe do a, a, a dance remix? Yeah, just I, maybe you're sort of a house producer and you could maybe get some kind of high energy beat going and then we could oh, just but... send that out to some of the gay clubs. I'm yeah. sure that'd be pop really popular. Please, please anyone, send us, you know, uh, uh that, that loop with a nice little, you know, uh, funky house beat. Carl Pilkington saying, I could eat a knob at night. It is hard eating a knob. So what are you saying? You could... I'm, I'm, I'm saying like, I, I, I could eat a knob at night. 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 Do you know the other week when uh, I came up with like a different idea of how we can sort of make the world run and that? 
Can we what? just have a quick recap of that? Because I seem to remember it was a load of old arse. It was, it was ridiculous. It was, um, he was saying that the, 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 the mm. world is overpopulated, so the system would be where people were living too long and stuff. So what happens is, people live till 78, I don't know how you can enforce that, right? Yeah. But when they die, they've got a little baby in their stomach, <laughs> right. like a pip in an apple, <laughs> yeah. that then carries on when they oh, die. Right. It, it wasn't a theory, it wasn't an idea. Yeah. It was the ramblings of a you, mental you're case. You're saying it's stupid, but someone's emailed in and said, oh yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Just say if, if, if that's a no, right? I've been thinking it about... It is a no. What about if we do it the other way, right? Ah, go on. Somehow, I don't know how A yet. kid has an old lady? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what it's gonna be, isn't it? A child no. give birth to an old man. No. Hey. What I'm saying is, right... Go on. Work the other way round. Come on, then. So, if, if somehow we can inject something... <laughs> In, in like a, a body that's just died, right? Listen to this! Imagine, Shh. but with a, imagine this is notes. So when they ha when he hands it into the Nobel people, yeah. and they go, if there's a way that we can inject something, they go, well, what? Well, I don't know the chemical formula, but something. Something HO2. Right. So anyway, so you inject it mm. in the temple. Um, <laughs> He's narrowed it down to the temple. So what happens? She sort of wakes up, Amazing. right? And she works the other way. So, like, she might be 77, yep. and then she'll have a birthday, she's 76, and she's working that way, right. if you know what I mean. Okay. Are, are you with me? No, keep me Because, because the thing is, you've got... <laughs> I, no, I I'm do. really scared. Yeah. I'm really scared. This is the maddest thing you've ever said. <laughs> yeah. This is madder than the old lady with the pit uh, like an apple in her belly. It sort of did work. This is no, it didn't work. It worked in your head. It's like a dream that you wake up and go, oh, I've got a great theory. This, it's is like... what, this is it. Let me just tell you the, the ending, because the ending works out a bit better. Go on. What I'm saying is, when you die, mm. at the age of... 78. Nine months. What? At the age of nine months, because that's when you come out. What do you mean when you die at the age of nine months? You're not you're scared of dying, because you're now a baby, so you don't know what's going on anyway. So there's no. Fear. So we missed out a bit here. So this woman, what, literally gets younger and younger? I think yeah. when she's in her twenties, she's in her old age, Rick. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because that's the that's the fun part of your life, isn't it? When you're twenty and you've got all your energy and that. So before you die, you're actually having a good life, rather than it being the other way around. But does she do different stuff th 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 than she did on the way up? Because she's already lived 78 years, <laughs> hasn't she? Don't forget. She was a baby once, and she grew to her ears, then someone, then once st someone stuck a needle in her head and said, right, back you go. <laughs> no, we'll forget all that bit. Oh, I'll forget all that bit. How do we forget that bit? What I'm saying so is... So she died and she doesn't remember all her, all her, this is a new life, is it? Let she's... me just leave you with this. Right, you're talking shit, explain yourself. But aren't the family getting younger as well? What's happened to the family? Forget I mean, I it then, we'll leave it as it is. No, we'll leave it as it is, shall we? <laughs> shall we, can we all agree on that, guys, no? Shall we, shall we agree to leave it as it is, is that alright? Cos I don't want to hear any more from the diaries of Charles Manson. No, it's, it's, look, I mean, you're a fucking maniac. A friend of mine got a gift, um, or rather gave it as a gift. I don't know if you've been familiar with these. It's a charity organisation, and you go on their website, or you, you know, phone them up, and you can give someone else the gift of, say, a goat. And it's a sort of goodwill thing, you know what I mean? So you buy, you buy an African family uh, a goat, that and will help uh, them for years. And it's, to it's come. like you're saying, well, I would have bought you a present. Yeah. But, but I've that, used that money wisely. Yeah, so it's almost like they've given exactly. the present. They've given the, 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 the goat. Yeah, it's a beautiful idea. But I, as soon as he told me about it, I thought to myself straight away, knowing Carl's views on charity and giving, yeah. what, I wondered what his views would be. Well, are they are they happy with the present over there? Like the people who are getting it? You, you're an idiot. What, you think an African family uh, wakes up and there's a little goat with a ribbon tied around it <laughs> and they go, oh, look what Santa brought us. Look, and that mince pie is gone on that glass of milk. You're such an idiot. No, 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 but what I'm saying is, does, does that... Fa does that family want a goat? Yes. But, well, but why? It's when... not that they want a goat, it's that they need a goat. Do you think... What right, do you think it. this organisation <laughs> is? <laughs> oh, just arbitrarily gonna, giving gonna, goats to they're people. They're gonna say, oh, I wanted Nintendo. <laughs> what are you, what are you thinking? Well, what I'm saying is, right, <laughs> let me put myself in, in their shoes. Well, this will be a first. Got any. But, but say, say, <laughs> say, I'm, I'm, I'm one of them, right, over there. Right, I'm sat there, it's Christmas Day, right. I open it up, open the present, little goat there, right. <laughs> Now, if I was one of them, I'd be going, not another mouth to feed. <laughs> At the end of the day, there isn't enough food to go round for themselves, never mind a goat. <laughs> 
don't they say like having a having a dog and that is quite expensive? They, sometimes they say, you know, what with all the injections you've got to give it. <laughs> well, I'm assuming it's all above board. The goat's had its injections. That's what some of the money goes towards. It's just a way of redirecting cash. But, but the thing is, why do they want that goat? What's the main reason? <laughs> to, what? Who? What's the main? What does a goat give you? Milk. milk. Right. Now, wouldn't it be easy to, to just send them a bottle of milk? <laughs> without all the hassle and the headaches that come with it. That's all I'm saying. And the other thing is, think about the goat. That was happy over here. Suddenly, it's on barren land. No grass. <laughs> I'm gonna burst! <laughs> what do you mean? You didn't send a goat from here. I'm saying, who's happy at the end of this, right? <sighs> You've got a fella who hasn't got a present over here because the mate bought him a goat, right? <laughs> So, 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 yeah, let's do this, let's do this properly. So there's a tick. He's not happy, right? <laughs> then, you've got the person who's opened it, who, like you said, wanted something else, right? It's a goat. They go, who's gonna look after this, right? So tick, they're not happy. And then you've got the goat going, what am I doing here? <laughs> God, we're gonna play a song now, right? One of my, uh, great track, Watch That Man, off one of my favourite albums, A Love Insane by David Bowie. But, during that, can can you can you think of a couple of things for me? What's the best thing that's ever happened to you? Can you can you think about that for three minutes? Me and Steve will leave you alone. Just the best thing that's ever happened to you. Remember and think that is amazing. Yeah, can you do that? Play yeah. the play. Yeah. Watch that man, David Bowie. Steve's caught unaware there, just wandering around, not quite ready, were you? Well, no, no, I'm just relaxed, you know, just yeah. laid back, just hanging. Yeah, Carl. Yeah. Best thing that's ever happened to you. Best event, best day in your life? I mean, there's, there's loads of things that happen. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah. no, but do you know what I mean? You can go for obvious stuff like, you know, meeting Suzanne, yeah. sticking with her and well, having take, a take, take that, take that as red. Yeah. 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 You've got that on your design and that's already yeah. done. Well, uh, And the day you, you know, you got your qualifications through. Yeah, the history. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, probably... I mean, when you asked me then, the first thing that came into my mind, right, that was a real surprise, right, because it's like, you, you get surprises on your birthday and that, don't you? Mm. But they're not really surprises, because you're hassling your mum and dad for stuff. Yeah. And then they, you know, they might bite you. Yeah, so it's not yeah. really a real surprise, is it? Do yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so I'd say something that was really like, oh yeah, nice one, I've got something here, is the time when <laughs> my dad said, empty the bin, will you? Right? <laughs> I said, oh, do I have to? <laughs> And I, I was watching something, it was like, why don't you, or something like that on yeah. the telly. Is this right? what started your tea bag and banana skin collection? <laughs> right. So, it was like, you know in the summer holidays where you'd have dead good telly in the morning, you had like, yeah. uh, the monkeys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. banana like, splits. You, banana splits yeah, and yeah. all that, right? And I was like, loving that, I was watching that, I mean, I said, empty the bin. I said, oh, the monkeys are on in a minute. He said, well, just empty the bin. So I emptied it, and I just put it near the door, he said, don't leave it there. He said, stick it near the bins in the garden. I was like, oh, I'll put it there later. He said, no, do it now. Yeah. Right? So I was like, oh, if I miss the beginning of this, I'll be livid, be right? Good. So I picked it up quick, ran out down to the bottom of the garden, slung it in the corner, and sort of went to turn back to go back in, and had to look again, because they had like a little AA truck. They you bought what? me, it wasn't brand new, but he'd got it from somewhere, a little AA go-kart. Do you know one of them, like, little things? That, I mean, I was, I was young. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it was like- go-kart? What kind of- no, the plastic ones. Yeah. When you're about- I, I don't know, I must have been like five or six or something. So I don't quite follow. The, the, had so he sent dad, you out there? My dad sent, sent me out with a bin bag so yeah. I could see so like, could what see he got thing. me. And yeah. it wasn't my birthday or anything, he just got it from somewhere. You sure you hadn't just nicked it and dumped it out the bag? Possibly. Sure. But uh, that, that was a, like a genuine like, oh yeah, smart. Yeah. So I went back in. Watched the telly and yeah, that for a bit and went back out. You thought, so did, I tell, did I tell you about my go-kart? Yeah, like you- Yeah. About your dad giving it away. Yeah. What's the story? I've- I've- I've, I've told you something. Have you gone? What? Tell it again. Well, I- 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 I told it on air. I can't remember. Maybe I just told you it. Um, when I was about eight or nine, I had a go-kart and I loved it. It was one of those things you press back and forth. Yes. And I used to come in every day, used to just get changed, run out and it was- um, behind the shed, and I used to just go up and down the garden. And one day I came running in, and I ran out, and I couldn't see it. And I went to the back door, my mum was washing up, and I went, where's my go-kart? She went, your dad swapped it. Your dad swapped it? Yeah. With his, it was, it was his mate, Jimmy, in the pub. He went, it's just, I said, what, ah. Oh. She went, yeah, he swapped it for a wheelbarrow. 
So I went and looked back and there was this wheelbarrow, right, <laughs> that was obviously just came off a building site. Yeah. Covered in concrete. Oh, I couldn't- it was steel, right, ch I could hardly move it. Yeah. And I went back and I went, really? She went, yeah, it's your wheelbarrow. <laughs> See, I'm thinking so of me dad lost the wheelbarrow that day. <laughs> yeah, and I used to- I used to push that up and down, it wasn't the same. And you used then to push the wheelbarrow up yeah, and down? Anything I mean, in there or? No, I just like just to try- I was just trying to sort of keep myself amused. Yeah. But anyway, that summer, I went on holiday, and uh, I went to Bargainer with my mum and my nan. Um, <laughs> Another wild holiday. Yeah, yeah. And I was sort of out, out with my caravan, and I, I made friends uh, with this, this kid, and he'd hired a go-kart from the- the caravan, is that right? And I remember him going around there, and uh, I was, it, was, it was great. And I said, <laughs> and I said, I've got a go kart. <laughs> and the caravan window opened, and my mum said, Don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> You've uh, got a wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> Be truthful. <laughs> <laughs> I went, I had a go-kart. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so tragic. Yeah. What Did you ever really forgive him for that? I'd never forgive him, my dad, if he'd swapped a go-kart for a wheelbarrow. I just thought that's par for the course. Yeah. It? You know what I mean? He's yeah. They're in charge. Sure. Did you used to rush home and change and- <laughs> <into> <laughs> <back> <laughs> <and> <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Into that sort of gardener's gear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Straight into your hard hat and dungarees. <laughs> I go, Mum, any bricks need moving. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. dear. Oh, that's so tragic. Yeah. Yeah. Still, <sighs> that was your happiest day. Yeah. Beautiful car. So that's, that's the one that sprung to mind. Yeah. Yeah, and my, un my unhappiest. Do you see how, how go-karts can be good or bad? <laughs> Does that make you think, Carl, that yeah. the go-kart is, you know, is good and evil? <laughs> yeah. Play a record. Oh, I'm so upset. Huh? So, so oh, ads. brilliant, what ads have you got? <laughs> I've got these. <laughs> Electric Soft Parade. Same way every day on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With him, Steve Merchant. Sure. Rick, I, um, I only had one thing I had to do all week. Okay. What was that? I only had- I was all week, I was so excited about getting up Friday morning, phoning, getting Bruce Springsteen oh, tickets. Oh, yeah. The boss is playing in, yeah. uh, in yeah. October. And basically got up too late. Well, not sold out already, you just sold didn't out, get- It had sold out, but I've started calling about 12.30, it sold out. I trawled the net. I trawled, uh, all yeah, the phone but a lines. Lot of, yeah, some of those buys are bulk buys for selling on, aren't they? They're not all this individuals. Is the problem. This is the problem. I mean, I don't know how many people they you know, can fit in Wembley Arena, but sold out by 12.30, and that's popular. Wembley Arena? Yeah. It's about 12,000, isn't it? I was so gutted. It was all I had to do. I was so looking forward to it. I phoned up one of those, like, do quite dodgy ticket agencies. Do you know how much he was offering to- you know, they're like, they're 45 quid to buy. Mm. He said, the starting price is 225 quid. I mean, that to me is like a ticket tout, like a legal ticket tout. Are they tout. allowed to do that? I don't know, it's crazy. I was so they angry. Could make, is that, they, they'd have to say their booking fee was £150. Yeah, pounds. exactly. So I- but now I'm just- I'm like desperate, I don't know what to do. I'm just wondering if I can abuse our position on the radio and just try and scrounge them from anyone <laughs> who's listening. No, I mean anyone who's listening who's got the power to get them, you know, or- This is begging, or, isn't it? It's, it's- it's- it's exactly what it is, Rick, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna try and dress it up, yeah. but it's just begging. That I'm just- ticket touts after you as well, for exactly. dissing him. Ricky dot Gervais Don't at- Don't bring me into it. Shut up. Ricky dot Gervais at xfm.co.uk. If there's anything you can do to get me a ticket- I'm willing to pay for it. Um, up to the point oh, of 45 big. quid. Okay, you know. Yeah, wow. No, the second hand. Yeah, second 30. Yeah. You, don't, you don't want to throw yeah. your money I'll around, Steve. I'll 25 quid, come on. <laughs> don't you know yeah. who I am? Yeah. But, um, but that, I mean, do you know what I mean? Because I'm just, like, I asked Carl if he could sort it out. He's done nothing. He's achieved nothing. I know. So I'm just desperate. I'm in a desperate situation and I don't quite know what to do. I'll tell you this though, Carl. D don't bother doing favours for him because he's not grateful. He, he, you give him something and he goes, right, does this mean I have to give you something back? And I go, well, no. He goes, good. <laughs> well, I got your cure tickets and you did nothing yeah, but whinge about rubbish, it. that gig. There you go, It then. was rubbish. I went along to that gig, it was a balmy summer's night. The cure, as far as I'm concerned, owed me a balmy summer's night because I wasted it. Hour and a half they played for, they played four hits. I don't want to hear their dirge from like some dodgy album and from like 1984. I'm not interested. Play the hits. Boys don't cry, love cats, blah 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 blah. Instead I got nothing. I was so angry. I was- I was- just, oh man, I was You were probably angry at Carl, weren't you? I was angry at Carl for wasting my time getting yeah. me the tickets for free. You know I mean, if I Carl? paid for it, Are I'd you have been to, you're getting to see livid. what sort of a bloke Steve Merchant is. Mm -hmm. No, it's not the point. Do you not agree, though? If you're going to go and see a band like The Cure on a summer's night yeah. in Hyde Park, you do not want to hear some obscure B-sides and album tracks. But that, that's what- that was a great thing about when, when, when I saw Bowie at the BBC. He played- Wait, you what? He- you know about that. I don't know about this. Yeah, you do. What? When did you see Bowie? At uh, the Jonathan Ross recording. Oh, what, your showbiz friend Jonathan Ross? <laughs> yeah. What yeah. was this? Was that that TV thing he did? Yeah. You went to that? You haven't told me about this. Yes, I have. No, you haven't. 
Well, you were away, I think. No, I wasn't. Because I watched it on TV. It was amazing. Well, don't tell me that. It was incredible. Were you seriously there? Yeah. And then, then I went on to a show on the Saturday. Cause Did he, you? Yeah. Because I was just writing John said, oh, I need someone to come in, yeah. And I went on to the radio show. So TV you were show. hanging out with Bowie? Yeah. And yeah. Go on. Who else was there? <laughs> well, the weird thing Shall was- Shall I go through my favourite artists <laughs> and you just name them and see if, if they were there, just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was amazing, right? Because he started, he played, um, uh, just doing local, it was that, because it was that, um, it was the meltdown thing. And he did, uh, Be My Wife, which was great. Then he started doing Fame, right? And they'd been talking about Ziggy in the, um, the interview. He was going, oh, everyone goes on Ziggy, will you just stop it, right? And it was sort of like, got to a point where he was going, oh, and it was really funny. And, uh, uh but Jonathan's like a favourite phase with that, right? And then he started playing, um, Fame. And it was really good. And he just went, stop this, stop this. This isn't, uh, this, uh, Let's do Ziggy. And oh. a sp uh, my spine tingled. I was worried. And he did Ziggy Stardust, and I'll tell you what, it sounded like the album version. And it's got an amazing band, and it was, and I love it when they do that. They know, I hate it when they, just because they've been going for 25 years, they start changing Sorry, it. Sorry, I can't believe that you went to this, that you knew you were going to this, and you never asked me, you never asked Jonathan if you could get me in. I mean, seriously, I, w I mean, you know how much that would have meant. Yeah, to but me. it was very tight. Apparently, I, I, I know, but it was very, very, it was very sort of. Apparently, Richard uh, Branson couldn't get in as a queue, so I was like, especially it was. There was me, me and Jane went. Um, uh, D David Badil and uh, Frank Skinner. Oh, what, some new showbiz <laughs> friends of yours? Aren't no, they? no, I mean that we. That, <laughs> I'm rubbing it in, Steve. I, know. I can't. I'm just. <laughs> but you might not have liked it. You might have complained like Carl got you the you... cure, and you 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 turned that was it back. Rubbish, on it. though. That was rubbish. Well, you might not have liked what David did. You know, I'll I'll tell you this seriously. If if I find out that you do the, that you've gone to some secret gig or something in the future, and I find out you've been seriously, that's it. There's no more office. There's no more. No, no I'm not joking. I'm not fucking around because that to me is like that's what friendship is. That's like a textbook example of friendship. What do you think, Carl? No, uh, I just think that's no, really off. No, you I just think away. that's really you off. Were, you, you no, I wasn't away. Yeah, you were, yeah. I wasn't away. Don't try and fool me. Yeah. I wouldn't have been away if I was away. I wouldn't have been away. You, if were you told me that was happening. You were asleep. I'm. I, I'm seriously. I'm. You can. We can joke about it, but I'm really angry about this. What do you think, Carl? <sighs> there's a secret, right? There's a, apparently there's a secret Bruce Springsteen gig that's been planned. I'm going. It's all, are you? I. If you seriously, <laughs> if you. <laughs> but seriously, if you, if, if I find out you're at that, oh, I will. I mean. Oh dear. To play a record so I can shout expletives and we can do this. Oh, I, I tell you what, lovely bit of electronic. Oh, just to uh, calm and, and soothe me. I'm just seriously, I'm not joking. That really winds me up. That this really winds me up. The cure was good. P I M P by Fifty Cent or Fifty Cent as I call him. X F M one four point nine. I'm Ricky Gervais, you're Steve Merchant, there's little Carl Pilkingbod over there. Alright. Alright. Yeah. yeah, not bad, not bad. Listen, um. Oh, he's perked up. Yeah. Oh, he's back in the area. Well, you got something to no, say? I just, just, I was kept quiet in the first time, I'll let you get on with it now. What you got to say, is it, just don't have a guess, is it about monkeys, Chinese people, or little gay fellas? It's about, it's about little gay fellas. Sure. Is it? Of course yeah. it is. Go on. Yeah, but not because. I like, I like Sorry, I'm just making a tally, let me just note that down. Yeah. No, no, but it fascinates me, doesn't it? All stuff like that, that's a bit, that's sort of different. Yeah. Yeah. Than that. What, you were like, showing me. like monkeys and Chinese people? Well, it... and that thing you were showing me before, the half woman. Half... No, you weren't, in, you weren't impressed with that? Well, no. That woman that's got two pieces of uh, genetic makeup in her where it was two, um, two separate sperms and two, um, separate eggs, um, fused, and she came out as sort of, a normal person, but she had this residue of genetic material, yeah. and so she's had two children that aren't genetically the same as her. Yeah. Right? And they showed it in the paper by doing her half white and half black to show the two, you know what I mean, just for yes. it, he went, it, does she look like that? I said, of course not. He went, not interested then. Of course. Yeah. If, he said, how could I tell? Not interested <laughs> in that at all. Yeah. If I'd have said she'd given birth to a monkey, mm. fascinated, <laughs> yeah. straight yeah. away. Well, anyway. Go on. But that's what I'm saying, I'm just interested in weird stuff, right? Yeah. Um, so about, am I. That's why little, you're on the show. Talking about little gay fellas and that. Yeah. Uh, little gay fellas. Uh, Northern Line, beach, underground tube thing. Not train. the- not the boy band. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Um, apparently, on a, uh, on a Saturday night, late, I don't know what that is, uh, if it, what, what, what time late is in the sort of gay community. As mm. we've discussed before, mm. yeah. but apparently the last carriage on the Northern Line, they all they all get in there. What do you mean they all get in there? 
they sort of take over the last carriage of the Northern Line on a Saturday night. Right. And it's like the gay, the gay carriage. Right. And what exactly do they do? They just travel about on the Northern Line? No, just have a chat and that and like, uh, just, you Stick know, on the communards. How do you, how do you know? Someone told me. See this, I, I mean, I'm glad you've informed me because it wouldn't bother me, but I feel I should be told about these things because I'm likely to stumble onto that carriage mm. by mistake. And I'm not, it's not that it'd be a problem, it's just I might feel a little uncomfortable if there's a lot of people in, you know, the black, <laughs> the black leather gear and the moustaches, the hats. I mean, to be quite honest, they'd be annoyed. Of course. Because they'd be expecting something a little bit, you know. What do you mean? Well. They're good looking, most of them. Sure. <laughs> No, they are good-looking fellas, though, aren't they? What do you mean? What do you mean? They're just a, a lot of the gay, you know, they look after themselves and that yeah. and look good, keep but themselves. Some of them know. work out, yeah. yeah. You see, this is the, the problem I have because there's a lot of areas in London and elsewhere in the country where there's a sort of, you know, it's a gay thing, you know, it's a gay public toilet, or, or I don't mean it's gay, but it's not like a legal thing. It means a cottage. But it's a cottage, or whatever. I mean, I remember being, um, in Bristol once doing something. <laughs> You're confused when I said it's a cottage. Yeah. That's a term for where gay people go in toilets to sort of meet and greet. Each other. Well, I, I, uh, Shake hands. <laughs> I was at, uh, the public library in Bristol once doing some studies from a sixth form, mm. and, um, I think the toilet was closed in the library, and I was dying of the toilet, and I popped out and there was a public toilet behind the library. I thought, I can't believe my luck. Dashed down there, it was about six-ish in the evening, I was working yeah. late, I was studying hard. Yeah. I went in there, and I swear to God, I saw two fellas. With the- Is that, is that unusual, or? Uh, well, no, they, they were up to some hijinks. <laughs> what, what, they sort of like- Do you know the thing that struck me? What? One of them had bright red underpants. What do you mean? I you saw, what, they were trans- actually doing, you know, they were having some kind of, you know, well, they were having relations. They weren't even in a cubicle, they were out in the- Where, where were the underpants? Well, around they- his ankles. No! Yes! I swear to God, I'm not gonna make this up! <laughs> what old were you? I don't know, like, uh, how old you are in the sixth form? Sixteen or whatever? 17? Yeah, and what did you do? Well, I actually what, said- What, you just joined in? What else did you do? <laughs> you might as well, yeah. I actually swore, I said, oh, F me. And then I went, oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> No, I did, I swear to God. <laughs> I did, I did. <laughs> I went, oh, it's me. No, don't. Because I was panicked and I ran out. And I, as I was, and as I was walking out, a guy was coming in and I went, oh, hang on, mate. And then I thought, I better not tell him. I, I'll let him find out for himself. He might be going in there to join in. He might have got a call. Come down. We're, having, we're going crazy on each other's ass. <laughs> <laughs> Come down. It's a conspiracy of Bristol but what conspiracy. Annoyed me, what annoyed right, me my was, lover. What a bit of cart. <laughs> what angered me, Rick, was, uh, was the fact that I wasn't notified that there was not. I didn't know there was no was a, sign. And afterwards, I spoke to other people about it, and they said, "Oh, it's a famous gay haunt." But mm. what annoys me is I feel that they should put an ad in the local press, yeah. a big paper, like once a week, like you know, when they recall cars if they're damaged or, or there's a fault, or curries might bring back stuff if they're sort of faulty goods. They say recall and we'll give you money back. They what should do you put an ad in the gay community. Should put an advert in that just says these are the hot spots. This is where you're likely to find us doing some stuff. If you're not gay, and you might feel uncomfortable. Avoid them and just list them or little pictures or you know a map or something, anything. Because like the gay tube thing, I Cock don't know. Fun. That's One two three railway cuttings. <laughs> Well, not that. It's more of a kind of, it's more of a sort of social awareness thing. Yeah. So people, you know, don't feel uncomfortable and... But they don't want it exactly to be like, sort of walking <laughs> under a neon sign. Why? It's, it's legal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, big arrows. <laughs> oh, as if. What do you mean? What's wrong with that? Because, well, it's actually a public place. I don't think, it, I don't think cottaging is well, strictly legal. But, but even if to specify what they're but gonna some do. But pe- some people, they're not, some of them aren't, I don't think it's but probably seen gays, is it? Yeah, but it's not, yeah, but it's not the people that go out and they say I'm gay and I like Barbara Streisand. It's presumably the sort of people that do that are people that either aren't quite out yet or, do you know what I mean? Or they're, they're, they're doing that <laughs> a quick one over the way to their wife and kids. Yeah. I don't know, I don't, I don't know completely how it works, but I'm sure there probably isn't a place like, um, uh, free bumming here tonight. <laughs> no, there is kind of. What? Because I, I was walking home one night through Soho, right? Mm. Um, just cause that's the way I have to go, not cause I choose, you know what I mean? I, uh, I wasn't going there on that, right? <laughs> so I'm, I'm walking <laughs> so through, right? right? And, um, I was handed like a, a card, which was like a gay event, yeah. right? Now that's a bit weird, isn't it? That straight away is presuming that because I'm there that time of night. Well, and you've got a shaved head, and you sort of like, you know, you sort of like quite look after yourself, and you've got some nice clothes. Yeah, but it's still, you, and you, you look can't like really a little presume. bit rough, don't you, from Manchester? It was you, a, look like, you look like a northern rent boy who comes down well, to well, stand I, outside McDonald's. But and, the card was rubbish, right? What do you mean? Had this fella on it, yeah. right? All sort of greased up and that. Why would you look? Just having a look. What what you'd handed me and that? Sure. Right. Just having a look. 
a uh, picture of him sort of sailors out on tan body, like, just his arse out, like that. <laughs> and, uh, rubbish slogan, right? The best bum in W1. <laughs> 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 is this bum there a noun or like a verb? What do you mean? Well, to bum. Is it like, get the best bum you've ever had? Or, he had the best bum? I think it's- I don't suppose you asked. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't suppose you called the number to check. <laughs> what do you mean exactly by this? Does it mean you've got a great Do you I mean I will good. be well bummed? Or do you mean oh, you've just oh, got oh, a good- Come on now, let's-, let's Well, just a final point about- Cos I asked my friend how it all works up on the Heath, cos I live in Hampstead Heath, yeah. not near Hampstead, and I was where I didn't want to go walk in and get involved- mm. get myself involved in anything. <laughs> how can you get involved? No, but again, I didn't want to walk- So like, is it like, oh, I yeah, believe it, I, I couldn't say no. <laughs> oh, my wrist, it's knackered. What do you mean, well, I was there for about two hours, I must have gone about forty-three of them. <laughs> but you know, I didn't like to say no, cos they were just- they were so pleased to see me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's God. not so much the fear of that. It's not. It's not Good skiing practice. I was doing two at a time for a little <laughs> while. It's not the fear of that so much <laughs> as the fact that again, you don't want to gate crash someone else's party. You don't, do you know what I mean? No. You don't, if, so, if, there, if there was a straight couple having sex, you'd want. Oh, I'm sorry, and you'd want to avoid that area. You yeah, know, you, of course. But I find so. Someone told me, and someone told me how, they, how it works. And apparently, you just go and you know, like sit on a bench or something, and yeah. then a guy just sits on the bench and they just look at each other. There's not really anything said. It's just a kind of nice evening or whatever. You know, I guess it's like two in the morning or whatever. And then they go off in the bushes and ding dong. <laughs> but it's like I don't know how that culture's developed. This is, it's, I love this program. But now. why can't that be the case with women? <laughs> that would be amazing. You just go out to the park <laughs> at one in the morning. You just sit on a bench. You just be like a scene from Gigi. Exactly. Where they, yeah, he's just walking along with the perambulator. Yeah. Uh, oh. Exactly. But that would just be a joy if there was none of this formality. You've got to talk to him, buy him dinner. Oh, you know, you're joking. Romance. Oh, no. Just this kind of informal thing. It'd so be what, great. So what do you, what would you, what would you do then? you go up to a woman and go, come on. Yeah. Let's, let's stop mucking around. We know there's why a, we're both sat on this bench. There's a, there's a nice, there's a nice bush over there. Yeah. Let's have a bit. Yeah, and then she'd go, yeah, great, thanks. I'm, you know, I'm killing some time before I, you know, pop into Tang. Yeah. That'd be perfect, thanks. You make my weekend. So you're jealous of gays as well In as me? In a sense. In a way. What do you think, Carl? Let's put a track on. Why? You're getting scared yeah. now. Yeah. You pulled it up. Is, is, it, is it getting too close to the bone, so to speak? <laughs> Whereas some would argue five. that waste not what not is, is perhaps a little bit more pithy, a little bit we more- We should uh, go through great say sayings and phrases and, and say if he could, Well, firstly, yeah. does he know what they mean? And then secondly, can he improve them? That would be brilliant. Well, we'll, we'll make another one we'll do that next week. time. Alright, so, uh, um, oh, let's see. Okay, uh, Winston Churchill, um, never have so few done so much for so many. What do you think of that? How would you, do you know what that means? I'd just be annoyed if I was one of them who, who gave a lot for a few or whatever. Right. No, gave a lot for so many. You were, yeah, if you were one of those few yeah, that I, gave so much for so many, i.e. it means the, these, these few good men, their actions freed the world. They freed the world. They have an impact on yeah. the, every person yeah. in the world and they, Brilliant. they were few yeah. brave men, yeah, and that's yeah. what he's saying. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, if I was one of them men who, who gave up his life, right, I'd want a name check. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to be bungled in with everyone else who is saying a load of blokes gave it their lives, well done on that, see you later. That's brilliant. Did you just say bungled in? <laughs> I did. Yeah, bungled in. Yeah. You made up a word. You want to be bungled in? You made up a word. See, that's it. You see, we've been looking for it. That's original. That's Carl Pilkington. I don't want to be bungled in. All right, do you know we've we've chatted about uh, charities before, haven't we? Sure. Yeah. We've done a lot of stuff on that, right? It's coming back from Manchester, right? Got off the train, Houston. Yeah. Right? Got the train, walking through the, the, the busy bit and stuff. So this fella stood there, right? Good charity worker. Yeah. Right? He, he, nice looking fellow. He's got his suit on, the tie, and everything. Quite respectable and that, right? Look down at his bucket. All the all money's been put in the bucket and that, yeah. right? On the front of the bucket, right? He says collecting for the homeless at Christmas. Now, why can't they do that? <laughs> what the homeless? The, the homeless people. Why is some fella <laughs> taking his time out, right? His own time where he could be at home. Why, why? <laughs> Some of us have got homes to go to. Yeah. Why, why, do you know what I mean? What, why, do you think just give them the buckets? Well, what are the homeless people doing whilst he's doing that? <laughs> is what I'm saying. What, what have they got on the timetable? Cut out the middleman. Cut out the middleman. What would prevent a homeless person, an, an entrepreneurial or homeless person, just getting a bucket and writing yeah. it on there themselves? Could I suggest something? Um, hunger. 
uh, some drug addiction, uh, traumas, often mental illness, um, just possibly too, too depressed to get up, put a suit on and go to Houston Station with a nice bucket with some writing on it. And then write, right, I was thinking, thinking about that, right, and I was walking down, walking down the street in London with Suzanne, saw a little homeless, well I didn't see the homeless bloke, right, I saw a leg, right, right sticking out of a doorway, <laughs> thought here we go, right, walked past it, right, you're not gonna believe this. Go on. Homeless. Yeah. Chinese fella. I've never seen one of them. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not having a go, right? Well, have you ever seen... Uh, do you know what I mean? That, that was a shock I really to don't think I have. I think he's got me there. I, I, I hate to say it, but I must say, I can't remember ever seeing a homeless uh, Chinese person. Weird, what? isn't it? <laughs> what? What? I, what, what is it I was at what past and I said to Suzanne, did you see that? She went, what? I said, just look back there. She said, what? I said, that homeless fella, look back at him. She said, what? She's Chinese. <laughs> and she said, yeah, good point. <laughs> good point! Of course she did! She, she said that to shut you up. She didn't yeah. want to get into a conversation with you! Um, I got a text from Carl yesterday, Steve. A text from Carl, yeah? Yeah. Um, I'll just read it to you. Okay, see you to Moz for a face rub at 6.30 then. No bum tubes, though. So I was intrigued, and I called Carl and said, I think you've just sent me a text by mistake. What's the explanation of that? Hey, mate. Right, Russell. He just said, he said, you know, you, you, there's things that go on in life that you need to experience. Yeah. He said, just, just pop along. And I, I, I didn't say yes straight away. What's a face rub? You mean a facial? Where you lay down... You just clean your face with a flannel yeah. and that. So it's... you're going to go lie down with another man and have your face Well, no, bit. this is what I was saying to him. There's, well, there's a couple of questions. I didn't just say yes straight away. I questioned it. I said, well, I'm not that happy with this. So I said, look, there's nothing weird going on here, is there? I said, it's not a house, is it? It's a proper <laughs> clinic and that. He said, yeah, it's proper, you wear a, a dressing gown and that. I said, well, I'm not that. So he's already got you in the dressing gown? Yeah, well, I haven't agreed to that. Today I've worn a little round polar neck sort of jumper so I don't have to take it off. It's not going to get in the way of my face. I made sure I didn't wear a shirt with a collar. I'm not taking this off. They can put the dressing gown on top of this. Right. Okay. I don't know if it's a woman who rubs my head. I don't know if it's a bloke or, or whatever. Well, the thing is, you get extra, don't you, for your face rub? Because your face goes all the way back over the oh. top of your head down to the back of your but, neck. But all I was so you've got a big face, haven't all, you? All I was saying to him is, I'll have the face rub, but I don't know if, if once you're in there, right. they try and sell you the old, uh, the old, the, the, the bum tube thing. What, what's what, the bum tube? The, is that a euphemism? What are you talking about? The thing where they pop a tube in and put coffee in your belly and it cleans you out and that. An like enema? That. Why would you have that? I don't, I'm not, I don't want it. I don't, I don't think Why you not? need to. Just because I think I've said to you before about, you know, you, you don't need to be that clean inside. You know what I mean? I don't mind washing my face. <laughs> but what, what occasion do you need where you're that cleaned out? <laughs> do you know what I mean? And it, it, it's always a clear tube and that, and you see all the stuff whizzing past. I don't understand why it's clear. I don't know why you've got to see what's coming out of you. Like it's, you know, like the generation game, making notes of what's whizzing past. Forget it. <laughs> I was watching uh, some different TV, saw an amazing documentary, it was called Tribes. This guy, and he goes and lives with different tribes around the world, these small little indigenous people. Mm. And uh, there was one, he went, to, he went to Papua New Guinea in Indonesia, right Carl? He lived with the Kombai tribe, all right? Now, this Papua New Guinea is an extraordinary place because it is one of the only places left on earth that hasn't been fully explored. There are parts of it that it's just blank on the map because they, they've never explored there. They don't know what's there, they don't know what's going on. So, firstly, that must already freak you out. Imagine that. 21st century, they have no idea what's going on down there. But do they, do they need to know if there's nothing going on? <laughs> well, they, they don't know what's going on. There could be stuff going on. No, but there's, there's no chance that they'll go, we haven't been over there and someone goes and there's like an Arndale centre. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's going to be there, is it? So there's no... Well, no I'll point. tell you what is there, okay? There's these various small tribes. Some of these tribes are still cannibals, eating people from other tribes. Do they know they could move on? Have they got a telly? Or have they, have they seen a telly and gone, I'm not up for that? Or are they just, are they saying... It's not the Amish. They haven't chosen But what this. is the difference between the Amish and these people? Well, the Amish are a, a group of people that choose to live in that way. These people are just essentially untouched by civilization. I mean, they do have interaction with civilization, and people do come there, but they, they still live in this very, very almost prehistoric way. They did buy a telly, but there was nothing on, because there isn't any uh, broadcasters. They can plug it in. Thing. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of an absolute nightmare. Yeah. But there was one guy, okay, now he uh, said that his brother was dying. This was a couple of years ago, right? His brother was dying. He said to his dying brother, what happened? Why are you dying? This guy said it was a bloke in another village. Okay, he goes over to the other village. He kills this other bloke, right? He eats him or eats bits of him. Uh, the other village gets a bit annoyed. They go, what's going on? Why did you kill this bloke? They went, he went, sorry about that, right? They said, well, you need to make it up to us. He gave him a pig. <coughs> they said, a pig's not enough. They gave him five pigs, so five pigs apparently made up for the fact that they'd killed one of them. They said, well, hang on, what are you going to do with but this bloke's wife? Why were they bartering? Why didn't they just get the police in and say, what's, what's going on? But, what yeah, police? What, yeah, yeah, what, why didn't they call in Kojak? Because he'd have sorted it out, wouldn't he? What I mean is, right, they're miles away from anything, but it doesn't sound like the great place to live, right? Could they not move? Could one of them go, <laughs> do you know what, I'm sick of this. I, I'm, I'm moving or whatever and go to a proper city. How far away is this, um, these Papa people, um, <laughs> to, to, Papa people. To, to the next, to the next... They're like, like the Smurfs. They're very like the Smurfs. But how, how many miles away from, a, like, a place with a normal life going on? But think about this, Carl. Firstly, they don't speak the language. So they don't have any practical skills. They've got no experience of civilization. So even if they chose to go and live in one of these cities, what can they do? How can they function? I think there's some bacteria that has better lives than that. That's got to be offensive. Why? <laughs> okay, how about this is the one of the weirdest things. <laughs> this is one of the weirdest things, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> an entire people, an yeah. entire race. Just of people. dismiss. No, just no, no. dismiss. I'm, I'm, said, I'm not. Right. I'm not having a go. But I'm just saying. I, I wouldn't fancy it. Is what I mean. But they don't know really of nice. another world. How can they imagine that they could? Oh, I'll tell you what. This is boring. I'm tired of, of hunting for food and, and eating fish from the river. I'll tell you what. I'd like a world where there's iPods and room service. I'm going to go and move to New York. They're not thinking like that, are they, Carl? Because they don't know about People go to these places on holiday now. They like a little bit of danger. They like to see how the others live. Mm. So all I'm saying is we know they exist. Yeah. The Papa people, maybe people aren't going there. I, you know, it doesn't sound like the best place. You know, I can't imagine it having a, a tourist board or anything, right? But would they accept me if I popped over there and, you know, with Suzanne in Papa? Well, Okay, this is this is one of the things that they they do. Okay, which is a tradition you may have to do. These uh, combi, right? They invert their penises, so they push their penises back up inside their bodies, like a sock. What for? Well, keep it out of the way. Of what? Well, if you're running through the undergrowth chasing a, a, a hog, you don't want it clapping away, you know. But, but it's also become a kind of ceremonial thing, so if you were over there, you may well have to try it yourself. You, you would have to try it yourself. If you went there, you'd have to try it Definitely. yourself. But even caveman had little pants on. Why, why haven't they... Whoa! Whoa. But, what, but, but the thing is, I do loads of charities. I do loads of things like... Uh, Go on. I pay, I pay for tools. You know, I do that thing, a monthly payment of a fiver. Paying right. for... Uh, you know, toolbox and that for someone out there. I help uh, old people, which I'm going to stop, to be honest. Why? Because um, do you know this? Do you know this thing I do, Steve? Right? No. This is this is a fiver a month as well, right? <laughs> got got I got stopped in Leicester Square one day. He said, uh, "Oh, there's a little old woman somewhere. She's cold. Are you going to help her out?" <laughs> so I was like, "Oh, why me?" Right? <laughs> so anyway, so they said it's easier if people look after one old woman, right? So why me? I've signed up to look after this old woman called I don't know, call her name June or whatever. It doesn't matter. So <laughs> it does to her, but go on. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, so I'm paying this fiver a month, and the, and the first fiver, you know, uh, first time I paid it, I got this thing in the post, right? Mm. And it had, uh, you know, thanks a lot, Carl. Uh, you're looking after June. Here she is, you know, here's a little uh, picture of her, and she's sat there, what have you, with a cardigan on and stuff like that. Every five pound you pay, you know, it'll be cheering her up. And, you know, look after her, pay for her food and what have you. So, for a bit, you feel good, don't you? And you think, well, I've done my bit for the world. Mm. Anyway, two months later, get another package, right? Picture of June in there again. She's got a tan. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's saying, he's saying you're paying to keep her warm. <laughs> no, they meant a week in Mallorca or whatever. And this is, this is what I mean, people turn... <laughs> if they can get away with it. <sighs> that I don't know where to start! That isn't having a go, though. I've what do you think? So, what do you think? You think they're going? Don't don't bother, don't bother um, getting a job or anything. Get off of me, and then get off of me. It's June. Oh, I don't know. Me. I don't know. It's difficult, isn't it? It's difficult. So but you I'll... think Sir Bond should just wash his hands of the whole affair? You think it's a complete waste of time? Is that what you're saying? 
that oh. you should just leave them to it. Just leave them to it. Let them sink ever more into debt, ever more into hunger. You just think that should just carry, no, just think, carry on? Do you know what this? I think he's saying? I was thinking, I think, I think, now I'm not with words in your mouth, are you saying they blew the last lot we gave them, they've got to learn a lesson? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not, I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say that. Is that what you're thinking? No. What are you thinking? I'm not thinking anything like that. All, all I was thinking is about this gig, it might have been better to do it, like, rather than, I don't know, ruining a grass field in Edinburgh and that. Do it out in Africa, right? Get people out there, get the tourists up. Do you know what I mean? Get a load of people out there. Mm. They've got loads of- I don't of reckon he's gonna get people to walk to Edinburgh. I very much doubt no, no, but people are gonna fly to Addis Ababa to see Coldplay. Cheap flights and what have you. Right. Hot dog stands and that, locals will love that, right? <laughs> Job done. Brilliant. Let's put him in charge. Yeah, just for one day. Let's put him in charge of live. Ad. If Bob Galdoff is listening, I know, I know, uh, you respect him because he used to work on XFM. No, but if Bob, Bob, Bob if you're listening, please, I would love, oh my god, a conversation, Bob Galdoff talking to, forget Kate Bush, forget that would be amazing. Can Bob please call in and speak to Carl? No one call except Bob, so we know it's Bob calling. Right, get on the phone. What's the phone number? What's the phone number? Can't we talk to him next week? He might be busy next week. No, He's he got won't. stuff to organise. He won't. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You can talk to us next week. All right. I'm not gonna go- I'll go through the phones. It's mental. <laughs> right. Play a record. All right. What are we having? Bit of, uh, bit of killers? Yeah. For killers, somebody told me on XFM 104.9. Tell you what, talking of, um, starving, I went to what is meant to be the best restaurant in the world on, uh- Oh, yeah. Uh, Wednesday, yeah. Sure. Um- You must be famished. Uh, well, Jonathan, uh, Ross, uh, booked a table there. It came out. I think he's been trying to get there for a while, and uh, um, I think it's a waiting list and everything. Right? And uh, well, it's like you're walking straight in. He can always walk straight in with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, uh, me and Jane went along with him and Jane to the Fat Duck in Bray. Uh, so it was voted the best restaurant in the world. Right. Okay? And um, it was incredible. I mean, it's across between a restaurant and sort of Barnum. They, yeah. you know, just incredible food. But all the way there, I'm thinking, well, I, I, I can't eat stuff in normal restaurants. Hmm. I can't eat, I don't eat red meat. I'm squeamish about things like seafood, uh, anything, anything that's a little, got too many legs or was, or was a crustacean once or uh, feeds on worms. I, I, it was, I knew that one of their, um, signature dishes was snail porridge. So I'm thinking, I'm not going to be able to eat anything here. So I was thinking, uh, I had something to eat before I went. <laughs> And uh, I was thinking that they better not have mucked around the bread, right? Got there, beautiful, um, and uh, it was it was it was really quite fantastic. And and I let them know straight away um, that I was a philistine, and they really accommodated me. You know, uh, 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 I didn't have the snail porridge. I, they they put um, mushrooms in my snail porridge, which is more of a risotto, and there's tasting menus and that, and it was it was um, uh, really fantastic. But Jonathan, halfway through, on the way there, I don't like to travel well, on the way there, he actually phoned me and said, why are we taking you to this restaurant? Good point. Very good point. Uh, uh, they know, even if I go around there, they cook me sausage and mash. Yeah. Or, do you know what I mean? Well, you are, you have the palate of one of those kids from the Jamie Oliver school dinners <laughs> program. <laughs> who's, they has got the lovely Jamie Oliver cooked, you know, kind of, uh, yeah. ratatouille, yeah. but they're going for the sort of chicken, Twizzlers. Well, there's no chicken. I love chicken. I yeah. Like, I like, I, the chicken I can eat. I'm squeamish about red meat. There's nothing I've re you know, it's a mixture of, it's not, um, uh, it's not morals. There's only one thing I don't eat morally, uh, that's veal. But the other thing else is just like, if it's got eyes and legs and things sticking out of it, or it's But it hasn't pink. got eyes and legs things sticking I out of it. What are you talking about? I, I mean, it just infuriates me. I actually got to a point now where I, ca I refuse to eat out with Ricky. Because I can't, it just, sucks the life out of me. It actually makes me depressed. I can't enjoy the experience. If you go to an awards do, they bring out lovely gr uh, lovely food, you know, three courses, oh, and you're whinging. You're it's always salmon, whinging. Which is hardly cooked, followed by lamb. Lo lovely bit of lamb. Who doesn't think lamb is the best of all the meats? Oh. And you no. just, you whinge, you complain, you look at Jane like a little boy who's like, oh no, why have you brought me here? <laughs> you are just, it was, oh. And I tell you, and I put it at the 
you know, I don't, I don't want to, you know, badmouth people, but I suspect it's your family. I suspect it was your upbringing. I imagine, you know, I imagine that if I came to your house, <laughs> you know, late sixties, early seventies, came round to your place in Reading, it would have just been the smell of chip fat, it was just on. everywhere, chip pervading, fat fire just was one on. of those chip fat fries that's just, yeah, like you say, constantly, twenty four hours but a day, I used to eat just things. bubbling I away. I used to eat beef and pork and that, and then I, it, it, I used to have to eventually, when I was getting sort of squeamish and getting older, I'd make a burn it so much that it was just like chewing on a piece of leather anyway, <laughs> where I couldn't, I couldn't stand the, the sight of blood or something. A salad so, in your house would have been I'll a, tell you what a, a salad onion and a packet of crisps. No, a salad in my house, right, was when it was summer, we were out in the garden, lovely salad, grated cheese, grated egg, two bits of beetroot with your leaves, um, <laughs> uh, a pickled onion and a packet of crisps. <laughs> Uh, and that was that was uh, that was a salad. But yeah. now is uh, that is that? Do you agree that that is probably the reason why you've got this 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 palate? And I don't even it's no, not even I've a palate. Got, that's I've, too nice I've, I've, word to I've use got for more it. squeamish as I've got older. Because I say I, I used to I used to eat beef but and what pork. What do you mean squeamish? I don't understand what you mean squeamish. I suddenly think about it. I can eat I, I can eat like you know like it has to be blasted. It has to be unrecognised to be an animal. You know what I mean? I, I mustn't see a bit of pink or a bit of fat. So if we if we were in biblical times, yeah. and you're there, <laughs> and Jesus Christ has just <laughs> fed forty thousand with some fishes and some loaves, you'd be going. I'm not into the fish, JC. I say you take and the head off, cook, cook, really cook, take the skin off, I, there's, I can see a bit of spine. And unless, that, unless that bread is mighty white, I'm not interested. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, what he hasn't said is, well, um, he gets frustrated because we have to go from restaurant to restaurant for something I can eat. But the reason we've only got about three restaurants to choose from are that, because he doesn't want to spend more than a fiver at lunchtime. At lunchtime? Mm. If I was going out of an evening, you'd spend a decent amount of wallop. But mm. lunchtime, Would why you? would I spend, you'd be happy to spend twenty quid! On lunch! Imagine that every single day! There's no one out there who's eating lunch, twenty quid a day on lunch. It's crazy. You don't need that much food at lunchtime, because we- I don't know what happens. You go in there, you have some kind of, you know, tiger green curry for lunch, you're asleep by one thirty. we're trying to work, we're trying to write TV shows, and you're dozing off like one of those giant anacondas that's just <laughs> eating a sheep, and is slowly digesting it. It takes like three weeks. He doesn't eat car, he does not like the spare. He, he, he'll go, he'll walk a mile out of his way to get a sandwich through. I've been in an argument over that 50p that time. <laughs> I don't want to bring no, up again. Here's the situation, Carl. Go I on. lent you 50p and you decided you weren't going to pay me back. It should be to my discretion if I say, don't worry about it, Carl. You should offer me the 50p, go, there's that 50p I owe you, and I'll go, don't worry about it, Carl. But you didn't even do that. No, it's the way that you were like. I said, where's my 50p? You went, oh, you don't need that. That's not your decision at all. I didn't say that. I said, I, I, I don't think I've got it at the moment or whatever. Rubbish. And he's going through my pockets and that. Rubbish. 50p. Ridiculous. You've just given him a keg of beer for free, haven't you? Well, let's, let's not go over it again. I, mean. I just I just think <laughs> value for money is important. Like, now, okay, so for instance, in the morning, I have to get the tube, but you can get a, a, a travel card, zones one and two, right? It's about £4.70, I think. But before 9.30, it's about £6.50. All right, and then at 9.30, when the clock, literally on the clock ticks over to 9.30, it's £4.70, right? Now, sometimes I'll get there, it'll be about 20 past nine. Now you'd be saying to me, oh, I just spend it, just spend it, and I'm thinking I've got ten minutes, I'll perhaps read the paper, wait for it to click over to 9.30 and then I can get a cheaper ticket. Now surely that makes sense. Surely that's logic. Mm. Don't, I mean, if you were in that situation, Rick, if you were there, right, and you had, let's say you had three minutes to wait mm. before 9.30, what would you do? Would you stand there and wait? No, because waiting to me is worse than uh, anything. It's madness. It's madness. I can't stand queuing, I can't stand, no, I'd, I'd, I'd pay, yeah. How long would it have to be before you'd wait? I, I, I if mean, there was like a minute on the clock to go, would you wait? Uh. If they literally said, if you wait 30 seconds, it's true, I, I go, um, alright. Well that is the case, that literally yeah. is the case. Yeah, okay, but not 10 minutes, no. What not about you, Carl? I feel fl if it was 30 seconds, I'd feel flash going, I'd spend three pounds. But if it was like a couple of minutes, I'd go, oh, it doesn't matter. I, you know, I, I just, I just wouldn't. Madness. Yeah. Think about how that tots up over the years. Amazing. What an amazing track Beautiful that is. Tune, yeah. Neil Young, Dynamite. off the gold rush. So go on, Carl. Sorry, go on, Carl. So just take us back a few steps, Carl. What, what's what's the story? Right. So I did some research. Right. <laughs> Let, let's just recap again. The guy, there was a guy you read about who had his head chopped off. He was guillotined. Yeah. He had said to the people around him, Count "I am blinks. going to blink once I've had my head cut off to so show the brain that life can still or the brain yeah. can continue to work after, yeah. after yeah. death." Okay, so yeah, we queried that. So y you weren't having any of it? Well, no, possibly for a few seconds till the, the oxygen stops being fed to the cells because the blood has drained away. But, you know, no nothing spectacular. So right, go on. Well, along the similar sort of lines, right? This is quite a few years ago. Um, this fella sort of upset the royal family doing something, right? Uh -huh. So they said that this isn't good. It wasn't Ben Outen at that Jubilee thing, was I it? Can't, I can't remember what it was. And they said, right, <laughs> that was terrible. We're, mm. gonna, uh, we're gonna cut your head off. Um, you know, oh. you gotta, you gotta 
show people like you can't be doing what you've been doing. What was this, the, the 1970s? <laughs> well, when you say a couple of years ago, you mean maybe sort of- Was it the olden days when the phones days. weren't very good? Ages ago. Yeah. Ages ago, sure. So, um, so, so yeah, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. So- <laughs> Very philosophical. <laughs> yeah, imagine that, yeah. when you watch News Corridor. This yeah, was enough. literally ages ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, go Simon Sharma's History of Britain. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so and even before that, which is young, <laughs> yeah. before, when it was all mental and different. <laughs> so, Sorry, Carl, go on. So he's having his head cough, and he's, but he's resigned to it. It's, it's the day before, he's kind of got it into his head now that I'm not gonna have my head, uh, much longer. Sure. So he said, let's, let's make use of this. Yeah. <laughs> He said, uh, <laughs> I wonder how long, like, the body can stay alive yeah. without me head on it, <laughs> right? So they were like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> so, uh. Hoover. So. The jailers? Whoever he was. The rats. Asking. These jailers with one eye. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Get that, fat. So, so he said, no, look, wait a minute, I've got an interesting scientific experiment, jailer. Well, yeah. fair enough. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, he said, what I want to do, right? He said, um, you know, surely it's, it's my last right. You know, I'm gonna mm. be, I'm gonna be dead tomorrow. Sure. So, um, let's he do a test. He didn't draw it out this long, did he? Yeah, he said, let, let's, let's, let's test this out. You know, okay. he said, do us a favour. He said, you know, it's my last day. Um, what I want you to do is, you're gonna cut me head off. Let's put a white line on the floor. Right. And see if, you know, cause there's no point asking how far he can sort of walk without an head if there isn't a line because you, you don't know what to count, do you know what I mean? If it's just, if he loses his head and he's running around all over the place, you can't yeah, really count that's that. That's not impressive enough, yeah. So, so they said, let's make a white line. Sure. Yeah. Who and said this? He did or they did? I think they started to join in with him and say, well, let's make yeah. this a- Sure. You sure. Know. You're guessing, <laughs> go on. So, uh, <laughs> so they got Norris McWhirty down. <laughs> <laughs> the Guinness people. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So they said, Let's get this white line. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Dedication's all you need. We'll, we'll do this, we'll do this tomorrow. He said, all right, then, I'll see you in the morning. Yeah. See you in the morning! I'll see you in the morning! Night, night, sleep tight. <laughs> bye bye. Uh, I love the fact that Carl knows exactly what was said. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. He doesn't know the story yeah. or what order it is yeah. in or when but it he was. He knows exactly what was said. Or <laughs> he knows the intricacies. <laughs> all right, then, see you in the morning. Mm, <laughs> bye, bye. Oh, kissy, kissy, kissy. <laughs> oh, I'm not, I'm not like that. Oh, you joker. Oh, don't let the bed bugs. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, he gets up. Do you want a paper yeah. tomorrow? No, I'm all right. Go on. He gets up mm. and they say, right, you know, today's the day and that. And he said, well, you know, I've got <laughs> got used to the idea. So yeah. here's here's a white line for you. <laughs> got used to the idea. <laughs> go on. So uh, so they go, right, are you ready then? And he said, I go on. And they cut his head off, and the body walked thirty two steps without <laughs> a head. Wow. Thirty two steps. Incredible. And that's, that's, that's the lesson, really. Did it get as far as the white, it walked along the white line, did it? Yeah, it stayed along the white line, did 32 steps, and then started to stumble a bit, and it just fell over. Yeah, yeah. But, it you know, it was do. a test that your body can still keep alive for a little bit. Yeah. When, when you've lost your head. Absolute twaddle. <laughs> Absolute twaddle. <laughs> what, what do you reckon you can do, then, without an head? Uh, how, how many steps? Nothing. There'd be muscular spasm, right? Yeah. It, it would twitch uh, a bit. It would, yeah. You could not distinctly take 32 steps, mm -hmm. the body could- well don't- Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Is yeah. the doctor still on the line? Yeah. The fellow that bought six parrots? Yeah. And uh, you know, you could have got 32 steps. Right, so you don't believe that- doing a bit of line dancing. Right, you don't believe that, but <laughs> something that you do believe that a cockroach can live a week without an head. It can. Hmm. Slightly different. Slightly different kettle of fish there. Why? Well, mm, insect to- a uh, human <laughs> is is the, is what I'm thinking. Yeah, that difference. There's not that much difference in well, some insects. Do you know that a snake has a heart and lungs and kidneys and stuff? Go on. No, well I'm just saying. So you're making out as if like they're a totally different like species. <laughs> I am. I am making that. I mean, call Rick, me old-fashioned. Do you know what you're talking about? Though? I don't want you embarrassing yourself, Rick. <laughs> yeah, I am suggesting they're totally different beings. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Um, now, Carl, uh, the, the the cockroach is is a very different thing. The interesting there is that it lives. It lives by its head because a lot of it's on. Uh, 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 that there's some of them are phototropic, chemotropic. Some of them just literally have uh, irritation and muscle memory. I mean, they do have a central nervous system, but it, it, it's it's very different. So if you lose the head, it bypasses a lot of that anyway. All this is running around. The reason it dies is because it can't take on water. But it's very different to a man, <laughs> right, having consciousness and then losing that. And the body's still going, no, I remember, I think I remember what I was gonna do here. Yeah, so I'm gonna carefully walk 32 steps along this white line. 
I'm actually just good looking out going, oh, missed a bit. Yeah. Um, maybe the head was in the corner going, left, <laughs> yeah. left, you <laughs> left, oh, he's not, <laughs> Well, let's just put it out. I mean, if 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 anyone listening has uh, has maybe had a relative <laughs> beheaded, maybe in a hor horrendous car accident, <laughs> but they got up, maybe they they went for a walk, uh, they you know they 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 had a little chat before oh, they passed dear on. Carl. Get in touch. You know, oh, you, Carl, you you, you you are my favourite being. You are my favourite species. Now, you, Carl, may not be particularly different genetically <laughs> from a cockroach. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Why can cockroaches speaking? do that? Why you ever made them get when? Let's play a record. Do, do you know what? When I, when I told him this fact, I send him little facts on text messages just to inflame his, you know, interest. I just sent him a cockroach can live nine days without its head. Mm. He texted back, "What's the point of that?" Yeah. What's the point? Of They're that? not doing experiments. These cockroaches. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's a, a boring last week to have. <laughs> 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 and he went, and on top of all that, you're thirsty. <laughs> so yeah. it's the worst week of your life, isn't it? That week without your head. Play a record. Play a record, Carl. Competition time next. Oh. 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 We need some corners oh. his little face. Oh. Look at his little face. Oh. He's not in Carl's competition. <laughs> oh. We oh. could do without an Ed. Eminem. Bit late there, weren't you, Carl? Put your little headphones on. Cleaning out my closet. What are you doing? I've got to stuff my face with, um, toilet paper. Oh. Do the, do the competition. Yeah. Do you know, we, when we were writing the, sh the TV show, um, I was filming it just for our own amusement, just to sort of, uh, I suppose more as a document, really, so that if there was ever, a, you know, a court of, court of law that needed, uh, evidence of Ricky Gervais's, I don't know what it is, really, sickness, <laughs> annoyance. He did this for about two hours. He, you see what he's doing now? He's and stuffing his face with toilet roll. Yeah. Um. And pushing the lips out so I can just show him the teeth. Yeah. You know, that actually makes me want to be sick. I know. <laughs> yeah, actually, he gag a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's horrible. Good. Well, while Ricky does that, Carl, it's time for your quiz. See, this is what you have for this is on telly. Right. An example. You have to be quiet or you've got to take that toilet paper out of your okay. I'm really serious because it's right. really annoying. Okay. You're gonna be quiet? Yeah. Right, an example of the game, just in case people didn't hear the launch of it last week. Um, it's, it's a song title, um, I tell a little story and that song, and that little story is a, a, a song, innit? Yeah. Right, so, um, say for example, um... What did we do last week? What did we do last oh, week? The, the woman who, uh... Oh yeah, a woman who really wants to, um, like, have a bath because she stinks. Yeah. But she can't because if she had a bath or a shower or a wash or whatever, she'd end up killing herself. Yes. No, right? you didn't say that. You didn't what? say she'd end up killing herself. Well, anyway, as an example, that would be one of the stories. Yeah, she's the electric, answer, yeah. The answer there is she's, she's electric. Yeah, can't she couldn't have a shower because she would have ended up killing herself. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So this week's then, and don't say it if you know it, because the idea is that people can go right. right? Um, there's this bloke, and he, he, he buys a new house, mm -hmm. right? And he's well happy with it, his, his girlfriend moves in with him and stuff, and she says, right, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's, let's clean it up a bit. Yeah. And, uh, you know, straight away it'll be worth more money. Uh -huh, good mm -hmm. idea. So she, he says, right, you do the kitchen and I'll do upstairs and that. She's stripping the kitchen down and, uh, he goes upstairs and he's in the bedroom and notices, uh, little, little hole to the attic. Oh, right, brilliant. Right. So he goes, oh, I wonder how much room's up there, you know, yeah. I've never weighed it up. So he goes up there and it's all, like, dusty and a mess. And he goes, this could make a good bedroom, this. Yeah, yeah. So he's, he starts cleaning it all out, puts all the rubbish, like, bins the rubbish straight away and there's little boxes with bits in that oh. don't belong to him. So I wonder what's in here, yeah. right? So he opens one of the boxes. It's like a little lamp. Oh, right? right. He goes, this might be worth a few quid, yeah. right? And he rubs it. Magic lamp. And all, like, all the room goes all sparkly and stuff. And he goes, oh, what's going on? And then this fella appears, right? In a nice sort of, uh, <coughs> in a nice sort of, uh, pair of 501s. Right. And he says, what do you want? I know it already. So all the, all the first bit is irrelevant. Yeah, but it's about building the story, isn't it? So don't say anything. If you think you know it, Steve, yeah. do you know it? I don't. So I just right. quickly recap the end there. I, I almost missed the end. Oh, so God. there he, you he go. He's in. He's in the attic, right? Yeah. His missus is still downstairs. She's not up there. Okay. Right. He's on his own, and he cleans this lamp, right? Yeah. And this this fella appears out of all this smoke, and he's wearing a nice pair of five hundred ones, and he's wearing a shirt, and. Uh, there you go. What's 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 the song? What song are you thinking of? The lines are going mental. Because it's going so live. easy. 
Let's let's play a record, Carl. We'll come back and we'll and we'll find out if anyone's got that right. That's a great one, Carl. Really. All right. Did Gen you just come up with that? Literally in the last ten yeah. minutes. Genius. <laughs> this is genius. Definitely. I mean, it, if those calls aren't from major TV companies, <laughs> I don't know. It's. It, I mean, dynamite stuff. A lot of them are. What's his name's lawyer? Simon yeah, Mayer. Simon Mayer. That's my favourite thing I've done for years. Yeah, not bad, not bad. That's great. Back to form there. So, uh, yeah, okay, lines. The, the lines are going mental just because it's easy. Go on then. So I first think one to get it. The first one to get it, but... Well, it's not that, though, Rick. I mean, uh, Carl has, has just decided to revise the actual rules of the competition. Yeah. So that, we've decided, is very easy. So that's now a qualifier. And so then they have and to answer one live. Exactly. So whoever gets that one right can, can play for big money. Is it a quick one as well? Because some people will lose the will to live. Yeah. Yeah. Just get, cut to the chase. And, uh, because um, they've got a qualify now, we're throwing an office DVD that aren't yeah, ready yet. Yeah, you'll sign that, won't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> that increases it. value yeah. by 42 <laughs> pence. <laughs> exactly. Right, go on. We'll just go live, yeah? Hello, XFM. Yeah, hi, how's it going? I'm um, not too bad. Not too bad. Listen, um... A very, very quick recap, Carl, if you will, please, for the, uh, for the, for the people listening. Very quick. Right, um... A man ends up in a loft. Man's, after moving into this house and yeah. that, yeah. uh, is in the loft, and he's tidying up, his missus is downstairs doing the kitchen because that needed doing. He's up there, he's cleaning up, emptying the boxes, he finds a little, like, a little- He rubs a lamp, a fella comes out wearing 501s. What's the song? What, what's the song, mate? Are you talking to me? Yeah, sorry, yeah. Well, look, 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 I'm, look, I'm sitting in this bar, right? I'm not ringing up relating to anything that's going on right now. I'm after one of these armbands to go and meet Bowie on Monday. Can you help me out? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Piss off. <laughs> you can't say that to our public. <laughs> yes, I can. People, I, what I can't bear is, is people begging, Rick, on the radio. <laughs> you know what I can't bear it. Is that the Australian people bloke? Just He's got the British Big Steve tickets. Hello, XFM. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Are you phoning up for an armband? No, Gene no. Okay, Genie. Right. Gene Genie, of course it is. Gee, well done. Well done. Right, what, what's so your name? So, everyone else can, uh, uh, ring off now. Or Slow down. Rewind. <laughs> what do you Again, mean? Again, you've been watching the Flintstones. No, 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 it's just, you know... Is it a leopard skin pair of pants that's actually right. quite a... Go on. But, but it's a well-known fact that they wore, like, bear pants or whatever. Bear pants? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, just, bear just, pants? Just, no, just... no, 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 listen, this, you are, you are a qualified... Uh, anthropologist, so uh, what, um... I mean, I mean that, you know, you, when, whenever you see them on footage or in a museum... Footage? Yeah. Or, <laughs> whenever or you see that early it's, it's, shaking, yeah, it's black and white as well, isn't it? Caveman footage. I, I, you always see them wearing a little bit of fur, fur little pants and that. So, what I'm saying is, even <laughs> though, what, what year is it to these, um, people in the woods? What, I mean, what? I don't know what this conversation don't is know. anymore. I, he's, he's just clutching at straws. His mind, his, uh, it, it, it's like um, a fly, his mind, isn't it? It's just buzzing round, it's trying to find a window. It, it, it is just it's like... hitting against pieces of information, but they're <laughs> yeah, just floating yeah. off. Yeah. Dazed <laughs> to perplex. Yeah. <laughs> I was uh, shopping with Carl before Christmas, and we went round sort of Piccadilly and St James's and those really beautiful shops around there and I went in one shop, you had to um, ring a bell to enter. Yeah. They came down and it's like a, a iconoclastic sort of shop and they they found things from churches and uh, uh, nearly all Russian, 16th century pieces onwards. This beautiful uh, uh, carvings and, and paintings and statues and I went, oh it's beautiful. And as I was looking round, I heard Carl sidle up to the bloke and go, what's the newest thing you've got here? <laughs> yeah, sure, that's his first thought. I mean, that is the wrong question to ask, of a man who's clearly in antiques, yeah. um, proud of the fact he's got 16th century, uh, kind of classic Russian stuff, to ask, what's the newest thing you've got here? Is that, I mean, what sort of question is that? Oh, I don't know, probably the doorbell. I don't know, what, what does he want to say, oh, my shirt? What, what, <laughs> what were you, you thinking? for? Uh, I think it's an alright question, because he, he was saying there's loads of old stuff in there, and he kept going on about the old stuff. So what is to say? Well, what's, your, what's the newest thing you've got? <laughs> and what was? Do you know the what he said? It? The other question he asked him, he said, "How often do you get new stuff in?" And I said to him, "Why did you ask that?" He said, "Well, I was thinking, if you got antiques and you sell it all, what's left?" Like someone's going to sell all the antiques in the world because they're not making. He said, "Because they're not making any new stuff." What does that mean? They're not making any new stuff. But I know for a fact, no one's ever going to go in there and buy the lot anyway. I mean, <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. I'm not at any point in my life, and I don't think it'll ever happen, will I go, I need some old Russian wood. 
Because it was brilliant. No, it was Steve. No. It was beautiful. It's amazing stuff. There's stuff. There, it's there's mm. um um uh, these things uh, from the 16th century of sort of like saints and monks, and they're carved. But and there's they're... loads of it. It's just all piled up. No one's interested. Oh. If I was him, I'd go. Do you know what? I'm into this, but no one else is. Close shot. Because seriously, <laughs> it's just piled up, up uh, piles up on piles of like old. Bits of wood with pictures on it and that. But think of, man, just think of a man 400 years ago that carved this, that carved this, uh, you know... No, but nobody wants it, do they? I've never heard anyone say, you know, oh, look, it's my birthday coming up. I'll tell you what I'd love. What? A bit of old Russian wood. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't happen. That's what I'm saying. I've never heard anyone saying they like... I've never overheard someone saying, you don't know where the Russian shop is, do you? <laughs> and this is in London where the rates are high. There was this thing, right, Steve? Uh, them old drawings on, like... It was like a panel from a church that someone had uh, that okay, painted. Right, yeah. And I think it was, like, you know, from sort of, like, 1590 or something. Yeah. And it was this... Uh, a, a picture of this, uh, this mm. saint, wasn't it? So 1590. It could be from any time, really. So there's this one there, right, leaning up against the wall. And, mm. uh, <laughs> most of them in there was that Stalin bloke, right? Mm. But there was this little... Right, can I just stop with there? Lenin. Right, okay. all right then. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he was on all these bits of wood and stuff, but I saw this other little face, right, little fellow with a beard, right? <laughs> so uh, I said, who's this bloke here? He said, oh, uh, the story there, right? He said, uh, it's this little fella, and he got mugged back in Russia. <laughs> This is right, isn't it? This is what he was yeah. saying. He said he got this is that, that term. That, I love that, that term in, in a 16th century Russian wood. Oh, no, I'm being mugged. So, so he, he got mugged. He got happy slapped. And, uh, <laughs> and, and he said, I've had enough of this. Right? Yeah. And he went to live in the woods, right? Made like a little shed. Stayed there. People went to visit him. And, and like, if you've got a problem, you knock on his door and you go, oh, I'm sick of it. And he'll sort of say, yeah, I know what you mean. I've, I've moved out of the city and what have you. And he'd make him feel better. And then they go again. Now, why has that man <laughs> got a plaque? <laughs> if he was around now, there's no way he'd have a bit of wood with his face on it, is what I'm saying. If someone had got fed up with living in London or New York or whatever, and they go, I'm going to go and live in the woods, people wouldn't visit him, and he wouldn't get a piece of wood with his face on, is what I'm saying. <laughs> but this man is selling it for about, I think it was about 750 quid for, for this bloke's head. But the chances are that this is either a well-known Russian folktale, or it may even be a piece of classic Russian He's literature. He's a saint. He was a saint. Or, oh, okay. He was well, canonised. Yeah. 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 Everybody, everybody was a saint years ago. That seems to be, like, thrown about, doesn't it? He was a saint now. Naming one now. Yet this fella lived in a woods in a hut. Oh, yeah, that's Saint John or whatever. <sighs> he's not a saint. He's done nothing. If anything, he sort of said, I can't be bothered with living in a city with everyone else. Everyone else has got to put with it, but I can't put with it. I'm going to live in the woods. Well, if you can't put with it, you're not good enough, are you? You've got no stamina. <laughs> And yet he gets a plaque, is what I'm saying. It's annoying. <laughs> who, would you like to see, who would you like to see get a plaque in the modern world? Who deserves a plaque, in your opinion? Probably, like, nurses and that, who, who do a lot of bad things that I think I couldn't do that. Carrying lungs about and all that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I couldn't do... Do you know what I mean? That's, that's one job that... Oh. I, my mum wanted me to be a doctor. Uh, <laughs> Wow! What was she wow. thinking? Oh, what's oh, her expectations this like apple now? Didn't fall far from the tree. Oh, when did she start giving up that dream? At what age did she start going? Carl, you don't need to study your books anymore. Go, go and play with the worms in the garden. When did she sort of like let you off that dream? Was it the day that she caught you with a spoon up your nose? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, talking of emails and that, right? Uh, Nick, who's emailed from Australia, right, Melbourne. He's, uh, he's, he's been going on about dolphins and that, problems with dolphins. What problems? Um, he's just saying when, when that, that wind happened, <laughs> um, it was like a bad wind thing going on. Hold on, wait a minute, what, what bad wind? Um, in, in America, they had that... Hurricane Katrina? Yeah. Right. And there was like a little bay with dolphins in it and right. that, with all guns on them and stuff. What? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. They use dolphins, don't they? They say they're intelligent animal and stuff. Yeah. Um, and they've got them all like, you know, they've all had the training, they're all like ready for, for battle and stuff. Right. 
got like rifles on them. What do you mean rifles? They've how got, can they hold weapons, a rifle? They've got, how they've can got, they hold a rifle? No, it's sort of on a strap and that. It's, what do you mean it's on well, a strap? I don't know what they cut them out with, but they're just ready for war. <laughs> what are you off. talking about? Listen, though, that isn't the point. Don't worry about it. Oh, we leave but that one, do we? Is, that's not the point, so let's leave it. So they're swimming about. Right? Yeah, just with, with rifles and berets. Whatever they've got on. Yeah. Right? Ready for, for battle and stuff. Yeah, ready for uh, battle, yeah. The wind comes in. The wind comes in. Makes Makes a wave and that. They get out of the little bay. Yeah. Still all kitted out with all the, you know, weapons. You're talking and bollocks. Steve, do you want to look at the. Well, there, there's no way there's loads of dolphins now swimming round, kitted out with problems. guns and that, with a strap. How, how can a dolphin hold a. Whoa. Again, no, you've been watching Planet of the Apes. Oh, he's trying to talk to us. What's he saying? He's saying, go ahead, punk, make my day. Look, You're just, talking shit. It's just news to say if, if there's dolphins, you know, if you see a dolphin in that, don't go, oh, it's friendly. Because there's some with weapons now. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just I'm just reading it out on email. That's, that, that'll cover it and that. So Bollocks. We've got a, a little email straight away, Carl, from Nikki in Beverly Hills, California. She says, Carl, you rock. I hate it when Ricky and Steve ridicule you. I checked out your picture. Although your head is not normal, mm. that's no reason to ridicule you. You look gimp, but I never judge a book by the cover. Cheers. <laughs> is that all you've got to say? Well, it's only because I've, I've got no hair, though, isn't it? That's why it gives that effect. No, it's perfectly round your head. <laughs> Perfectly spherical head. Your face is slightly too big for it. it. Always goes over the, almost goes over the sides. Perfectly round head. Um, pug little nose. Funny gimp eyes with no expression. Hangdog look. Um, like a little mouth, like a little lamprey. Not formed, not human formed. The the way your expression it, it, is like you've had a lobotomy. Your head it goes weird at the back. It's got a little nod in it, like a. a, a, a it's it's really strange. Your face and you're stupid. We've had a lot of emails saying that. <laughs> I mean, I think he's just paraphrasing, but... I'm um, talking of emails, you know, uh, a couple of... I, don't, I can't remember which show it was, but you mentioned, Carl, that you'd, uh, you'd only recently seen a uh, Chinese homeless person. Oh, yeah. And it really surprised you, because you'd never seen I've a never Chinese seen homeless person. Now. And I actually went along with that. I, uh, I've never... I've still never seen a Chinese homeless person. Well, now, I can just tell you now that there's a f few responses from Los Angeles, people saying there are quite a lot of Chinese homeless people over there, because apparently there's a huge homeless community in... Uh, in Los Angeles, so definitely if you want to see them, Carl, that's the place to go. But um, we've had one from Vancouver, Canada, from a girl called Amy, and Amy herself is Chinese, and she says that she realised herself that she, she'd never really seen a Chinese homeless person, mm -hmm. and although she says that um, apparently Vancouver has the first or second largest Chinese population in Canada, she'd never seen them, and she actually went for a walk around uh, the Chinatown in her area right. looking for them, and she could not find any on that particular day. So, um, again, Canada, obviously not a place to go for a Chinese yeah, homeless. It, it was just a point now. I don't want people sort of... Well, hold on though. Wait, well, I'll stop you there. Hello, Ricky, Steve and Carl. I live in New York City and have seen a Chinese homeless person. Not only is he Chinese, but he is also a midget. He's been living on the streets for the last 30 years. He used to dress in rags, but thanks to a, a, a coat drive, he's now wearing a fancy Adidas jacket, right? Now he encloses a picture. Uh, he says he gave him 10 bucks to take the picture. Um, and I've seen it, and he's a little yeah, Chinese I, I, midget fella. I'm just getting a bit worried that people are going out there, sort of, looking for these. Because, well, it, because they, you well know... that's what you requested. No, 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 but all I was saying is, I saw one. I didn't start saying, excuse me, can you just give us a smile, I'm taking your picture. <laughs> Do you know well, we've I mean? had loads of pictures of people. I know, and it worries me a little bit. And I, I mean, it's not too bad about the one who took one of the little midget one, because, you know, he's, if he kicked off, it'd be quite easy to sort of hold him back. But I'm talking about fully grown. So is that your warning to people? Don't be taking pictures of fully grown Chinese homeless? Well, yeah, I'm just saying, you know, don't, don't be messing about going up to strangers and that and, and annoying them and stuff, right? Maybe well, I think that's a good rule of thumb. Don't annoy them. Um, but I mean, but that is a hell of a sighting, isn't it? We asked for a Chinese homeless, and they gave us a Chinese midget homeless. Yeah. A quick. Oh yeah, my mate went to one of those things um, uh, in the West End where you walk around and it's aliens and they jump out at you. Right. Right. And <laughs> he was so scared when the alien jumped out. I mean, he ripped a bit of his face off. And well, the, the bloke, aliens face off. Yeah, it was foam, and the bloke went, "Don't do that, mate." <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Well, I, in the in the Salem one, I was wandering around, and this was one guy that kept jumping out. Yeah. Because there was about ten of us, I was at the back. I always missed him jumping out. 
<laughs> so when I got round, I, I missed all the frights. I mean, was oh no! He'd at least, like, he'd have thought he'd like jump out, then double round and jump out again. For yeah. Those people Did everyone the catch that? <laughs> no, we didn't. We. All right. Okay. Move on. Yeah. Basement Jack said, keeping it real. Where's your head at? Where is your head at? Yeah, right? I know what they're saying. They're saying, where's your head at? Where is your head at? Yeah. XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais. Now, um, uh, just one thing I would say, Rick, is that I've spoken to a few people who've listened to the show, and a lot of people, you know, this is the highlight of their week. <laughs> it really is. No, a lot of bedbound people, and, you know. Yeah. And, and we're not putting, the, we're not really not putting the effort in, are we? We're providing nothing. We're trying, but it's just not coming out right. We're just, the words it, aren't coming out. When I say them in my mind, they're brilliant. But it's sort of like getting old. You know, your mind, I, you know, I still want to run upstairs and mm. things, but mm. I just, no, I the lift. Mm. I'd like to run upstairs. I just, yeah. I just can't anymore. And I, I thought like today, I really, the comedy's in there. There's, the interesting there's fun, there's things humor, and the and it's, it's all stuff. in the head and it and it has to go via the mouth. Yeah, that's and, the and, um, it's just not it's just not working for me. Not but it is your birthday, you're twenty seven. Happy birthday. Thanks. We're talking about can I tell you one of the best presents I ever had? <laughs> about without doubt, all I ever wanted was a go kart. This is true. I was like right. like, you know, sort of five, six, seven. And I eventually for um Christmas um I I, I I wasn't sort of spoiled in the sense that I got pocket money, but I always got what I wanted at Christmas eventually. Because, right, right. you know, like, you know, working class mothers, they, they'd get it out of the catalogue and pay for it for the rest of the year. So, I, yeah. you know, I always got, I had, you know, really, you know, as many presents as anyone else. And I got this go-kart. It was a little red go-kart, and it was a pedal one. And I'd run home from school, and I'd be in it, and I'd get up and down the garden for hours, and I'd have to come in for my tea, and it, this was fantastic. And this went on for like weeks and weeks and weeks through the summer, through the next summer. It was just uh, it was fantastic go kart I'd show off. And uh, and then one day I came home, and I went, it was always at, at, at the back of the shed, sort of up against the shed. And I went in, and I, I couldn't see it. And so I went to the back door, my mum was sort of like washing up with that. And I went, Where's my go kart? I thought it hasn't been nicked. She went, Your dad swapped it. Your dad swapped it? Yeah. I went, he what? And I was going to be brave, and I went, he what? She went, he swapped it for a wheelbarrow. And I could see she didn't approve of this, and she was thinking, I'm going to tell him, and then I'm going to, you know, you know, have this out. And I went, right, she went, it's your wheelbarrow. And I went to the back of the shed, oh. and there was this wheelbarrow. He swapped it with a bloke called Jimmy Dublin, who he worked Jimmy with. Jimmy Dublin? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Was, I, I don't think know. he was a respectable member of the community. <laughs> he was fine, it was his libel. No, he was, I think he was an Irish gentleman. And that's why we brought him. I don't know what his real name was. And uh, I think my dad must have been drunk. And he went, you know, I want to get my son a go kart. And my dad said, well, well, um, we've, it, well, my kid's got one. He's probably had it for a year. He's probably bought with it. Yeah. And he said, I'll, I'll give you this wheelbarrow. And I went to this wheelbarrow and it was caked in concrete. I could hardly lift it. I just nicked off a building site, obviously. <laughs> and I'd be there for how hours trying to push this wheelbarrow up <laughs> and down <laughs> the garden, right? <laughs> and uh, it was okay, though, because I was going on holiday soon. And I am. Um, Seven years running, went to Bognor Regis, a place called Riverside, because some woman around the uh, uh, Y had a, uh, a caravan that um, we got free for a week. And uh, it was great. Um, just wonderful. And uh, I, I used to go there with my mum and my nan. <laughs> oh, party time. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The age of seven to sort of go. <laughs> no, it was good because, you know, when, you, when you're a kid and you wake up in a strange place, it sort of seems weird. You wake up at three o'clock in the morning hearing your grand pissing in an iron bucket. <laughs> and. You know, you We've get all been there. you get you get this orientated. Anyway, and uh, well, they and uh, uh, I met a, 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 a little friend who was about my age. We were both sort of like, right? and he'd hired a go kart. He had this great go kart, and he came around. He came down to my caravan, and uh, <laughs> I went, "I've got a go kart." And my mum, I remember my mum opening the window of the caravan and going, "Don't lie." <laughs> That's so evil. And I went, "I I, I had a go kart. I had a go kart." Wow. Yeah. Did you ever talk to your father about the fact he swapped it? <laughs> no. You never mentioned it to him? No. No. Have you still no. got that wheelbarrow? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I've grown into it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can nearly lift it now. Yeah. yeah. And now I'm just too old to run up and down the garden yeah, with now it. Now you get one of your several gardeners who <laughs> use it all the time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, dear. Dre there. Dr. Dre. Of course. Bad intentions. Well, it's, uh, oh, do you want to give the winners of the competition? The winners, yes. Uh, tickets for Joe Strummer and the Mescaleros playing at Brist Brixton Academy this evening. We have some lucky winners. The question I set was, someone else famous is celebrating a birthday today. Yeah. Uh, I don't mean someone other, someone else famous like I'm famous and someone else who's You famous. could probably get into the monarch. Well, pound off at least. Yeah. And, uh, I said, yeah, which, uh, actor 
Dwight Schultz. No, I didn't. I said which character did Started Dwight off Schultz well, play? didn't it? He started off so well. Which character did Dwight Schultz play? What made him famous in the 80s? Yeah. He's celebrating a birthday today. I don't know how old he is. Probably in his 60s. <laughs> Not in his <laughs> 60s. The character he played, of course, was Howling Mad Murdoch. Yeah. From the 18... We, did, it, we did accept um, Murdoch. I was watching an 81 UK Gold the other day, because I always like to have something, you know, so I can talk to Camfield whenever I meet him. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, the thing about Howling Mad Murdoch is, uh, his madness is one of those convenient kind of madnesses where he's not like kind of depressive, where he's trying to kill yeah. himself, or he's just schizophrenic, or he's unreliable. He's just a bit eccentric. Yeah. His madness is largely, I'll do some funny voices. You couldn't have, um, um, howling slightly off the wall Murdoch, no. though, could you? It didn't, it didn't have the edge. But it's just, it's rubbish. It's rubbish madness. Or <laughs> howling wacky Murdoch. Yeah, well that's what he is, he's wacky. Uh, howling annoying student mm. Murdoch, I mm. think he should have been yeah, called. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. the winners, Carl, I think you took some answers. Uh, Tim and Neil. Well done, Tim and Neil. Are they going together or are they? No. No, two separate. Lucky people, lucky people. Yeah. Um, I don't think your heart's in it anymore either, Carl. I was alright today, but Steve's really dragged me down. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's. There's wait a minute, wait a I just need to know why. No, do you know, like, yeah. when people are being miserable around you. Yep. I, I was full yep. of beans when I came in. Yep, 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 yeah, but you yep. got to remember last week, you were really miserable and that really wound me up. Yeah, because he was done so to do stuff. Because, you know, he'd been let down and they were worried about yeah, the next show. You were in a terrible mood. Yeah, yeah. looking at me like you were. Songs. I wasn't like going off oh, and lying on the settee looking ill. <laughs> <laughs> Talking in my voice. Oh, he's done you yeah. again. I said it, I said, just now, being quite friendly. Yeah, Carl, Steve. Carl, have you ever tried to get into the monarch for free? Because <laughs> I'll be honest, mate, it's not going to happen for you. <laughs> Come out with me, mate. You got a quid off. <laughs> all right. Oh. Uh, well, you can get in places in Camden for free. Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's done you. Oh. Right now, it's time for song for the lovers. Now, this is one of my favourite songs of all time. You all know this song. Better done by. <laughs> that was nearly a sentence. Oh, come on, that was nearly a sentence. Uh, What's his name? Glenn Campbell. It's Galveston. Oh, yeah. This is the man who wrote it. This is the original. This is Jimmy Webb. Oh, yeah. With Galveston. I th from what I can work out, I think it's about a bloke who goes off to the Vietnam War and he's missing um, his bird. And uh, I've brought it down, haven't I? I've brought it down a tone by saying bird. It's a beautiful song. It was irony. Just play it. Galveston. It's beautiful. Jimmy Webb with Galveston. Now, I know you enjoy... Love the work of the Webb. Webb Meister. A lot of people, of course, be familiar with his sons, the Webb Brothers. Yeah. Yeah, very different. Quite cool, though. Yeah, I, I went fun. to see him live and he was just so cool. Mm. Just, like, doing his songs and telling a little anecdote. It was just... He's, he's, he's fantastic. That's my song for the lovers. Steve, what um, have you got for well, us? Well, no, I was just going to mention a couple of other gifts that my father uh, got. Well, he got me once. I unwrapped once, having professed no interest ever in this particular uh, artist, about as much interest as, um, Winston Churchill. Um, I once received, lucky me, the making of Thriller. It was a, it was a video behind the scenes on Thriller. From Michael I Jackson know what film. he thinks though. But he, he said to me, he thinks he said, Steve, he said, Steve loves to dance. No, he went, he went, and you love music and you yeah. love films. Yeah, no, then that's a film, yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, I've never professed any interest. I mean, I don't think it even had Thriller, the actual film on it. It was just the making of Thriller. Really? Behind the scenes. Michael Jackson dancing and, around and John saying, Landis. Yeah, it was r rubbish. Well, well that's not blunt. very nice, is it? But what did you say when you opened it? Brilliant. Brilliant. I love Jackson. Can't wait to watch this. Can we watch it now, I said? Uh, what did he say? No. He's um, so ungrateful. Really? Yeah. Because I can't remember a time my dad bought me anything. It's always my mum who bought it and my dad would give her the money. Yeah. You've got Ricky who's lost his go-kart. <laughs> You've had a video bought for you and you're still not happy. <laughs> I just think you're selfish. <laughs> Definitely love this, surely. Have you started seeing this now? Virgin, I started plugging Virgin Galactic. I think it's something like mm. 200,000 quid, mm. and they, you'll get a chance to go in a space shuttle into mm. space. Carl, thoughts? Go into space. Wouldn't it be a fascinating experience to go into space and look back at the Earth? I mean, what, at what point are you all meant to be happy? <laughs> do you know what I mean? You're floating about up there, and you because you don't get out, do you? Uh, what, you mean to do some duty-free shopping? I'm just talking, you don't go floating about, do you? You stay in your seat. Mm. Well, they you know? probably let you move around on the shuttle. Yeah, I know, but I'm talking about getting out. For me, when you what, go you on holiday... What, you want to get out into space? Yes, but that's what I'm saying. When you go on holiday, the flight bit isn't the best bit of the holiday, is it? That's the bit you've got to do. <laughs> so what I'm saying is you've got to stay on this and then you go back home. <laughs> so you don't take luggage, right? <laughs> I don't see the point. Right, so you're there, you're sat in your own clothes for the whole time, same clothes the whole time. 
But I don't understand what 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 is the point. I think it's the view, I think it's two things. I think it's the view mm. and being able to be part of an exclusive club. I went into space. Uh, it's it's all that thing about man conquering nature, and and you're one of that elite few that have managed to pop up, see the world from a distance that no one else can see it from, and then pop down. All that way just for the view. Yeah. Is it worth it? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of other places I haven't seen anyway. Right, before I think about that, I think if you've done everywhere, I haven't been to Scotland yet. Right? <laughs> right yeah. I'm not being funny, but do you know what I mean? So just have a look in your back garden before you go looking in someone else's. In space. Yeah. Yeah. What would make it a, a trip worthwhile for you? I mean, if you did go into space, if we gave it to you free of charge, we said Carl Garden. I know space. the answer. I know the answer to this, Steve. He's thinking, I'd like to meet some aliens that can talk like I do, yeah. and I can understand them, and they can tell me something. Like, like what? Oh, uh, they met God, he was all right. That, that's the sort of thing, that's what he's gonna say. He'd like them to look like monkeys in spacesuits. Yeah. That'd be his ideal thing. He'd like to go to the planet of the he apes. He'd like to go to the planet of the apes. He, he would love they to go to that. The... Look, he's nodding. He's yeah. nodding. Thoughts, Carl? Well, yeah, that, that'd be brilliant. What would be brilliant? Seeing a little alien and that, having a chat with him, finding out what's been going on. <laughs> Going on. No, no. But, <laughs> but don't you think that, like, I mean, <laughs> if you bought me that as a present, right? Yeah. Either of you. Yeah. I wouldn't be that happy. For me, that's a little bit like. Well, this is annoying because we've got you a trip <laughs> to space and a goat. Yeah. Yeah. We... <laughs> Do you know how, like, I'm, I'm sort of, I am interested in sort of going on another planet. Right. Go, you are on another planet, mate. No, no. But do you know what I mean? It, it would be quite sort of interesting. How do you think you'd get there? Well, yeah, you'd go on a rocket and stuff, but what I'm saying is, at least you know when you get there, you're getting out, you're having a bit of a wander. <laughs> but I, I wouldn't be happy in just the journey bit of it, that's that's all I'm saying. <laughs> that's great, isn't it? But, but the thing is, right, I was because I was looking into it a bit, because I, I was reading about the, the Virgin Atlantic yeah. thing, right? And I was reading something that in, uh, in 1971, right, three of them went up there, there was one bloke in the rocket, right, the other two wandered off, had a, had a walk about, seeing what rocks they can find like that. And that bloke who was in the rocket, right, he was the loneliest man ever in the world. <laughs> I don't know what to do. What that was. I don't know what to do. I don't know if that's some sort of profound poetry or I don't I, <laughs> I, do, you know, I do, like, do you know what I think he's trying to say? He's trying to say he was, by definition, uh, a human furthest away from all other human contact. Yeah, yeah that's what yeah. I said. Yeah, okay. No, you know, you said loneliest. Loneliest evokes an emotion. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like he started crying and writing poetry and listening to uh, Morrissey records. But what I was thinking is, do you think when he got up in the morning, he still bothered to put his clothes on? <laughs> <laughs> that's the first thing that came into your mind. No, when just you because I always, there. you know, at the end of the day, even if, like, my girlfriend Suzanne's out at work and that, I'm not happy walking about with everything out, because you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just mean, you know, you never know yeah. if someone's going to turn up. No, I don't like what I don't like. No, I, I, I always pop some pants on or a towel, well, even if I'm alone. Not always. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've knocked on your door when you've, when you've been stood there with... No, no he's yeah, taking his trousers off. No, I did it especially, oh, knowing, right, knowing right. that you were there. I've done it especially to annoy you. Oh, right. Yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Do you think he? Do you think he was walking about the rocket with his tackle out, or well, did he go? Like well, it. you know, no one's watching here. Do you, do you reckon I mean? it floats up or down? Well, um, if you uh, uh, are the man who was up in a space rocket and was for a short period the loneliest man in the world, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear what you did with your time, um, how lonely you felt, and also, lonely. did you did you float around um, with your cock and balls out, Carl? If you could have a superpower like Superman. What would your superpower be? Can I suggest consciousness? <laughs> yeah. Can I have the power of thought? Remember, you've already got opposable thumbs. <laughs> so that, cross that one off the list. <laughs> oh, go on, Carl. There are so many to choose from. Telepathy, x-ray vision. Flight. Invisibility. Choose it wisely. Strength. Ah. Intelligence. But, but why have I been picked? Oh, for, for God's <laughs> sake! No, no, but I'm just saying... It's say, Rob's question no, for no, you. But I'd just say, does anyone else want this? Or... Do you know what I mean? 
Oh, no. what because, do you wish you could no, do that's no, impossible because, is the question? No, because, or uh, uh, out of, what? Because, what do you mean? Because with that comes a responsibility. Is what <laughs> with I'm enormous saying. power does come great responsibility. So, would it, w well, would you like spidey senses? Is that what you're saying? Uh, come on, Carl, you know what these superheroes, because they can, they can, I know, but it they always, can freeze they, things. They're never they... happy, are they? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Spider-Man, that wanted to tell that girl that he had, he could climb walls and that, he's like, I can't. Superman, never told Lewis and that. Who's <laughs> Lewis? Who's Lewis? Lewis? Who's Lewis? Yeah. Oh. It's just a pen pal of Superman. <laughs> His little secret <laughs> charm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, Superman. Hello, Lewis. What are you doing? Uh, uh, Superman. Uh, uh, who are you? I can't tell you, Lewis. Yeah. Brilliant. You know, Hulk. He wasn't happy. <laughs> Hulk. He wasn't happy. <laughs> it's true. He's got a theme. <laughs> he has got a theme. There's not many happy superheroes, but are there? Leaving aside the superheroes you're already aware of. Yeah. What superpowers do you want? You don't have to fight crime with it, Carl. Just let me just remind you of some of the other things. Invisibility. All the time, though, or can I sort of turn that on and off? Let's say you could turn it on and off. Would that interest you? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Right. <laughs> okay, and what would you do with this power of invisibility? Just sort of wander about and not just not get seen. <laughs> <laughs> it's a brilliant power! It's a brilliant... And, and, why... it's, put, and it's put to such <laughs> brilliant, brilliant use. <laughs> it's really well done! And why, why would you want to walk around and not be seen in that? Uh, what would you gain from that? I don't know, you could sort of <laughs> go in go in shops when they're shut. So you don't have to go. <laughs> How would you get in? Just get in just before they lock up. <laughs> oh yeah. And How would you get out? Wait till the morning. Brilliant. So hang on. So that's your use of invisibility. <laughs> they found the power of invisibility. <laughs> you want to sneak oh, into no. Never mind. No, hang on, let's just you wanna sneak into HMV, right? Wait. For 12 hours <laughs> and then buy something. <laughs> I love it. Just so that you don't have to be in there with other people. Do you know what? I don't want it. I don't I don't want a power. Why not? Because I, I just don't think it'll do me any good. <laughs> I think it's more of a hindrance. <laughs> I love this. It's like, just think of these presents. We've given you a go, a trip into space, and the chance to be invisible. <sighs> Not happy with any of them. Yeah, he, what he wants is a voucher for HMV. Yeah, 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 he just wants some tokens for a record shop. Just going through a few more of these uh, emails. This one's from uh, Kent from Nova Scotia, Canada. He says, uh, Carl, um, he's, he's wondering if you've got any personal mantras that you could pass along. Uh, for instance, he, he uh, reminds us of Ben Franklin's famous uh, mantra, waste not, want not. Who, who said that? Ben Franklin. What was he, what did he do? <laughs> what was his job? Benjamin Franklin was a, a well-respected American politician from the 1800s. He was uh, a he did thinker, a, a philosopher, a, a scientist, deeply yeah. respected. Um, he's also on a big money. political figure. He features on he's the on a dollar bill or the ten dollar yeah. bill or something. Yeah. So he's, you know, he's one of the great um, sort of American Enlightenment thinkers. Right. And he came up with the mantra, waste not, want not. You must know waste not, want not. I mean, that's just... Do you I, understand I, 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 the phrase waste not, want not? Uh, no, not really, no. What, what does it mean? I've never used it. It's what? like... Uh, don't throw stuff away because you might need it and therefore you you won't be wanting anything because you didn't throw it away. So he was a bit of a well, hoarder. If you don't waste food, for instance, then <laughs> you will... He was a bit of a hoarder! <laughs> <laughs> for God's sake. No, no, but I'm just saying, you know, he, he's a man in power. Is that the best thing he, he ever said? No, I'm sure he came up with many, many profane things. So why things. is that one He remembered? did experiments in electricity and conducting electricity, all sorts. But, but that's, that impresses me more. Invent electricity than someone. He didn't invent electricity. <laughs> Wait a minute! Don't impress you more than what? Just, just, just saying. Well, it's not want not. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's that good. It's not even catchy. Uh, yeah. How would you word it? I'd just say, whoa, whoa, don't, don't be chucking that out. You might need that later. <laughs> don't be chucking that out. You might need that later. Carl Pilkington. <laughs> Jonathan Ross gave you a cat uh, as a replacement for your cat which died. Yeah. Now, to me, that's, a, that's an inappropriate gift. Why? It's a place. lovely gift. Because it's the, the, you should be... I don't think people should be giving pets do you know as what, gifts. Do you know what I've got in there for his birthday? Imagine up to a wedding with... <laughs> I just bought you a cat. Oh, do you know what I've got in for his birthday? I mean, I've got him a child. 
Well, you may as well, because that's what it's like, a cat I'm to a, me. I've got a small Rwanda child. A cat to me is like, I, I bought you this small child. <laughs> I was gonna sponsor him, but I got a bit of cash, I've flown him over. <laughs> it it's too, it's gen- too intimate, it's like, it's too I much think? responsibility. Do you know what I think, Carl? Go on. I think Steve's a bit jealous. I'll tell you, I've got good reason to be jealous. What? I've got good reason to be jealous, I've just remembered this. Your birthday? Yeah. Jonathan Ross was there. Carl Pilkington was there. Yeah. I don't remember being invited. <laughs> I don't remember being invited. Was I there, Carl? You were there. I don't remember being yeah, there. Yeah, but you're with him all day and that. Right, so. okay, well, yeah, but he sees you a lot. I mean, Jonathan, he's on, he's round his house every other day playing tennis, and who else knows what, swimming together and sat in his jacuzzi, <laughs> cracking wise. What happened there? <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> oh, we've got to the bottom of it. Play a record. The villa that we went to afterwards yeah. could only sleep six. It may six. as well have been. <laughs> <laughs> How is the cat? All right. Yeah, what's, yeah. what's your name? Yeah. Jonathan? Holly. Hey ya! Outcast, XFM, 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. It's that time, isn't it? <laughs> Rockbusters. Three. Come on, Carl, what you got for us? Alright, well, some... do, uh, do you want to say what the prizes actually, are? The prizes are just... Really? Um, we've got, I'll uh, be the judge of that. Actually, um, what am I talking about? No, there's a two disc set, Rock and Roll Legends, on the cover there. We've got Buddy Holly, Elvis, Roy Orbison. And uh, little Richard. So no that's... one wants that. Really. <laughs> Nobody's interested. Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, a DVD. I'm a Nick Cave fan, and I wouldn't watch it. No, you'd watch it once yeah, at most when there's nothing else. Knowing me, knowing you. No, no, that, no, I mean, Nick Cave's good, but when do you watch rock exactly. DVDs? Yeah. Knowing me, knowing you, great series, obviously, but once VHS. again on VHS. Who wants it on VHS? Where, yeah. where are all the bonus features? R- r- absolute pointless. The only so thing far. that's half decent is this enormous hardback legal gentleman book, which is the scripts and all sorts of other stuff. If you're a legal gentleman fan, you'll love it. If you're not. I guess it's a good if, Christmas gift. If you're not a legal gentleman, there's nothing in this for you. <laughs> no, exactly. So... <laughs> so, you know, you can okay, either enter the hell of it. A pile of rubbish. What's the... Sh- well, not as bad as the competition, I suppose, so... No. Go right, on. Well, you, you know how it works, cryptic clues. It's not really cryptic, it's well, usually wrong. It kind of is. <laughs> yeah. Um, right, so the first one, there's three of them, you get them right, you win the stuff. First yeah. one, uh... I'll get them close, I mean, cos... <laughs> you could win this if you got one right, possibly. If you go to Cheps, though, you will. Was that a clue or is that a point? Is that something? That's, to do? that's a clue. Right. right. Say it again. If you go to Chepstow, you will. And what are the initials? Just S. Just S. Right. Second one. Um, e. T. is upset. What's up with him? <laughs> <laughs> right. E. T. is upset. What, what, what's he upset for? What's wrong with him? Right. It's different. <laughs> so not cryptic. So. M. Go on. E. The initials there. N. E. M. M. E. M. For mother. M. E. All right. And the third one, um, I had a, I had a tape with, uh... Jesus. <laughs> imagine right Bob, down, imagine Bob. Bob, Hol- Bob Holness doing this against, in the gold run, against the clock. Right, uh, <laughs> oh, I had a tape, no, I had a tape of summer. <laughs> uh, I had a, oh, listen, was, I had a tape with, like, yeah. Humpty Dumpty on it, and, uh, <laughs> and, yeah. and Ickery Dickery Dock and that on yeah. it, but I broke it. All right. Um, Constantly listening to it, trying to figure them out. <laughs> <laughs> trying to solve the crime. <laughs> exactly. Who pushed Humpty? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the initials there, B R. Right. So, first one. If you go to Cheps, though, you will. The initial uh, S. E T's. Uh, E T S upset. What's up with him? Yeah. Right. What's up with E T? Don't know. What's up with E T? E T S upset. What's up with E T? <laughs> yeah. The initials there, M-E, is that yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, hey, yeah. Let's, let's, let's go through that one more time. Yeah. If you go to Chepstow, They're you like might, They're like jazz uh, questions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just three, four. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. E.T.'s a bit upset. What's <laughs> gay? What's that ca- what- Hey, dude, what's the matter, man? <laughs> and they had a tape with, like, Umpty Dumpty on it, Ickery Dickery Dock, stuff yeah. like that. Doesn't work anymore. What's- what's gone on there, right? <laughs> what's gone on there? B.R. First time we said, well, you broke it. Well, I, bro- I broke it, then. Yeah. Is that it's important matter. or not? Yeah. <laughs> I broke it. it. And right. it says B. B R. Okay. Right. Okay, well you can text if you have uh, a <laughs> mobile phone to everyone. There's no excuse to not take part. 83XFM is the text. 83XFM. Or the phone the, number. I no, I no, no, the phone, obviously. We don't I think I know what the B might stand for. Um. <laughs> and uh, otherwise it's uh, ricky.gervais <laughs> at xfm.co.uk. No. Uh, We'd love uh, to hear from you. 
Oh, it just sucks the life blood out of me, does, rock, rock, just listening to Rockbusters. Something to bring you down even further, although it's a beautiful, beautiful tune. Oh, beautiful. Uh, Ryan Adams has got a number of different albums out at the moment. One is called Rock and Roll. It's not great, don't really bother with that one. Do dig out, though, Love is Hell Part 1 from Ryan Adams. It's available at uh, different places, and you'll find this on it. Track 5, Wonderwall, his version of Oasis Absolutely is wonderful. Absolutely beautiful, isn't it? It's a treat. It's XFM 104.9. Yeah. Rockbusters. You had a bit of love in this, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, three clues were, uh, first one, if you go to Chepstow you will, right, the initial was S, that was C horses, alright, that was the answer there. I'll give you that. That's fair enough. I'll give you that. Um, E.T.'s upset, what's wrong with E.T.? What's, what's, what's wrong with him? Yeah, right. The initials M.E. Yeah. What's up with him? He was Missy Elliot. Alright, Elliot- Doesn't is, count at all. What? Doesn't count at all. Missy Elliot. You know what I mean? What's, all, what's, what's wrong with you? Well, what, what is that with him? Well, well, just let him explain it. Sorry, Carl. Do it again. Well, I wasn't listening. Do it again. Elliot, yeah. Yeah. Who's in E.T. Yeah, I'll just do the clue again. Right. E.T.'s upset. Well, yeah. so he's looking a bit sad and that. What's, what's what, happening? What, E.T. the extraterrestrial? Yeah. Yeah, go on. Right. And his mate. Yeah. Who's in it? It's called Elliot. Yeah. Right. He's upset. What's up with him? Well, he's, he's, he's Missy Elliot. Missy Elliot? What's she got to do with it though? I don't understand. No. It, the way you'd say it, you'd say, what's up, E.T.? And it'd go, oh, Missy Elliot. Why would you mention her? I don't understand. Was she in the, was it a thing in the film? Missing. She wasn't even around. Oh, miss, the, missing? Oh, Missing Elliot. Oh, no, oh, oh, no. That no, makes no. sense, Carl. No, 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 she's not no, called no, Missing no, Elliot. It's, it's meant to be about cryptic, rock stars, though, isn't it? Miss, missing Elliot, isn't it? So it's meant to be about rock stars, yeah, isn't yeah, it, though? It's just cryptic, though, isn't it? Cryptic clues. Oh, it? no, that's not cryptic. So that's shit. <laughs> you. Right, the third one. Uh, I had a tape and it had, uh, Umpty Dumpty on it and- <laughs> I love when he says Umpty Dumpty! Yeah, Umpty Dumpty. Hickory Dickory Dock and that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. but, but the tapes, uh, broke. Yeah. That was B.R. Buster Rhymes. Bus Say that again, Bus I do stop. Oh, sorry, I don't understand. What do you mean? Uh, who, who, who's the winner, Steve? No, no, it doesn't- no, do you mean oh, busted? busted? Well, it's kind of like that. <laughs> cryptic. No, no, it's not- no, cryptic doesn't mean change it, so it's not the same. Steve, who's the winner? We've got loads of right answers, so... It's interesting, this email system, weird, it? um, it flashes up suspected spam, if it- you know spam is that stuff yeah, that yeah. gets sent around the internet. Yeah. And it flashes that up if it thinks it's, uh, gonna be a spam email, and every time it comes in with a Rockbusters answer, it just says suspected spam. <laughs> in a sense. <laughs> in a Fortune faded red hot chilli peppers on XFM 104.9. You, oh. of course, um, don't ever take the tube anywhere, Rick. No. You haven't done that for years. No. Um, take cars everywhere or you walk. Mm. Or you get a lift from Jonathan. Um, but me, I'm still forced to take the tube, which is also very embarrassing at the moment, because those posters- You're not forced to take the tube, are you? I am. What do you mean you're what, forced to- What, am I made of money? <laughs> <laughs> well, you could How walk. else am I gonna get about? You could walk. What? You can- you can drive, why don't you buy a car? Oh yeah, driving into the centre of town? Congestion charge, are you paying that? Are you a fiver? <laughs> okay. What do you think of that, Carl? <laughs> hey? Um, <laughs> so, uh, oh yeah, cause he's Mr. Uh, Flush, he's Mr. Lavish with his cash. Well, no, I've, I've moved in close, I know, I'm not moaning about it, I walk everywhere yeah. now. Well, good, yeah. I'm, I'm about for you. Yeah. I'm, I'm moaning about it, but then I sorted it out. But you're yeah. always whinging anyway, let's not get on to you, Carl, it's mm, always you, you, you. Yeah. So, um, what's up with Steve today, do you think, Carl? I don't know, what's going on? He's having a go, isn't he? Yeah. It's not helping those posters being on the tube of us. <laughs> That's not helping. I don't know if you've seen those posters. You obviously don't go to I, see, I saw the- saw the- yeah. I have seen like, on the tube, but- Everywhere I go, I'm stood next to one. I can't avoid it. Yeah. I'm on the tube waiting. I look around and I go, oh, it's, it's us again. And it's so embarrassing. Well, it makes- because it looks like you're stood next to it deliberately. But I can't browse in HMV now. I went yeah. last week and uh, you keep coming up to pictures or cardboard cutouts of yeah. Brent. Right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was in a bookshop and I was looking at there's a big almanac of comedy, right? And I was just looking through it, just browsing, right, killing time. And there was a picture of me. And just as I started looking at this right up at the office, a tap on the shoulder, it was one of the worst there, said, Do you mind signing some script books? Mm. So she saw me looking at myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, was, I wanted to go, You know, I just, you know, I just turned to that page then. Yeah, I was in a bookshop looking, there was a big book on uh, sit sitcoms, it was like the A to Z of sitcoms or something like that. And I genuinely was looking up other shows, because it was about other yeah, comedy so, shows. Yeah. And I was looking something up, a guy that I knew came up to me like that. Oh, and I just started like, oh, just looking, oh, Robin's Nest, where's that? <laughs> Birds of a feather, I just got to Cause yeah. it's so, it's like, I'm interested in comedy before yeah. the fact I got in comedy, so I well, will buy a book on comedy. Exactly, yeah. But on the tube it's really awkward because it's like, 
um, it, it's everywhere I walk, they're kind of around the corner, so you don't sort of expect them. And then I'm sort of running now from kind of corridor to corridor, pillar to pillar, <laughs> to avoid being stood next to this picture, in case I look like someone who stands next to this picture, trying to get recognised. <laughs> Imagine that! Um, oh, of course Carl didn't want his little round bald head no. on that. Yeah. Uh. But, um, I was on the tube today, and, um, <laughs> you know, you sometimes you can't help but overhear a conversation. Yeah. And, uh, this one woman, there were two friends, they were sat there, and one woman said, um, she just said, uh, oh, I must tell you this, I must tell you this. <laughs> I was in the pub last night, and, uh, Dave called. And I said, Dave, he said, I can't hear you. I said, Dave, it's not, I said, he said, I can't hear you. So I held the phone up so he could hear all the noise in the pub. Oh. That was it. That was the anecdote. <laughs> <laughs> that was the story. And I wanted to lean over to her friend and say, unless this woman has given you a kidney or saved you from drowning, yeah. do not be friends with her. Cause Break up this friendship. She hasn't got anecdotes. Cause what's that? And I've, I've got acquaintances like that where you know you, sp you speak to me, you get cornered at a party, you know this is the person who has not got anecdotes. <laughs> yeah. The anecdotes, they're not stories. <laughs> yeah, they just, yeah. that's it. It's like you're expecting for something else to happen. Uh, Never yeah. does. Well, I was, um, with, uh, Danny Baker yesterday. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's a yeah. brilliant bloke. Uh, first yeah. time I met him, and we got on like a house on fire. Put your num oh. his number straight in your mobile. Well, we've exchanged numbers, because yeah. he's got some great anecdotes. You had to delete mine, because no, you know, you've got so I many. I might write with him, because he's, he's funny. He did sure. this thing, and it was absolutely brilliant. He's yeah. doing a- uh, he wrote, uh, uh, a documentary, and, uh, he's a great guy. He's a f he's funny as well, you know show what I mean? It's this- I'll tell you what it is, it's the <laughs> showbiz friendship. <laughs> That's what I loathe, I think. It's the fact that, like, somehow- you're sort of, you, because it's like you haven't got to go through the formalities of making friends with someone because they, oh, well I respect your work, you respect mine, you know I'm a funny guy, you've seen my work. Yeah. Let's be friends. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. And it's like, and it just, it's a horrible kind of icky sort of- Listen, Steve, me and you are gonna stay in touch, whatever. <laughs> so, I mean, not, and probably not my birthday this year, but next year- Sure. We'd have known each other, what, seven, eight years? Yeah. So, come to that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well can I- I'll Do tell I need you to wear the waiter's outfit again? <laughs> Oh God! Oh dear! <laughs> <laughs> I um, <laughs> it's not so much that I I appreciate the the fact that there is a gift. I think it's the sort of it's the fact that the gifts are arbitrary and can be bought in the shop that's opposite the place he works. <laughs> Tell Carl about what you got your yeah. man for this. Well, Listen to this, Carl. This you'll love this. Right, yeah. it, the th it's the thought that counts, right? So I suppose if you say that the thought that counts is the fact that he went and got anything at all, that counts. Okay, mm. fair enough. But I phoned, he phoned me up. He said, "What should I get your mother?" Right? It's our twentieth wedding anniversary, <laughs> right? What should I get her? I said, well, I'll tell you this, this is a great idea I'd heard from somewhere else. Why not get her, like, a, pay for her to have a makeover, you know, and all the sort of treatment, you know, and the beauty treatment, and that. she'll mm -hmm. love that, you know, and then take her out, have a, give her a meal and stuff. He went, okay, okay, okay. So he, he hangs up. I speak to him on the day of my mum's birthday. I say, what'd you get? What'd you get? He said, oh, I, I got something. I said, do you go for the makeover idea? He went, not exactly. I went, what'd you do? He went, I bought her a trowel. <laughs> a trowel. I went, a trowel? He went, yeah, for the garden. I went, it's a trowel. You've been married 20 years and you got her a trowel. He went, it's stainless steel. <laughs> I said, I said to him, it's a trowel, Dad. And he went, do you think I should have got it engraved? <laughs> it is mental. <laughs> and I went down to see them, right? And I went in the lounge and literally, imagine it, like, she wasn't this, but imagine, I got in there, he'd bought this trowel, <laughs> right? And he'd also bought her an industrial sized tin of coffee. You know those ones, that, those big size ones you have in, in like, hotels? <laughs> How does he say she loves coffee, Steve? She loves coffee, Steve, he said. I love the fact that, that that's meant to be, like, like the whole family uses it, like she keeps that by her bed. Yeah. Like she's in Stalag yeah. 13 or something, this is my coffee. Now imagine walking into the lounge, right, she's there, <laughs> she's got the presents that my sister's bought in there. A trowel, <laughs> just holding a trowel and a tin of coffee. And me walking in wondering, I wonder if there's anything sort of that she regrets in her life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's lovely. She loves coffee, Steve. She loves coffee, Steve. Oh. She loves the garden. Carl, what's the worst present you've ever had? You see, we don't really celebrate birthdays in our house, so... <laughs> what, what? Where are you from? What planet are you... What do you mean you don't celebrate birthdays? Are you here from another world observing? <laughs> Like, trying to blend in, but not quite yeah, managing to pull it off. not that fussed about it. Right. You know I mean? It's... Yeah. My mum and dad's are on the same day, and I think that just was like... That's a bit weird, isn't it? And their anniversary, and... Well, they got married so, on their but their mutual birthday. But Carl, can I just... I mean, and Christmas. But Carl, there's a the difference place. between you saying... What do you mean their anniversary's on the same day? Of course it's on the same day. Yeah, and the, and the birthday. <laughs> <laughs> but, Carl, what I mean is that... You, I mean, you say that you don't really celebrate your birthday, but presumably you have received some presents at some point in your life from your parents. Or anyone. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, we'll come back to you later. Yeah. Thanks. Let's Thanks. play a record. Carl, have a think about that. We'll come back to you later. Thanks very much. <laughs> Ash and sometimes they've won me over. They have indeed, yeah. They've just got they've got, the, they've got to be the band they always wanted to be, I I'd think. have written them off in the early days, but no. Me really too, Steve. Themselves. Just uh, goes to show. Go Carl, um, any thoughts on what uh, gift you've perhaps once received that you can <laughs> joke about now? No. Or was tragic at the time? No? No. Not really put the thought in then? Didn't have that many presents, so... Always thankful for what you get, got. I was grateful for. Yeah. Rick, would you love to hear from the listeners if maybe they've received some amusing gifts? No. No, I wouldn't. Um, so, what are you doing tonight? You're going out for a little meal with your parents? Yeah. I thought you were coming. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good yeah. to know. Yeah. No. Any suggestions as to where we could go? I mean, maybe people would like to phone in, because I've got no idea. It's got to be largely meat-based. <laughs> if I will yeah. only really eat meat. Do you know uh, the steakhouse uh, near, near me? It's closed down. Brilliant. That's it, one. There's lots more to go. <laughs> Let's not stop there, it people. Come on. I used to look across and think, is that a bingo hall? <laughs> I know. It's or bright. somewhere to eat? Yeah, yeah neon. There's at the back. What the back? Add cocktails. And you know, just imagine. Yeah, who's in there with a cocktail? You know, like, imagine you going in there with a DJ sitting there. Hi. Be fantastic. Go on. Carl's got something sad no, and terrible. Is, is there a chance that your dad's like on the way into London now and has heard you saying, "Oh, yeah. he got me this and he got me that," and he could be like nipping to a shop now to buy you a rake and thought. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, yeah. Just think of that. Oh, oh that would be terrible, wouldn't it? Or the yeah. making of the bends. Yeah, he'll probably turn up and say, "I was going to get you a gift, Steve, but then I got high," <laughs> and we'll all laugh. <laughs> yeah. Cultural reference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, um, right. This link has run out of steam again. <laughs> yes, but it, don't worry because I can salvage it. Go on. Because it's time for Under the Covers. Cover me up. Oh, you got me Between covered. the covers. Between the covers. I like covers. <laughs> <laughs> cover songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, this was done by someone else. <laughs> <laughs> and it was... Uh, this week I'd like to play, um... I mean, we're all fans of Destiny's Child, mm, Rick. Mm, and we're mm. all fans of the song Say My Name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But have any of us heard, um, the Scottish band Spare Snare doing their version of it? I, I suspect not. Let's hear it now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bear Snare doing their version of Say My Name by Destiny's Child. Real, what do you make of it? Do you remember Raw Sex that I used to be in um, French and Saunders? Was <laughs> Roller River on? Well. Yeah. Is that basically what it's like? It's a bit like that. Do you yeah. think maybe the cover version section's running out of steam? <laughs> <laughs> if that's what we're playing. I think we should only ever do sort of six weeks a year on radio. Right. And then, you know. Yeah, it, and it, people will kind of remember that. <laughs> It'll be beautifully preserved in their memories. Yeah. You know, like, like Benny um, Hill used to do one show a year. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Imagine yeah. how awful it would if you'd like, I'd, I'd do it ev <laughs> every week for two hours. I don't yeah. think you'd have been so successful, to be <laughs> honest, Steve. I think you'd, you'd run out of ideas. Rick, I know that you are tired of coming in every Saturday and doing the show. I know I am, and yeah. I suspect many of the listeners are. But maybe we should leave it to the listeners. You know, if they want us off the air, maybe they should just email fax, phone That'd in. That'd be, uh, I think everything should be like that, though. Vote yeah. whether you want to, you know, like a binary sort, like, mm. you know, up against someone, knocks like, like, winner stays on in pool. Yeah. I hate that, winner stays on in pool, in pubs. Like, it's just horrible, it. fascist, isn't it? You yeah. want to play with your mates. You don't want to exactly. have to beat a bloke with one tooth who just yeah. plays pool all day. Yeah. yeah. Costs him nothing, and he has 93 games. Of course you're not going to beat him. He's a professional by the end of the evening. Okay, XFM <laughs> 104.9. <laughs> oh, Merry Christmas. <laughs> For Hero by Les Fleur. Great bloke, Les. Yeah. Work with him in Blackpool. <clears throat> Weird. Have very high voice. Can't yes. grow a beard. Yes. But, uh, yeah. I'm joshing. Probably right. pronounced Les Fleur, isn't it? Les Fleur. Yeah. We, we know all that. Oh, Caribbean. we know all that. We know that. We know that. We noticed all those huge posters um, advertising Christian O'Connell's breakfast show. Uh, they're all over the place now. They're mainly on the tube, like you wouldn't know, Gervais. No. What with your driver and everything. <laughs> um, imagine if they'd spent the kind of money they must have spent on those advertising our show. I know. And those people were tuning in, and today's show is what they heard. I, I was actually thinking, right, um, because uh, we do sort of, we do care in a way. Yeah. We couldn't get over it today, you know. Just to, just to word to the kids, this is what al alcohol can do to you. <laughs> yeah. Sober and lesson. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But I thought, what if this was our first ever attempt at radio? Think how gutted we'd be. We'd go, we just, this is, we're not what right. What worries me is it's like, I don't know, it's like in my sort of hangover state, it's like I've kind of woken from a dream, and I've sort of thought to myself, all the stuff we're saying today is what we normally say week in, week out, and we think it's brilliant. And it's today yeah, oh. we've done it, and it's rubbish, oh, and, we, and it's like we've seen the truth. Oh, yeah. It might be. See, I, it, yeah. So an alcohol can it's just, make... just not as interesting or entertaining as we thought. See, yours could be BSE as well, though, because I know There's you're worried about that. Union, I think. Yeah, because yeah. you just you just ate beef, didn't you, for for the first <laughs> fifteen largely, years? 
Largely just beef, yeah. Beef and milk. Yeah. Mainly uncooked. It was just, you know, <laughs> they just wheel a Often cow in. Often from the cow. Yeah, just, just suckle it from the cow. Now we're going, we get complaints about that. We will indeed. I always wondered, um, if Bruno Brooks ever got complaints, actually. Um, when he once played Rage Against the Machine, Killing in the Name of. Yeah. And I'm, he must have dozed off or something, because he didn't realise, uh, all the swearing, you know, F you, I won't do what you told me. And he just left it playing. He probably wasn't And listening. it was the UK Top 40, and it was just, you know. He probably, yeah, of course, he, he probably did get complaints. Where is he now? <laughs> Good point. Doing internet radio, which is of course where we'll be next week. Yeah, if we if we buck our ideas up. Um, quick question. Go on. I just realised who Carl looks like. Moby. He does. Not the first person to say. Yeah, that. I just suddenly just dawned on me then. Yeah. So if Moby's one of those people that I think is fantastic. Every time I see him, everything he says I agree with is yeah. is is yeah. lovely, and I just can't get into his music. It's bad. It's like it's like I feel that it's like a mate you can't say oh I give it up because I think he's he's fantastic, and I want to go. Why don't you do something else? Mm. Mm. For more, I bored myself. I bored myself then. If you've this got a is... pop star that you'd like Ricky Gervais to pass, comment on. <laughs> why not get in touch? Yeah. That's Rick, a what are your views <laughs> on, on Rick Witter from Shed 7? Uh, Rick Witter, I, I, you know, I, I like their effort. Okay. I think he's, he's quite, uh, you know, uh, got a nice hair. <laughs> <laughs> what about Chakademus and Clives? <laughs> what was their hit? Uh, tease me, tease me, tease me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, more of that next time, I'm sure. Oh. Oh, that's it. Are we but are we straight to the song for the ladies now? Yeah, song for the ladies. Yeah, let's. Should we just get it over with? Yeah, let's knock it this on the head. Song for the ladies this week. One of the best tracks on Hour of the Bewildered Beast by Badly Drawn Boy. It's of course Magic in the Air for all the ladies. Bye. Sorry about that. We're gonna really be good. Next week. Happy birthday. Or? Happy birthday to you. But no, we're gonna be we're gonna start work on next week's we'll show. Really, from then on, it'll be year zero. Yeah. Half Light by Athlete on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Carl. Right. Two o'clock. Let's get Rockbusters rolling. I should just, um, if people aren't familiar with Rockbusters, then, um, someone has actually sent in one of their own to test Carl. Um, they've used, I think, the same principle that Carl has, which is, you know, utterly random. Yeah. As you said before, Tenuous, you know, really just, just try not and really think of something yeah. that he might sure, be thinking of. Sure, sure, sure. So, um, I'm gonna, I mean, she's done it quite coherently, but I'm wondering if I should sort of say it more as Carl might say it, you know, just slightly less. More different every time. Yeah, slightly less coherent. So, um, Carl, this is one for you, all right? Go on. You know, it's Sunday morning, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm in bed, but I don't sleep, you know, but like, Hollyoaks is on, the omnibus, I'm just watching that, you know. Um, I go and make a lovely cup of tea, you know, I'm in the bed with Suzanne, aren't I, having a cup of tea? What's going on there? Just watching the telly and that, but hang on. I haven't got anything to dunk in me, uh, in my tea. I haven't got anything to dunk in my tea, have I? You know what I mean? I haven't got anything to dunk in there. I'm just having, you know. What, what am I doing? Is That's, it LB? It's LR. Oh. LR. So, have a think about that one, Carl. I, I think I know it. Yeah. Do you? Go for it. Go on. Is it Lionel Rich, Richie? It is Lionel sort Richie. Of, What's your logic? Sort of Lionel, Lionel, and it's like... No, no Rich... Tea. No, no rich tea. tea. Yeah. No biscuits, no rich tea. Lying, no rich tea. Lionel <laughs> Rich tea. Lionel <laughs> Richie. It works. It's, it's just, just, it's just as coherent as like yours. What's that? We've done one a little bit like it. There's nothing wrong with that. I cannot so believe that's, you got that's it. A, that's a tag. <laughs> I cannot believe you got it. I might not have got it without the initials, but that's why we chucked them in, just to help you along. <laughs> 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 so, right, so, what have you got for us right, this week? So we've, got, we've got three of them. Oh, we've by the way, them. don't bother calling in Kate Bush because Carl doesn't want to answer the phones. He says Kate Bush is not going to call, so it's all going to be nutters. So, we apologise. He's got one thing to do. He didn't even get the sound right because someone's complaining about they couldn't hear Steve. He's got to do monkey news, which is always twaddle, and he won't even answer the phones now. So, I don't know. I don't know why he gets paid. He takes off Mondays because he don't. works Saturdays. I he gets don't. paid for Saturdays. He takes five weeks not holiday a year. Not off Mondays. And, 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 and he moans. Not off Mondays. Well. <laughs> Right, um, what have you got for us? Right then, the first one. Uh, there's a vehicle that sells kebabs. Right? <laughs> there's a vehicle that sells kebabs. Initial D. Right? D. <laughs> Great. Right? Have you worked that one out? Of course I haven't. Right, the second one. Um, you're asked if you want that bit of the egg. <laughs> you are. You are. You are. You're asked if you, if you want that bit of the egg. Yeah. You think about it, but we t uh, sort of decide against it. <laughs> and what, again? What's going on there? You're asked if you want that bit of the egg. You think about it, but you go, nah, I'll go against it. 
I've- I've got it. Is it- is initials W- uh, Y- O? Yeah. Got it. Right, so- Okay. That one- that one works. Uh, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No. Uh, and the last one, I don't think this burger will catch on. I don't think this burger will catch on. Yeah, and the letter there is M. So you just uh, text or email in uh, with the answers and uh, win some stuff. What have yeah. we got? We've got some prizes. We've got uh, another box set of the League of Gentlemen. This is um, instant gratification, but uh, you go into a draw for some, something bigger. So what have we got today? Yeah, well, today, this is what you're taking home today. Oh. Um, you've got the League of Gentlemen, the complete collection on DVD. That's yeah. not worth, that's worth having, definitely. Uh, we've got Catterick, which is the current Vic and Bob show on BBC Two, which is uh, good. The Aviator, the um, the award-winning um, Leonardo DiCaprio, Martin Scorsese biopic, and once again, Ladder 49. We're giving that away now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently oh, we've got, um, can we get a job like those? We've we got loads of them. We've got Oh, yeah. excellent. So Email well. in if you just want a copy of Letter 49. I'm sure we could dig one out for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or phone in, because Carl does not answer the phones. Right. And remember, the winner goes forward f uh, into the chance to win the big prizes, the ha signed Homer drawing, uh, the signed Nigel Tufnell poster, and you go to rickygervais.com and see Matt Groening actually drawing that to, uh, to, to verify it. But in Lloyd Carl won't. Oh, Never wrote anyone, has it? Has it? Uh, it's what they're waiting for, it's the Rockbuster dancers. That's right. Alright. <laughs> okay, give us the clue, give us the answer. Right then, uh, first one. Oh yeah, because we haven't got long for monkey news. Don't worry about it, don't worry about it. First one. <laughs> there's a, there's a vehicle over there that's, uh, it's changed. Selling kebabs. Oh, it's changed, go on. <clears throat> Initial D. Yeah, what is it? That was Donovan. Donovan. Okay. Alright, yeah, okay. Yeah. Good. Works. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Yeah. Second That's a one. real clue. Mm. Well, they got it, like they always do, so they're yeah. always real clues. Mm. Uh, second one. You're asked if you want that bit of the egg, right? You think about it, then you decide against it. I think I know this one. What was the initial again? Y O. Um, is this, um, uh, uh John Lennon's, um, wife, Yoke Ono? Yeah, that's right. I think that was her name, Yoke Ono, was it? <laughs> yeah, it was Yoke Ono. That, that was, was Yoke Yo Yo Ono. No, 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 oh, you've got no. it wrong. You're thinking about it. You ask if you want a bit of the egg. Yeah. You go yolk. You think about it. Oh, oh no. Oh, so you say it twice. You stutter. So no, no, it's no, yolk, no, no. Yolk. Oh, oh no. No, you, you no her wrong. name's Yoko. Oh no, though. Yeah, Yoko. Yeah. Oh no. Listen to the clue again. Okay, no, 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 no. Listen no, no, to the clue. clue. So what you say is, do you, do you want this bit of the egg? You think, oh, the other bit. No, yolk. Oh, oh no. Yolk. Right. Oh, oh no. Yolk. Oh, oh no. Yolk. Oh, oh no. Yolk. Oh, oh no. No, no. Oh, yolk. Yeah, go on, brilliant. Yeah, okay, yeah, yolk. Oh no, yeah, go on. Yeah. Perfect. No, 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 next, next, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the last one was. uh I don't think this burger will catch on. That was, uh, initial M. Yeah. McFly. Right? So, there's your three clues. Which, which one it? it won't catch on. Well, who'd want to eat that? You know what I mean? It's like a, a Mac burger or whatever. Mac, Mac chicken. McFly. <laughs> Lloyd Cole, Impossible Girl, on XFM 104.9. Wow. Rick, I'm just reading an email we've had, and it is indeed true. Scores of naked cyclists will be wheeling around London today in a mass protest against oil dependency. The World Naked Bike Ride will see the arresting sight of up to 200 daring riders bearing all in their cycle past some of the capital's most famous landmarks. Have they got to wear an helmet? <laughs> are, are they against wearing an helmet? Well, I don't- I, I, I think they're trying to, trying to make a statement, I would imagine, I don't know. Well, they don't have to wear a helmet. It's not law to wear a helmet on a bike, is it? Oh, it's for your own safety. It's sensible. You're right. Yeah. Well, it's also sensible to just pop some pants on. <laughs> <laughs> pop some pants on. Are you going to be, you gonna be that, popping down there and cheering them on? I'm not. I'm not going anywhere near it. What? What are they going against? What's the problem that's going on? Um, oil dependency. I think you know. Generally, we're consuming too much oil, aren't we, in the world? And it's going to run out one day. And we've not talking got any alternatives. Uh, talking of um, uh, campaigns and uh, things and that. Um, did you see? Uh, um, Sir Bob on um, Jonathan Ross last night. Sir Bob Geldof. Sir Bob Geldof. Yeah. Uh, um, are you going to walk to uh, Edinburgh or sail to France, Carl? What, what do you think of all this? The G8. Uh, I think it's good that you know he's uh, he's doing some stuff for the world and what have you, but I probably won't won't bother. No. Having a walk. What do you make of all this? All this campaigning. You know, he's dedicated his life to this now, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean. It's interesting. I was watching him last night, and I uh, respect the man. I mean, he used to work here, didn't he? Did some shows and that. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's all right that he, that he can do it, but I assume that's not why you respect him. I assume you respect him because he's trying to save a nation, as opposed to he used to work in XFM for a while. 
Yeah, I know, but I'm just, I'm just saying is, uh, it's, it's good that he's, he's given up a lot of his time to, you know, try and save the world and that, but, you know, there's a bit of me that's kind of like, you know, is he wasting his time a bit? Right, what, what do you mean wasting his time? Well, he's, he tried it before and- No, no, wait, 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 wait. What he's trying to say is that the G8 are the, the uh, I think the seven most, uh, rich, wealthy nations in the world and Russia, and they get together and they can, they can wipe out the, the third world debt. Mm. I.e. They, they owe us billions and billions of pounds, they can't afford to pay it back. So he's gonna say this, let's wipe the slate clean and pledge, I think, a lot more aid and stuff to them, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So what do you think of that? But, won't, won't they just do it again? <laughs> right, what's you thinking? No, I just I mean- knew, I, I, I knew I had a little diamond in the rough here. <laughs> I mean, obviously, yeah, you know, I, I admit, I brought this up because I really wanted to know what, what Carl thought of it. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I have ulterior motives. It wasn't just for awareness for, for the, for the very worthy cause. It was because I know- look at him looking at me. Look at him, he looks at me like a cat. Honestly, it's like, there's nothing behind those eyes. Right, what do you mean? They're, just, they gonna, they're just gonna run up the debt again, you think? Well, what I mean is, right, when I was a kid, Right, and I wanted to go to the arcade. I'd borrow a quid off me mum, right, and she'd say, don't come back asking for more and what have you. But I'd, I'd have a go on a pinball machine or whatever, <coughs> game on a fruity, and then go back and she'd go, uh, go, can I have some more money? And she goes, I gave you a quid before. And I go, I know, but I'm on holiday. And she goes, there you go then. And then I'd go off and do the same thing. I didn't go, no, I wasted the last one, I'm gonna pop this in the bank. Right. Uh, so, so you think that's what's gonna happen with- That's with, a, with that's the a the nice, nice metaphor. So what do you think happening there is the Africans are, uh, are nice blowing it down the arcade. <laughs> Instead of putting it towards a fishing rod, they're blowing it down the arcade. They're trying to, they are trying, I'm trying to win a watch. <laughs> Look, I've got a hundred goals. I think this thing is dodgy. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to win a fluffy toy. I just That's what Bob's, yeah, Bob's saying, you're never gonna get the Snoopy. You're never gonna get the Snoopy. It's always gonna fall out of the little claw before rigged. it gets to the top. The claw top. is not <laughs> strong enough. Yeah. Do not waste the- no, oh, no, Midge. <laughs> Midge, Midge. 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 write another song, mate, they've blown it down the arcade. <laughs> Brilliant. So no, that's your genuine logic, is it? Well, I just don't know, uh, I d if, if they put me in charge of it, I don't know what I'd do. I, I just think it's a- it's a- Could I just say that will never happen? No. Could I just say to London- Yeah. And anyone listening Sleep on Sleep easy. Sarah, yeah, don't worry, Carl is not gonna be put in charge of G8. It's not gonna be him, Blair, <laughs> Chirac. <laughs> That would be Brilliant. a joy if it were. That would be amazing. But anyway, so let's assume for what, in one, some alternate universe you are in charge. What would you do? Monkeys, obviously, it's like Planet of the Apes. <laughs> What's, uh, what, what are you, what are you gonna do? You're, you're the only, you know, only person with opposable thumbs. <laughs> What's your solution? Uh, we've done a lot of it, haven't we? We've sent, yeah. you know, money out there, we've sent them clothes and that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, have you? It's gone. You say we, have you sent- I've done, I've done loads of charity. Go on. No, loads, I've done, done loads of stuff. Go on. Oh, what? Oh, I give stuff to Oxfam. Yeah? Uh, what, stuff you don't want anymore? Yeah, junk, you mean. Well, yeah, but it's, it'll be alright for them. I mean, I said to you the other day, like, when they collect clothes for over there, I don't know, none of my stuff's gonna fit them well. It's tricky though, I seem to be surrounded by people like that. Remember that film, that slither, sliver or something? Okay, right. When, when they've got video cameras. Yeah. I'm just looking onto everybody's world and just seeing what people are getting up to. There's nothing wrong with that. Brilliant. That's why I like washing up. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about famous mantras and sayings and things. Yeah. Never has a mank said so much to so many that means so little. Brilliant. So you can have that on your uh, headstone. Rupert. Your little round headstone. <laughs> <laughs> Rupert's in the Isle of Man, he says, I don't know if you knew this, Carl, but apparently octopuses' testicles are located in their heads. Yeah. But then, to me, that isn't that, that amazing, because at the end of the day, an octopus, really, all it is is an head. <laughs> <laughs> so everything it's got has to be it in the head. It has to be in the head. It looked daft if they dangled down below. <laughs> right. So what, all it is is, I mean, there's a lot Hang of on, facts. It, it looked daft if they dangled down below. There's, <laughs> I'm wondering if that could almost be the B-side to, uh, B -side I could eat to a knob at night. I could eat a knob at night. James Round says, Carl, if you could be anyone in the world, who would it be? Uh, dead or alive. Why would you choose to be a dead person? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but sometimes, like, there's people who, who are now, now dead, but everybody raves about them. What I mean is, 
if... Oh, just answer the question. Who would you be and why? Is someone you no, admire no, no. or you think had a good life? Just well, answer the but question. But what I mean is it's good to be remembered, like Winston Churchill is remembered yeah. as being a decent bloke, but I wouldn't want the asshole like he has. So I don't want to live his life. Right. But it's good to be... You'd like to be Winston Churchill, but you'd like to have a paper round <laughs> instead of... Uh, 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 Saving the world. Yeah. Well, Th that's that's what I mean. But is he saying who would I want to? Whose job would oh. I want to take on? It's not that complicated. The question is this: If he could be anyone in the world, who would Carl be? That's the question. That's all the information I've got. <sighs> a lot of responsibility on a lot of jobs, isn't they? So, <sighs> some of the names flowing through your head now. Um, I was thinking um, Bruce Willis. <laughs> <laughs> I never expected that. I never expected that! He, 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 so, when he, what, so his responsibility in your mind is what? Saving uh, people who are trapped in a building with terrorists? Well, yeah, may, maybe, you know, his, his worries are different worries. With, you know, people who have a lot of money come other worries. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So Bruce Willis, he's always going on these marches, isn't he, saying stop war and all that. Okay, mainly no. because he's got, you know, he's got more more to lose if there's a war, he's got loads of houses, one of them's gonna get damaged. <laughs> Whereas if you're poor, you've got the one house, if there's a war, it's like, oh, just end it all for me then, I'm sick of it anyway. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Sure. So with, Whereas with, Bruce, yeah. With, with, with successful <laughs> life and happy life, there's more for you to lose, is what I'm saying. Right. Like, at the moment, because I've, I've, I've finished a job that's, uh, that I've been at for ten years, right? I've finished working there, so suddenly I've got me, me timetable's a bit out, and I haven't got enough of a routine, and I, I'm a man who likes to know what I'm doing. Right? Yeah. So now, suddenly... Five I'll, until seven, washing up, with no <laughs> thumbs. I, I like... I've sort of turned into, like, an old person, <laughs> where the little jobs that you shouldn't enjoy are now the main event. So but like, hold on, how old are you? You're 31, aren't you? 32. 32, and you're pottering around, <laughs> not knowing what to do with yourself. Well, like, yesterday... Suzanne Shoes needed uh, to go to the cobblers, right? <laughs> I haven't heard the word cobblers. I didn't even know cobblers still existed. <laughs> I only ever see that in Christmas films made by Disney. Well, I had to go and do that, and that suddenly. Because last time, last time you were going to the toffee shop, <laughs> yeah! and then you went to the cobblers. Next week it's the candlestick maker. <laughs> But all, all I mean is, that suddenly is a nice little day out. I'm sort of putting my coat on, going, right, I'll go and, go and see the cobbler now yeah. and go and have a chat. Tell me about the cobbler. You didn't come back with three magic beans, did you? <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the cobbler's, cobbler's all right. He's, you know, he's doing, you know, he's fixing cobbling. shoes and that. He's cobbling, um, he's cobbling all day. Have I told you about, uh, my Uncle Alf, who was a cobbler? No. I'm sure I told you about him. He's, he's the one who, um, he lived in, like, a, a bed set and he had two tellies. He had, he had like one that that the sound didn't work on, oh, and right. one that the picture didn't. But both together, it worked. <laughs> oh, right, okay. So as long as he was watching the right, the same channel on both, sound came out of one telly, and he'd watch the picture on the other. Brilliant. And he slept in like a, a rubber dinghy, <laughs> right? <laughs> but but he was. He Whoa! Was, you can't just let that slide. Why did he sleep in a rubber dinghy? It's he, he just like boats and stuff, and uh, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> yeah. I like boats, but they're better on the water. Beds are better to sleep on. Boats are better to sail on. Well, he just he just had it in there. It's a bed set. It was really tight space. Boat set. He's got this. He's got it's this. He's moved into uh, a dinghy set. He's got this dinghy, so he's thinking, well, rather than it getting in the way, I might as well use it. Yeah. Right? But he was a he was a cobbler, <laughs> and he he used to like repair like my shoes and that, right? Yeah. But he, he'd always sort of overdo them, right? <laughs> so, what do you mean? Like. Um, <laughs> Fancy. Do you know, like, Pimp My Ride on MTV? Yeah. Because he does up shoes, he'd go mental on them. What do you mean? There was a the stereo, yeah. Well, no, there was it, horns. It, it, it's like... Na, 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 na. Here comes Stripes, though. Yeah, like... yeah. Here comes Mr Pilkerton, he's yeah. got the fastest shoes in the land. No, he just makes shoes that would last forever, so instead of putting, like, one sole on, he'd put about five on. So you, it looked like one of them built-up shoes. <laughs> That you never see. It just put loads of stuff on. They'd last forever. But they did. But they look like I, orthopedic I was, shoes. Yeah, yeah. It just like, they, suddenly I, I was like six foot seven. <laughs> whenever he'd sort of sorted my shoes out. But he's, he's a cobbler and, you know, it's work that's, that's always, always there for you, isn't it? So, I suppose so. So you went out with, to, 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 to take uh, Suzanne's shoes to the cobbler? Yeah, so that's it. Yeah, so I just took them to the cobblers and that. And that, that was a, like a nice little job for the day. Um, I got a leaflet through the door saying, you know, if you want to walk a dog, 
you know, the the rates are good. I don't know what they what they pay in that. And I thought if I do that and get a paper round, two in one. Sorry, you just went from a job, right, where you were the head of production at a radio station. Dare I say it on. I, I, can I discuss your... Uh, well, it was an alright wage, yeah. It was very good. But I wasn't happy, so it's pointless. No, I know that, but to go from the head of a department on a, a lot of money to walking dogs and doing a paper round, I, I don't know. No, I, but it's about being happy, isn't it? I know, well, that's, that's commendable if that's true, but... It, okay. And that right. makes you happier? Well, I haven't, I haven't walked the dog yet, but I'm just saying if I do... I mean, I'm not taking it if it's raining. I'm just thinking, if it's a nice sunny day and I fancy a potter, I'll I'll go round to her and say, "Well, how much are you paying?" I'll take take the dog a walk. And sure. Stuff. But I, I can't believe some of the words that have cropped up: potter, cobblers, toffee shop. It it it's uh, it's very very strange. Do you live in Narnia? <laughs> uh, a lot of people are sort of emailing in sort of brainy stuff. Brilliant. And getting a lot of stuff about uh, philosophy. Oh yeah. And all that. Um, Descartes is, that's another one that's mentioned on an email. Descartes, yeah. the French philosopher. Yeah. What was, what's, the, what's your question? Well, he, he sort of cropped up on an email, someone said, uh, what do you think of, of him? And I was like, oh, I don't know. He, um, uh, famously, he, he pondered his, his own existence, uh, cogito ergo sum, I think therefore I am. He was thinking about that, he was thinking, how do I know all this is true, everything around me? And he thought, uh, well, I can see it, and I can smell it, and I can hear it. And he went, oh, yeah, my senses can be fooled. I could be dreaming. But if I'm dreaming, then at least I'm alive. At least I have some sort of consciousness. So if I'm even thinking about anything, uh, you know, I am, I exist. I think, therefore, I am. Cogito ergo sum. But we don't need to know the Latin bit. Why is everyone always going back to Latin? It was ages ago. <laughs> Why is that language always been? And w were Latin people always in a rush? Because they seem to be like words for full sentences. Why couldn't they just set at the time and say what they want to say? <laughs> and it's just like, <laughs> what, what was the rush? I love to teach Latin. What about Plato? Right, Greek. Right now, would you say he's he's a bright bloke? Yes, I would. I'd say he's a very very bright bloke. Right, let me tell you this. <laughs> right, if he's that bright, you know he got killed. No. Got hit on the head by an egg. <laughs> Well, he's right. not, well, he's well, not so clever then, is he? That's what I'm saying. Boo. What's the story with the egg? He was on holiday or something, right? And... <laughs> he was on holiday. In Greece, probably. He was, at, he was having a walk about and a bird was flying over the sort of... This bird beach. was what? A great orc? What, what, so, what size bird killed him with his it was, egg? It was a big one, yeah. Was it? And, and the way they used to crack... Well, an ostrich on a hang glider. The way they used to crack the eggs open to let the kids out, they used to drop them on rocks. <laughs> what bird is this? Dropping its egg to let the kids out? You're a maniac! You are a maniac! And Plato oh. had a little bald head. Right. So from the top, the bird's there looking down, and it goes, oh, there's, there's a little rock, I'll drop the egg. Hit him on the head. Killed him. Now, this is what I was saying before about... I mean, what I'm letting too much go now, because I'm so desensitised to his nonsense, I let him go, the bird saw Plato and said, there's a rock down there. Yeah. Well, if he's dropping, if these birds are killing people with bald heads, you've got to be terrified. So, but listen, this is what I'm saying though, right? Before about knowledge and that, how, how knowledge is, is hassle or success is That's hassle. That's that, I, now, th I think that was Newton. <laughs> Knowledge is hassle. Now, what, what, but why, why is, is Plato's intelligence got anything to do with the fact that this bird dropped it because, an egg on his head? Because he was intelligent and he's probably earning a nice few quid yeah. by giving out whatever messages he gave out. Yeah. He could afford to go on holiday to exotic places. If he was working in a factory, <laughs> he wouldn't have been on this beach with big birds dropping eggs, <laughs> is what I'm saying. So, in a way, it backfired. His knowledge killed him. And that, I think, was Kierkegaard, his knowledge killed him. He, he shouldn't have been on the beach. He was only there having a break or whatever from doing what he does. <laughs> it wouldn't have happened if he wasn't on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> you know, talking about um, your parents listening, Carl it was in Heat this week, and uh, they mentioned that he does this thing on Sky. What is it? Uh, it was this thing with Richard Bacon, some programme about watching telly, and you yeah. just talk about what you're watching, mm -hmm. and that. 
And he was annoyed because he said because his parents are there and so he's not doing it. He's not going to turn up because they he mentioned it in heat. And so his parents might watch. Yeah. Why no, are you I worried about that? I don't like him watching stuff, do I? I told you it dates back to when I did Little Donkey at school. Sure. I don't want people watching me. <laughs> was that just <laughs> renew us on Little Donkey? What happened? It was just you know I was there to play the drums and that uh, in We Three Kings. Mm -hmm. uh, I was loving it, you know. I got a bit carried away. How old were you? About thirteen. Right. Yeah, really? Probably. Yeah. About ten, no, about ten probably. Yeah. yeah. Six. Um, oh, between six and Where old were you? What school were you at? Uh, <laughs> okay, you were <laughs> playing Little yeah. Donkey. So, yeah. and, uh, no, 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 no. No, you but it was one of them schools where everyone sort of was in the same one. Do you know what I mean? Oh, a Manchester school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just what the one classroom. Mean? Well, it's like you- What, sweeping chimneys in the day and then uh, one hour of learning? <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? What school were you at? Was it infant, junior or secondary? I didn't really do that. It was what, one way- What do you mean? Do you that? did that? They still have to abide by the laws of the land in Manchester. No, but it was a, it was a lot more like- like you had infants, but yeah. you also had like the older lot. There's kids there who- when you're in the younger year and that, you'd see kids and talk, you go- is Talk English and use terms that people do when they're, they're talking about schooling. I don't even want to talk about this. No, how old were you? What, what, oh. I'm thinking, I'm guessing maybe six or seven or eight. So you went from thirteen <laughs> to six? Yeah, but like I say, it's hard to remember because- <laughs> Imagine if you were giving evidence <laughs> in a trial. Yeah, 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 yeah. How old were you? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know, I can't really narrow it down other than seven years either way. You know, theoretically, yeah. he could get called up for jury service. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. White stripes. Hardest button to button on XFM. That's a frightening thought that you came up with before the break. That Carl, Carl, jury service. Carl could be responsible for yeah. someone's rest of their life. Yeah. Because jury service, that applies to anyone. Anyone could get sent the form. You, I think you're obliged to go unless you have a really decent reason not to. Imagine if it was a really, really important trial. Well, what annoys me is that isn't it supposed to be you're tried by 12 good of men your and peers? True. 12 good, good, good men, men and, and true. true. Yeah. Good men and true. But, and women, of course. The only days. thing I can hope is that the defence attorney would wheedle out Carl <laughs> at an early stage. Oh yeah, objection. I object. Yeah. Why? I object. Have you heard of something called rock busters? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, sorry, we c you can't just object on that. Um, okay, then what if I tell you my client, standing trial, is a little gay Chinese fella. And here are some of the tapes. <laughs> yeah. From XFM. My what do you do? He's prejudiced. So how does it work then? How does what work? What do you mean? What you do just you get mean? called up and you have to do- you have to do jury service unless you've got a very good reason. And it's not, I normally have Mondays off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you wouldn't like oh, that. Oh, yeah, or you, you have to get there at I've nine o'clock. I've got to prepare monkey news. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you couldn't stand it. Just wouldn't do it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't. What would you say? Say, oh, don't, don't get me involved. Because I got involved once. <laughs> don't get me involved! No. What do you mean you got involved once? Well, with the- Police and that when I lived in Manchester I saw a bit of car crime going on. Right. And I got involved. Hassle. I'm telling you. How did you get involved? You phoned the police? Yeah. Yeah. Because Snitch. I thought, well, I know, <laughs> well that's just it, but I thought I'd hope somebody Grass. did it with my. Well. Yeah. So, uh, and it was just a hassle. Loads of phone calls. Canary. Having to stand on a balcony of this, you know, tower block that I lived in. Police shouting up at me. I'm stood there with my underpants on. Right. And, and what it was, a car had been robbed, right? Mm -hmm. So I call up this. They the call up the, uh, the police and that, yeah. right? Said, right, listen, um, car's being robbed. And they said, where is it? I said, I don't know, just across the road from where I live, right? So I tell them where I live. And where go, do you live? How old are you? 13? So she's, she's asking loads of questions and that. I'm saying, mm. look, whilst you're asking all this, they're actually getting away, so, you know, we'll leave it. And she's like, no, uh, we'll track it down, blah, blah, blah. So I said, well, look, I work nights. What could you see? You could see some could lads, see some lads just pushing, pushing a car. Pushing a car. Yeah. Did, did That's how they steal cars in Manchester, is it? Yeah. Everywhere else in the country they're getting in, they're driving them away. In the south, we, yeah, they drive them away. <laughs> exactly. Usually sort of like, in start Manchester. the engine. You can get away a lot faster. <laughs> what, the, what do the police do? Push their panda car after them. <laughs> exactly. They say, come on lads, don't cheat, don't get in the car. <laughs> exactly. They're just pushing it. It was late at night and that. And oh, okay. You don't want to start the engine. Because you don't want to wake people up. Not when you're nicking cars, because <laughs> you don't. Alright, no, so, no. so when it, I, is it- Late at night? Hold on, they weren't gay. They weren't gay, were they? They what, they what, 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 <laughs> they were out late, really. Come on, Carl, so what happened? So, anyway, so look, don't call me back, I'm going out of bed, <laughs> right? I've got work in a bit. Brilliant. So, um. Let's go, what? So Let's that go. was that, right? Where are you working? Next thing, right, phone's going. Uh, hello, it's the police again. I said, oh, I told you not to call me, 
Right? <laughs> I told so, you you're gonna call me at home. So, um, they said, right, the police are outside, can you go on your balcony? So it's like, oh. So I'm ten stories up, yeah. right? Uh, stood on the balcony with, with, like, my underpants on. Yeah. Right? And the police are saying, where's the car? And I'm saying, I don't know, they've gone down that road now. So I'm trying to point to them. They're shouting up, saying which road and all that. And I just thought, why did they get involved? Yeah. I don't think they found it. No. It was hassle. They, well, the, you know the blokes were pushing it too fast. <laughs> exactly. They were, by, they were in the next street by now, weren't well, they? Well, this is just, don't get involved. Don't get involved. After um, that, that Imagine him being on a, some sort of trial where it's like, uh, some sort of mob affair. Yeah, gangland Ima murder. Imagine him going into the witness protection. <laughs> the police just explaining to him, your new name is Jeffrey Peters. Why can't I be called Bruce Wayne? Well, no. Mr. Pilkerton, listen. Imagine that. Do you know what, the, do you know what witness protection is? Oh, go on. <laughs> Amazing. Look, it's when, supposing you were to give evidence against the Mafia, right, you've done a job for them and they're out to give evidence against them, right? Cause right, it, well if you're gonna do, I mean all I do was a two kids nicking a car. Yeah. Don't start messing with Mafia. No, l listen, of course not, no. But let's imagine, imagine you're in the Mafia and uh, that you got caught doing something, but instead of going to prison for the rest of your life, you said, oh well I can, I can give you Mr. Big, yeah? So I go, okay, give us Mr. Big and we'll let you off, right? So the police go, right, okay. I got handed this leaflet in Soho. <laughs> 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 so you say, okay, well, I'll give you names. They go, right, you get evidence in court, and you go, yeah. They go, right, we'll have to get your way because you'll, you'll be done for. So you give us all the names of Mr. Big, right? We'll give you a, a new identity, a new passport. We'll, we'll get you, let you go and live in Canada for the rest of your life with Suzanne, right? So why, wh why have I got to do all that? Cause they'll because they'll bump you off, won't they? They'll how did you know it was me? Because you, you have to give evidence in court. So they go, oh, Pilkerton squealed. So you've got to change all your life. Yes. Yeah. They've killed someone, yeah? Yeah. But, well look, you just know, no, you're giving them in just to keep you from going to jail. So you don't want to spend the rest of your life in prison because you're involved in some or sorts or whatever. Does, how, how it, the, it doesn't matter, Carl, no, listen. I'm, I'm just, how would the Mafia know that I've said something? Because you say in court, those are the people, that's, he's Mr. Big, he's Mr. So-and-so, he, he ordered the hit. Don't you know anything? It's a lot of messing around though, isn't it? But- So I've no, got to leave this job, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah I think they might try XFM first. I'd have to- What, I'd, I'd have to bin Suzanne, would I? No, no she'd go and live with you. You have to cut off all your ties with your friends and family, though you can't contact them. You've got to leave them behind. Would she have to change her haircut? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> when did the murder happen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, so what would the new identity be that you'd choose? What would you choose for yourself? What name? Probably, uh, uh, I wanted to be called Brett when I was a kid. Okay. Right? Brett so, what? <laughs> Brett Pilkington. Uh, you gotta change your surname, yeah? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. M maybe go X directory. Where would you move to? Uh, probably, uh, probably back up north. No. Well, no. No, no don't do that. Don't do that. Um, I, can I suggest, um, maybe, uh, Brett Hansen? And, and go and live in, in Australia or Canada or something. Well, maybe when they're not operating, maybe, you know, and they just f forget it. You might have to change your identity as well. You might have to grow your hair, well you can't grow your hair, but maybe wear a maybe, wig or a yeah. moustache. What would you do? What would you wear? So, so like an afro or something? Something like that. That yeah. would be brilliant. <laughs> that would be absolutely brilliant. And I've got to do all, all that just because for five minutes I stood in a court thing yes. and said he's the one who did it. Yes. Yeah. Well, why can't... Why can't I just wear the afro and the glasses <laughs> when I'm in the court? <laughs> Say my name's Brett, right? Yeah. Change my voice a bit. He did it, and they go, thanks very much. I go off, I carry on my life. That's I still genius. Come in that here on Saturday. I don't know why they haven't thought that. Of is that is genius. I that, don't know. Discount all the witness protections. Kids. Why don't they do that? Yeah. So they go, well, I'll go to court as Brett Hansen <laughs> yeah. with an afro, and I don't like that. Yeah. Right? And then when I come out, I'm back to Carl Pilkington, <laughs> still talking like that, but yeah. without the afro. <laughs> that is what? perfect. Go You've on. got- why don't you call the FBI and say, oh, listen, I can save you billions <laughs> of dollars a year. You're a genius, Carl. All right. Well done. Or Brett, should I say. Uh, this is an email we've had saying, um, Carl, what do you take by the uh, well-known saying, a stitch in time saves nine. Or oh, a stitch in time saves nine. Yeah. See, uh, it's another one that- I don't- I don't think I've picked up on a lot of these sayings that are being sort of thrown about willy-nilly. Willy-nilly? Uh, willy-nilly. Willy -nilly. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Willy nilly. No, yeah. no, but I, I, again, it's one of them. Like, like last week, I've heard of it, but but I've what does never... willy nilly mean? 
It just sort of means, you know, carefree. That's right, yeah. Okay, so but what good. does a stitch so you, in time so say? So you understood willy nilly. So you used a phrase. Yeah, it sounds I mean, nice, you used right. it. You said it willy nilly. But um, <laughs> you you sort of got the gist of it. So what does a stitch in time saves nine mean? I I, I don't know. You what do you mean know. you don't know? Think about it. A stitch in time saves nine. Is it to do with sewing? Well, yeah, sort of. Uh, so okay, if, it's not that clear. So if you got a, so if you got a jacket, yeah, and the seam starts coming undone. Oh, there's a little bit of seam. I'll leave it. Oh, it's getting worse and right, worse. Right. Soon your sleeve falls off. So, you just need one stitch there, that'll do it. If you do it now, later you'll need nine stitches. And that, of course, uh, is an analogy to other things. But it depends if you're busy at that point, because <laughs> if, you've got, <laughs> if you've got something else that needs doing, that means that isn't being done, because you're messing about putting something out a hole in your coat. Is what I mean. Yeah. You can't always do stuff straight away, so maybe... I don't know. I don't know if there's a, a, a sort of a middle ground where you don't have to do it straight away, but stitching a stitch sometimes time, today, say in fifteen or whatever, meaning yeah. you don't have to do it straight away, but just do it before it gets really bad. Brilliant. Do you think yours is less poetic than than a stitching time saves nine? So yours is. This is what you want it to be a quote, right? Well, well, you could do it now, but if you're doing something else, then uh, you know. Look, what, well, don't do it immediately, but do it soon so it doesn't get really bad. Carl Pilkington. <laughs> no, but it's the same, that's the same way I treat most things in life. It's like, I never go to the doctors unless it's really bad. That is sensible. Bad. That is very good advice. No. That's brilliant advice well, for anyone is, listening. Never go to the doctors. Unless it's really bad. But that's why a lot of people, you know, um, die. Because they don't want to bother the doctor or they're mildly embarrassed or they don't know, um, symptoms, bad symptoms, go to the doctor if, 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 you, if you're not sure about something. Like, you were terrified to go and have your prostate. Still not been. Not doing it. Why not? I wish you wouldn't talk about it, because now Suzanne will listen to this, and she'll go, oh yeah, you haven't been, and start dragging it up again. But why are you worried about a, a little, uh, a, a qualified I doctor? I don't know what they're doing up there. What? They what just pop the... are we in? They... <laughs> what are you talking about? They pop their finger up. That's what I mean, though. Why? Why are they still using the index finger? <laughs> what, what, would you prefer the forefinger or the thumb, would no. you? <laughs> no, what I mean no! is, we've got- Or a thumb on a stick, some kind of thumb on a stick. You, yeah, you, would you prefer it to a be- A mechanical thumb, a, a robot good. thumb. Why isn't it just a little camera? Oh, they well, put the camera up if, if they initially discover something. But just put the camera up straight away. If no, I'm they don't the need visit. to. They pop the finger up, feel that the prostate isn't swollen, wiggle it around a little bit, up your, uh, 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 your back passage. They'd, what I are you just, worried I, about? I don't think they, they need to do are that. Are you embarrassed? Are you embarrassed about being in a room with your trousers around your ankles and a little fellow popping A his... little bit, yeah. Why? And the other thing is, it's not just that, is it? So <laughs> you go in there, they check your heart out and that, which to me is the most important thing, because that's what keeps you going, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Right? You've got to go there. You yeah. sat on the bus, stressing out, thinking, oh. In less than half an hour, I'm gonna have a finger up the arse, right? <laughs> what is the problem? And they go there? in, they check your heart, they probably <laughs> check your testicles and that. What's up with that? They check your testicles, yeah. That's yeah, but it's all building, and you, you've sat there going, oh, soon that'll that'll be happening. Yeah. And that's what puts me off. So if they just came round when you were asleep, <laughs> Suzanne just let them in and goes, he's over there, right? Yeah. And they crept up and went, <laughs> bang. You, you go, what are you doing? That? I just don't understand why they don't teach you how to do it yourself. How can they? <laughs> wow. How can they teach? Imagine you squatting in a corner with one hand on your bollocks and the other finger up the arse going, it seems to be all right. Carl, you don't understand the phrase a stitch in time saves night. I don't think you should be doing any kind of invasive medical research in your own human body. But, but then. Who knows the... what trouble you're going to cause? No, but then at you least. You would get stuck. Yeah. You would get stuck. Susanna would come out, your fist would be up your own arse. <laughs> Harry from Canterbury wants to know whether any of us have ever had any cruel nicknames. Um, he claims that he's uh, quite tall and rather hirsute, and he says he's often called Lurch or Wolfie. Um, he's always thought that Carl looks a bit like Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, no, there's no potato that round, but um, I suppose you could fashion a potato to be that round. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we could, if anyone can uh, carve a potato into the roundest head ever, <laughs> yeah. pop a couple of eyes on it. Make um, it look as much like Carl as possible. Exactly. But yeah, did any nicknames? Did you ever have a nickname, uh, Rick? No, mine was boring. I didn't have any. It was just around the name, like Jerv or something like that. No, I didn't have nicknames. I always wanted a nickname. Um, I just thought it was quite cool for some reason. Particularly because gangsters always seem to have nicknames. Lefty. You know, fingers. Yeah. Lefty, yeah. Uh, Scarface. Yeah. And so I, I decided that I thought, because no one was giving me a nickname at school, it was kind of annoying, or certainly not to my face, yeah. that I decided to just come up with one. 
Yeah. And so I went, I remember I was at lunch once, and I just said to my mate Phil. How old were you? Uh, 12, 13. Brilliant. I just said to him, uh, Phil, um, don't know if you know, mate, but um, people aren't calling me Steve anymore. Everyone's, everyone's calling me Spud now. Now, I don't know why I thought Spud, it's weird we should talk about Mr. Potato Head. I don't know why I thought Spud was a, was a cool nickname. I just sort of, I think it's a grown-up it, name though, isn't it? And it's also because I think it sounded like, uh, it was probably either something that you'd find in one of those kids' books, like the Famous Five, or like the Bash Street Kids, they'd be Spud. And I always imagine with Spud, he's not the leader of the gang, but he's a reliable member. I think you know Spud I mean? is the biggest lorry driver in one yeah. particular sort of uh, car park. Yeah. And here comes Spud. Yeah. And he gets out, alright boys. And he's big and massive and it, Spud can eat two breakfasts. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But I just, in my mind it was, yeah, that I would be one day part of a gang and it's, I'm Pinky, this is Joe Joe and the tall guy Spud. And you know, catch on, never really it? caught. And he just went, oh yeah, right. And no one started, and I was hoping he'd go, you know, everyone's calling Steve Spud. Yeah. But of course- Hey Spud, the first time I said Spud, and you go, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You'd be really proud, wouldn't you? No. <laughs> Did you have a nickname? Um, not, not. Really, I mean, there was a lot of people on the estate that I grew up on. You know, nicknames are, are big things on estates and that. Yeah. Um, a lot of my dad's mates, right? What what their nicknames did was tell you about them. Do you know how I said about the Elephant Man's a good name? Yeah. Because, like, you know what you're going to get. If someone said, Elephant Man's popping around in a bit, it wouldn't <laughs> be a shock when he walked in. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so so it, was, it worked in that sort of, uh, sort of thing, you know. So there was, uh, there was John the Screw, right? John the Screw? Yeah. Whether he had sex a lot or he worked in a prison? No, he had a DIY shop. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you had him, right? right? There was, uh, <laughs> there was Fred the Veg. Yeah. Which is... Yeah. I assume song. it's because he was at the same IQ as you. Yeah. Or, or, or he was in a coma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. There was, there was, uh, there was my uncle, Tattoo Stan. Oh, right. right. Yeah. He had, he had, like, loads of tattoos that he'd just done himself. Oh my right. God! The the problem <laughs> was because he did his tattoos himself. Oof. The ones on his left arm were really good because <laughs> <laughs> he was right-handed. On his right arm, rubbish. Right? <laughs> um, so so there was him. <laughs> oh, great! And there was um, Jimmy the Hat. Jimmy who, the Hat. Yeah. Did and he that, always wear a hat? No, he didn't. That that's that was the point there. That he, he never wore a hat. That's amazing. Brilliant. How can you pick up on someone never wearing a hat? How would you ever notice? I'll tell you what, I've noticed something about Jimmy. What? Go on. He doesn't wear a hat. <laughs> why, why was he not called Jimmy the Parrot? Because he, he never carries a parrot. <laughs> no, uh, well, uh, that's just the way, I mean, that's how they work, isn't it? I mean, here that, here that, comes Jimmy Three Legs. Why'd you call him that? He hasn't got three legs. I didn't really have one apart from, um, like, I had a CB. You know, like when you'd go on a CB radio and have a chat to people. Oh, this was a craze in the, uh, was it late 70s, early 80s? Early 80s. And, uh, it was just short band radio, wasn't it? Everyone had these little handsets and they'd speak to each other in the sort of local area. Yeah, it was mainly, I think it started off with like Lorry drivers, isn't it? Yeah, truckers, yeah, because there was that, that thing from like about 1970... Convoy. Was, convoy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so I had one of them and the handle, I had, I had two handle different Handle means your nickname, your yeah, name. Yeah, there's loads of code, code stuff. Yeah. Um, I had, I had a couple, I had, um, there was Pilkey O one. Because right. like I say, there's a lot of Pilkingtons and that. In Manchester, so if someone's Pilkey O2, it's open. Do you know what I mean? They can have it. And then, um. <laughs> like, it's, like, it's people scrabbling. Oh, I want yeah. Pil <laughs> a Pilkey O1. Well. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, because I did boxing and that. Well, you did it once. <laughs> yeah. I'd, uh, I'd box a boy. Because I thought that that's quite a good image as well. That's kind of like people going, oh, don't mess with him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If he asks what your handle is, tell him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's box a boy and that. Yeah. So. Just had them two, and I used to just go on there and. Pointless. What is the point of this? Well, you just you just meet people, don't you? And you so don't meet people. You say, "What's your handle?" You go, "Box boy." What's yours? Uh, uh, rubber duck. All right. Cheers. No, it's but ridiculous. then but then you'll say like, then you go, "Oh, uh, what's your twenty? What's that mean? That's where are you? Well, won't you say where are you? Because just in case there's someone who's listening in who who you know you hear about this all the time, don't you? People listening, jotting stuff down. 
Oh, right. So, just in case someone in the world doesn't know what handle means, they're, they're out of the loop. They're yeah. out of the loop. It's hardly the, it's not a difficult code to crack, is it, yeah. if you're trying to track someone? It's hardly the head of the mafia talking to each other because the FBI are on the wire. It's ridiculous. Like, I go, oh, you keep saying that, what's your handle, and they come back with something else. Like, <laughs> I can't work out what's going on. No, it's like, it's like anything, isn't it? That's what codes, that's what, you know, that's what codes are all about, isn't it? You, Set them up and that. Go on and tell me, tell me the code then. Reveal it long last to the world what yeah. these codes are. Right, so yeah. what's your 20? Where oh, are you? This is better than the Enigma. Yeah. Right, now here we go. Right. How many candles are you burning? Uh, does that mean how big's your car or something like that? Horsepower or something? See? No, that's, that's oh, how old Oh, what are you? time is it? No, how old are you? What, how old are you? Okay. Right. right. Uh, how many candles are you burning, of course? Yeah. So what's the, what's the answer come back? You go, uh... I'm 15. 14. Brilliant. That code, <laughs> that code, it, there's no one gonna work that out. I wish you'd have kept a diary of this, cos this has been fascinating. <laughs> now and again, someone will come in and go, uh, side on, right? What's that mean? And that means, like, there's someone sat there listening into this Ooh. chat and going, this sounds interesting. Yeah, no, it does Unlikely. <laughs> yeah. And they, they want to join in, so they sort of go, side on, you go, side on, bring it in, right? And they go, alright. <laughs> How many candles are you burning? <laughs> yeah. What's your that, 20? That's the round again. Yeah. See you later. What's your 20? How many <laughs> yeah. candles are you burning? Oh. And, I mean, it seems to me that what you should have done is make made a note the first time, so that when you then speak to them again, you don't need to ask them those questions. <laughs> Can I just confirm that you're burning 15? A retro cut there, Thin Lizzy. <laughs> Don't believe a word. On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Bubba doo boo, <laughs> who's that over there? <laughs> it's Carly Pilk Boys. <laughs> you right, oh, Carl? That's How you doing? Yeah, I'm alright, yeah. Yeah, come on, yeah. up, 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 bigger bag doo Up, 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 yeah? Project, project, there's people out there wanting to, you know, cheer up their Saturday afternoon. We're the boys for it, yeah? yeah. We're like quick, quick fitters. <laughs> Yeah. Come on. All right, Carl? Yeah, yeah. Come on! Come I'm on! Right, I'm all right, I'm up for it. That's it, this is the height of excitement. <laughs> this is it, is it? That's this how is you train when you're a This is you high. off your head, is it? High on life. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> what did Suzanne say about you saying about a big ass? Uh, Go on. She heard about it. Should we recap yeah. what happened last week? Well, the week before, he, he uh, said that um, her haircut looked like Dave Hill from Slade. <laughs> she didn't like that. So, that's what I said, she was a bit grumpy, he went, yeah, I didn't mention her fat ass. <laughs> Still thinking that she, she would never hear about this. Yeah. What happened when you went home? Um, she heard about that off a mate. Yeah. And we sorted it out. Didn't have to buy her anything. I just, just sort of said, come on, you know, what the show's about and that. Stop yeah. moaning. Yeah. Right. That was alright until about Thursday, when I was reading about, uh, do you know, like they say, there's, there's, like, two worlds and that, and, uh, Whatever I'm doing now here, there's another one of me doing the same. Yeah. But, well, no, he's probably taking some time off. <laughs> he's probably having a week off. Yeah. But, Go on. but I was just talking about that, and she was saying, nah, that, that doesn't happen. And I sort of said, well, they definitely won't have a haircut like yours. <laughs> right? Then and again. That, that sort of started the, yeah. the argument again. It's almost like you haven't learned your lesson. Also, it's like you're talking about it again on air almost. <laughs> In a way, <laughs> so it makes clear again. It's well, very short sure learning again, curve. Sure you, know, again. you know, Carl, if there was a, uh, if I cut a hole in a in a box and you knew there was an orange in there, right, and you put your hand in, would you be stuck there trying to get that orange out? Do you think, or would you just like let it go and sort of tip it upside down to get it out? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think that answers your question. <laughs> Is that a cardboard box on your hand? <laughs> So is there any other things you want to criticise Suzanne for while we're on air? Anything else? Anything that's been niggling that you thought you should get off your chest? Yeah. The hair, the arse. No. Leave no? it. Everything leave else it. Yeah, leave, leave it. Leave it. I think so. Okay. Uh, that's good. I good. think leave it. Well done. Now can we just check what uh, other big car features have we got today? We got uh, Monkey News. Got Monkey News that's coming on. Yeah. yeah. We got a bit of uh, got Rockbusters. Uh -huh. And uh, the film thing. That, uh, <laughs> Still not got a name. <laughs> the yeah. film thing. Just, just me and a film and that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, brilliant. This week we're digging out the old, uh, the one when I'm in one floor of the cuckoo's nest. Right. So you're going to make Jack Nicholson. Nicholson. Brilliant film. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant film. It was my favourite film until I saw Godfather. It's better than that. Well, you know, yeah. Some would say that. Yeah. No, it is. The, the storyline's more interesting. Than I that, didn't know there was an actual answer. I didn't. <laughs> so, sorry. It's what's best. One floor of the cookie. Is it? Yes, okay. Oh, oh, right. Okay. Where's, where's Godfather? Because I want to know, because I don't embarrass myself. 
Or is uh, it my fourth favourite film or something, or? Probably about <laughs> fifth. In my fifth favourite film, is it? Brilliant. Talking of lists. I suppose really? I like Kez and the Elephant Man, do I? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> lists, yeah. Rick. I don't know if you saw the paper. I think it's on TV this evening. It's, uh, as voted for by viewers of VH1, yeah. the music channel. Yeah. And they've basically come up with a list of the greatest pop culture icons, uh, ever. Uh, there's a hundred. Where's central. Elvis? So Elvis, is, for instance, is number three. Jimmy Dean in there? James Dean is in there. I think he's a bit lower. Uh, let me see. He's, uh, number 22. 22. We got David Beckham at number one. Oh, well, okay. Well, then, so, Robbie Williams is in there, so, so it's, it's British bias. Yeah, Robbie Williams is number nine. He's just, uh, just a below ABBA. Oh, number okay. Eight. But, mm -hmm. um, interestingly, this is of interest to you, I think, number 66. Yeah. The Office. That's all right. Well, uh, it is, Rick. It's nice that the show is in there and that. Yeah. That's a very flattering thing. I'll tell you what cheapens it. I'll tell you what undermines it. Yeah. The things that are lower in the list than the show. Oh, God. So we've beaten... Well, uh, go I'll give, give me a little test. Yeah. Higher or lower? Do you think this is higher, near the top of most important pop culture icons or lower than ours? Okay, I'm going to give you, uh, Superman. Well, uh, international, been around since the 30s, one of mm -hmm. the biggest icons on the planet. Mm -hmm. I'll say higher. Lower. But, yeah. Ludicrous. <laughs> okay. Do you think higher so. or lower? <laughs> Neil Armstrong, the first man <laughs> on the moon. <laughs> this guy's been to the moon. <laughs> well, I'd say, uh, I'd say lower then. Lower? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I'm, is, is that saying the people behind the rocket or just him? <laughs> because he just sat in it, didn't he? He just sat there, yeah, he didn't do anything. But, no, but it's but the it's icon. What he's it's symbolic not, of. It's, yeah, it's not what, how much work went into it. Alright. Uh, a few others. What about things like Coca Cola? Oh, no, they don't really count. It tends to be. Uh, oh, so it's not. They don't feature. I mean, Mickey Mouse is in there. Um, mm. what do you make. What do you reckon, Tom Cruise, higher or lower? Tom Cruise is the number one box office movie star in the world. <laughs> well, presumably lower. He's then. lower. He's number 81. <laughs> yeah. Just about scraped in there. And it really is a list drawn up by people who've just sat at home and looked along their video and book collection. Yeah. Um, office, well, yeah, that's good. Well, I think it is a reflection of that, but it's, it's always the same that they, um, you do an HMV poll and it's pet sounds. Uh, Revolver, Let's Get It On, yeah. Robbie Williams, Life Through a Lens. <laughs> exactly. Because it's, it's, you know, it's the people that vote, it's a reflection of, like, those massive, you yeah. know, what's big at the moment. I was the most powerful man in comedy, let's not forget. Yes. One year ago. Yeah. Wonder where I'll be this year. See, if that had been the laziest man in comedy, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you'd have got my vote. <laughs> yeah. Interestingly, though, at number 26, Carl <laughs> Pilkington. <laughs> <laughs> oh, imagine. All possibilities. Badly drawn boy on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and little Carly Pilcoids. <laughs> Rick, um, Susie's emailed. Yeah. She wondered if you could give a massive hello to mm. uh, Hannah and Charlotte and all in the sixth form at Cobthall School. Yeah. Would you, to listen? Would you give them a massive yeah, hello? Yeah, shout out, shout out. Yeah, yeah no massive. Respect, man. Where are they from? Uh, I don't know, I can't quite pronounce it. Cobthall School? Cobthall or? Massive. Yeah. They're probably Cobthall known massive. as. Yeah. yeah. So good luck to Suze and Hans and Charles. When did we, when did we start doing dedications? I feel we should, because I've always felt this is something that's lacking on the show. Interaction with the audience, you know? Interesting only to the one person whose yeah, name is mentioned. Yeah, of course, of course. But that's, yeah. how, that's how proper DJs fill out their time. They don't talk about monkeys and, you know, and all that kind of drivel. Oh. Do you think monkeys are drivel, Carl? Well, well, we'll, we'll still be doing a bit of monkey news. It doesn't yeah, matter how, how much you have a pop at it. It's coming up in a bit. Yeah. Got some good stuff this week. Yeah, I, know, I know it's been a bit dull yeah. last two weeks. Well, know. no, it's not been dull, it's been totally untrue. <laughs> As ever. Bordering what? on the impossible. I mean, monkey dating, saying what tree are we meeting in. Mm, no. You believe that sort of drivel. Mm. So, I mean, oh, oh, God. Jonathan Ross told a story about a chimpanzee once. It was about, <laughs> but it was about how it escaped from the zoo yeah. and it jumped on a bus. Right. Okay. Interesting. Funny. I right? did that one. But it's possible. Is there possibility in that yeah, one but being I did true? That. I did that one. I think you said something like he drove the bus or he was conducting it. Or I think fares. you said he took it to Spain. Hmm. <laughs> Do you see the difference? It's that little stretch of credibility that means it's all shite. How is Jonathan Ross? All right. <laughs> is he? I wonder how long it'll take before his name popped up. 
How is he? How is the old man? Uh, Looking forward to his birthday Monday? Oh dear. Yeah. I don't know if any of the listeners, uh, oh. saw Ricky on Jonathan Ross's TV show last night. Yeah. What? Oh, I mean, man alive. What? Well, that's not an interview. How is that an interview? What? It's not, he wasn't interviewing you, he's like two pals just having a laugh. And if we ha- it was like it was a family do, <laughs> and you just happened to film it and stick it on the telly. <laughs> My friend made a good point, it was like any minute his kids were gonna pop out, sit on that sofa next to you and go, Oh, Uncle Ricky, do, it, do the little dance. <laughs> <laughs> it was unbelievable. I mean, what were you wearing, for a start? <laughs> What's that? Some tatty old jumper like you'd just been doing some artexing and you'd gone pot round with it, we're having a couple of drinks. That's, that was Lambretta. Lambretta. Was it trendy, inside out? Trendy jumper. How, how do you keep that, getting things with the St. George Cross on it? That, what do you mean? I've, that's the only one I've got. You've got, got loads of stuff. T-shirts, jumpers, shoes. No, I've got a union jacket. Um, uh, 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 what's it? A French connection one? But that's one. not the- that's not my Underpants. concern. Underpants! I haven't got any underpants! That's not my concern, no, it's but, just the fact that, I mean, firstly- Yeah. The fact that Ricky, for those of you who don't realise, Ricky is friends with Jonathan Ross. They are friends. Now, they've only known each other, what, a year maybe? About two, yeah. It's less, I think it's less than two. And what worries me is, you're, the friendship's too close. What do you because mean? Because you're, you're over 40. You see, it seems to me that after the age of 25, <laughs> men should not be becoming really close friends with other men. It should be like you've had all your friends, you made them at university at school, and if you were in a way you walk of life uh, and you met someone at a party or a pub, even if you got on, you would not be phoning them every other day, like uh, going to an awards What are you wearing, Jonathan? I've heard this conversation. What are you wearing? I think I might wear this. Is it too formal? Is that going to be too formal? It's not true. It is. That's you're always true. on the phone to him. You're always chatting. I'm just going to pop around. Oh, I'm just going to play some tennis. Yeah, we play tennis. Always hanging out with the guy. And it's, it's to me, it's unhealthy. And this. It's just bled over now onto oh, TV. Okay. Oh, I don't so, want it. Wait whoa, a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, you're there. It's like, I'll tell you what it reminded me of Des O'Connor and Jethro. <laughs> coming on to oh, Perky's live oh, video. Or oh, Tarby and Kenny Lynch. And then at the end of the interview, after yeah. they've been, you know, mutually yeah. backslapping, yeah. He, he gave you a pet. <laughs> Coldplay and In My Place on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant. Hello, Hello there. Hello, lovely to be here. Carl Pilgrim's in there, pressing the buttons. Great to be here. Yeah. How long can you maintain it? How long I'm bored already. Yeah, already bored of doing bored it. Bored already. Every week you start it the same way. Yeah. That was not bad though, you actually grammatically made sense. Which is really? uh, impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks so, very much. A rare treat, indeed, from yeah. Ricky Gervais. Um, some of the, uh, listeners have already worked out, uh, got nothing to say at all. <laughs> sure. Haven't prepared again. <laughs> no. We were, we, we did come in half hour early to prepare, but instead, me and Carl were playing, you had to flick the football into the bin, right. we had five goes each, or the world was gonna end. Okay. And that, that took up. That took up a good twenty-five minutes. Yeah. I liked it when we came back, and then we started just trying to beat each other in the corridor, and I beat him, I scored a goal, he, he was gutted because he thought he, he fancied himself at football, and I beat him. Um, mm. and I was knackered and sweating. Yeah. Um, and, uh, as I walked back to you about five minutes ago, you were looking through the records, you went, and this was lovely, you went, <sighs> Well, we've done the preparation then. Uh, yeah. Like a sarcastic teacher. Yeah. Like a teenager, like an annoyed <laughs> teenager. <laughs> yeah. Whose parents have embarrassed him once again. <laughs> and you beat Carl, did you? Yeah. Because you're not. Yeah. I mean, you're not particularly. I'm not good at football. Well, no. you're not particularly nimble on your feet. Oh, come no, on. No, you're not. Douglas Bardo is um, <laughs> more nimble. I'm all right. I'm you're all not. right. But it, Carl's sort of, I think he's got more skills than me, but he hasn't got the aggression and the sure. weight. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I just yeah. pushed him aside. Yeah, good work. Yeah. Good work. I'm going on holiday. Are you? Yeah, we're not, I'm not here next week. What are you gonna do, Carl? Are you gonna do the best of or something next week, aren't you? Yeah, that's what we've got to sort out. Well, I can't sort it out. I've literally, I've got to go to the airport no, after. No, no, straight after the show you've got to do some links. No, so. I'm not doing any links. I said I wouldn't, so... That's we... what we planned. No, we didn't. I said I'd do some during the show, and then you I could... thought you were joking. I, I, I honestly can't do it today, so we do some during the show. What are you gonna do? Just put the shows that we've done this year? Sorry, guys, uh, I hate to interrupt. This yeah. is the sort of stuff we should have been discussing <laughs> when you were playing football. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Play it. What are you gonna play? Play it. Let's record. have a bit of Foo Fighters. Okay. Let's just discuss this off there. Okay. Foo Fighters there, learning to fly. Steve, I hope the pilot that I get today, flying the plane that I'm going on holiday in, has already learned to fly. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well done. That is dynamite. That's, so, that's a textbook link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, genius. Yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah. Where, where are you going? Where, yeah. what, what's the story? Yeah. Where are you off to? Uh, Sorrento. Where's that? Uh, sort of South Italy. Italy. Yeah. What are you like on holiday? Are you a nightmare? Are you the no. like? Well, I was. Because you're quite. 
but you're quite, I mean, obviously, I, you know, I've often said on the radio before that I, I mean, I'm uh, spending any length of time with you is, is, is one of the most unbearable <laughs> things I've ever had to do. <laughs> I mean, spending a week with you is nightmarish, and sharing any kind of accommodation is, do you know what I mean? No, seriously, I mean, it's like, it's like hell. It's like li <laughs> a living hell. <laughs> It's like having a teenager. Fine. No, just do. It's like having a sort of teenage kid who can can't be entertained by anything. Just chill out. Just yeah, chill you out. just chill out, dude. Just is Max, it? relax. Yeah, Max, relax. Yeah, yeah. sure, sure. And do you? Uh, and so, if you're in somewhere like Italy, like somewhere like that, because that, obviously a very beautiful city mm, and very mm, cultured and stuff. Mm, <laughs> mm, <laughs> so, yeah, mm. is that something that you enjoy? Do you enjoy the culture of that? The, the beautiful architecture, let's say. A hotel's the same anywhere. Because as long as there's <laughs> right. room service and a nice room in porn, it's, no, it's nice weather. Sure. If it's not, I'm annoyed. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I need yeah. to blame someone. And is it true that you go because you go to Italy most years, don't you? Is that because that's the only food you like? I eating? like I like pasta and pizza. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I've I've been to other places. I went to France once, and th you can't explain to them to cook it prop. Just cook <laughs> it properly. I don't want any to cook yeah, it. It's, yeah. There's blood in the middle of that. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, Hungary, there was it was just oh, I went there for a while, and I didn't know I couldn't identify the animals right, they were totally killing involved, for me. Yeah. So, and yeah. I know quite a lot about natural history, sure. and I couldn't identify what was on the plate. Yeah. So I don't. Came on really? Did you ask for a couple of days? No, I just got, I got annoyed, and I well, I, I went to McDonald's. Yeah. Well, that's um, the great thing about McDonald's is they are in most exactly. major cities. No, yeah. but I, you can't I, you can't go wrong with. So pasta if I was with and you on pizza. holiday, and I you know we were we were hanging out or whatever, yeah. um, and I took you to say maybe a, a beautiful cathedral. Is that yeah. something you'd enjoy? I can't quite imagine you actually. Taking oh, the time to well, as long as it, as long as it's not a very long walk, we don't have to stay there more than a couple of minutes. I'd, lo I'd love to look around <laughs> places. Right, so you would yeah. you'd look at the cathedral, yeah. That's taken you know that's that takes people breath you know takes people's breath away. You know, yeah. people travel from around the world to see that. You would, yeah. and how long would you I don't stay know, looking around the world to see it? I think they go somewhere sure. and they go. Well, and we they, might as well look at the cathedral. You can't miss it. They're huge. Yeah. <laughs> and would you and would you uh, would you sort of spend any time looking at that? Would you just sort of soak in the atmosphere for a moment, or you would know, you? I'd look at it and I'd go, "That's brilliant." And then if there was any sort of soaking in, I can do that later when there's nothing to look at. <laughs> right, what there's less to do. Your memory of it later when you're in the bar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure, you can sure. you know, uh, And would you, um, so can, uh, can you be kind of in awe of something like that? Yeah, well, well, if, if it's, it's big, okay. If I, if I go in the cathedral and it's, and it's, I've seen bigger, I go, oh, seen bigger. <laughs> sure. If it's the biggest I've seen, I go, that is huge. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> then let you off. Yeah. Sure, because you are, you're a sort of man who gets bored, and this is true, Carl, you may not be the fluent with this. Ricky Gervais is a man who gets bored drinking a glass of water. It's boring. Because it's not flavoursome enough. No. It's, uh, it's I, not I, got enough flavour. It's, it's absolute bore. Uh, the only, uh, <laughs> Jane's got me onto fizzy water, which at least got something there, right. uh, but I only drink that when I'm sort of dehydrated in the middle of the night. I never, there's no, I never drink a drink of water. No. It's, it is boring. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but that's why you've always got headaches and you're always apparently, yeah. moaning and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's part of another one of the reasons I hate you. Uh, is in it? A, in a, in a, but when I, I don't, when I say hate you, I don't mean I hate you. I didn't mean Do to, you, I, I didn't mean to blur it out that strongly. <laughs> yeah. uh, what I mean is, if I'm spending a lot of time with you, once right, he said, well, we're in the BBC canteen and I was sort of like, and he just put his knife forward and I said, I'll never eat him with you again. I said, what's the matter? He said, you annoy me. You, I hate eating with you. It annoys me. You've got, it looks like a child food. It's just you eat chips and sausage and rubbish. You don't eat, look at you, don't touch your vegetables, you don't drink water. He said you- I- he really got well, annoyed. Well, because you- you- you've got this like- the, this hatred of anything that's good for you. You won't eat any form of salad. You just- Why do I eat salad? Because it's good for you and Lettuce is boring. Lettuce is absolutely boring. Um, uh, cucumber are boring. But, you know? but, yeah, but the thing is, you see, I admit that lettuce and cucumber have not got much flavour, but that's why people will add, say, a lo in Italy, they'll add a lovely dressing. Yeah. Maybe yeah. some olive oil, maybe some balsamic vinegar. Well, you've embarrassed yourself, because the good thing about a nice, mature lump of cheddar cheese <laughs> is you don't have to have any dressing. <laughs> <laughs> Although you add some anyway. I put a little you bit of olive oil in it and maybe some mayonnaise. Maybe but, some uh, French know, dressing. On a Ritz cracker, you don't need it, it's just extra. Sure, sure. Well, good luck. I notice you're wearing the. Is this your travelling gear? You've got the sweatpants and the, yeah. the t shirt, the free t shirt. Yeah. Looking to get an upgrade, are you? Or? I'm, I'm going first class, I'm sure. Mm. Badly drawn boy, spitting in the wind on XFM 104.9. Are Ninja you going to be taking in any of what? the uh, culture in Italy? Is yeah. that something you do? Yeah. The well, opera? Uh, I don't know the about opera. the opera, I've never been to the opera. Though. I do like a, you know, a you bit like of opera. opera. Yeah, not, I wouldn't sit through a whole one, but I mean, I like, I like the songs they take from it for that World Cup one. <laughs> And those two fat birds that they sung in Shawshank Redemption was good. Yes. But, um, I think, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, I haven't gone into it extensively. I haven't studied the art. <laughs> the art of opera. Also, it's in foreign, so you don't really know what's happening. It's in foreign. Yeah. yeah. So you don't really That's know. annoying for you. Yeah, yeah. What about, are you, a, are you a fan of any of the great English operas? <laughs> like, um, The Pirates of Penzance? <laughs> yeah. Gilbert and Sullivan. <laughs> to me, Gilbert and Sullivan were like the probably 
their- their day equivalent of like Richard Stilgo getting together with Tony Slattery. <laughs> and then a hundred years later people go, it's brilliant. It- it is like- they might as well, um, I don't know, make th th any- any episode of Whose Line Is It Anyway right, yeah. into an opera and in two hundred years time they'll be going, that's genius. Yeah. Listen to this one, look, this is Party Quirks. <laughs> Yeah, Amdram Society. So <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah. we're a step. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, when I was when I was in oh. the Pirates of Penzance once in an amateur production, you used to like it was lines anyway. I did. That was although yeah, I did watch scenes. it when it first came on Channel Four about yeah. 15, 20 years ago. But we um, we did the Pirates of Penzance when I was in an amateur dramatic society in Bristol, uh, the Bristol Operatic Society, Light Operatic Society. I don't know why I was involved because I can't sing. My audition. <laughs> I thought this is how desperate they were for blokes. I swear to God, right, I can't sing. You know, who are you? I, yeah, well, all right, calm down. And um, <laughs> I, uh, I went in, and they said, so "What are you going to sing?" I went, uh, "Well, I, I just, I don't, I, I want to surprise you." They said, "Do you want a piano accompaniment?" I said, "No, I don't think so." <laughs> I went to the back. I swear to God, I went to the back of the room, and I just sang. Thumbelina, Thumbelina, <laughs> tiny little thing. Thumbelina, dance. Thumbelina, sing. Thumbelina, what's the difference if you're very small? Cause when your heart is full of love, you're six feet tall. I just did that. And they just looked at me like I was the weirdest <laughs> freak they'd ever had. Immediately put me in the chorus, because that oh. was how desperate they were for blokes. We yeah. stayed, we rehearsed it. I couldn't remember the lyrics. <laughs> Thank God you were doing Thumbelina. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but dear. They couldn't, I couldn't, um, I, you know, I couldn't remember the lyrics. What was it for? It was it Gilbert and Sullivan? It was, it was the Pirates of Penzance. Oh. There weren't enough blokes, right, so that we had to double up. So some of the pirates <laughs> had to double up as the policemen who were chasing the pirates. A little bit problematic in the scene when the policemen and the pirates have a fight. <laughs> that was a little bit tricky. <laughs> and the worst thing, so there's this sequence where like the, these sort of the daughters of the Major General all kind of like, oh beautiful, something like, you know, um, oh beautiful little girls are we, da la 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 la. And the women they had, they must have all been over 40. I mean mm. real kind of oh. toothless crones oh. creeping around in their nighties. Is it the sort of women that buy one of those sort of porcelain dolls? Exactly. From the TV <laughs> yeah. and go, look I've had a baby. It's not real. <laughs> it is a real baby. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna stab you. Yeah. One of those. Exactly. It's the sort of women that you'd see maybe on uh, TV's Bargain Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the kind of contestants you get on there. Those women who, who sort of very in Amdram and they, they think they've clung on to their looks, but they'd oh. have never made it in, in uh, the guy who was playing the, uh, there's a guy who's supposed to be an 18 year old prince, uh, an 18 year old pirate, uh, the Pirate King. He must have been 40 <laughs> years a day. He also directed the show though, so he got to prance around in these thigh high boots. <laughs> Ludicrous. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> it was shameful, really. I'd I love to go to Amdram. Amdram is a whole other world. It's just, it's such an incredible place. Because there's so much backbiting and envy and- Really? Oh, it's incredible. It's worse than the real world of theatre and TV. It's unbelievable. Because the same old people get to do it every year because they can hold a note. Can it's we go along? You would absolutely adore it, Gervais. It Just is film it, a secret camera. Blinding. Have you ever done the any, in a play, Pilk? We know this. Carl, you've, uh, you've performed it. Just the, uh, the talent show, didn't it? Yeah. Oh, the talent show, yeah. Remind us of the talent and, show. Uh, that's when I did, uh, Walk Like an Egyptian, dressed up as a woman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, did me magic trick. Oh, that's that, is it an egg? The egg one. Yeah. Um. What was the egg one again? When I, uh, actually I've ruined it now saying the egg one, but I went on stage with like an Anki. Yeah. And I said, uh, at this point I was dressed up as a caretaker in it. <laughs> sure. Don't know why, can't remember. No. I was Art. stood there with this, uh, with this Anki over my hand. Yeah. I said, right, you're gonna love this one. Yeah. I said, I'm gonna make a, a bird appear in front of your, in front of your eyes. Right? Yeah. And I'm like, oh god, what's he gonna do? So I'm stood there. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure yeah. I did. Pulled the Anki off. It was an egg. Had an egg and I said, oh, it hasn't been born yet. That's brilliant. They loved it. They, yeah. Yeah. Like, wild for it, did they? Round of applause. Yeah. How uh, old were you? Was, was that, that your, like, was, 17? Was that, it? apart from the, well, apart from your paper round, was that the high point of your life so far? Uh, is that the best? No, I, did, I didn't really. Carl, want to do I'd it. like to see you take that on the road. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe at least up to the Edinburgh Festival next year. Yes. Many of the listeners are aware, Carl, that you're sort of fascinated by, by smaller people. Um, well, he's fascinated by difference, I think. Yes. I think he's having a go at people. You know, I mean, when, when, you, when, you, when you sort of stare at someone because they don't look like you, and let's face it, most people don't look like you, you're not having a go, are you? Well, like you I say, the first time I saw Steve, I was never, never having a go. It was just, oh, that's different. <laughs> But, but you know, like you, you know, Steve, I was never having a go. It's it's just that yeah. thing of oh, all right, interesting. What do you mean? No, just just you know, we've I've said before about I've got used to it and Steve it's the got same. used to it. What do you? What you don't know, well, I, you know my feeling with this. I don't I don't I'm, really know where but, he's coming but from. But Steve knows I'm not having a go either. Yeah. Carl used to carry around a book 
that was called the top 50 freaks of all time. Well, it's interesting you should mention that because we actually had an email from Richie who says that he's, he's been a fan of ours for many years and he's listened to lots of the radio shows we've done in the past and things. And he says, of all the people you've discussed, Carl, in the past, including some of the people from your, uh, your you know, odd magazines, who would you most like to spend the day with of all those people that you've encountered? Um, favourite favourite of all. Well, certainly who you'd want to spend time with, who you feel would be the most fascinating, the most interesting, you know, I mean, let's ju just recap on well, some of the- Pillow Man, the bloke with no arms, no legs that can, um, uh, roll a cigarette with his mouth. Yeah. No? Not impressed with him? <laughs> That's not sufficient. What about the three-legged juggler? So, hang on, let's just recap. This was a man with three legs? Three legs, right. right. And, uh, it said his job, he became a juggler. Okay. Not using the, you know, the, the <laughs> gift that he'd been given. What would you, what, what would you suggest? Anything. Running, <laughs> swimmer, uh, <laughs> just, you know, yeah. uh, <laughs> But yeah, what, what are the there? others? What are the other ones? There was a picture of a gentleman who was fascinated by him. He used to play the piano. Oh, he's got a tiny oh, head, doesn't he? Yeah, that's that. Um, that's the one who uh, he, he sort of ages fast. Right. So like every other week, he's having a birthday and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, that was weird. <laughs> he's not having a birthday every other week. His body's just aged, so it has the as as the appearance, uh, uh, the, the his biology is sort of like like he's seventy. But he's only like fifteen. He doesn't. They don't have a birthday every week. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot. But yeah, I don't know about knocking about with one at a long time though. That's only for a day. Does it depends what I'm up to. <laughs> <laughs> because if you know, if we're going out and about, the pillow man would just be a bit of a drag. Whereas, <laughs> whereas if you know, if you're going for a, a, a walk oh. across, you know, the three-legged guy. <laughs> ideal. Yeah, so, Lots and lots of people emailing just with questions for Carl. Um, just a couple of quick ones for you, Carl. Wendy says, if Carl had to eat the same dinner every day for the rest of his life, what would, uh, what would he eat? Um, you see, it depends, doesn't it? I, I, I mainly eat just so I keep going. I'm not that bothered about, because I don't really taste it anyway, I just shove it down. <laughs> you're like a, what, a you're dog. like a horse. I mean, to be honest, it annoys me the way people worry about food now and, and how, how there's so much to choose from. I think it's got out of hand. <laughs> I'll watch- Any form of choice really worries you, doesn't it? No, you it's don't just, like choice. It, no, choice is good, but not too much. It's like with anything now, if you go into a, a toffee shop, there's like loads Sorry. of different- <laughs> Where are you going to find a toffee so shop? You're in a, you're in a, you're in a fairy tale. <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah, yeah you're, in, you're in a Dickens tale yeah. in, uh, in the 19th century. You're in Shrek. And yeah, you, yeah, yeah, and you go into a toffee no, shop. No, what no, are you what's doing? You're in a toffee shop. shop. What I'm saying, <laughs> you, go, you go into a shop full of toffee. You just come from the candlestick maker. <laughs> Right? You go, you go, oh, you go in there, and there's just too much choice. It's like what, and I, I can stand there up to like four minutes, sort of going <laughs> up to know. four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> four minutes. So he's in a toffee shop in a top hat. Well, he's only got, got four, he's only got four minutes because he's got to get down to the pea green boat. <laughs> that he's saving yeah. off it. Yeah. No, good but, morrow. But forget the toffee. Could I have some of your finely Oxfordshire toffees? So you'd prefer it was just one selection of toffee. That's all they've got. Well, maybe two. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is right. There's now too much choice. Whenever you get a menu in a restaurant, it's not like you don't just go, oh, right, what is the yell? Yeah, I'll have that. There's too much. It's like a book. <laughs> you look at it all. <laughs> and then you've got to that point now that people are even taking a risk when they're eating. What do you mean? Um, you know, in, in Japan or China or something, they're eating that fish <laughs> that if it's not cooked right, it can kill you. Right? Yeah. Not worth the risk, there's so many other fish. Yeah, I agree. Why do, why have mackerel, they... have a bit of cod or whatever. <laughs> yeah, as soon as there's a risk, risk take yeah. it off. Take it off I agree. Menu. I totally agree. Not worth what, it. What, uh, we've got a fish that might or might not kill you. Well, um, is there anything that definitely won't kill you? Yeah, a bit of chicken won't kill you. I'll right. play safe then, I'll have that. I'll have that, I'll have the chicken. That's what I'm saying. But anyway, we were talking about <laughs> sayings and that. <laughs> um, stitching time saves nine don't don't oh, you know i'm never going to use that i don't think anyway <laughs> <laughs> okay you're doesn't. never going to understand it fully well, are you suzanne repairs me stuff anyway <laughs> so it doesn't, doesn't really matter but what about the one um about the one in in greenhouses and that people who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones well, i'm intrigued to know if he's fully got to grips with this okay. just give us your explanation again of what you'd take that to mean well just don't be chucking stuff about really. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, if that was it, they just say no, no, that. No, no, but but that saying's been around a lot longer than we think. That's when people probably did live in 
basic glass houses and stuff. No, no, whoa, 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 no, they don't. They're saying don't chuck stuff about because no, you'll no, break it. No, it's not about uh, damaging your own property. They don't mean you're inside the glass house throwing rocks inside your own glass it's house. It's a metaphor. <laughs> Carl, what is an analogy? Uh, it's sort of like a little story told quickly. <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it's it a is, little though, story it? told quickly. Uh, to what end? Well, it depends what the story is. You see, I, I just prefer sort of, you know, what you say is what you mean. So people in who live in a glass house have to answer the door. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I mean, because you, you, you because may be a genius because I don't get that. People who live in glass houses have to answer the door. Okay, let him, let's hear his explanation. Because the people knocking at the door will be able to see you because it's a glass house. But you have to add a number of other things, uh, another other caveats. Surely, if you live in a glass house, don't walk around naked. Yeah. If you live in a... <laughs> th these are literals. But just the idea that in your head there should be sayings for people who live in glass houses. Who is it that's living in a glass no. house? Well, it, I, I'm not talking about them. It's just that if everyone else is bringing up about these people who are living in glass houses, let's let's get to the real problems they've got. He <laughs> <laughs> still hasn't got to grips with the idea of no, the metaphor or the simile. Well, here's another saying, right, that I, that I learned recently from a mate, right? Um, well, there's an elephant in the room. <laughs> okay, I, don't, I haven't heard that one, but explain it to me. It's like how, you know, you whenever we go out for something to eat or a drink or something, mm. It's normally after about five minutes, the sort of topic gets onto the shape of my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah! But what I'm saying is, it's interesting how, like, I'm the elephant in the room, right? Nobody's talking about it. You mention it once, suddenly it's the talk of the town. <laughs> it's, it's what I mean, everybody starts joining in going, well, yeah, it is round, but it does suit you. And these are people who I don't even know sometimes, <laughs> and they're all dipping in. And that is an elephant in the room. <laughs> So you you don't want people to discuss the shape of your head or the or the lack of hair. Um, you would feel better. You would feel happier that they didn't mention that. Sometimes I think it's better that it's out there. It's made me a stronger person, though. It's the same way you know we we're talking about religion and that. Samson Delilah. Yeah. He got weaker without hair, whereas with me, I think it's it's made me stronger. But would you ever wear a wig? Um, not really. What I was mean, a long wig like Samson? Well, the only time I wanted a wig was when I did jury duty once, right? And it was annoying that I was sat on the jury, right in front of, like, these criminals, right? Everybody else has got disguises, the judges have them wigs on, right? <laughs> that's not disguises! It is a disgu that's a disguise, that's why judges wear them, right? So no! Well, then why they print their name in the paper and have a picture of it? What do you mean it's a disguise? It's a disguise, isn't no, it? No! If it was a disguise, they'd go in with one of those, um, uh, glasses with a nose and the beard attached if it was a disguise. All judges would look like Groucho Marx if it was a disguise. Well, that, I'm just saying that's, that's what annoyed me when I was sat there on the front row, right? I couldn't have been any closer to the criminals, <laughs> that, right? I was sat there and I thought, why didn't I just pop a little wig on or a pair of glasses? <laughs> In the front row at Crown Court. No, because I love to see it because uh, in this country you're not allowed to show pictures of jurors. Uh, you can't take photos <laughs> in a courtroom. So there's always these sketch artists that draw drawings, and it's on the news. The idea that we'd have seen eleven people and a sort of crusty the clown figure would have been amazing. Yeah, uh, oh, I would love to see the, uh, the artist do an interview because it would be like complicated people. Oh, hey, he looks into like character for, and then just a little round. Head. Charlie Brown. <laughs> Charlie Brown sitting on the end. <laughs> Well, that was uh, Elbow and Red of uh, Asleep in the Back. I love that. Great song. Got, got sort of early Peter Gabriel and that's wonderful. Well, we were, we were talking about like your birthday and everything. And yes. Uh, presents and then then uh, I found out I'd been signed up to DJ at yes. Club in Canada. Looking get forward you, to that. To get you in. To I got in for free. My friends I got in at £1 the, off. I was t just, uh, when the... Uh, uh, record was playing there. I said, why did you do that? Why did you try and get in free? Right? He goes, impressing my mates. Now, how impressive is it that Steve Merchant can get you in a place for a quid off? <laughs> oh. Yeah, you want, what would save money? Come with Steve, if they recognise him or have heard the show, you get a quid off! <laughs> that is great. I have a quality discount. I, what, I, don't, I don't know whether what you like more, though, because I know you, and I, I think 
it, it wasn't just the acclaim mm. and the, the fact you got it, it was the pound off you liked. The money off was exciting to me. That was great. <coughs> Any discount would have been fine. I imagine you made them all buy you a drink with a, uh, you know, Several. To, to the value of yeah. a pound. It ended up costing them a lot more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I, did I, have I ever, this, this is the, probably the most embarrassing, uh, of those entrance stories. Yeah. I was down in South London once, uh, went down to some party that was taking place in some kind of swanky bar, where there was a doorman on the front and a, a charge, I think it was something mental, like a tenor to go in. It was crazy, it was some, it was ludicrous. I, I don't know what I was doing down there. And I was okay, in the we'll establish what you mean by swanky later, because that could be... And, um, else. it was, uh... It was always a posh place. Was it? And so there's a queue outside, and there was one of these doormen who thought it was, uh, like, kind of Studio 54. He was, like, sort of, you know, choosing people who could come in. Yeah, you two come in now. You know, I've been there for ages, obviously. Oh, I was no. on my own, because I you got there late. and clogged. Exactly. Got, I've dressed up for this. And there were these two girls next to me. I'm thinking, if I'm in a queue, I've told you before, if I'm in a queue and I got, if I'm stuck with two girls, you know, I'm yeah. thinking, oh, what a great opportunity, you know, use the old merchant Pick charm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so I'm there, and I'm sort of thinking, I'm sort of, you know, and I kind of, you know, sort of give them a nod or whatever, you know, a wink. Yeah. And they're loving it. Yeah. They, 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 they moved the back. They're putty in my hands, really, as you can imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I thought, well, I'll, to really seal this off, I'll get us in. Like, I'll, I'll sort of skip the queue. So I, the guys sort of come along, he's picking people off, the, yeah. the, the, the doorman, and I just <laughs> grabbed him, I just grabbed him like that, and I said it so everyone could hear, right? And I thought this was brilliant. He, I said to him, how much is it? He went, ten quid. I went, I'll give you seven. That was my bribe. I'll give you seven. That's the th whole three pounds. <laughs> no, I, that can't be right. No. No. I get, I'm, he must have said a fiver, and I yeah. said, I'll give you seven. Yeah. That makes more that's, sense, doesn't that's, it? That's, that's giving him a two pound yeah, incentive. Yeah, two pound incentive. <laughs> I'll give you seven, you can make up the ten. <laughs> exactly. You, you can, if you let me in, you can put in three yourself, mate. <laughs> that never works, does it? <laughs> he said to me, <laughs> <laughs> he said to me, um, uh, I can't be bothered, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna have a kip, I think. <laughs> So was it the, was it percentages that put you off? That, that was me initially. I mean, that, it, it's a funny anecdote when you're giving him two pounds. Yeah. It's even funnier when you're, you're getting him when to he's put paying up me as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it! Right, we're gonna we're oh. gonna play a record. Then we're really gonna concentrate. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais show. Steve Merchant's also involved. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. go, go to bed. Oh, Cypress Hill, superstar still to come. We've got. Such great bands as New Order, Ash, Nirvana, Radiohead. Song for the Lovers at about uh, two o'clock is a beautiful song by Jimmy Webster. Lovely, looking forward to it. Now, it's Steve's birthday, it's XFM 104.9, he's 27. Yes. We're both a little bit hungover. Yes. Now, every link we've started hasn't really sort of... It's not know, really come to fruition, if no, I'm being honest. No, nothing's happened. I mean, sometimes there's just, they're just all out, kind of, there's just blunders in them. Yeah. Or like yeah. this one. We've already, already run the ground. Yeah, I think it might be a mixture of us. Like we've been on this station for a little while, we're, we're losing the will uh, to live. Forward, <laughs> but we're going to buck up our ideas. Can I just ask? A I quick said question. buck up, by the way, just Can in I case. Ask a quick question. A quick question, though, because Someone I'm mean, listening to answer complaining. My um, my birthday today, and, and therefore last night I went out, and you know that's why excuse for being a little bit tired and a little bit hungover. Yeah. What's your excuse? Because you didn't come out. No, I know. I, was I mean, you conscious you had the show today. What were you doing? Staying at home, just drinking. Yeah. I had a little, uh, a couple, and me, me and Jane went what time to say goodbye to, to someone, about one. Well, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, no, I mean, it's your name all over the show. You know, I'm a nobody, I've got no reputation. Yeah. Although, Hopefully. you get a quid off in most clubs <laughs> in Camden. enough. I think, just, just drop me If anyone out there, if you're sort of like, like, tall, sort of, I'll answer your birthday, but I've just got to do a description. This is purely, this is nothing nasty, it's pretty good. If you're sort of like a, a, a lanky sort of geek, um, and you, you know, <laughs> You can do a worse accent, then maybe you can pretend to be Steve Merchant and get in quid off. Is that right? That's fine, yeah. No, because no. some people would take that as a personal... That's offensive. Yeah, sure. yeah, 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 yeah. So, we were talking about... Pre should we play a record? Has that linked too long already I'm before already we actually got to something? I'm already bored. Carl, we've got to get to something. We've got to do Carl, something. why don't you contribute something? You've been silent. Now, that is scraping the bottom <laughs> of our really like, is, We're it? in trouble. Oh, no. Oh, we're failing. Who can we... Uh, who can we bring on that Surefire always delivers... Audio snappy. dynamite. Yeah. Carl! The big guns. <laughs> Come on, Carl. No, I was just thinking, there is nobody else who looks like Steve. <laughs> what have done you? That's outrageous! <laughs> Although, but, to be honest with you, that insult has resurrected things. Yeah. Well done. Play a little tune, oh, yeah. and then we're going to... A little bit of a sniffle as well, I think. Yeah. Cold or something could be coming on. Bit late there, Carl. You should have come in a bit earlier there. Swayed. Yeah. 
Um, what well, I like is the complete lack of professionalism on our part. Yeah. It's like we've got a bit of a headache, a little bit yeah. tired, just, that's it then. You can't <laughs> fight that. You can't <laughs> fight that. But, I mean, the thing is, as you well know, Rick, there are certain DJs on this station, you know, drunkards, there's at least two I know of who are smackheads. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, they, they still manage, uh, but no, they still manage to yeah, do but a even good the, job. Yeah, but even the ones that aren't, <laughs> that try their best, are rubbish. <laughs> it's true enough. I'm not saying, I'm not saying we're still not the best. Yeah. And it's effortless for us, Rick. I know, yeah. Know, yeah. We're coming up with dynamite stuff here. Yeah, I you know. And we're not even, you know, fighting on all cylinders. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant, a little right. bit hungover. Mm. We all are, mm. but he's, mm. he can't really take it, he's a little, <laughs> he's loud, like, yeah. Wait, there is, um, tickets to give away, Rick. I don't know if we should mention that. What, who, who is it for? Joe Strummer. Oh, yeah. Uh, and his band, The Mescaleros, play Brixton Academy, we think, this evening. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more information will probably be... <laughs> so go along, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> if you say you're Steve Merchant, pound off. <laughs> well, the doors are uh, s uh, at seven o'clock, and it's seventeen pounds fifty, unless you've won the competition. Rick, I'm about to set, and yep. won, won yourself a pair of tickets. Um, there is someone right in America celebrating a birthday today. Okay. Yeah. More same, than one. Same I think. Yeah. No. No. no, no. But there's a Go specific on. one I'm thinking of. Go right. On. His name, Rick, is Dwight Schultz. Okay. Yeah. If you know the answer, obviously don't give it away. Yeah. His name's Dwight Schultz. Uh, he's an actor. Yeah. He was particularly big in the 80s. Yeah. And he's also celebrating a birthday today. You're gonna say what's his name? I'm gonna say what character is he best known as? What TV character is he best known as? And you can win yourself some tickets for Joe Strum and the Mescaleros at the Brixton Academy. Dwight Schultz. American actor, TV character of the 80s, very famous. Oh, yeah. See, Christian's giving away uh, a trip to Salem, Massachusetts. That's bizarre, actually, because I was in America recently and I went to Salem, Massachusetts, and yeah. that's not a prize. And it? Believe me, if you, I mean, we were there, we were sort of obliged to go because we were at someone's birthday. It's rubbish. Really? I mean, that's a really poor trip. That's such a boring He's probably, he could probably can't believe his luck. It's just a, probably the biggest thing Christian's ever had to give away. Well, about, and you've just dissed it. The great thing about Salem, Massachusetts is I that. I it's, don't think we're, I don't think we're good for this station. I don't think we're selling this station like we should. Well, you know, it's, it's its own fault, you know, it shouldn't have hired us. <laughs> I blame it, you know. Yeah, and paid us in advance. Yeah. They're lucky we turn up. No, I went to uh, Salem, Massachusetts, and this is the place that's famous from, like, Salem's lot, and, uh, the Salem witch hunts famous for- uh, uh, Famous for all things Salem. Salem. Yeah, most, anything yeah. with Salem in the title, the that's what it's place, for. The whole yeah. place has gone mad over, like, witches and yeah. anything. Basically, it's like, there was the Salem witch hunts in, like, 17-something or other, or 16-something yeah. or other. <laughs> so the whole place now is just full of, like, people dressed as witches. Yeah. And then it's, like, any supernatural stuff. So that I went in, and it was amazing. It's quite- Like a Glastonbury going. tent. It was a- yeah, it's- it's like, it's awful. Everything- every single place there, every single shop is kind of horror related. Yeah. And I went to the, um, Boris Karloff World of Terror. <laughs> yeah, right? It's it amazing. You went in there, right? I don't know if Boris, the famous horror actor, has actually been involved, but you go in there, you walk in the door, you've got to put these 3D glasses on, right? And it's supposed to be this kind of chilling ver journey around this kind of, uh, like a sort of, uh, a crypt, you know? And you put these glasses on, and I, <laughs> I couldn't tell. They were so poor, I couldn't tell what was supposed to be a 3D effect and what was actually three-dimensional. Really? In real so I couldn't tell if, like, the floor was actually sloped or if it was just appeared to be, yeah. whether the wall was actually kind of knobbly, or whether it was <laughs> the, the, the three uh, glasses. It was so much, and it was, it literally took about 45 seconds to get through it. Imagine you just that. came out blinking into the dark, into the light again, it was So rubbish. you, you, so I just want, I just want to throw this over to Carl. So there's Steve Merchant, with funny glasses on, in this place, horror, and he's walking around. Mm. Do you think he scared people, Carl? I've, I've set this question out, haven't I? <laughs> I know, I, I know, I've, lo I know, I've loaded the question I know the answer you're fishing for. <laughs> Carl, you just want to have a dig at me because it's <laughs> coming up to two o'clock and you've not really put a lot of uh, effort in today, slagging me off. Do it on purpose. No, he doesn't do it on purpose. He's, he's, he's just he's just an honest northerner and he can't lie. He's like George Washington, but without the wooden teeth. <laughs> yeah, Salem. <laughs> um, I didn't mean. We've to lost say it again, haven't we? You didn't mean to say I Salem. Didn't mean to say Salem. <laughs> this, this is such bad that radio. Was just this the is word really. That was in the tip of my I mean, time. genuinely, this is bad radio. All, yeah. Good. All right. So with the Pope's dead. Any other big news? Um, there was that. Uh, that thing I told you about last week, the foot-long spider eats chicken. Uh, <laughs> what does this mean to them? They're gonna think that the world's been taken over by them. It's not like this well, never did it. We're not going back, there's a foot-long spider on the loose. Are these people bright, though? Well, let's have a look. Antarctic scientists. Yeah, yeah, they've probably got an O level you've or two. looking at penguins all day. Yeah. Uh, so how bright have you got to be? What do you mean? Well, what are they doing? Well, I don't know, do I? But they've been chosen. This probably cost millions of pounds to set them up there. 
They're pro- yeah, they're, they're pro- oh, Carl. This, I tell you, this is like, for scientists, this is like Big Brother. <laughs> you know I mean? This is like a big dinner scientist there, watching yeah. this, finding so out right. what's gonna go on, there's little challenges that they give them, little talents. It's like Celebrity Love Island without the sun and slappers. Mm. Go on. I think, what else? What else has gone on? Well, while you're thinking, Carl, I should just tell you now, you threw that question out earlier, um, why are ginger people historically mocked? Yeah. We've had a couple of responses on the text, 83 XFM. I, again, as ever with XFM listeners, don't believe what they say, don't trust what they say. But no. one of them, um... Have we got any respect for anyone in the world? Uh, <laughs> get back to you. Uh, Pete in Tooting, now again, I think this is nonsense, he claims that the reason ginger people are disliked is because Judas was ginger from the Bible. How- I don't know where he's come up with this idea. No, um, I've heard that. But sh- I mean, are there a great many people from, you know, the Middle East who are ginger? Well, that's probably why he stood out. Sure. What and he's probably- he was probably fed up and he thought, I'll get him back. Yeah. Maybe- Unless he was wearing- unless he had his hair dyed ginger when he was on the witness protection scheme. <laughs> What did he do? he had to go into what, after what, it all came out in the book. What did he do? What's- What did he do? He, he, stitched, up, he stitched him up, didn't he, to the Romans, didn't he, Judas? Didn't he do it for 40 pieces of silver or something? I'm, I'm not big on the Bible, but apparently, um- Incidentally, if you'd like us to, uh, stitch up any kind of messiahs for 40 pieces <laughs> of silver, just get in touch, 83XFM, uh, we're willing to do that for you as well. Um, but so that's- so that's one- one explanation. There's another one here which is- uh, again, I don't believe this for a moment. It says here, ginger people get a lot of stick because in, El in Elizabethan times, people with ginger hair were told that their mother had slept with the devil. And that was why their hair was their hair was ginger. So there's two options. Maybe if you've got some more, you can uh, any more spurious thoughts, then get in touch. Uh, 83 XFM. But yeah, I don't know. So, uh, no, 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 there, no, there might be truth to both of those. I mean, the truth. The point is that if only those are true, they will already be picked on. If you know what I mean. Right. That's the point. Mm. It, it's mm. sort of like I, 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 maybe that's not the the the, uh, the total root of it. Well, the Judas thing might be the root of it. The first big um, ginger to. Uh, do some uh, uh, a little bit. So off. if he was bald, then all bald people would be like, "Yeah, get our time on that." Yeah. Well, we do mock you behind your back anyway, Carl. Don't, yeah. That's going on. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. uh, so d uh, play a record and think of something that's happened to tell these poor scientists what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. All you've come up with so far is the Pope's dead and there's a big spider. What is that? that eats chicken. <laughs> the Pogues, rainy night in Soho. Uh, I hope I hope there isn't a rainy night in Soho tonight, Rick. I'm right. Right. You're one of those uh, who agrees with me. <laughs> so we just had a, uh, an email here from a guy called James Lee. He says, uh, hi, just writing a bit of info on the scientists in Antarctica. I'm a scientist who's just come back from one of the Antarctic bases called Halley, uh, or Haley. There are 15 people staying there over the Antarctic winter. The scientists are looking mainly at the atmosphere, things like the ozone hole and meteorology. Right. I think there are six scientists staying over the winter, as well as a doctor, electrician, mechanic, and a carpenter, and so on. And so he's saying, uh, they do listen, they can't, they have the internet, so they maybe could listen uh, to the show on the internet. And uh, if you get the chance, say hi to Francis, and the rest of the winter is for me. Sure, no problem, yeah, thanks James. Um, but yeah, there they are, that's what they're doing, that's what they're up to. Well, but why, why are they asking you for a message though, when, I mean, have, have these people got families and that, or are they convicts, or? <laughs> 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 no, what do you mean, of course they got but they probably do get messages from their family. <laughs> well, what, why are you doing one for one? Is that, I mean, say, do you know, like you see it in, like, porridge and stuff like that, where if someone's in prison and no one visits them, yeah, and they sort of look a bit fed up on that, is this message that you're doing for for like people who d don't get a letter in the post from? Brilliant. So they they, they put this on the shelf until someone doesn't get one. All right, Hargreaves. Yes, sir. I didn't get a message today, sir. <laughs> yeah, I've got a message, Hargreaves. <laughs> I've what, sir? Hargreaves, you have got a message. Really, sir? From Ricky Gervais. <laughs> really, sir? And then I give it- Don't talk. Uh. Don't talk. Please, there are scientists listening. Try to d keep the talking shit down to a minimum today. Yeah, what, what's annoying me is it, right? They, they're saying they're stuck over there for months, but it yes. seems to me like they're wasting a lot of time. Right? Why? Well, you're saying they probably watch DVDs. They're saying they've got internet access. Yeah. Yeah? They're well, I'm to, wrong. Listening to messages. Yeah. Get the job done and go home. Well, that's so, well, then we don't have to tell them anything then, because they, they listen to the internet. They've got, if they've got the internet, then yeah, it's a waste of time. Good point. Play record. Well, hang on. Before that, here's a good point. You've had long time to research what's been going on in the world. We just had an email here from Nicholas who says, "Why haven't you told them about the recent pig Olympics that just went on in China?" You've missed that one, Carl. Once again, who won? <laughs> First of the game to die, Morrissey, XFM 104.9.
and Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Well, Carl, you failed miserably. The scientists stuck away. Right, one more chance. What what's happened in the last couple of weeks? Just one more chance to. What have you seen in the last couple of weeks? Uh, well, like I say, I don't I don't really watch the news and that, so right. I can't uh, tell them about that. But in a way, I think they're better off not knowing. I think that's the only good thing about being out there, isn't it? Not knowing about the bad stuff going on. Yeah. So, I can't help them there. They don't need to look at the weather, do they? No, don't you know. No. But, uh, I'll tell you about the Pope and that. Yeah, it's mm. pretty extensive. What uh, about the, uh, the EU constitution and the, uh, the no votes? What, uh, what do you make of that? Uh, what are your views? What, what's the problem there? Oh. This, this isn't, this no, isn't, better, better this isn't broadcasting though, is it? This is nothing. Come up with something, well, the talk! Fact, the fat baby then, the fat baby that they found, that was on the telly. Right. Well, what was that? It's just a little fat baby. That, uh, uh, oh, for f I don't know what, it's just a, just a little fat kid and that. What? Tell what? It what was on the telly, it was on the telly and But that, what right? was on the telly? You just said fat baby, fat baby, fat baby, fat baby on telly, fat baby on telly. Do you meant to be telling them what's happened in the world? Tell, well, tell me about the fat baby on telly. It's just, they've found some, uh, there's, there's this illness called Momo, right? And, uh, they've just got this, this woman had a kid. It's really sad, it was on Channel 4 and that, right? And, uh, Kids born. You sure it wasn't Jimmy Carr? Kids born and that, right? Momo? It's called Momo, Isn't that that yeah. Black Music Award? No, 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 right, little, little fat baby and that, and uh, there's only three of them in the world. These little fat babies. Right. And uh, one so of them- they're in danger. How fat? Are you not telling me what you mean? How fat are Six they? Six stone it was, it was only two. And uh, so there's, there's three of them in the world, and there was this one, and there was one in Brazil. Are they like and, endangered? Uh, is that the problem? Because <laughs> there's only three of them in the world. I don't I'll be worried. Is it like a conservation campaign? <laughs> 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 yeah. No, it's just sad. If you s I know. It's easy to show that, but, but, but if you you've seen it, you can go. It's a bit, bit sad than that. Um, well, I haven't seen it, and I know nothing about it. Well, I've told you there's three of them in the world. I, d I st okay. What else was on telly? Uh, the uh, something I watched the other night, which was good. Uh, again, you know I learn stuff from the from the telly. I don't watch the news. Yeah, well, you don't around. learn stuff from the telly. Yeah, you, know, you, you, what, you told us there's a fat baby well, in the world. Forget about them. There's in, a spider. In, a spider eats chickens, and there was a fat kid. That's forget, all right. Forget them in Iceland, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll give them rockbusters later to do. Right? <laughs> Iceland. But um, but what's the name? I tell you what is interesting, Steve. Well, um, I didn't know that much about it. O autism. Okay. Oh, good. There's some more entertaining stuff on XFM 104.9. No, no. To cheer up people. Go on, and what? What? Come on. No, right. Have you heard about it, Steve? What autism. It, is? Uh, it, autism. it scares me to death when he comes up, when he touches on a serious subject. It, uh, we've been talking about wheeling a dead pope round, the Chinese don't age well, and ginger people are hated, and now we're gonna that. touch on a really- I mean, no, I said, uh, uh, my heart's in my throat. Go yeah, on, Carl, said, then. Tell me, tell me your insights to autism. Right, well, it, there was this, it, again, Channel 4, coming up with some good stuff at the moment, right? It might have been Channel 5. Um, <laughs> But what's the name? It was <laughs> the attention span I like. <laughs> ah! it's these these people who uh, they've got, got like this autism thing going on. Yeah. And uh, they sort of take in a lot of information. They get sort of a bit. They get so into it that they know everything about that subject and what have you, right? And there was this lad who uh, he knew everything, right, about EastEnders. Right. He sort of the, the cameraman was saying to him. Uh, so, you know, why, why are you standards on that? I said, oh, I don't know, I just like it. And he said, uh, I remember when I first watched it, it was a Thursday, it was five to eight, Pauline Fowler walked in, she had a pink jumper on, she said, all right, love. And he remembers everything from that moment on. Yeah. Right, and everything. Which is great, but then, the way the programme was making out, it was almost like they were saying it's, it's a disability. <laughs> right. When in a way, it's more like a superpower. Sure. Like, like Rain Man. <laughs> well, if, you, if, you, if you can take it's him- Rain Man. No, I'm he not- He has special autistic powers. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, We must send- we must send for Rain Man. I, I don't know what to do. So I don't you know mean, what to so do. So he would be a great but contestant or mastermind. Things. Sort of autistic Sorry. mastermind. He'd well, be what I'm saying is, don't be watching EastEnders though, sort of, why didn't they give him an encyclopedia and say, get into that? Sure. That'll be useful. Yeah. Keep him away from EastEnders. Wasting his time there. But I don't think it's a- it is a disability. No. 
Yeah, well, there, are, there are other things, and they're, they're not. Uh, it's, it's also autism is a matter of degrees. From what I know, uh, and I'm sorry to have to do this, but I feel that I have to at least be the voice of reason, as as ill educated as I am on the subject. But I think one, there's degrees of autism. I think some are higher performance than others. There's other there's other issues with it. It's not they just they just got good memories. They don't go around doing tricks for people because they can remember stuff. There are other there are other issues with it. Do you know what I mean? Right, well, I mean they did- they sing the bit- But you watched the program! What did you learn? That he knows when Pauline Fowler came in! Yeah, I mean there was other bits where they couldn't control her emotions and stuff. Oh! But, but that other- that other little but, bit, yeah. But the main- the main bit of it was he didn't soak up information and stuff and I'm just saying it didn't seem really bad. Do you know what I mean? There's disabilities where people say that's a bad disability. Go it's on. like how people say about, uh, this is brilliant. Know. This is just like uh, I, I. This is amazing to be in the room with this man. It's incredible. You just wind him up and listen to what comes out. But th that was that was not anything compared with the first couple of days. Because the first day I was, I went for a walk. Everything with each is famous for just the beautiful, beautiful people that gather there. There's so many beautiful women in Rio. It made me angry. I was angry that these women were so attractive and that you know none of them were even looking at me. So but anyway, I'm on the beach because I I was shopping. And I needed a wee. Right, and we went for a quick impromptu swim, and I thought, oh, we in the in Just the sea. Just think of him on this beach, right? We dire here. Well, I'm wearing great big long shorts because I'm not going to try and compete with these boys because they. And are... you are, could I say this, the whitest man uh, yeah. I've ever met in my life. Yeah. I mean, with his shirt off, you can see his heart like a newborn fish. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, so... well, this is the thing. As I went into the sea to have a wee, oh, there was a discussion about this. As I went into the sea to have a wee. <laughs> in well, a little tray. You see, there was a discussion about this because I'm very much of the opinion that you should take your trunks down and some people uh, some of my friends are saying just do it in your trunks and let's see the sea just wash it away what a hell of a carnival well, <laughs> and i think that's i'm against that i've always been against that against that in swimming pools everything you know so i so no, I i'm against pissing in swimming pools full stop it doesn't matter whether you do get in, <laughs> take your trunks down or let don't piss <laughs> in, what the about in the pool. sea yeah, well, fine. Yeah, fine, okay. Right, fish, so, fish do it. So. so anyway, so I'm in the sea trying to trying to urinate, and I so I kneeled because I'm obviously very tall, so it's tricky to get deep enough for the water to to mask what you're up to. So I tried to kneel down in the water, right, and, and I got the I got John Thomas out, but then the water swept out again and just left me on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> so, but luckily my my back was to it. Everyone's so no one saw. So um. So I, so I, I can't think of a funnier sight than Steve Merchant on his knees with his little John Thomas out. I don't know how big it is, I've never seen it. Well, I, mean, I imagine it's in proportion to the rest well, of it, is it? I no? wish. <laughs> um, this, all, all I'll say is I've been a little shortchanged. But, um, so I, so then I got up and I waded a bit deeper in, right? And, uh, now I was sort of, I was, I was trying, I got it out. But what I didn't realise is that the waves just off the beach are really just uncontrollable. You never know what's going to happen. So suddenly, I see this giant wave coming towards me, crashing towards me, and I got the cock out and everything, and it grabs this wave, comes over me, and lifts me up, flips me up in the water, right? And I'm floundering around. I can't see anything because, of course, I had to take my glasses off <laughs> just to go in the sea because I didn't want I didn't want to lose them. Oh God. So so I so I floundering around and I'm wait, genuinely getting scared because I, as I try to get into shore the wave just pulls me back again. So I'm waving to my friends on the beach, but what with I everything. Well, what I don't realise is that because I'm wearing my because well, I'm not wearing my glasses, I don't realise that I've been dragged along the beach some way, and I'm not actually waving to my <laughs> friends. So there's like a bunch of these beautiful women on Ipanema Beach. <laughs> watching a pasty white man waving with his cock out. And, and, and what annoyed me was my friends were laughing. And that Steve, really, really angered me. if I'd have been there, I would have burst. But why wouldn't you have come running? Would you have come running in to help me? Oh, well, I couldn't have saved you with your glasses off and your knob out. When, <laughs> if, I, if I ever save you, I want you to be fully dressed with your glasses on. So you'd have just let me go. You'd have, that would have been what you'd said to my parents. <laughs> He had his knob out and his glasses off, there was no way I was going to- I gonna... can't think of a funnier sight. Oh. Carl, I've got a couple of little facts for you. Just to try and in inflame your imagination. Go on. Sharks are immune to cancer. Are they? Yeah. So what- f how have they found that out? Well, I don't know, but- but I've, I've never heard of any fish having cancer though, I haven't heard of a, a cod being ill. <laughs> so why are we focusing on that one? <laughs> Good point. Okay. 
stroking a spider can cause its hair to fall out. <laughs> what, because it's- it doesn't like it and it gets stressed out or is it just that some people are rubbing too hard? No, I don't think it's they're rubbing too hard. I think it's something to do with it. it I mean, w what sort of maniac is stroking a spider anyway? My mum did it once. Really? Yeah, not, not to a spider. No. It was uh, just a little bee. <laughs> She'd been out, um, sunny day and that. Uh, got the washing off the washing line. Mm. She was bringing it in. Little bee sat on the top of like the bed sheet or whatever it was. Yeah. And um, she's in the kitchen with it and she goes, look at that. Little bee there, she started sort of stroking its, stroking its head. It loved it. <laughs> How did it make it clear that it loved it? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't struggling. It was just sat there like, because it must have been like a bit dozy. They get a bit dozy, don't they, in the, uh, in the heat and that. Yeah. And uh, it just stayed there on the sheet and she sort of stroked its head for a bit. And she had to put it out. It didn't go out. It didn't try and escape. It's like, you've had enough now. Uh, <laughs> that was that was that. She sent it out. <laughs> she loved all that. She loved little flies and stuff. And we had Harry the house fly. What? Like said, Harry the house fly. What do you mean? It's just a fly that always seems to knock about in one corner of the room. Right. It's the same fly, was it? Yeah, it was the same fly. How yeah. do you know it was the same fly? So whenever she saw a fly, she went, "Oh, look, it's back." Well, it's, we weren't letting him in. It's just that it stayed in. Carl. <laughs> What makes you think it was a pet house fly as opposed to a different fly every day? Because it was always in the same place in the corner. But it could have been that something about that, that particular place that attracted flies rather than it was the same fly. Well, I'm never worried about it. It's not. It wasn't harming us. It's just. It just always hung about. But how do you know it was the same fly? How do you recognise it? We weren't worried about it. It, does, it doesn't matter, does it? If, if like we're thinking another fly is getting a bit of free rent or something, no, just, just let it let it stay. I don't understand what. But why, why no? Well, no, I d right. Okay, you in the house, right? There's flies. Okay, not flies, fly. What? Why do you think it was the same fly for all those years? Just because we haven't got loads of other flies. At no point was there a crossover period where there's two, and it's like, hang on a minute, he's trying it on here. <laughs> That's what I mean. It was always just one on its own. <laughs> we just thought, leave it, it's all right. I don't know why, why are you suspicious? Why do you always think someone's out to do you? <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not. I don't know why you assumed when you see a fly every now and again that it's exactly the same fly. <laughs> it just fact was. That it's Harry. The one in our house was the same one. How do you know? <laughs> well, all right, I don't, but I'd, at no point did I feel suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of flies, though, and that, um, They've got one, right? I was out with Ricky, and he was reading the paper. There was a story there about a fly that its eyesight was bad or something, and they've made it a pair of glasses, and it had a picture of a house fly wearing. Okay, this is this is incredible, Steve. Can I can I take over? Uh, hang on, let me just just need to finish a couple of questions for that. So he's got there's a small fly, and they've made it a pair of glasses, yeah, so that it can see better, yeah. And your concern is what? Well, again, it's just that thing of. We're looking after everything now, aren't we? Sorry, I've got to come in here, Steve. All right. I showed you, you the story. Saw it. You saw it. It was a picture of a, a house fly, fly with a pair of glasses, glasses right? on. Yep. Right. It was about a one sentence thing. Mm. It was about how far technology's come. Yeah. And, and a group of scientists out. using um, microscopy, right, and uh, um, uh, laser tools had, as an exhibition, shown that they could make a pair of glasses smaller to fit on a house. They put it on there and they'd taken a picture of it and it's on uh, display. At no point was it actually, because the fly had bad eyesight, the fly was presumably dead, it was purely an art installation or a show of technology. I thought you were going to say, Rick, that you'd drawn the uh, glasses on there <laughs> 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 and he believed it like, there's a bearded lady in this paper. <laughs> no. <laughs> my, God, my God, Tony Blair looks like Adolf Hitler. <laughs> no. What, what do you think of that, though? But they did it as an experiment. Out. Yeah, but all things start as an experiment. But why would they make a pair of glasses but for a fly? How, how would they know he had short, a bad eyesight? How would they know it was the same fly? Bumping into stuff. I don't know. Bumping into stuff. It's just, it's just that thing, innit, of human nature is something's wrong with something, let's fix it. And they, and they try and help people out all the time, don't they? When no. you, you know, we are, we're always doing it. We're always trying to help people out instead of just going, You've been dealt a duff card. Cope with it. <laughs> <laughs> Came up with a good idea. We'll um, be the judge of that. Mm. Uh, well, I, I do it now. <laughs> it's not a good idea. Okay. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm sticking my neck out here. 
Um, but yeah. uh, right. I think this isn't going to be a good idea. Okay. Thoughts? Well, I'm, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to second that motion. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if we're let's see if we're both right. See through skin. <laughs> <laughs> High five, Rick. We've had a few emails about the old shows. People came into them late in the season. Did um, I not yeah. tell you this? We we've had an e we had an email from an Inuit. Really? Yeah, yeah. I thought I'd mentioned this. Have we not mentioned this before? No. No, there was an email from a guy who said, uh, I think. Well, I don't think he lives. He lives in Canada, I think, or somewhere else. I apologise for if I'm getting that wrong. But I think he told, he said he was half Inuit, and he listens to the show. Half Inuit. Mm. See, that's interesting because I think I mean, it was so remote. I know I'm probably wrong now, but I think that those are so remote that I can't think where they're meeting people who aren't. <laughs> that are also Inuit, Inuit yeah. Oh, and who's going, you know, other societies are going, I'll tell you what, I'm fed up, there's no action here, I'm going to the frozen tundra, I'm about to meet someone there. <laughs> yeah. Where do they meet? Do they do online dating? What, what, probably a lot of online stuff. What do you put as hobbies? Fishing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> skinning stuff. <laughs> skinning stuff, yeah. What will stuff to skin? Oh, uh, you know, seals. Seals, yeah, sure. That's about it, isn't it? Why are they hanging about round there? <laughs> Why aren't seals going, do you know what, it's cold, I'm sick of it here. It's windy all the time, what have you, and I'm getting a club on the head. <laughs> do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Because they're, they're meant to be quite bright in terms of animals and that, aren't they? Yeah. So why are they knocking about them parts? I don't know. Say, like, if, if seals died out, right? Would 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 that be a problem? We've done this. We've been through this before, Carl. Everything has a knock-on effect. Even a seal, that's sort of in between something already. It's between a fish and a... <laughs> And, and a, a dog, dog <laughs> isn't it? I knew you were going to say dog. <laughs> it's not between a fish and a dog. What do you think evolution does? Do you, I just, fish I, to I'll dog. I don't understand it. Maybe we what do you mean it. it's between a fish and a dog? I'm just saying it's. It was a perfectly evolved mammal that re entered the, the water, I imagine, and then got streamlined. And it, I, I mean, it's between a fish and a dog. But why not have one and the other? Why not have, like, you know, you've got a dog, you've got a fish. No, it's not between a fish Get and a dog. It's not between a fish and a dog. I don't know what between means. I don't know what. This I... is it again about <laughs> saving everything all the time. What is it doing? <laughs> What's it doing? Everyone's feeling sorry for him all the time. Save the seal and all that. What's it doing? Why are we saving it? <laughs> Let's just ask that question. What's it doing? <laughs> I don't know what to say! <laughs> it's between a fish and a dog! 104.9 XFM, uh, you alright? This is Carl, uh, producer of, uh, Ricky Gervais and Steve Merchant. They're not about today, Ricky's on holiday, uh, Steve couldn't be bothered. So, um, I'm left here with all the dats, uh, that's a digital audio tape, uh, of all the, uh, of all the shows they've done since they've been here over the last, I don't know, year and a half or something. So, uh, we'll play you uh, some of the best bits. Alright, so, uh, here's the first bit. I, I just wish we could maybe tape the bits we're not on air, just because that's when Carl comes into his own. Yeah. He just said to me, I was, I don't know what I was doing, I was sort of like pottering around, dancing around, doing something annoying probably, and he just looked at me, I don't know, he was looking at me, and I looked back and he went, have you ever used a Y front properly? Genius. It's a great question because the answer is definitely no. Definitely Has, no. Uh, does anyone use their Wi Fi properly? And by that, I mean get your winky out of the little sort of um, slot provided, as yeah. opposed to like put it to one side or pull them down or yeah. whatever. Has anyone used a Wi Fi properly? I don't think I've ever done it. I don't think I've ever done it. I've never seen anyone in a toilet doing it, Rick. You should be looking. <laughs> I wish I hadn't said that. <laughs> yeah, I caught, I caught you. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> actually how you prove people are gay. <laughs> yeah. You get them into this conversation. Yeah. Yeah, it's a trap. Uh, yeah, it's a trap. It was, it was, it was, it was a trap. Yeah. I'm not gay, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The entry I was gay, I double bluffed you. Because yeah. <laughs> I knew the old gay trick. <laughs> I thought it was the old gay lord saying no thing. That is another method. Oh, yeah, there's, a, a, there's innumerable methods of doing it. That's how Oscar Wilde was caught. Yeah. Yeah. What happened there? Well, the judge went to him. Uh, did you see that film last night? Gay Lord say no, and he went no, and they went take him away. Yeah. <laughs> take him down to the cells. Yeah, take him to Reading. It is true. Um, but it's, well, it originated in America. Yeah, so many of these things do. It's yeah. a brilliant point, Carl. I'd like to hear from anyone, anyone listening who's, and I mean, uh, well, they'll just lie when they ask me. Yeah. I don't even use uh, sort of flies. No. Usually. I sort of just sort of, sort of pull my wi uh, my sort of tracksuit. So yeah. that's why I wear sort of like elasticated <laughs> waist pants all the time. Exactly. Just sort Speed. of like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you gotta get in there with the minimum of effort. Yeah, we and out. Sure, sure. Often I won't shake. 
No, well, no. To my detriment, because it <laughs> often leaks out a little bit later, oh. doesn't it? Ever been out on a date with a girl where it's just trickled down your leg and you wish I hadn't and you're thinking, what if she gets my trousers off later? She might smell or see it. What? <laughs> it's like what? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I said there. <laughs> right. Uh, Rick, I had for Christmas something which I think might excite you and interest yeah. you because I know you're obsessed and interested by facts. Yeah. Don't fiddle with the microphone. Everybody well, I was just looking at what it was underneath it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a book, uh, it's just facts and trivia. It's edited by Sir Isaac Asimov, who oh, I think's yeah. dead. So I don't know how, where my parents bought this book. I assume it's sort of from a second-hand shop or something. Right. It's quite, I got it for Christmas. I keep meaning to bring it in, because there are, generally the facts are quite sensible in here. And I like to think if Isaac's been involved, they're probably substantiated. It's not like, kind of, just this nonsense on the web. Or, I think or that this is probably- Or true. up in Greg's The Bakers that <laughs> Carl exactly. gets most of his facts from. Uh, the ancient Egyptians trained baboons to wait on tables. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, fascinated. Brilliant. That's fantastic. But what, what, what my point about that is, why did they stop? Yeah. It's, ge it's a genius idea. Did, Would you not want to go to a restaurant where they have baboons serving? No, I'll but tell you what happened. It might have been like the Planet of the Apes and they sort of rebelled. <laughs> one of them could talk, one of them could take his order, and one day when they went, um, uh, do you want fries with that? And the bloke got really annoyed and said, answering back, and then there was a, some sort of rebellion. Right, 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 yeah. right. The Planet of the Apes isn't true, is it? It's, it's not, not, it's not, it's, it's not a documentary. Right, okay. I wonder, because what I like the idea of having baboons is the fact that I reckon they're, like, I have tr tr difficulty, and I'm sure you do, Carl, like, working out that sort of 10%, <laughs> you know, on a bill. Yeah. I reckon baboons would find that particularly hard. I reckon you could get away with under-tipping them all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Just not leaving enough and just legging it. <laughs> exactly. They go away and you go, sucker. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I'd love to see yeah. some baboon restaurants. If there's yeah. any restaurateurs out there, so tell me Can I, can I if you do go, go to a restaurant and you wait on us, please don't order the banana daiquiri, because it comes half eaten. <laughs> they can't help their little selves. <laughs> they really can't. They're okay with, like, you know, being and steak and chips and all that. But you know, there's a little bag. I go, do you want <laughs> Can you imagine that? The baboons serving at waiting tables. It's genius. Just stop to think about that. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. It's absolutely dynamite. Yeah. That's See, zoos fact. would be a lot more popular if there was like the canteen and you could go. <laughs> if and they were uh, serving tickets to two. Uh, yeah, exactly. one child. Row. Okay, go through there. Okay. I think they should do other things, like in, you know, in the Flintstones, they used to mix cement in that bird's kind of pelican. Pelican, yeah, yeah. Just, we should start doing that again. <laughs> because that's, that also happened in ancient times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, according to the Flintstones. Be yeah, before they had proper cement mixers, that's what <laughs> they did. That was how they it, did it. Definitely, just, yeah. Just, uh, animal facts. I remembered one in the week. Um, Go on. It was, do you know them two gay American men who have, have tigers? Okay, the two gay ones, oh, yeah, go on. Two possibly gay ones. Yeah, let, let's not worry about libel law um, anymore, then. Or, yeah, if you gone. shave a tiger's head... <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Right, okay. You've got to treat that sentence with a lot more reverence than you did. <laughs> Think what you're saying. If you shave a tiger's head... Not just his head, its whole body. If you... Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, yeah. So I thought, you, I thought you were getting weird. Go on, then. Yeah, if you shave a tiger, yeah, go on. It's still stripy underneath. The yeah. skin, the skin's... Is it like rock? <laughs> it goes all, like, all the way through. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. Where did you hear that one? That's, I remembered that. Like, I was was that a drunk just shouting it in the street? <laughs> 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 I shaved a tiger and it's still striving. <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know a polar bear? Come on. Polar bear's um, skin is actually um, black and its fur is transparent, not white. And it gives the illusion. So it, uh, it gets all the radiation possible from the sun, but it's still camouflaged. I didn't understand that, Rick. Sorry, you lost me. If its skin's black, a polar bear's skin, skin is black. And its fur is translucent. And its fur is translucent. So why is it white when we see Well, it's just because the, the light hits it and. The sun reflects on it. Yeah, and it makes it look white, yeah. So if you look at each individual hair, it's actually translucent. So at night, hair. it would be black. <laughs> well, everything is. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, not bright stuff, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> you embarrass yourself. Play a record. XFM 104.9. Lovely, that one. Now. Again, I broke the rules in the week. I met up with Carl. Oh, I had lunch with him. And, uh, we were chatting and having a, having a cup of tea. And it got onto one of Carl's favourite programmes was The Tales of the Unexpected. Oh, of course. And all I can think is that he's probably the only person in Britain where they were unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to him, when that, that twist came in, he'd go, gee, I can't. Yeah. 
Oh, God. Can't believe so it. So it was the tree that did it. <laughs> and I mean, he was probably the only- and, I, and we were telling all these stories of horror and he liked horror stories. And I, and I told him this story, um, uh, and I don't know if this had come across in the way, but I told him this story, um, it was a- it was a short, it was a horror short. This was a, a film you saw, was it? Yeah, yeah. And, um, what it was, it started off just had been a car crash, you see, it's a horrendous wreck, and you saw it from the point of view of the person in the car, and he was calling for his mate and he was going, Dave. And he sort of- he sort of looked over and saw a body without a head that had been thrown at you. He goes, oh no, Dave, Dave. And then into the field of view came Dave, his mate, and looked at him with a look of horror, and then it sort of went black and you realised that he was just a head and it had been his body. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. And I said, then, then it came up at the end, um, uh, at the, uh, uh, executions and the French Revolution, um, people experienced consciousness for, you know, and he went, he went, oh. No, he said, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be for that long. And then he went, if it was a chicken it would work. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine remaking that film when it's two chickens in horrendous car crash. <laughs> <laughs> Their would, own fault for driving. It. <laughs> <laughs> it would work. No. No, he wasn't having that. Yeah. No, it was too long. I think he said, how long was this film? Went on about five minutes. He went, no. <laughs> it would work if it was a chicken. I like the way that Carly was something like when you t relate an incident like that, he's appalled and offended and annoyed by the people that made it, even though he's yeah. never seen oh, it. Oh, he's, he's, he's annoyed, yeah. Do you have a favourite uh, Tales of the Unexpected, one that you remember particularly that shook you up? Yeah, we were talking about the one on, um, where uh, there's some woman in prison. Have you seen that one? No, I can't remember them all. Right? This woman's in prison. Yeah. And uh, she gets a bit friendly with the guy who takes the dead bodies out. Right. And uh, he says, I can get you out of here. So what you've got to do, right? You've got to, uh, I don't know, at midnight. When you, well, when you hear the bell toll, you know, that what, means there's a, been a, yeah. a dead body. Yeah, yeah, there's been a dead body. So what you've got to do is go into like the uh, place where all the dead bodies are, get on the, get in the first coffin on the right, and then I'll come along and carry you out, and you can run away and escape, yeah. right? So she goes, yeah, all right then. So she hears the bell go. I'll, no, I'll, I'll, I'll bury you, right? And then I'll come, I'll come back later and dig you up. Right. Yeah, but that's that, the that point. It doesn't matter. It does matter. Trust me, Carl. It right, really matters. Okay. Listen, I, I don't know if I'm going to ruin this for people at home. Yeah. Can I just skip to the end? I would imagine that she gets buried and he doesn't come back, and she has to get no, buried alone. Be better than yeah. that. So she gets in the coffin, and uh, she's lying there for ages. She's buried. She can feel a bit of movement going on, so she's obviously, you know, being carried somewhere. So she's thinking, "This is it. I'm getting out." And. Uh, I mean, she's lying there for ages and thinking, why isn't someone coming and lifting the lid off this? Do you know what I mean? Letting me get out. So she's really bored. She gets a lighter out, right? Lights it to have a look at who she's lying on. It's only the fella who said she'd it help escape. Oh. How bad is that? That is. <laughs> How bad is that? <laughs> <laughs> so it is quite important that she's buried alive, then, isn't it? In retrospect, you realise that the jeopardy is that she's buried alive and yeah. can't get out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes it so much worse, doesn't it, than just like lying in the morgue and going, "Actually, I'm getting out of here." Yeah, this isn't going to work. Look at Carl's face. Having told yeah. that, he's so pleased. His face is lit up. He's beaming like yeah. a child. Is Have that, you seen? Any? Is that your favourite horror thing ever? What was that one you told me about with the uh, with the porn? That was a good one. Oh, this was fantastic, right? <laughs> right. There was this, there was this, uh, Sorry, can I just check now? We're just remembering classic episodes of the Tales of No, the this is, though, this we? is, this is important. Well, I saw one, <laughs> right? I saw one, um, on Tales of Inspect, right? And it was, um, uh, this, these two gents, um, uh, what they used to do, they look, look down the obituaries and they'd blackmail um, the, the wife or the son of a, a dead eminent person, like might be a priest or a doctor or something like that, and they'd go and they'd say, he bought some, um, erotic, uh, um, stuff from us, um, before he died, and he owes, uh, a hundred guineas and all this sort of stuff, and, uh, and they'd pay up because it'd be so embarrassing, they just didn't want to so just pay him, yeah. right? And this one bloke said, um, who are these people? I'll meet with them. And he goes round there, and he goes round, and, uh, they go, your father, he goes, my father could not have bought any erotic material from you. And he did it, he goes, he couldn't have, he's blind. <laughs> right, and that was the twist. And Carl went, so it was magazines, not videos then. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, right, go on. What else is dying out? Pipes. Pipes. You never see people smoking pipes. Why Young people you? now not smoking pipes. No. You see old people, you're right, but s kids, you've got to start taking up pipes, otherwise they're gonna die out, cause <laughs> yeah. the people of the older generation, <laughs> they're, they're gonna die did, soon. Did, I'm not smoking a pipe, I should with be. With pipes, though, did- w was it like the fashion where, when you smoked, you started, you know, at a young age and then carried on, or 
did you just start at 50? But no, because if you see, like, um, sort of shots of kind of, uh, you know, sort of prof professorial types yeah. from the 1930s at yeah. st when they're at Oxbridge, yeah. they're always smoking pipes in a tweed jacket. Yeah. That was when they started, like, university. Yeah, but they still do. So yeah, I mean, no, I don't, that, no, there's lots of things that should die out in the rest of the world, carry on in Oxbridge colleges. Yeah, but my point is Boaters. that... Boaters. All right, all right, all I'm saying is that they're not even in Oxbridge now, they're not even smoking pipes. I bet there is There's someone. no one smoking pipes. I bet there is. Right, I'd like to know if there's anyone listening who's under the age of 30 that smokes a pipe regularly, and I don't mean like a crack pipe. And I, and I guarantee they went to Oxford or Cambridge. <laughs> okay, yeah. what's the number? Oh, eight, seven hundred, eight hundred, one, two, three, four. What's the email? ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk Pipes are dying out. Yeah. Snuff, that's as good as gone. Yeah. Snuff. S yeah, trilbies. My friend always said if he won, like, loads of money on the lottery, he'd like to try really hard to try and bring back, as a fashion accessory, the cape. Because uh, the capes like, are classy. I quite like the cape. The cape's brilliant, because you can kind of, you know, kind of mask your face with it. Yeah. Dracula-like. You can have it off, but still on, and on, but still off. Exactly. It's not like a coat. You know what I mean? Where you drape it over your shoulders and that can fall down. Carl, you're not a fan of the cape. You're turning your nose up at the cape. That's a madness. No pockets. <laughs> Good point. You <laughs> could have some kind of inner sort of smuggler's if pocket. They did that, poacher's pocket. <laughs> if, you did, if they did that, I'd buy one. <laughs> 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 well, I'll tell you what, that sounds good. It's That Sounds Good. It's just gone half past. It's the new <laughs> I feature. I can't believe that it. That Sounds Good. I, for a minute there, I was completely lost. Yeah. Remind me again, what's That well, Sounds Good? Uh, I, I thought, no, wait, well, it's That Film Sounds Good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that film sounds good. <laughs> right, this isn't, this isn't my famous film review, which I've got coming up. Right. Look forward to that. It's brilliant. Yes. It's, it's quite a delicate subject, but I think I deal with it sensitively. Brilliant. Okay. Um, this is... That film sounds good. Right. And I've taken Remind us again what that is, what this well, is. Well, it's... I'm going to pick a song from a, a film. Okay. That's on a, a, from the soundtrack, right? Yes. I'm choosing a song from uh, Jackie Brown. Okay. Great film. Yeah, brilliant film. And this is Across 110th Street by Bobby Womack. It's fantastic. Wonderful song. You'll only like this if you're really cool. Yeah, if you're really cool, like, say us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bobby Womack, Across 110th Street. It's great, isn't it? That's a lovely feature, And that actually. was... That's the first feature. Oh, that film sounds good. Brilliant. Yeah? Brilliant, yeah. That's I'm excellent. thinking of actually bringing out maybe a compilation of uh, I'd love to hear it. Song for the Lovers. Maybe. What sort of things can we hear, can we, can we expect in the future? Uh, I know you're a big fan. Uh, this is brilliant. He bought, right, <laughs> the soundtrack to the film Braveheart, <laughs> which is just well, kind of, no, let me just well, explain, which is just kind of big or orchestrated numbers, right? James and Warner. As far as he's concerned, that's classical music. <laughs> he's got a classical music CD in his collection. <laughs> it's the music from Braveheart. <laughs> oh. Oh, I sit there and I think, yeah, mate, I'd probably sort of lead my people's, yeah. you know... He's obsessed with Braveheart. He actually sort of relates to William Wallace. He actually thinks, yeah, that's the sort of thing I'd be doing. Yeah, it is. No. What was it you were working out to the other day as well? He's, you know, he's got like a personal, like, gymnast <laughs> or whatever. It's, what's it called? Is it a gym, gym no. expert? A no, trainer? No, no, You've got I a personal... Bo I box with this bloke. Yeah, he goes animal. boxing in, like, some underpass somewhere. <laughs> Right, every day, like, no sing, like every single day, every day, he goes boxing. Right, but and what was it you were training? What did you tell me oh you were training to this week? God. What oh, music this, did this, you have on? Oh my god, I have, I have actually. Now I know this, but I have actually gone red, haven't I? Yes. Right, it's I very was, hard to embarrass. I was working, I was working out and training and boxing. <laughs> oh my god, you're gonna have to play a record after this. To the Rocky soundtrack. To the Rocky soundtrack. He's bought, right, a CD which has got the best music from all of them. Now, was it Eye of the Tiger, or was it... <laughs> it starts up with Eye of the Tiger, then it goes, Hearts on fire. That's me sort of right <laughs> well. Then it goes, dun 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 Does any of your training with your, with your uh, trainer, does it ever involve you running through snow <laughs> with a log chained to your back? <laughs> yeah. Like in Rocky IV? And helping, I, I often have to help Russian peasants, because their, <laughs> their cart horse has, like, fallen over, but I lift it up. Whereas the other fella, he's training in a posh gym, having injections. I'm not. I'm just, like, breaking rocks and yeah. punching dead cows. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get that from? It's handy, wasn't it? Put it on. No, what is it? That's the he can't hear because he's got his... Put your headphones on. Well, it was You'll it, love it. it. You'll love it. it. Yeah. That's magnificent. Yeah. That's now Ricky Gervais' theme tune. Yeah. <laughs> Every time we start the show, we should just start with that. Win, Ricky, win. <laughs> <laughs> you two, walk on. I've got to give it to them. I hated you two for about 15 years. You've said like it before, really I know, before. I know, but I love that one now. Mm -hmm. I just love that album. I, oh, they can't put a foot wrong. Do now. you ever listen to the whole album? Because I know you tend to buy albums just for the singles. <laughs> when you could, of course, just buy the singles. <laughs> it's, I know where he's going. I bought light like funky ones. Oh, like, I wanted to say that. Yeah, I bought light like funky ones because I. <laughs> the <laughs> light <laughs> funky ones. 
you remember the Love Funky ones? That was about like a year ago. Uh, what did they do? They did Girl uh, in a Green Ab- Dress, yeah, Girl on TV. And uh, Abercrombie. That one that goes, yeah, Summertime Abercrombie yeah. and Fitch. The girls are wearing up. Do you remember that? It's like a light sort of summer. Listen, nonsense. I've got a lot of money. It's nothing to me, okay? <laughs> the light to funky I, I want a bit of light funky ones once. That's 15 quid. It's nothing to me. <laughs> <laughs> he put the two singles on, right? Never listen to the rest of the album. <laughs> I never listen to the two singles no, again either. The light funky ones. <laughs> oh, it's just uh, the, my street cred's gone down it. Rocky soundtrack and the light funky ones. You'd make two mistakes. Right, let's not forget Braveheart, the soundtrack. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a good film. Rick, we were talking earlier about it's stuff. True story about a little Australian freed the Scottish. The stuff that's dying out that we, I think you and I single handedly need to kind of uh, resurrect and salvage. Yeah. I thought the Trilby was dying out. Yeah. I'll surprise I you. And yet, was well, watching yeah. Top of the Pops last night, yeah. Jamiroquai was wearing one. And then lo and behold, Danny Minogue came on. She had one as well. I thought, by me. There's two people there trying to salvage the Trilby. And good really? luck. Really? Well, yeah. that's on its way then. Let, let them the do Trilby's that. fine. Let's do something else. But the bowler hat. Ah, the bowler hat. You never see, see I the bowler hat. I myself in the bowler hat. I love hat. a bowler hat. Carl, would you wear a bowler hat? You, I know you'd wear a cape. I did wear a Trilby. You wear a Trilby? Really? Mm. You must have looked like a. That's brilliant. What? Because you're a Mancunian. <laughs> well, there was a phase, wasn't there, in about 90. When was it? I think that was just round your way. <laughs> it might have been. It was in Manchester. They still get a job lot of trilbies and uh, persuade your kids. Yeah, yeah, I tell what's trendy. No, you know, no, Sean Ryder was one of these. <laughs> Does he? Yeah, yeah, go on. Yeah, <laughs> quid. And then everyone in your street had trilbies on. But you've never worn a bowler. Never. What about Kangol bowler? You <laughs> might think about it. Out again. Yeah. I tell you what. I, I would like to wear a bowler hat in a, in a dark hat, but I'm worried I look like one of those little fellas off the Home Pride advert. The Home Pride guys, they've been persevering with the bowler for years. They still look good in it, though. They're don't still they? looking good. They're dapper guys. Yeah. There's a lot of, um. The Jolly Green Giant, he had quite a distinctive look, which is obviously what I've been thinking of exploiting. What, the, the, the little like one? Oh, the, I know, the little, um. Uh, it, sort of like a little dress. Was it Corn cro- Croft? Corn Croft yeah. that made up his little skirt. Yeah. What yeah. was the Jolly Green Giant so jolly about? Probably he was very pleased. It was, can't have just been the sweet corn and the peas. No, I reckon it was his enormous jolly green knot. <laughs> I mean, he must have got up every day and gone, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> he must have been so happy. The, thing, the only thing that's like, in the case of the jolly green giant, or like when Gulliver was a giant and he was in Lilliput and all the Lilliputians, yeah. like, yeah. they helped him out, they were feeding him and stuff. Yeah. If you're a giant like that in that yeah. situation, how do you sort of have a little sneaky... Tug. You know, a little tug, a little J. Arthur rank. I don't know, because it's like... Yeah, it's yeah, very tricky to do that Because you're as big as their mountains, exactly. aren't you? You can't hide. They, they go, oh, you know, I mean, there's no... There's no the, oh, yeah. All it, the little village probably just thought it was a tidal wave or something. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's pretty grim, though. Yeah. I mean, the tidal wave's pretty desperate. I know. It's how would he have gone to the mayor and said, I need... I oh, need a Kleenex the, the size, size of a yeah. tennis court. Yeah. And a gigantic copy of the Daily Star. You yeah. know, I never understood with giants how they actually got that big in the first place, because what food was around to make them because not only were they like big big but they were mostly big they, like, did, they ate well they ate whole cows probably when yeah, Carl, you it, know you it's know, not well documented Carl. you know it? you know they don't actually exist and never have mm. okay right it's time for a feature i think <laughs> Carl, I've got a, there was a tv show i watched once on the, the history channel this is the history channel yeah it was the history of werewolves Right, the history of werewolves, yeah. and the whole show is predicated on the fact that at the end we'll tell you if they ever existed or not. Yeah, just waiting. And they go, oh, come on, we're going to be late. Hold on, he's going to tell us <laughs> exactly. if they existed or not. Carl, werewolves. Michael Aspel was in it, and Michael Aspel is a top broadcaster, and therefore would not associate himself yeah, with something that, that did not way. exist. Under the covers, time, gents. Under the covers, cover me up, cover, cover me bad, run for cover. Here yeah. come the covers. <laughs> yeah, mm, covers. I this, like cover songs. This is a cover version. Yes, uh, this is from an album which uh, is a bit hit and miss, as these things often are. It's uh, different artists covering the songs of Leonard Cohen. You've oh, got yeah. the Pixies on there, REM, Nick Cave, different people. This bizarrely is Lloyd Cole, not someone I'm normally a fan of, but doing oh, a like version, doing a version of the fantastic Leonard Cohen song at Chelsea Hotel. Oh, Play it, Carl. It's beautiful. Lloyd Cole doing oh. his version of Chelsea Hotel. Under the covers. Under the covers. I thought it was a beautiful version. It's lovely. You know, that, apparently, really I think nice. it's that song uh, sweet. written by Leonard Cohen originally, and I think it's about his uh, brief romance with uh, Nico, who made a name, of course, oh, of course with the Velvet Underground, Underground, and was yeah. a tragic uh, drugs victim. But it's interesting, because I'm looking at this, this is a compilation called I'm Your Fan, which is cover songs of Leonard Cohen's music. And as I say, R.E.M., there's people on the Nick Cave who are still going. There's a couple of names you don't tend to hear of that often now. The House of Love. Oh, yeah. Rarely hear them, do you? Um, that Petrol Emotion. Oh, yeah. That yeah. Petrol Emotion. Yeah. Uh, who else we got on here? Uh, it says Robert Forster. Now, is he a musician or is it? I don't. Robert Forster. I don't know. Well, if you know um, <laughs> who Robert Forster is, I thought he was a writer. The Lilac Time. 
The Lila Time. <laughs> They're on there as well. <laughs> you can't uh, just say the name of a band and laugh. <laughs> you can if it's the Lila Time. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh. Um, we Did I tell around. you before that we, my friend and I once listed words we thought should be rude? Th- but aren't like cassock. We always thought, yeah, and bollards. Uh, he, bollards, and he always pointed out the blow monkeys. Yeah, which I was that could, be a, <laughs> it could be a very rude word, oh, but isn't it? Isn't it kind that of could be funny. a new feature, couldn't it? Mm. We're featured up, aren't we? Aren't we? This is we've brilliant. This is it. We've still got the film review to come. Song for Lovers is coming up in a few minutes. Song for the ladies. Yes, yeah, song for the ladies. Um, well, if I got? can squeeze in a hip hop track, I'd love to do it. Yeah, that's that's called our hip hop track bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, it's just, it's just amazing. Do we have a classic song, Rick. What what were you thinking of? Oh, I don't know. Maybe something by um, Nirvana. Well, there's there's well their biggest classic. You mean? Ideally, smells like Teen Spirit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now think about it, Steve. Is that so stupid? Well, presumably it was set in olden times because yeah. people, oh, professional right. pornographers, don't tend to call it you know <laughs> erotic material. <laughs> yeah, they tend to call it you know juicy jugs or whatever. <laughs> Well, more than that, I don't understand how a video is going to be any use to a blind person either. I know that you can hear the sound, yeah. Carl. <laughs> yeah. Look at you nodding like yeah. you caught me out. Yeah, what sound will you hear? Do, 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 do. Your meter mm. needs looking at? Yes. Cut. What's then? What's that? Then it's just noises. Occasional it? groans. Yeah. Right. You okay. could listen through the wall at your neighbours. <laughs> he does. <laughs> I mean, that's why I save a lot of money. <laughs> But I thought you were going to point out, Carl, that they could have had a braille porno. Now, have yeah. you thought of that? Look, feel, feel the lumps on that. <laughs> exactly. Think about it, Carl. Think about it. You're excited now. Yeah. yeah. Your girlfriend's away, Carl. Yeah, the cheese grate is only under the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's a good looking lady. Yeah. <laughs> 104.9 XFM, hello. Uh, I'm Carl. Ricky and uh, Ricky Gervais and Steve aren't here. So we're uh, we're playing through some of the best bits. I say the best bits. Uh, it's the bits I came across first. I mean, I'm not I'm not wasting my time. I'm I'm a busy man. You know what I mean? So um, here's here's another bit. What do you make of the first genetically modified baby? Oh, are you worried about you, this? Do you know what, what did they do? What? Uh, Let me see what it says here. It well, says, isn't it uh, just choosing uh, choosing the you know? Eye colour. Well, this or, is the, or, this is the this is the concern, isn't it? That in the future you'll be able to decide uh, whether it's a boy or a girl, what how intelligent it is, what it looks like, is it handsome, is it ugly? Obviously, no one will choose an ugly baby, and so on and so on and so on. And so, it means that you know, well, where will it lead? Where will it end, Carl? Are you concerned? I've thought about this a lot. Cause what will us three look like we, in the future we, if listen. they're being you know genetically modified beautiful people? What will be we be like? How will we be considered in That's society? True, yeah. But we've talked about this before, haven't we? About uh, the cloning thing. Yeah, that's no, a bit weird. Yeah. But um. <laughs> I don't think it matters because at the end of the day, right, you might look like some other kid, but it's the way you've brought that you brought up that will change your features and the way you are, you know, your personality. If you lie, you get a long nose, don't you? Well, no, well, listen, right, because I remember when when we, you know, I was growing up on this estate. This is gonna be good. Go on. No, no, it's not. It's just a, an example of how this doesn't work. Go on. Know, so we don't need to worry, sort of thing. Sure. Right? Okay. So I'm growing up on this estate, and there was a there was this woman about four houses down, right? It's a bit rough. All right. Didn't fancy her. Oh God, no. Right, but she had a <laughs> baby. Well, tell me about her first. I'm interested in this woman. What was she? It was a very. So, like, a bit of man in a dress. I mean, I didn't grow up in a posh house or anything. And I'm sure. Not, I'm not saying that if you live in a bit of a rough house, mm. you're a bad person. What does she look like? But anyone can Tattoos? clean up. Look like make, Tony Green with a fag on. They didn't clean up much, right? Oh. Which, even if you've not got a lot of money, you can still try well, and make it place look nice. Yeah. Right. But she didn't, and. A kid used to take a horse into the house. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> whoa, 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 Neddy, whoa, 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 Neddy. What do you mean a kid used to take a horse into the house? When they get a right? horse? Must have nicked it from somewhere. <laughs> Must have gone. Is using horse in it? No. <laughs> is that from outside the saloon round the corner? <laughs> yeah. Was it just tied up with a bit of that? <laughs> yeah. um, oh, that's great. I've been Big, out. big Jake. I'm looking for it. I've been out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, sorry, let me get this. This was before the lynching stopped or after. <laughs> 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 Where'd he get a horse from? What do you mean he must have nicked it? He's going to say, where'd you get that from? I bought it. All right, then. But we'll keep it out of the kitchen. <laughs> I don't want you going Catelyn rustling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> Where did he get a horse from, Carl? Just... And how long did he have it for? Until... Was he leading it or riding it? <laughs> Mum, open the door, I can't stop! I can't stop it! <laughs> open the patio door as well, I'll be... Looks like we got us a runaway! <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know, but the oh. thing is, they couldn't afford to buy one because they're not cheap. So I'm just guessing. Maybe that's wrong of me. But I, I think... He had know, a horse? Yeah, right. So That's I, why the family didn't have any money. They'd spend it on the horse. No, I don't exactly. think, that's what I'm saying. I don't think they would have bought it. So anyway... Yeah, it's always the whisper call in case they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they could not, be in the room next door. It's not buying it, it's keeping it as well. Oh. Well, so, well. I, so I was like in the car with my dad, coming yeah. into the avenue, and you used to have to drive down it to turn round. And, yeah. Uh, and you know, sort of go back to to our house. You had the traditional method of transport. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, the horse was in the lounge. <laughs> Reading a paper. Just, just like walking around. <laughs> oh, God! This is what? And when I, when I was doing it, I, I tried to earn myself some money once by flogging little flowers in, in plastic cups. What? This like, is and genius. Went... <laughs> it just keeps coming. What do you mean you're trying to flog little flowers? What do you mean? Well, <sighs> wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's play, play a record. Wrong. Let's play a record oh, and come back to this. Wait a minute, wait a minute. just unravel and unravel. It's yeah, yeah. Hours. Let's it play a track, deeper and deeper. It's yeah, like an on, onion, Carl. isn't you, it? We've created a whole world here where there's a man living with a horse. Just walking around the land. I, mean, I, I come from the West Country, I've never just, heard anything like that. I just think of a big sort of like orange carpet and it's got a, a rediffusion telly and this horse yeah. going, I'm fed up in here. Exactly. This is really I am not taking the rubbish out again. Yeah. <laughs> right, play a record. Let's have uh, Velvet Underground. We've got that lined up. Oh, yeah, God. the classic from the first album. Uh, I'm waiting for the man. Let's come back to the horse in a second. Little flowers in pots. <laughs> what do you mean? From that classic first album, Velvet Underground and Nico, which apparently peaked at a disappointing 171 in the US charts. Think of that. And that's obviously Lou Reed, the Velvet Underground, and uh, Waiting for the Man. Yeah, great track. So, we were talking, uh, we were doing White Van Man, and uh, we got onto. Uh, um, we got onto to genetically, genetically modified babies. But and then somehow Carl we... started telling a story about someone with a horse, and then he got on to, he was trying to make money selling flowers. Just do the flowers briefly. Well, hang on, I just want to recap slightly. So there was a family, and who had the horse in the family? It was... Because you live on a, an estate in Manchester. The, so the, the yeah. mother, the mother was a right pig, apparently. Well, I don't know if that's right. You relevant. don't need to go that far. But, but, you, but, but what I'm trying to do is, like, make a picture for you so you understand what, like, what a picture like? it is. Who did she look like? Um, bit of a, and no disrespect to her, <laughs> bit like Pauline Quirk. <laughs> Quirky, yeah. <laughs> Right. Okay. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. I knew it was going to be important. Did she have any tats? Did she have any tats? Oh, I've never got that close to it. Okay, all right. So, and so who had the horse? Was this her son or her no, husband? No, her, her daughter. Her daughter had stolen a horse? Yeah, from, I don't know where, there was a, I think it was some stables down the road or something. And they, they kept the horse in the house with them? They kept it in the house. Did they, they didn't get have caught? it for long. No. So, and you said you were in the house one day and you saw the no, horse No, no, what happened was, I was, um, they did this thing at school about raising money for charity, right? for some local charity and they said you can do anything to, to raise money and they came out with all these ideas and I thought that's good. What was the charity? Well, forget, well I don't know, I thought forget the charity. Yeah, that's I'm just a, a charity good making either. those weeks. So, <laughs> You're a charity. So, um, <laughs> so I asked me mum for some, uh, cause she used to have a lot of flowers around the house. Sure. I said can I just take some snippings of them and uh, I'll go and buy some plastic cups and uh, got some soil out of the garden, planted the, the, the bits of plants in them. Yeah. Got a tray. Yeah. Had about 25 plants on it, selling yeah. them for 25 pence each. Excellent. Did you sell any? Yeah, so loads. So they w did you just cut, you didn't just cut them and stick them in yeah, the soil? Yeah, they want to survive. Oh. But I think people sort of thought, well, good on him for trying. But anyway, so I went round to theirs, because I thought their house could do with a bit of colour and stuff. Yeah. Because it's a bit rough. So, as I went The horse went, thank God for that <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> they was they, they were feeding me kitty cat. Yeah. So I got up to the door, and they opened the door, and it was one of them houses where no carpet. <laughs> yeah. A horse in the living room. <laughs> you know. We've all been there. And, yeah. and the horse was walking around the living room. Oh. I looked quite happy and everything because I always say that about animals. Black Beauty right? was on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, think about it, right? If you were a horse, where would you rather be? In a little wooden hut with a load of hay or in like a house with a central you know, heating? Three piece suite and sure. a telly and that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was saying this the other day. Right? <laughs> and an Atari. Right? <laughs> I was walking through London. Coming on 64, yeah. rubbish. Exactly. W walking through London with Suzanne, right? Yeah. And you know how, like, homeless people always have dogs? And yeah. she said, oh, I hope, I hope she looks after it. And I said, they've got, that dog is happier than most dogs. Right. Because people always walk past and give it a pat on the head. Yeah. It's with its owner all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's out in the open, it's not locked up in a house. Yeah. It doesn't you know eat, I mean? but other than that. <laughs> no, it does eat, though, they're always alright. So that's what I was saying, I think this horse, 
was was doing all right for itself. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, not many horses have got their own house. Exactly. For a start, yeah. But well, anyway, that's that's well, that's what by the by. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, this family. It was a bit. What were we talking about? It was about genetically modified kids yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Right now, what I'm saying is, you could say, you know, right, Steve, you could have a baby, mm -hmm. right? And Ricky could see it and say, God, I want one that looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> right. It so, could happen, Rick. <laughs> so come on, work with him. So you take it to the doctors, and I don't know what they do. They, they inject it with something or whatever. Yep, that's how yeah. it's done. Yeah. And uh, get a little baby, and there it is. It looks the same. Now the thing is, you separate. You both go off and do your own things. Yep. Right. Yeah. Now, you look at Steve. Stephen, this is. You look after your baby. Yeah. You treat it well. You give it good food and that. Good dad. All the vitamins and stuff. Yeah. Mm. Ricky just gives it cheese. <laughs> right. So then it changes its looks. It goes a bit fat. You know, it gets tired easily, and that sort of thing. <laughs> now, when this family- Why am I just feeding a baby cheese? Right? This, this, um, this, this, this family had a horse in the, in, you know, in their, in their house. Yeah. They had a, a little baby. And my mum went round and said, you're not gonna believe this, but it's a beautiful looking baby. Right? Yeah. And I was like, well, you know. And, uh, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, they didn't really look after it. And I'm not saying, like, abusing it, but he used to run around, he used to play out till, like, ten at night. Yeah. Uh, he used to chase cars. <laughs> right. It was a bit... <laughs> Did it have hooves? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. No. <laughs> Chase cars! Right? What sort of kid chases cars? <laughs> oh, God! No. Was it called Rover? The weird Did it catch sticks? Liam, it was called, right? Right. Now, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, and all that, like, not eating properly and its hair was all patchy. <laughs> it's not Liam Gallagher, is it? <laughs> And chasing cars on that, and it became an ugly kid. <laughs> it's definitely Liam Gallagher. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's what I'm saying, right? You can uh, clone, you can clone all you like, but at the end of the day, it's yeah. how you brought up. Brilliant. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. That was a hell of a point. Oh, God. <laughs> but am I right? Oh, you're always right, Carl. <laughs> Now, Carl, I know you're fascinated by the concept of the doppelganger, of seeing someone who looks exactly like you. Yeah. Jake has emailed in, he says, Carl, if you could spend a day with an exact replica of you, okay, so f somehow they've cloned you, Carl, and they've got, you've got him for one day, what would you do with this? What would you, what would you make him do? What would you, uh, what conversation would you have with him? What would you do? Is there anything you could, you know, how would you utilise him for one day? Well, they'd both say, I'm not bothered, and that'd be the end of conversation. <laughs> yeah. What would do me head in is, does he, does he think the same way, look the same way, exactly dresses? Exactly the same. Yeah. How would I know which one I was? <laughs> <laughs> because you'd be you. That's amazing. No, no, no. How would I know which That's one I was? That's incredible. No, because- That is the most stupid thing ever said by a human being. Can we get the Guinness Book of Records on this? It has anyone anywhere in the world said anything more stupid than how would I know which one was me. But think about it, this other person's going, alright, thanks for, uh, meeting up and that. And they go, hang on a minute. No, you, you came to me. And then Suzanne would come home and she wouldn't know the difference. And then suddenly you'd start doubting yourself. And you'd go, should I be leaving? Or... So, how do I know if I am that real one, if he knows what I know? But you know who you are because you're yeah, but, experiencing it. But he'd it. be saying that because he'd say, yeah, it is a bit weird. But you know the truth, you, know? you idiot. Because How would wouldn't... I know which one I was? So anyway, but bear in mind, you what could would pass, you do? You could pass I... him off as yourself. What would you do? Would you play tricks? Would you, uh, you know, you could what? be in two places at once. Would you do stings? Would you do scams? No, because it would only end up getting me into trouble, won't it? Because people won't believe that there's another one like me. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, everyone would be saying that when they get caught robbing, they go, "Oh, it wasn't me. It was my doppelganger." <laughs> <laughs> it can only. I wouldn't want it to be honest. It's a, it, again, it's a bit of a headache, isn't it? Because he could be going off going mental, causing all sorts of trouble, and you're going, well, you pack it in. <laughs> and he's going, what? What are you on about? But then that wouldn't happen, would it? Because he's being me, so he'd be sat wherever I am anyway. Because hmm. he'd want to do what I want to do. So, pointless. But I still wouldn't want it. It's unbelievable. That was a conversation with himself. That yeah. was amazing. That was we, like that was like experiencing what it would be like. There was two cars. <laughs> yeah, he was we could, a discussion with himself. We could have left in yeah. that time and come back, and he'd be arguing still. What does this mean? <laughs> does this mean? <laughs> <laughs> does this mean though that I could just sit at home and not do anything, and just send me out on? Yes. 
And any, any, when he, when he's seen something happen, I'm seeing it. No, 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 no. no. You're separate people. You're separate people. But then yeah. he's not a doppelganger. Then, well, is he? you're identical twins. Then you found out identical twins, and he's got the, exactly the same input as you. I mean, it's not a real question, is it? It's just a little again. But I said to you the other week about twins and that. How it's, I, I wouldn't like to have a twin. It's a, it's all right when you're a kid, but unless you're a Siamese twin, even they don't even look alike. Do they just stuck together? You don't go. Oh, don't they look like each other? They have different haircuts. They don't. They don't carry that thing on, do they? That normal twins do. Like normal <laughs> twins, the mums say have the same haircut, wear the same shirt. Siamese twins never look the same. They just got their ass stuck together. <laughs> Again, it's a dialogue in his own head. It's unbelievable. Okay, Carl. This is a a, a logical conundrum. Um, to a certain extent, there's a little bit of lateral thinking because, uh, but there is only one right answer. Um, now, the pressure here isn't to get this right. The pressure is when I've told you the answer to then understand it. Because I've still, when I've explained this to people, I've laid out for them, they still can't quite get the concept. Um, okay, so there's two doors, Carl. Yeah. One leads to heaven, one leads to hell. Yeah. Okay, they're identical. You can't tell them apart. Okay, 50 50. Right. Obviously, you want to go to heaven, I assume. Right, there's two guards, identical guards, guarding each door, okay? Right. The one guarding hell always tells a lie. The one guarding heaven always tells the truth. You have to ask one question to find out which, which is which, and then go through the door you want. What question do you ask? I've only got one? Yeah. And what, one to, to both? No, one to either of them. You don't know which one's which, though. So what question do you ask? Why can't I ask, like, both of them one? Because it's because not the, the rules. Because the rules are, you can only ask one. There aren't actually two doors labelled heaven and hell, Carl. That's, it's a leap of imagination here. And I, I've, I've, I've definitely got to answer, I've got to ask them a question. I can't just sort of have a feel of the door to see <laughs> if there's any heat or anything. <laughs> <laughs> They're identical. You stand a few yards away. You cannot tell from the outside of these doors which is which. What question do you ask? Can't look through the keyhole or anything. There's no keyhole near them. Um, Let's imagine there's a small rope that prevents you from getting anywhere near, rather like outside a nightclub. Yeah. So they stood there. Yeah. They both look the same. They're both smiling. Yeah. But one of them's not really smiling. Really, he's trying to make me make a mistake, isn't he? Well, he's just going to lie when you ask him a question. If you ask him. So what's the point in asking a question? Do I know one of them's going to lie? Yeah. But would they be neighbours like this? Would they be that close? <laughs> Why? <have> I... <laughs> <sighs> I mean, we're not sure if these two guys get on. Okay, well, I'll tell you the answer. No, 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 I want to see if he can get it. He's almost there. Uh, no, he's not almost there. What am I thinking? So, no, hang on, right, so you go up and you yeah. go, um, you Right, go... hang on, well, look, let's, let's imagine that, let's imagine Ricky and I are those two guys, okay? Right? But we have to, um, uh, uh, well, well me, and, me and Steve will decide which doors we're guarding, okay? Right. Uh, I'm... Uh, look, look away, Carl. Okay, right, then. so we've decided, okay, one of us is guarding hell and one of us is guarding heaven. Which question are you going to ask and who are you going to ask it to? Right, um, I'll just say to you, Steve, I'll go, uh, uh, got some, uh, got some post for God here. <laughs> That's not a question. That's a statement. Right, you've got some posts for God here. Well, that's not a question. Yeah, but maybe right, the question's right. coming. I got, you've got some posts for God here, yeah? Uh, And it needs to be signed. It's, it's not a, a question. Still not a question. No, let so him finish me. Is, is God in, because I need him to sign for this post? Is he in? Well, I can answer that as well, if you want. Go on. He, he's, yeah, he's in. He's behind my door. Do you want to answer it? Well, yes. Do you, want, do you want to get him? Just, uh. Well, you've only got one question. So you're, you're asking Steve, is God in? What's the answer? Yes. Ask me. Yes. Look, lads, I'm just trying to do a job here. <laughs> um, what am I going to do with this? Well, give it to me and I'll give it to God because he's behind my door. Steve? Yeah, give it to me and I'll take it into God because he's behind my door. You're an idiot. Like, let me tell you the answer. I'm guarding hell, by the way. I'm the devil. Steve's God, okay? So you ask me what, what Steve would say if you asked him what door he was guarding. And I'm going to lie. I know he'd say heaven, because he'd tell the truth, but I'm lying, so I'd say, he'd say hell. 
So the, the, uh, the question is, if I was to ask the other one what door he was guarding, what would he say? And whatever the person answers is the door they're guarding. Steve, what door are you, are you looking after? Well, heaven. Yeah. Why should I believe you? Because you don't know. No, that doesn't work. Because you asked me the same and I'd say heaven as well. Right, so who do I believe? This is where you use your gut feeling though, isn't it? This is what life's... <laughs> As opposed to the pure logic that Ricky's just used. I just think, because there's a lot of <laughs> questions in life where you don't know the answer and you go, do you know what, I don't like the look of him. <laughs> so... They're I, identical. Yeah, but they're still identical twins. You always get a little snidey one. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rick, you're not the only one who's been away. I know you've been off working, but yeah. I, at long last, have taken a bit of leisure time. Go on. And, uh, <laughs> you've probably heard of the Rio de Janeiro Carnival. Only one of the uh, the hottest uh, you know events in the world oh, calendar. Yeah. <laughs> imagine me down there. Oh, Rio! God. You can imagine. Did not know oh, what hit it. Oh God! Oh my! Imagine, were you like uh, Paul the Party Animal Parker? He would not have been able to keep up if he was with me. God! What did you do? What oh, did you get up to? Oh, let me tell you right now. Um, day one, I almost drowned. Day two, I got a foot infection and spent a day in the hospital, and the rest of the time I had diarrhoea. So that's uh, that's the, that was a hell of a that was a hell of a time. Carnival. Yeah, yeah. I did. Uh, I was able to watch some of the carnival on TV, oh and right. it looked brilliant. It looked did amazing. It? Um, I didn't actually. I, it was difficult to make out because the TV wasn't actually in my room. Because <laughs> um, in an effort to save money, I wasn't staying in a hotel. I was staying with a bunch of other people in some kind of like someone's flat that they let out. <laughs> And uh, so I had to look, I had to watch the TV, it was like from my window, watching a neighbour's TV. And of course when they changed the channel, you know, often during the juicy bits, I couldn't see anything. And, um, so, but they looked really good. I'm bunged up at the moment just so I can get through the show. But I've just been on a 12 hour flight, and it is terrifying being on a flight when you know that any moment you could go. Because, you know how the problem is sometimes the toilet's free and sometimes in, you've got to queue up. And the worst bit is that, that sort of half an hour just before you land, when they say the toilets are out of bounds now. <laughs> I'd say I went twice before that in quick succession. The woman sat next to the toilet. She was she didn't know what was going on, the noises and stuff in there. And I was because I was really oh. panicky. Oh Christ! And um and so of course then on the whole flight uh, as we're landing, I'm just I'm really petrified because I'm thinking this could I'm mean, like packed a pair of underpants and jeans in my in my bag in the hold all just in case it all went. Oh, and I was no. really, because I hate flying anyway, and I hate landing because it's the most terrifying moment of the journey. Then it really was rumbling, and I was thinking, I've got to get out of here. Of course, you know, you know when you're in a hurry, everything, suddenly, everything makes you angry. The little old lady in front of me who's just hobbling along off the gangplank. Go yeah. away! Yeah. You know, just really with, no with your with your with your bad hips and yeah, your bad and legs. Yeah, Zimmer frame. I know you've been through a war, but get out of my way. <laughs> yeah. And just anyone who kind of even passes you, oh, you just oh. and uh, so I, yeah, I managed to get there just in time. Got into the and it all went off. Man alive, it was it was grim. <laughs> I uh, I was walking uh, away from the show last week. I was walking towards Berry Street, like to look at the records and that. Record sure. Shops. And I was on my mobile phone. And I was trying to wait to someone and. Uh, what can only be described as a prostitute? Go on. Stood on the street corner. Was she a woman that gives you sex for money? Yes. That is a prostitute. Yes, that's what I thought. Go on. And as I was walking by, she said, "You want to buy sex?" <laughs> no. You sure right. it wasn't a market trader giving six plums? Away no, it was definitely sex for a queen. No, it was definitely a prostitute. Yeah. And what annoyed me about it, what I wanted to pick her up on something, was the fact that I was on my mobile phone. <laughs> It's she like, can you imagine, who, who would I, I, what, am I gonna hang up? Sorry mum, can I call you back? I've you know, you know you say you want me to meet more women. And you know you sent me that 30 quid <laughs> exactly. for my birthday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry Mr Johnson, I'm really excited about the job, can I call you back? I'm just gonna negotiate with a whore. <laughs> and it was just, it was like, it was just sort of, you could tell that she was clearly probably desperate for crack or a latest yeah. fix of smack, so she was literally, she, the normal etiquette of prostitution, you know, they hang around, they show some thigh. <laughs> I've seen this in they films. Will ya? Yeah, they exactly. Will, yeah, 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 yeah. Take you out for a meal. That I sort know. Of thing. That's sort of gone out of the window, and yeah, she was sure. just there, desperate, running around. Did she the go out of the window? Like because well. that's <laughs> another thing they sometimes do, specialist exactly. ones. But I was yeah. shocked because I've never been uh, propositioned before like that. Really? In London, I was it's weird, isn't it? Carl, thoughts? I I think you'd be sort of approached a lot because they tend to sort of go for people who look like they haven't got much chance. Sure. And I'm not being mean. No, 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 no. I'm Sorry, I'll, I'll let you go back to it. In what way aren't you being mean? By saying that no, Steve... Steve's nose is a little bit odd looking. <laughs> I don't 
thing? What? No, he does. <laughs> Do you know, do you know yeah, before? No, no, but it's not whether what he thinks of his looks, no. it's what he thinks of you talking about his looks on... No, but it's, it's on. like how you were talking before about, you know, your eyes are bad. It's nature's little way of saying, look, nothing to see here, right? <laughs> don't get that! Well, I don't know what you mean. What but when you look in the mirror and that, they've gone, look, he hasn't got the looks, let's make his eyes bad, right? Yeah. Nothing to see here. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, see, you're balancing I... it out, right? Yeah. And... It's funny, right? Now we're on the topic. Sorry, sorry, right, Johnny Depp. Hey, listen. <laughs> I'm gonna- my- my chest is gonna burst at this but moment. All, whenever we go into this conversation, I always think to myself, Carl, do you know what you look like? <laughs> I- I'm gonna burst. <laughs> you know, seriously, can I be honest with you? You look like- you know if you've got like a balloon, a hot air balloon, right? Just a little balloon like a party balloon. If you drew a little face on it, right, and inflated it about halfway, that's what you look like. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, well, no, got, play a record. No, I don't listen, want to get into this. Listen, now, now, now you've you've got onto this. Let's just nip it in the bud now. I'll tell you something that I wasn't going to tell you because I think I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Right. It was on the tube. Right. Well, I was. Someone told me they were on the tube. Mm. Right. And um, it uh, the, the tube pulled into a station. <laughs> right. And one of the women saw the poster that's yeah. out at the moment with you and Rick on it. Right. Yeah. So this this woman apparently goes. Uh, Oh, look, there's, uh, Ricky. Ricky's on the radio, right? And, uh, the other woman goes, oh, yeah, d d don't you listen to it? So she goes, oh, I didn't, I didn't know it was on the radio. And she goes, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, Steve. Look, I'm look Because he didn't look, he found this bad one. <laughs> she said, oh, look at that, look at that person he's with. So she goes, yeah, 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 yeah. She said, that's Steve. She said, I'm kind of, I was, I was sort of aware that he looked odd because Carl mentions it on the radio. Yeah. So, so it wasn't as much of a blow to me, but I can see how it was a bit of a shock to you. Yeah. So uh, that's 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 weird, isn't it? Yeah. And that isn't me sort of telling this one to say anything. That was all happened without anybody else sort of bringing it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So was it? Sorry, you seem to be relishing this. Was it because of the little balloon story that made you? I, I honestly, see, I wouldn't have told you, but if you're going to start, you know, having a pop. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I can't just sit here and take sure. it and that. No, no. I mean, mm -hmm. all mates. Yeah, just, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I was just mistaken for Johnny yeah. Vegas. Steve's got a story about that, if you want to have a go at me. Well, you'd have someone just thought you were a fat with a beard, which is true. Well, don't have a go at me because he said you don't. No, you started it. No, I didn't. Yeah, no, was, I didn't. You were milking it. You were I egging was, him I on. I was laughing. You were egging him on. <laughs> I sort of was. Yeah. But let's not, you know. Oh, it's a good job you've got lots of good mates like Jonathan Ross who you can go and hang out with. <laughs> don't need other friends, people who've helped you in your career. He's a yeah. good looking bloke, isn't he, Jonathan Ross? He's a good looking fella. Out of time, by blur. Luckily, we're not out of time. <laughs> Got another hour and twenty-five to go, <laughs> so it's not over yet on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. We've had uh, quite a lot of emails as ever. Rick. I should so. just say, because you know we're so very lazy. It's a much listened to show. We're very lazy people, and we rarely reply or read out the emails. But we I do never want... read the emails. Absolutely so I rely. If I haven't replied to them, all my mail. Well, Steve opens my mail and reads my emails. So if I haven't replied, it's just because he hasn't passed it on to me. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I haven't passed it on to you because I know you'll never reply. So, sure. You know, I'm just cutting out that. But I uh, just want to say thanks for the emails. We do read some of them, and we do appreciate the fact people send in jokes. Oh, I appreciate it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, we've had to do anything towards it. Sure, we had an email from Jack. He just said he missed the last two weeks' shows. Has he missed anything? Not really. No. No, it's the same stuff. Same you missed, I think Carl, last week Carl was having a go at uh, Chinese people not aging well. He had a go at the gays, and he came up with a ludicrous story about a monkey that was impossible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I don't think Jack's missed much. No. <laughs> go on. No. Uh, we just had an email from the Pringles people. Oh, they, uh, it, right, good, because it's finally started to happen. I hear these stories about people getting given cars and Armani suits and trips abroad, and we haven't had enough, but finally, people are starting to, you know, realise what we're doing, our impact <laughs> on society, yeah. and we've got a whole box of Pringles sent to us. Not all those little tubes, the proper tubes, the foot-long tubes. Yeah. So... <laughs> you know, and I, you know, well, what have they said? Well, the Pringles they guys want them said, back. No, 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 they said, uh, they like the show, and if you want more Pringles, give them a call and they'll I, send you I more Pringles. Pringles. Yeah. I bloody love Pringles. Yeah. Pringles are, the thing about Pringles is, um, uh, they're 
They're Moorish, right? Yeah. But uh, how, would I, how would I put it? You know the, the sort of thing uh, when you open when I open them, yeah. And by that, I, I, I when I pop, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, I have to eat. The, well, no, okay, I'm gonna put this. When I pop, I can't stop. What do you mean? I don't. Well, when I pop, when I pop them open, I can't yeah. stop eating them. Open. Right. When you pop, you can't stop. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's because of the chemicals. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might be the reason. But they're good. Chemicals. They're, they're good, good chemicals. chemicals. They're the best chemicals. Pringle chemicals. They're not bad chemicals. Like, Lovely. Using chemicals. So, yes, water. I want some more Pringles. Yes, what so else more, do more do? It's interesting, actually, you were saying that, that like, other people, you know, like Kylie, I imagine, would get given sort of maybe sexy underwear. You got uh, Robbie Williams, where he gets the Armani suits. You get sent the crisps. <laughs> yeah. If she yeah. was appropriate. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but it's nice to be sent. Isn't I, it? um. Go on. Talking of Pringles, I, uh, yeah. on the Finchley Road tube station. Yeah. Very on the way in. There's no Pringles there. Well, I'll tell you a job I don't like. What? I wouldn't want to be doing. The the woman, there's a little woman who sits in the little <laughs> snack stall on Finchley Road. Station, yeah. And I don't know how to describe it really. She is surrounded by snacks. She can't move for snacks. It's, it's like, a little like American it, Beauty, but with with uh different not dissimilar to that. Yeah. It's a little hut on the station. <laughs> yeah. And it's like if you go to the seaside you can put your head through one of those cardboard cutouts and it looks like you're a big fat person or whatever and you yeah. can have your photo taken. It's like an equivalent of that, but it's just snacks everywhere. She's got bananas up to her chin. <laughs> She's got chocolate coming down to her eyes, crisps either side of her. She can't move. She can't do 360 degrees. She's like packed in there. I don't think, I don't know how she gets in there. I in think the they put her in her first and they put, okay, pour in the bananas. Yeah. They go, and then they go, go pour in the nuts. She has and two hours of makeup before they exactly, open. Exactly, yeah. Dressing her in there. Because I'll ask for something from the fridge and she cannot turn her head to see. She has to go by feel alone, just to feel the fridge <laughs> and get stuff out and pass it. And often I'll say, that's not what I wanted, but she can. You gotta let her off. It's oh, extraordinary. Dear. But there's no music playing. Does she have to sell her way out of it? <laughs> if, 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 if it's a slow day, she's stuck yeah. there until the next day. Yeah, it's like a world breaking attempt. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, dear. That's Finchley Road, so if you. you so, know, yeah, if you're on Finchley Road or just want to pop down there, have a look at the snack woman, because it is, uh. It's how does she easy. get refills, though? I don't know how it works. I don't know how she goes to the toilet or eats. I don't know what she does. Yeah. But, uh, mm. but uh, God bless her. That's, that's, so that's one of the jobs you wouldn't That's have. jobs I would not like. I've yeah. always worried about working in one of those big photocopying places. Sure. Because it's just, that's constant taste of toner. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's so dry and just, just, I, I just imagine going to work with a hangover. Yeah. Eight hours in that sort of environment. I think it's those jobs where what's the best that can happen? <laughs> that day, do you know what I mean? The photocopying shot, what's the best? Well, they that... probably have interesting things, like they, you know, people going in and photocopying. Porno, I... porno mags. <laughs> can I have 30 copies of my ass? <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I couldn't make it to the to staff party. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. I wonder if I <laughs> yeah. could do that in here. Yeah. <laughs> Carl, what job would you want to do? Well, any job, you're a lazy... You're yeah. joking, aren't you? But... I've done loads of stuff. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy now doing what I'm doing. Yeah? You but, look uh... happy. I think I'm happy. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, calm down. You on drugs? I'm all right. Are you on E? For him, and <laughs> one and that. I'm what? happy for them. Yeah, go on. I'm happy for them. I'm happy in that. Yeah, what do you mean happy for them? We are England. Happy yeah. for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we didn't play. I did very little towards it. No. It was mainly Johnny Wilkinson. Yeah, I barely the contributed. <laughs> Switching on the TV was about as much as I did. <laughs> exactly. And shouting, "Come on!" Yeah. Foo Fighters, best of you on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant. And Carl Pilkington. Alright. Alright? Carl's had a bad week. I'm gonna say that straight away. There's a, it's a, it's, he tries to all that stress in his life. Yeah. But he's had a bit too much stress this week, haven't you? One, a phone call from his mum, stressed him a little bit. Right. Um, something he said in a magazine about his auntie. Okay. Came back to haunt him. Auntie uh, Nora. Auntie Nora. Yeah. yeah. Don't name her. <laughs> oh, she don't knows who she is. No, no. Okay, we won't name her. Right? We just say it's the, it's the one who fights for five minutes and as, um, he sort of saw a skirt when he was young and I found it like a split tennis ball. So it could be any of me on his. That coming up. And also a bloke, um, in Times Online, um, Chris Campling. Yeah. Did a review of the show. Right. And basically said that Carl Pilkington is a creation of Gervais and Merchant. Well, if only that were the case. He, he said, um, he started off saying he liked the show. Yeah. He was excited. Said it was a good show. Um, a lot of the, uh, I'm already, I'm already questioning his critical faculties. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, uh, basically said that, um, uh, we didn't contribute much, or seemingly didn't seem to contribute much, and sure. I, and we, we couldn't sort of like, uh, ad lib or anything. We just laughed at, uh, particularly me, uh, laughed at, um, Carl Pilkington, who was coming up with some, you know, quite funny stuff. Yeah. Right? But then he does a twist on it. He goes, but the thing is, 
we're the puppet masters. He's a created person. We've created the uh, um, persona Carl Pilkington for our own amusement. Right. He bases this on simply that we talked about what was it we talked about? Um, the Chinese not aging well, and right. he heard him talk about that on my DVD. But clearly, I, I say, Carl, remember when you were talking about that? It's a news or oh, member in the week, and so he thinks it's all scripted now. Imagine if this show was scripted. I'd be ashamed. Yeah. If this show was scripted, I would send <laughs> back the BAFTAs for the shows we've, the actual shows we've written, and I would and say- I'm having a go at Chris Campling, he's, he's nice about our other work, he likes The Office, and yeah. he likes my stand-up and everything, and he likes the show, but he's saying, because we, we're not spontaneous, we, we scripted this and invented Carl. It, so he's, he's like, you know, we, we've invented another Gareth. If we had created Carl, I would, I would not have squandered a character that good on this poxy radio station. Absolutely. Also, does he know that we spend about three months on half an hour script? So how long does two hours of dribble? But the main thing is, as if this could be scripted, it's dreadful. <laughs> it's just shocking. Or maybe this is scripted. Hang on, you've, you've lost me now. Let me just well, check maybe, maybe Chris Campling does not exist. Uh, maybe I've made him up. I don't know what to believe. See, the name, the name doesn't wash with me. What was his name? Chris Campling. Sounds, sounds odd. That's something that I made up, isn't Campling's it? Campling's almost like, it's almost like a joke, it's almost like a gay name, isn't it? Or is it Campling? See, I think this is scripted. Yeah. I think I've probably made this whole link up. And um, Carl is a creation. Campling, that's not a real name. No. I made it up. I should have come up with something better. Yeah. Sorry. Down to the River by Bruce Springsteen on XFN 104.9. So, uh, yeah, a little fella in the Times thought Carl was just a puppet. We created him, he's an actor. What's it, what was his, what's his, act, what's his actor's name? Um, Brent Hogwell. We, <laughs> yeah, we got him from, we got him from, uh, a spotlight. Yeah. Brent Hogwell. This uh, stupid dopey Mancunian accent, he just puts that on every <laughs> Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, he speaks well like Hugh Grant. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, we just, we this whole world around him, we set a whole, what do you think about so that? He had his head shaved, totally. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So, yeah, does he, would he think that, you know, maybe if he's looked online, see me Ed, and he's noticed how round it is and that, <laughs> does he think it's sort of been, Sort of, you know, morphed into that shape just for the show, just for two hours on a Saturday. <laughs> yeah, you would spend five <laughs> hours in head. prosthetic makeup like John Hurt in The Elephant Man. <laughs> <laughs> Everything oh. about him was made up. Yeah, we created him. We created. Well, oh, because I remember coming up with Auntie Nora. Oh yeah, yeah. You yeah. said we need another character. I said, what about giving him an Auntie Nora? Doesn't sound convincing. I said. Yeah, and you said, what is it about? I said, well, I don't know. Um, she fighted for five minutes and she's got a funny like her split tennis ball. <laughs> no one's gonna believe that. Yeah. Oh, that brings us neatly. Well, let's put that to bed now. So, Chris Campling, but honestly, honestly, we do not script this shambles of a show, and Carl Pilkington really is like this. If you want, we, you can meet him. We, I, I'd love to send Carl for a drink with Chris Campling. Can we do that? <laughs> and then he'll eat his words. Chris, if you're listening, honestly, this isn't a stitch up. As I say, I'm not having a go at you. It's a very well written article. Um, uh, it's very, very fair. <laughs> you're just complimenting on, on his grammar. Yeah. No, no, I'm saying we're not having a go. He's, that beautifully it's not like he slagged us off. He's just, I would just love him to meet Carl Pilkington. People in the street country say it's Carl like that, and I, I so want them to meet him. Yeah. Um, or, or maybe he can send in, if he's online, um, he can send in five subjects for Carl to talk about that we couldn't possibly know about. Just so he knows that we just really do throw things at Carl, and that drivel comes out. Imagine if it was scripted. But anyway, so Chris Campling, or anyone who knows Chris online, get him to email us and with five subjects that Carl can talk about. That's a good idea, isn't it, Carl? It is like I'm the elephant man the way I'm being treated now. <laughs> Just sort of like, I, I scripted that. I wrote that joke last night. Mm, are you sure? Is it, or was it yours? I don't know. I Carl, don't know Carl enters and says, I'm like the elephant man. Hang on, let me just check the credits on the script. <laughs> I'll tell you what though, Steve, that I found out about the elephant man I was talking to Ricky. What? You know, the only bit that's, that was normal, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it was in the film. You know, right. the bit in the film, I was watching it one day, it was on, and I said, look, your favourite film's on. And it came to the bit where, um, he was being exhibited, uh, and he was naked behind the screen to all the doctors. Go on, what did you say? And there's a bit where he goes, um, uh, and strangely, um, the only thing that is normal are his genitals. They're untouched by this disease. They are totally normal. Right, what did you say? It's a bit annoying, isn't it? It's like the only bit that you'd want as an elephant. <laughs> the only bit you'd want that sure, was, like, was an like an elephant. Yeah, no, yeah. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and he got the head. <laughs> <laughs> so, so other stressful things. But so anyway, you're, what, what's the Auntie Nora thing? Sorry, I should, Auntie X. Auntie X. What did she, yeah. what, why is she upset? Well, he mentioned her in Zoo. He did, did this uh, thing for Zoo magazine and he, and he mentioned about when he looked up her dress, it, 
Um, it's the end of yeah, what? by accident, remember? <laughs> no, I'm not suggesting you were going around looking up your elderly relatives' dresses in case they for weren't people, For people who've not heard Carl talk about this in the past, yeah. just explain quickly again yeah, what we're talking about. Right. Um, <laughs> I didn't want to talk about it at all. When I was a kid, right, Auntie Nora used to come around, uh, me auntie used to come around. <laughs> There's any ambiguity now. Yeah. My auntie used to come around and that and stay, right? And I, uh, I, I'm sat on the floor watching the telly, <laughs> right? She's sat on the sofa with a caftan on. <laughs> I turn round, right? And it's, it was, it was there. It was looking back looking at, at me, right? And we've, we've mentioned this and I just briefly sort of said, what did it look like? <laughs> and, you know, a split tennis ball came to mind. That's what we talked about, right? So anyway, Zoo magazine, when they did the interview... She's the one that used to put a valance on everything, isn't it? Well, not everything, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> so anyway, so I've done this... So you did interview in Zoo? Yeah, and, uh... And like they said, you know, do you... Again, it was like, you know, do you plan stuff and, and do you worry about stuff when, uh... You, after you've done the show, you're worried you've upset anyone. And, you know, I was saying, uh, really, I forget people are listening. Uh, and, you know, we're just having a chat with mates and that. I said, but now and again, I do worry, uh, when I'm on my way home from the show and that, and I'm thinking about what we've talked about. And I was saying, you know, the an Auntie Nora, in oh, <laughs> Aunt yes. Nora in incident. Yeah. Uh, incident? You know, like, water guy. Yeah. And, uh, anyway, so this was in there. Right, and I, and I was saying in the magazine, you know, but I think I got away with it. She doesn't doesn't listen to the show, but you know, and I don't think she reads Zoo magazine, so <laughs> she's more of a nuts woman. <laughs> sure, yeah. So uh, anyway, so my mum calls up oh the, other, uh, the other week, right, mm. and she goes, uh, uh, wish you wouldn't, you know, talk about Aunt Nora and that. And uh, I was like, oh, so how do you know about that? She goes, well, one of your cousins have called us up and said they've, they've read the article, you know, the article about it. So, uh, so yeah, that's why we don't want to talk about it, really. So oh, he stitched you up. Hmm. So do you know what Auntie X has made of this? Do you know if she was upset or not? Uh, well, she doesn't, doesn't know about it. Cause, she, I mean, maybe she, maybe she, she's always thought it looked like a split tennis ball. <laughs> maybe you're just in sync, you know, cause you're relatives and stuff. Maybe she knew instantly. Even if you hadn't named her, she'd have thought, hang on, so I parted for five minutes once. Yeah, if that's not going to be ambiguous, it could is well it? Be me. If you hear that, like, someone who parted for five minutes has got a, a, a fan of, like a split tennis ball, you're going to go, I wonder if he means me. Yeah. You're going to remember or that. Or Andy Jackie. He said, it could be Andy Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <laughs> and he got in trouble. We you know last week when he was going to the wedding. Let's no. let's talk about that in a bit. Okay. Uh, yeah. Cure in between days on XFM. So, Carl, you were going to a wedding last week. Was it last week or the week before? No, it was last Saturday, right? Yeah. And he went. He said, uh, "Looking forward to it." He went. Now it's going to be boring. Suzanne was listening. Knows that the uh, the couple uh, were taping the show. So she had to get in there before he didn't she? She went up to him and said, look, when he, you're whispering back to the show and he says it's gonna be boring, he didn't mean you, he meant weddings in general. I love the fact she has to run around and clean up after him. It's <laughs> great, isn't it? How was it? Do you not like weddings? You're not a fan of them? Uh, they're only good for the, for the people involved, aren't they? What are you talking about? You're getting free food, free booze, free music? Yeah, but... It's not, it's just all the hanging about and there's loads of people there you don't know. Absolutely, I agree. Do you know what I mean? You, you've gotta make an effort. And yeah. And, uh, even the bit that was important, right, when they were getting married, right, there wasn't enough chairs, chairs, because it was, you know, all the family gets the chairs, don't they? So I was sort of stood Selfish. at the back. <laughs> <laughs> stood at the back of that watching, and, uh, I couldn't hear what was going on, because a woman was breastfeeding the baby. Oh! But what, what, how loud was this baby getting away? <laughs> you couldn't hear what was going on? Yeah, so it was, it was slurping and that, and it, she, she was like, I, I just thought, how hungry <laughs> is it? Could it not have waited? Because you've all got to wait for the buffet or whatever later. I don't know. But also just in this Well, there was two, out. wasn't there? Why didn't you- <laughs> Why didn't you- <laughs> <laughs> But no, that was- that was not anything compared with the first couple of days. Because the first day I was- I went for a walk. Ibn Beach is famous for just the beautiful, beautiful people that gather there. There's so many beautiful women in Rio, it made me angry. <laughs> I was angry that these women were so attractive and that, you know, none of them were even looking at me. So, but anyway, I'm on the beach because I, I was shopping and I needed a wee. 
right? And we went for a quick impromptu swim, and I thought, oh, are we in the, in the sea? Just think of him on this beach, right? We're diarrhea. Well, I'm wearing great big long shorts, because I'm not going to try and compete with these boys, because they and are... And you are, could I say this, the whitest man uh, yeah. I've ever met in my life. Yeah. I mean, with his shirt off, you can see his heart like a newborn fish. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, so... <laughs> well, this is the thing. As I went into the sea to have a wee, oh, there was a discussion about this. As I went into the sea to have a wee? <laughs> in well, a litter tray. see, there was a discussion about this, because I'm very much of the opinion that you should take your trunks down, and some people, uh, some of my friends are saying, just do it in your trunks and let's see the sea just wash it away. What a hell of a carnival. Well, and I think that's, I'm against that, I've always been against that, against that in swimming pools, everything, you know, so I, so no, I have to... I'm against pissing in swimming pools, full stop. It doesn't matter whether you do get in, take your trunks down or let don't piss <laughs> well, in, what about in the sea. Yeah, well, fine, yeah. Fine, okay, that, right, so, fish, fish do it. So. so anyway, so I'm in the sea trying to, trying to urinate, and I, so I kneel, because I'm obviously very tall, so it's tricky to get deep enough for the water to, to mask what you're up to. So I tried to kneel down in the water, right, and, and I got the, I got John Thomas out, but then the water swept out again and just left me on the beach. <laughs> so, but luckily my, my back was to it, everyone's, no one saw. So, um, so I, so I, I can't think of a funnier sight than Steve Merchant on his knees with his little John Thomas out. I don't know how big it is, I've never seen it. But I, mean, I imagine it's in proportion to the rest of it, is it? I no? wish. <laughs> um, this, all I'll say is I've been a little shortchanged. But, um, so I, so then I got up and I waded a bit deeper in, right? And, uh, now I was sort of, I was, I was trying, I got it out, but what I didn't realise is that the waves just off the beach are really just uncontrollable. You never know what's going to happen. So suddenly I see this giant wave coming towards me, crashing towards me, and I got the cock out and everything, and it grabs this wave, comes over me, and lifts me up, flips me up in the water, right? And I'm floundering around. I can't see anything because, of course, I had to take my glasses off <laughs> just to go in the sea. Because oh I didn't want, I didn't want to lose them. Oh God! So, so I, so I floundering around, and I'm wait, genuinely getting scared because I, as I try to get into shore, the wave just pulls me back again. So I'm waving to my friends on the beach, but what with everything. Well, what I don't realise is that because I'm wearing my, because well, I'm not wearing my glasses, I don't realise that I've been dragged along the beach some way, and I'm not actually waving <laughs> to my friends. So there's like a bunch of these beautiful women on Ipanema Beach. <laughs> watching a pasty white man waving with his cock out. And, and, and what annoyed me was my friends were laughing. And that Steve, really, really angered me. if I'd have been there, I would have burst. But why wouldn't you have come running? Would you have come running in to help me? Oh, I couldn't have saved you with your glasses off and your knob out. When, if, I, if I ever save you, I want you to be fully dressed with your glasses on. So you'd have just let me go. You'd have, that would have been what you'd said to my parents. <laughs> he had his knob out and his glasses off. There was no way I was going to... I can't think of a funnier sight. Oh, Carl, I've got a couple of little facts for you, just to try and in inflame your imagination. Go on. Sharks are immune to cancer. Are they? Yep. So what, what how have they found that out? Well, I don't know, but... But I've, I've never heard of any fish having cancer, though. I haven't heard of a, a cod being ill. <laughs> So why are we focusing on that one? <laughs> Good point. Okay. Stroking a spider can cause its hair to fall out. <laughs> what, because it's... it doesn't like it and it gets stressed out, or... is it just that some people are rubbing too hard? No, I don't think it's they're rubbing too hard. I think it's something to do with... I mean, what sort of maniac is stroking a spider anyway? My mum did it once. Really? Yeah, not, not to a spider. No. It was uh, just a little bee. <laughs> She'd been out, um, sunny day and that. Uh, got the washing off the washing line. <laughs> she was bringing it in. Little bee sat on the top of, like, the bed sheet or whatever it was. Yeah. And um, she's in the kitchen with it and she goes, look at that. Little bee there, she started sort of stroking its, stroking its head. It loved it. <laughs> How did it make it clear that it loved it? Well, it wasn't. It wasn't struggling. It was just sat there, like because it must have been like a bit dozy. They get a bit dozy, don't they, in the uh, in the heat and that. Yeah. And uh, it just stayed there on the sheet, and she sort of stroked its head for a bit. And she had to put it out. It didn't go out. It didn't try and escape. It was like you've had enough now. Uh, <laughs> and that was that was that. She sent it out. She loved all that. She loved little flies and stuff. And we had already house fly. What? I used to the house fly. What do you mean? 
It's just a fly that always seems to knock about in one corner of the room. Right, it's the same fly, was it? Yeah, it was the same fly. Yeah. How do you know it was the same fly? So whenever she saw a fly, she went, oh, it's back. Well, it's, we weren't letting him in. It's just that it stayed in. Carl, what makes you think it was a pet house fly as opposed to a different fly every day? Because it was always in the same place in the corner. But it could have been that something about that particular place that attracted flies rather than it was the same fly. Well, I'm never worried about it. It's not. It wasn't arming us. It's just. It just always hung about. But how do you know it was the same fly? How do you recognise it? We weren't worried about it. It, does, it doesn't matter, does it? If, if like we're thinking another fly is getting a bit of free rent or something, no, just, just let it let it stay. I don't understand what. But why? why no, no, well, no. I d right. Okay. You're in the house, right? There's flies. Okay. Not flies. Fly. What? Why do you think it was the same fly for all those years? Just because we haven't got loads of other flies, at no point was there a crossover period where there's two and it's like, hang on a minute, he's trying it on here. <laughs> That's what I mean, it was always just one on its own. And we just thought, leave it, it's alright. I don't know why, why are you suspicious? Why do you always think someone's out to do you? <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not. I don't know why you assumed when you see a fly every now and again that it's exactly the same fly. It just the fact was. That it's Harry. The one in our house was the same one. How do you know? Well, all right, I don't, but I'd, at no point did I feel suspicious. <laughs> Speaking of flies, though, and that, um, they've, they've got one, right? I was out with Ricky, right, and he was reading the paper. There was a story there about a fly that its eyesight was bad or something, and they'd made it a pair of glasses, and it had a picture of a house fly wearing... Okay, this is this is incredible, Steve. Glasses. Can I can I take over? Hang here? on, let me just, just need to finish a couple of questions for that. So, he's got... There's a small fly and they've made it a pair of glasses. Yeah. So that it can see better. Yeah. And your concern is what? Well, again, it's just that thing of we're, we're looking after everything now. Aren't Sorry, we? I've got to come in here, Steve. All right. I showed you, you the saw story. It. You saw it. It was a picture of a, a house fly, fly with a pair of glasses, glasses right? on. Yeah. Right. It was about a one sentence thing. Mm. It was about how far technology's come. Yeah. And, and a group of scientists out. using um, microscopy, right, and uh, um, uh, laser tools had. As an exhibition, shown that they could make a pair of glasses for to fit on a house. They put it on there and they're taking a picture of it, and it's on as a display. At no point was it actually because the fly had bad eyesight. The fly was presumably dead. It was purely an art installation or a show of technology. I thought you were going to say, Rick, that you'd drawn the uh, glasses on there, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and he believed it. Like there's a bearded lady in this paper. <laughs> no. <laughs> my God, my God, Tony Blair looks like Adolf Hitler. <laughs> no. What What do you think of that, though? But they did it as an experiment. Out. Yeah, but all things start as an experiment. But why would they make a pair of glasses but for a fly? How, how would they know he had short, a bad eyesight? How would they know it was the same fly? Bumping into stuff. I don't know. Bumping into stuff. It's just, it's just that thing, innit, of human nature is something's wrong with something, let's fix it. And they, and they try and help people out all the time, don't they? When you, no. you know, We are, we're always doing it. We're always trying to help people out. Instead of just going, you've been dealt a duff card. Cope with it. <laughs> <laughs> Came up with a good idea. We'll um, be the judge of that. Mm. Uh, I, I do it now. <laughs> it's not a good idea. Okay. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm sticking my neck out here. Um, but yeah. uh, I right. think this isn't going to be a good idea. Okay. Thoughts? Well, I'm, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to second that motion. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if we're, let's see if we're both right. See through skin. <laughs> High five, Rick! <laughs> we've had a few emails about the old shows. People came into them late in the season. Did I not tell you this? We, we've had an e we had an email from an Inuit. Really? Yeah, yeah. I thought I'd mentioned this. Have we not mentioned this before? No. No, there was an email from a guy who said, uh, I think, well, I don't think he lives, he lives in Canada, I think, or somewhere else. I apologise if I'm getting that wrong. But I think he, told, he said he was half Inuit and he listens to the show. Half Inuit? Hmm. See, that's interesting because I think I'm mean, so remote. I know I'm probably wrong now, but I think those are so remote that I can't think where they're meeting people who aren't. <laughs> that are also Inuit, yeah. Oh, and who's going, you know, other societies are going, I'll tell you what, I'm fed up, there's no action here, I'm going to the frozen tundra, I'm about to meet <laughs> someone there. Yeah. Where do they meet? Do they do online dating? What, what, probably a lot of online stuff. What do you put as hobbies? Fishing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Skinning stuff. <laughs> Skinning stuff, yeah. What will stuff your skin? Oh, uh, you know, seals. Seals, yeah, sure. That's about it, isn't it? Why are they hanging about round there? <laughs> Why aren't seals going, do you know what, it's cold, I'm sick of it here. It's windy all the time, what have you, and I'm getting a club on the head. Do you yeah. know what I mean? 
Yeah. Because they're, they're meant to be quite bright in terms of animals and that, aren't they? So yeah. why are they knocking about them parts? I don't know. Say, like, if, if seals died out, right? Would 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 that be a problem? We've done this. We've been through this before. Carl. Everything has a knock-on effect. Even a seal, that sort of in between something already. It's between a fish and a <laughs> and a, a dog, dog. <laughs> isn't it? I knew you were going to say dog. <laughs> it's not between a fish and a dog. What do you think evolution does? Do you, just, fish I, to I'll dog. Never understand it. Maybe we what do you mean it. it's between a fish and a dog? I'm just saying it's. It so was a perfectly evolved mammal that re-entered the. The water, I imagine, and then got streamlined, and it—I I mean, it's between a fish and a dog. But why not have one and the other? Why not have like you know, you've got a dog, you've got a fish. No, it's not between a fish and a dog. It's not between a fish and a dog. I don't know what between means. Well, I don't know. What, this I... is it again about <laughs> saving everything all the time. What is it doing? <laughs> What's it doing? Everyone's feeling sorry for him all the time. Save the seal and all that. What's it doing? Why are we saving it? <laughs> Let's just ask that question. What's it doing? <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's between a fish and a dog. Muse on XFM 104.9. It's a great show, isn't it? With Steve Merchant. Yeah, yeah, we're all here. Oh, oh, God. I can't wait. I can't believe it. We've got some great stuff coming up, Steve. Well, got I'm, I'm being honest. Go on. There's some great tunes. Yep. We've got, oh, uh, it's, there's too many to mention. Don't mention them. Well, there's, there's about 20, actually. Is there? We could mention them. Looking forward to them. Um, I've, got, I've got a brand new feature okay. as well. You know, I do my film with you. Loving it. And, uh, you know, we do run for the covers and mm. song for the lovers and all mm. that. Got a new feature. Go on. That film sounds good. Right. It's not the film review. It's a, it's a track from a film. That's brilliant, really. Yeah. That's absolutely That film sounds good. Yeah. Something like yeah. that. People will be desperate to look forward to that. And there'd just be some chat as well. There'd just be some natter in. Carl, have we got anything to give away this week? No. Ooh, it's a shame. Yeah. It's quite like giving stuff away. Yeah. It makes me feel quite powerful. Does, you know, in the week, is there any meetings like, oh, what should we give, like, Ricky and Steve to give away? Because, I mean, I'll see lots of trailers for The Breakfast Show and that Enterprise and that. Or do they go, they go, who? <laughs> no. Come Saturdays. Saturdays? What? I, I don't work Saturdays. No, but it, it's, it's still on the air Saturdays. Is it? Who listens on a Saturday? Yeah. Between I one and three. Oh, that's the worst time, <laughs> isn't it? They, so, they sort of hear you, you know, taking the mickey out of, of what tickets you're given. And yeah. I think this week you could have had St. Etienne, but they said no. We'll hold them back. I love but, being punished. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll tell you what we're being punished for, we're being subversive and rock and roll. Yeah. Is that a crime, Rick? I don't think so. No. High five. High five. <laughs> You've got to hit the hand, yeah, otherwise know, it, 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 it sounds embarrassing. You're a lot taller than well, me, aren't just you? Just hit high five. <laughs> yes. High Sweet. Record. Black Rebel Motorcycle Club there in Love Burns, XFM 104.9. We're really swinging now. We are. It's so much better than last week. Last week was a point I don't want to talk about. Well, it wasn't too bad, actually. Was it? Apparently. No, um... I, I, you know, I said, oh, we were really off, and Steve was hungover, and I was tired, and we couldn't be bothered. And, uh, they were going, no, it's as good as any other week. Ooh. Which is pretty disappointing, isn't it? You want them to go, well, I'll tell you what, it was the worst one ever, and it was still brilliant. <laughs> it was still magnificent, As opposed yeah. to, it was one of the best. <laughs> but rubbish. <laughs> yeah. 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 Good. So we're gonna really, we, you know, Yeah, we're gonna up, up the ante today. Yeah. Come Ooh. on, Carl. Cheer let's up. Th let's make this, Carl, let's make this the best show ever. All right. Should we have a big group hug? Yeah. Oh, Carl, no, come let's on. Have, no, let's have a big group lick. Yeah. Carl, come oh, on. Look at his little oh, face. His face. You can see why the ladies love him. <laughs> He's a cute guy. No, you're a cute guy. And I'm not having a go. I genuinely think you are. So don't have a go back at me. Oh, I've got some news for you, Steve. Go on. Where is it? Carl, where is that thing? Right. Here you are. Company magazine are compiled in a 50 most eligible bachelors feature. Ding dong. The May issue 2002, right? These are the requirements, right? Single. Right? Hello. That means available, not just unmarried, just, you know. Okay. Uh, age 20 to 30, you're well in there. I'm straight in there. Uh, um, C. Um, D. What is, what was C? C is, um, it's, it says good looking. Uh. Fine, yeah, I'm eligible so far. And it Keep says going. not, ne oh no, this is what rules you out probably. It says not necessarily Brad Pitt-esque. And you are a little bit. <laughs> well, um, so they say. Uh, it must be British and come from one of the following, uh, regions. London. Southeast, southwest. You're there. That's me. I, I think they just name all the regions of Britain. Yes, they right. could just say from Britain. You really? Um, imp employ. What? Well, sorry, Carl. Go on. Is there a height restriction or something <laughs> like that? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're so what is this? What is this? Is this a serious yeah. thing? What yeah. is it? It's the most eligible bachelor. Uh, uh, this is so me. Uh, do you know any of the boys who'd be perfect for us company girls? Past bachelors have included TV presenters Dermot O'Leary. Yeah. 
Hey, I'm in with Dermot O'Leary. He knows me. He's not yeah. real, isn't he? Yeah. Jamie Thiexton. It's, it's, not, it's not most eligible person who knows a bachelor. The models, Rob Warrington and James Polanski. Yeah. Uh, the singers, Lyndon David Hall and Richard Blackwood. Yeah. Wouldn't necessarily consider him a singer. Uh, Controversial. I'm sorry. He's there. having a dig at Blackwood. Hey, I'll tell you this. I was watching, uh, or I, I don't suppose watch it, but I saw the trailer for The Farmer Wants a Wife. Oh, yeah. Right, which is which the show, which you, you mentioned, yeah, it? you did. Which yeah. is a show where I think farmers, because obviously it's very difficult for them to meet women. Wants a wife? And I'm thinking, hello, I dear, Steve Merchant wants a wife. It's not bad, It's is a it? TV show. Who sounds a bit like a farmer. <laughs> exactly. This is, this but what is I'm saying good. is, I don't mind the public voting for the woman, you know, if, if, if that's how it happens. I don't mind, you know, because... Who, who cares? You know, yeah. I, I'll do. I'll, I'll have anything. Whatever they can choose, be fine. <laughs> you know. See that? I think. Yeah. Steve Merchant wants a farmer. <laughs> That'd be even better. <laughs> Steve Merchant wants it. Yes, yeah, Steve Merchant wants it. I'm thinking, um, sort of, the, maybe the Bravo Channel on cable. Yeah. You know, or ITV Two. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. A, it's an idea, Rick. I'm just flying out the flagpole. Yeah. Well, we're, we're thinking about that. Yeah. Um, phone. Don't phone in. It's not worth it. Let's play some more music. There is a Slim Shady in all of us. That was Eminem, XFM 104.9. Steve. Yeah, no, I was just, actually, I was just thinking, because Carl, uh, I'm probably thinking, you know, he likes to have a little dig every so often about, you know, uh, my success with the ladies. No, 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 but I tell you, you'd have been proud of me last night. No, listen, you'd have been proud of me. Because I was walking back from the shops, uh, I was carrying two cans of wheat lager. It was Friday night, Rick. Yeah. Time to go a bit crazy. Yeah. And there was this woman coming the other way, who must have been sort of 50, 55, just staying on the street, dressed in kind of like rhinestone cowboy style outfit. Really weird. Never seen her before. Parton? <laughs> Is it Parton? It wasn't Dolly. No. And she was just staggering down the road, like just, ah, just showing. And some truck drove by, and she just went, oh, hey, come over here. Come over here. And, uh, and the car just drove by or whatever, and she walked into me, and she, she saw me come in, and she saw the beer in my hand, she couldn't believe her luck, and she stopped, and she tried to stop me, and I sort of stepped one side, so stepped one way to try and go past her, she stepped there and blocked my way, so she blocked the other way, and she went, come here, come here, like trying to motion, and I was really scared, it was you, like some, it you was looked like around some, and thought, beggars can't be Jesus. Well, this is, but then, for a minute, I was thinking, <laughs> well, you know, yeah. I mean, it's Friday night, <laughs> you know, I'm in a mood to make whoopee. But um, I thought it's probably best to avoid it, and I uh, actually managed to uh, run away and uh, avoid her. And she just kept shouting at me as I was running down the road, "Come, come, come with me, come with me!" But I legged it. But what I was thinking is, it was like some kind of like sort of Hansel and Gretel nightmare. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. an old lady in your way. You're going I mean, there, and there's loads of other people that look just like you. <laughs> exactly. And they're yeah, getting yeah. very, very thin. We've been here for years. In chains. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I thought you'd be proud of me. No, there was that. That was you know that was a woman on a plate, so to speak. And uh, and I just turned it down. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Exactly, yeah. you see? You so went, not, um, not you so went, desperate. Uh, you, so. He, he got in and went, what have I done? <laughs> Seeing her again tonight, then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just going to hang around by the off-fee, off see what happens, you know. <laughs> Looking forward to Christmas? Loving it. I'm always a big fan of Christmas, actually, and yeah, no, I'm not a bad humbug type. It's, it's, not, it's not far now, is it? It's, uh, it's this month now. Is it? Is it, are we in December? Is it the first? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, we, um, brilliant. We, uh, well, I, I was quite excited because um, <laughs> this week in the, I think it was this week in the papers, the Sun, um, and I think all the other papers actually, uh, had the, the first of the kind of giveaway uh, TV supplements that oh, comes up listing all the that. shows that are on. But one of the, 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 when they bring them out this early, is you open it and it's like, you think, yeah, I'll see what films are on and stuff, and you go through it, and it just, about half of the listings are to be confirmed. To be confirmed, it's utterly it's an utter waste of time. Yeah, and it's like, but it's like, who is planning their film, their film and TV watching this early? Yeah, it's a little bit early to be worrying about. Three it. Three weeks in advance, going, oh, but I better not make any. Well, unless it's like a you know an amazing thing on telly, or you you know. Are you, you coming to a party? We got one uh, Friday twenty ninth. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna watch something on the TV. It's a good film. What is it? Not being confirmed yet. It's to just... be confirmed. <laughs> yeah. but I can just you know It'll say this, I won't be at the party. Yeah. Yeah. It's strange. But I remember when I was um, little, my sister used to work in W. H. Smith's, and uh, uh, she used to come home like every Thursday. She'd been paid a big bag of sweets for Lovely. me. And, uh, you know, the, the, the TV Times. The TV Times, of course, because you're yeah. working class. Sort the of. TV Times. The radio yeah. Times for a class, you middle yeah. class gentleman but, like myself. But the, the bumper edition at Christmas, that, that's like two weeks of telly, she sit down, like that Thursday night, sit down with Miss Sweets, and we tick off all the things we were going to watch over the that's next really two tragic. years. Didn't happen, did it? Because I, you know, I was squeaking around, hyperactive, making people play with toys, mm. stuff, and not watching telly, really. I but bet I mean, you, but if you watched any telly, it'd have been really rubbish stuff. The whole family was like, I imagine probably Dennis Norden's laughter file. Volume 12, or whatever it is. I don't think even Dennis Norton whereas, was going there. Whereas, you see, we, in our house, of course, we'd often not, we'd just switch off the TV, and we'd yeah. perhaps just listen, you know, you to the concerto to. on Radio 3. Ooh, yeah, yeah, we weren't allowed to turn the telly off, really. I don't know what a concerto is, I've just said that word. 
I'm assuming. I don't know what a concerto is. It's like a just a posh word for concert, isn't it? I think so. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. What's a concerto? It's one of those. Maybe it's one of those instruments. The kind of squeeze box. That's a concertina. concertina. It's a concertina. Yeah. Yeah. My nan used to play a concertina. Really? Yeah. I don't know if that's interesting to you. I but don't know why you choose the concertina of all the instruments to play. I mean, well, it's not the sexiest. It's only kind of sailors. Well, my, well, my nan used to have one, but she doubled up with, uh, as an iron lung. Nice. Which was good. And so when she, you know, when she had a bit of an attack, we mm. not only were warned, yeah. but we had a little tune. That's beautiful. As well. <laughs> yeah. Did you play your grand? You can play your grand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful. Once she had a bit of an accident, she said, sit down, kids, and she came in there, and she had a corrugated neck. Ah, uh, of course. Where, where it had gone. Horribly wrong. You, it's, go on. Sorry, what were you going to say? It's it happening again, Steve. What's happening? It's going all wrong. Yeah. We're talking rubbish. Are we? Yeah. We should have played two in a row. He's having a go, isn't he? Blimey. Gorillas, Rock the House. Yeah. XFM 104.9. Who are you? Ricky Gervais, who are you? Steve Merchant. Yeah, yeah nice, yeah. sweet. Together again. Yeah. I, I can't believe it. <laughs> the old team. They said it'd never Plus happen. Plus Carl, he presses the buttons. Yeah, not draw attention yeah. to right. him. Okay. We were talking about, um, squeeze boxes. Yes. And, uh, it got me to thinking, what's happened to him? You don't see him. Do you know what I mean? Instruments should be around forever, you know what I mean? The piano forte, as <laughs> oh, I call it's it. it's a classic. Been around forever. They invented it, it's around. You know, the saxophone was only, I think, the 20s or 30s, mm. but, you know, I can't imagine it going away. There's the a squeeze... number of instruments probably dying out. Lute. The lute. The lute you rarely see now. You rarely see, uh, except maybe on a um, Men Without Hats. What was Men Without Hats? Or Marillion. Right, right, Men Without yeah. Hats. We can dance if we want to. And Pierre Trudeau's daughter was in that video. Who was that we saw in the sandwich shop yesterday? Well, he might not want us to, he might want to be people to know that he was in the sandwich shop. It's fine, it just shows that he's he didn't human. Bruce Dickinson, he didn't recognise him. I went, look. Bruce went, Dickinson from yeah. Iron Maiden. I had no Little idea. Fella, he wasn't he? I'd Little say he's yeah. really tiny, it was almost yeah. laughable. Is he it married? That annoy me. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, you just alienate yourself from a lot of heavy metal fans now, because yeah. he's Ooh, pretty I'm much scared. of a guru. They never leave their bedrooms, Rick. They, yeah, but they've got powers. <laughs> yeah, if they're, they're putting crystals now on toads, <laughs> and they're going to turn you into a... <laughs> <laughs> All no. right. All right, well, no. Just having a go. I was having a go. I, having having a go. I stopped myself, realising it wasn't much of a threat. Hello, and welcome to The Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon, that is, Carl Pilkington. All right. Now, everyone knows, over the past sort of like few years, my big pet project hasn't been my own career. It's been Get Carl Famous. Yeah. I want people to recognise him in the street, come up to him and say, you bald-headed mank twat. Oh, well, what? let me tell you now, Rick, I've been out and about and a lot of people have come up to me and said, it has Carl Pilkington got a head like a fucking orange? Well, I and I've had to instantly confirm the answer to be yes. But, he's had a call. He had a call recently from a film company asking him if he's got any ideas for movies. Now, how desperate, in what dire straits must the British film industry be that they're going, we need Carl Pilkerton. We have hit rock bottom. And he went along for an interview. So what, and you went in and you... I went, I went along and, um, had a meeting. And, uh, they just said, right, you know, got any ideas? And, uh, sort of said, you know, what, what are you thinking? What sort of thing are you after? Are you after action? <laughs> Thriller? Whatever. Because uh, you can provide any of it. I love yeah. that, that he's playing it cool, like yeah, you've yeah. come to the right person. <laughs> yeah, 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 My yeah. time's precious, what do you need? Yeah. Yeah, I'm Carl Pilkin, the movie doctor, what do you need, <laughs> Papa? So, thought of this idea sort of on the spot. Good. That always buy him. Um, no, but sometimes that's how good ideas come up, yeah. don't they? Just, just so, so a lot of yours have come up, yeah. No, but when, if you just Randomly. talk, I find that your mouth comes out with stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Right, there's another right, quote. Right. There is another quote. That, <laughs> if you talk, that, your mouth comes out with that, that. That, that to me, is stands along with what were those things in Gremlins called? No, but what uh, I mean, you, if you sit there and try and use your brain to do it, right, it doesn't work the same. Just, just keep talking. Just keep your, keep your mouth talking, and eventually it will come out with something pretty good. That is exactly what Plato said. Well, uh, so to anyway. Aristotle, he said, "Sit down. I've got an idea for you." Uh, Aristotle said, "Plato, what you right." Just keep talking, and eventually your brain will come out with stuff. So what I thought, I just started off by saying like actors' names and that who I thought should be in it, because then that's giving more. It's building. Right. Okay, so who's you say? Who's you say? So I said, right, I'm seeing uh, Clive Warren. <laughs> who the fuck's Clive Warren? Who's Clive Warren? The one who was in Closer. Clive Owen. Clive Owen. Right, all right. Did they look I at you like you're a fucking Clive. idiot? <laughs> so they all started trying to figure out, who's this Clive Warren we've not heard about? Uh, he must a, be amazing. Yeah, he's yeah, he's like, Clive Warren, get me Clive Warren <laughs> on the phone. Who's get Clive me Warren. Clive Warren. And I said, uh, Rebecca de Mornay, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, where did that go? 
She <laughs> hasn't been in a film for 15 years, has she? Clive Warren and Rebecca De Mornay. <laughs> they thought he was a genius. They've never thought of putting Clive Warren with Rebecca De Mornay. But hang on a minute, you could have... <laughs> You can have any <laughs> film star. This is your fantasy casting, <laughs> yeah. and you choose a bloke that doesn't exist, and a woman who hasn't been on TV or in a film for ten years. Oh, God! Why didn't oh. you choose, you know, a... Someone a, who existed. Jayla or someone who's a oh, big star. Oh, God! Okay. Lonnie Warren! Oh, God! Oh, so, God. anyway, starts off, and the people, you know, you're seeing into their lives from, yeah. like, the morning. Yeah. So it's like a nice sunny day. Yeah. Radio was on. You know, they're going about the day, they're having the breakfast, they're saying, oh, what are we doing tonight? And you're thinking, oh, they've got a nice life. Mm. She, she's like, love you and all that, yeah. He walks out the house, gets hit by a bus. Oh. So Clive Warren's... They're dead. I don't know if Clive Warren would take that part. Because he, he ain't got much to do, has no, he? No, I don't... If I, if, I, if I know Clive Warren... And I think you do. I think I do. Carry on, so he, he's hit by a bus, so he's so dead. So he's hit by a bus and that. The titles come up. Oh, It's got yes. you, right? She's Starring devastated. She's, she's fed up. She's devastated in that. Um, doctor says Clive's dead. Who's playing the doctor? Jack Nicholson House. Um, sort of. Uh, what's that fella who was in Independence Day? Um, Will Smith. No, the 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 old the old black fella. Uh, Morgan Freeman. Yeah. Yeah. Get him in. He's Morgan Freeman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He says your husband's dead. She's like, oh god. What happens then is, he says, but listen, what we can do now, we can take the brain out. Right, right. And, and, and a fact that I read that day before the meeting, this isn't in the film now, this is me. Right, but right. lucky, yeah, okay. luckily. I read a thing about how the brain can, it can run on half of it. You've actually got a full brain. Run on it on half. half. So, this is, this was in my mind still. Well, half your mind, yeah. So, I said, what happens is, Morgan Freeman says, been working on this. You can run, you can run your life on half a brain. Right. She's sort of a bit like, what are you tell me this for now? My husband's just died like 20 minutes ago. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, but if we're going to do this, we've got to act quick. She's like, do what? He says, whilst his brain's not fully dead, because it, it stays awake for a bit when you. Oh, he's, he's not dead then. Fine. No, no, but yeah, he is. But they found out that right. it stays awake a little bit. No, 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 no. So, no, no. he's gone. No, no. You're hit by a bus. Yeah, no, he's dead. dead. If the brain's dead, you are dead. Clive Warren's dead. And if if, uh, if the brain's not dead, you're not dead. No, but it's like people in a coma. They're dead, aren't they? But no, the no, no, dead. no, no, they're in a coma. No, they're not they're in a dead. Coma. No, they come out of comas, don't All right, they? then he's in a coma. He's been hit by the bus. But the chances are he's not going to come out of that coma. But his brain is still awake. So change that. That's easily done. Uh, hold on, though. I, I like this fact that he's in a coma, so they're going, look, he's definitely going to die in this coma. Take the brain out now. Pop the brain out. But why is that such a weird thing when that's what they do now? That's what they do now. What is? That's what they do. What? They do that. What? 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 what, what, what a brain transplant. No, but when, like, how, how I've signed that donor card, yeah. like, if anything happens to me... No, no, no. no. There's the no lot. such thing as a brain donor. Oh, we've explained to you before. Yeah, but they're working on it. They've said something about Einstein. They, they, they messed about with his brain for ages, trying to work out if it was full of stuff. That's what they're doing. They're working on that. There's loads of things that doctors are doing that we don't know about. I've seen some weird stuff on the internet. Yeah, I know you have. Yeah. I saw a programme on Channel 5 where a monkey brain was still alive and it was stuck on a stick. <laughs> ah! And they, they You were watching it. the magic roundabout. They poked it and it reacted. Right. So it's still alive, it's being kept alive, and it's only a matter of time. What's what's the brain linked up to? The as long as you can link it up to the eyes, and somehow so it can tell the arms and legs what to do, you're laughing. I love that. As, imagine a, a team full of doctors going, well, we're going to try and do a brain like Carl. Um, as long as you can link this up to the eyes and tell the arms and legs what to do, we're laughing. <laughs> Cheers, Carl. See you later. <laughs> then what happens is, they say, do you want half of his brain in your head? Half she, of his brain she in said, her head? She says, definitely not, I'm having you struck off. She starts screaming, she calls the police, he gets arrested. Yeah, but you'd have said that years ago when people can have, like, someone else's arm put on their body and stuff. <laughs> yeah, but he's only in a coma. Yeah. No, but he's not going to come out of that co coma. Right. So, so it's like this or nothing. It's right. like, look, you know, what, what we're going to do here, we can either turn the switch off yeah. or we can put his head in your head. But why would but, you... So, why... so what he does, so what they do then, they're going to take half his brain... Half of his brain, take out it... half of hers, pop it in place. Why would she do that? Because she loves him. 
But hold on, well, no, no, wait, 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 wait. What would she then be? Because this is what I'm trying to tell okay, you. Okay, okay, sorry. What happens is, he, he explains all this, so, I mean, this would probably cover about 20 minutes in the film, but I'm just rushing sorry, you, I'm I just rushing switched off, now. but yeah. No, you wasn't, this, this bit would have you. Mm. So what... Well, what, I'd have actually left when I, I wouldn't even gone in to see a film starring uh, Clive Warren and Rebecca de Mornay, <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless it was 1985. <laughs> so, so, the thing is, She's the same as you. She says the same thing. She goes, why would I do that, Doctor? Mm. And uh, he goes, well, what will happen is, he's gone, but you'll you'll have his thoughts. So in the morning when you say, oh, I don't know what to have, well, they have cornflakes. His bit of the brain will sort of say... Have a wheat a bit. Have shredded wheat yeah. or whatever. And she's like, oh, yeah, good idea. Sorry, sorry, so the point of this film is that the dead man can remind her what <laughs> breakfast cereal she likes. Yeah. So the thought... When what do you she... mean, yes? So that's it, is it? No, 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 that's not the only wait, thing. Wait, oh, wait a minute, this is only Act that's, 1. That's just the first bit, everything's going well, she so, has it done. So what is, what, who is she? Is she herself? She's Rebecca de Mornay, yeah. but, but now with and again, with, with, with him chipping in with a bit of voiceover. So the idea is, it's all going well at the beginning, and she's... So she can't decide what so, so to wear, she's got, he, So she's had half of her brain taken out and put in a bin, yeah. OK? And, and Clive Warren's uh, half has been put in there. So now she's walking round... Okay. So yeah. she's like a schizophrenic. No, like I say, the brain is alive, so it's all going well when she leaves hospital. Yeah. And she gets the first taste of it, and it's a bit weird to get hold of, because she's, she's sort of, uh, I think when she signs herself out, he's sort of fighting, writing his name and stuff, so there's a few sort of technical things that, yeah. that she has to get used to. And does Clive's brain what know does he that think? he's now inside her brain? Um. Does that matter? Well, I would say it matters, because... Yes. Otherwise, yes, he... it does matter, Carl. What's 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 he thinking? Can, I mean, what's what the point is... of this? Why has she gone along with this? Because she really loves him. But what? But what's in it for him? What does she think? Well, say if I died, yeah. And Suzanne said, "Go on, I'll have half of Carl's," right? She would wake up in the morning to a thought of me, sort of going, "Oh, you never guess what I just thought about or whatever." I'd still be there. The rest of your body is sort of waste, isn't it? But like the rest it. of your body's sort of waste. No, it is, kind of. If, when, when someone dies, it's yeah. not that person anymore, is it? You can't have a chat with them. So if you could have someone's brain in your head when they're dead, you'd have it, wouldn't you? What are you talking about? Why would I have someone's brain in my head when they're dead? Well, what I've got a perfectly good brain. So you're telling me you wouldn't have it done, then? <laughs> uh, 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 of course I fucking wouldn't. I, I can also categorically state I wouldn't know. Yeah, but you're saying that now, but once you're in that position that someone who, you know, you're loving that dies, if the doctor said, do you want it? No! And I go, no! It's madness! I don't think you It's wait. madness! All right, all right, all right. Let's so, tell me a typical bit of dialogue. Um, well, we've done the breakfast scene. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that okay, was dynamite. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking Oscar winning. Yeah, can we do lunch? Um, there may be like at the funeral, because even though the brain's still alive, they still have the funeral, and you can have like a funny bit where they stood around the grave, and like there's some relation there who he doesn't like, and she can start laughing, and the family are looking at her going, Why is she laughing? Yeah. And she's sort of laughing, and he's saying something a bit rude, going, Look at her head. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Looks like Stuff on the orange. family. Yeah. <laughs> a little cameo for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. so you have all that, and people are sort of liking the film, thinking, Oh, it's quite funny, this. Mm, yeah. And yeah. then you hit them hard. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, oh, the, but... it's the maddest. It's the, honestly, it really is the ramblings of a I mental case. Say, though, right, I have to say though, I am hooked now. I want to know what's going to happen next in the story. Then what happens is, <laughs> she hears the voice go, "Leslie, where are you?" Something. Right. Her name's not Leslie. No. No. Just Rebecca. thinking, who's Leslie? Yeah. So in her mind, she's going, "Who's Leslie?" <laughs> He's going, "Oh." So he's, he's thought, hang on, I've let something slip in. I've let something slip, so she's going, answer me. Oh. He goes quiet on her. Oh! So... He's, for, he was having an affair. This is, this is the thing, so she's trying to hunt down... Leslie. Leslie. And he's got to stop her thinking it. Then what happens is, I mean, you know... Where are your backs? So he's got to hunt down Leslie. So he's got, she's got to hunt down mm. Leslie. It's a woman, is it? Another Leslie, or it's is it It's another blue? woman. Right. But what happens is, I mean, without ruining the end for everyone, what have happened sort is. of happening? Oh yeah, because we don't want to ruin it for because this will yeah. be this will be filling the multiplexes in no time. Yeah. No, it's the greatest love story ever told, set in a head. But listen, let's I just get to hang the on end. a sec though, Carl. I don't. Yeah, you've got to tell us the end. I don't think you can let people no, come listening on. come on, hang on, waiting for the film. Just let your mouth talk. Right. So what I said was maybe what happens is his brain mm. is more powerful than hers. Right. How it, is now? What? How is there power? I don't, why is there no power involved? What I mean is, her brain was running the rest of her body. Mm. 
Now he's taking over. That gets more powerful mm. and overrules her body. Okay. Yeah. She then fancies Leslie. So, so it's a lesbian hold on, film. this is building up to a lesbian <laughs> love. So what the? Well, it's what? trendy, isn't it? That. So just have a bit of that at the end. And so hold on. So he overpowers her. So she is now a lesbian. What's Leslie getting out of this? Why does Leslie think? Hold on. Why is my because dead lover's wife coming on to me? Because this is what I'm saying to you. It's the relationships. It's the love of two brains. Right, okay, again, can That's anyone out there, can line. we make that into it? That's a quote. The relationships is a love of two brains. <laughs> well, it's now, he's got something there, he's got something yeah. there, but my point is this, why is Leslie suddenly turned lesbian? Because she loves the brain. But does she know this is Clive Warren? Rebecca will say something now and again, like, oh, I like me... Minge. <laughs> I like me food done like this or whatever, and it's all about Cooked. beef likes I like my food cooked. <laughs> 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 Wait a minute, Clive Warren on this food <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm in two minds about this bacon. Yeah, what, what I'm going to turn into a lesbian. People, Shredded wheat. People like what they like. And it's Ooh. the same way, like I've said to you before, with someone who's been going out with a woman and then is found out that she's got a twin sister and they divorce that first twin and go out with the other twin. It's all the same. You're after the same thing, aren't you? Yes, but that... When a cat dies, you buy another one. <laughs> it's the same thing, you want that same Yeah, but you don't necessarily something. switch your sexual orientation. In the case of your twin scenario, they both look the same. Yeah. Has there, there ever been one where um, it's a uh, twin boy and girl? Go, well, I was going out with her, but I mean, he looks a bit like her. Yeah. I loved boobs, now I like cock. This is your problem. You don't know anything. And this theory about if your mouth talks enough, the brain will kick in soon. It hasn't. Eels, fresh feeding on XFM 104. I was going well, isn't it? I'm enjoying it, yeah. 20 minutes yeah. to go, I think, you know, more okay. of an up show. We've made some great hits and great songs oh, today, haven't we? We've got some great features, a new feature, that film sounds good. Looking forward to that. That, that a run week. and run. Yep. Um, song for the Lovers, if there's any record companies out there, the one I put out, a compilation song of my Songs for the Lovers, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's good. A anyone who wants me to do a film, anything, any film you want. Yeah, uh, reviewed. Yeah, reviewed, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would finish the sentence. Yeah, no, ideally. Because oh, it, it was otherwise, it was anyone who wants me to do a film. Well, of course, oh, being okay. the top actor, yeah, you'd have sure, probably appeared in a film. Sure, sure, okay, yeah. Um, and that... <laughs> it's so, really good. Yeah, okay. Well, you're running out of steam, I can you're tell. You're running out. Yeah, yeah. Go on. Carl, have you seen it yet? I know you probably haven't, Rick. Cliff Richards' video for his new single. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? Oh, it's bad, Shock. isn't it? I, I saw it on Lorraine Kelly in the morning, Sky One. Great yeah. show. And, um... Uh, <laughs> And it's amazing. It's it's he's done a version of Somewhere Over the Rainbow, but he's oh, combined that. No. He's combined that with um uh, what's it? It's uh, oh what a oh what a wonderful world. I wasn't really yeah. listening. I was looking at the pictures. And it's I can't believe it's it. what a wonderful world, and uh, combined with Somewhere Over the Rainbow. So right. he's done a so two classic songs, two songs that have been done definitively yeah. by artists in the past. He's tried to what combine them last with a kind one? of Yamaha keyboard sound of the Mac. What was his last year's one? It was um, Lord's Prayer, Prayer with. Uh, over the old Lang Syne. He's just obsessed with combining two songs. Like, they're not good enough as they are. People will get bored, we better combine them. Yeah, yeah. It's like That's... a like a mega mix, like a cliff mega mix. And you're right, the video is unbelievable. It's him flying through. It's all kind of sort of 2D animation, mm. kind of almost sort of a collage of, of uh, buildings and high-rise mm. flats and that. Kids see him floating by. Yeah. They wave, they point to each other, they can't believe they're like, there goes Sir Cliff. They, they're, they're going, who's that? <laughs> exactly. He was around in the 50s. <laughs> and he's, he's just, he's got a little one-dimensional cliff with a kind of angelic glow right. flying through the sky. Just bringing happiness to people as he sings. Oh, he does. Is, is his real face kind of uh, every so often kind of appearing? And kind I wonder of where his real face is. <laughs> and it's it's one of the worst songs and one of the worst videos I've ever seen. I mean, I know people slag off Cliff and it's an easy target, but he actually deserves it because he's shameful. Um, yeah, I he's think embarrassing. So, yeah. Yeah, he's every, embarrassing. I mean, and he's arrogant. Uh, well, everything's a disguised boast. I mean, I, you know, I like Devil Woman. I like Miss You Nights. I liked Wired for Sound, it, and I like tall speakers and small speakers. You know, <laughs> you know, I like, tall you know, I like all sizes speakers. You know that. You'll you'll vouch me on that. Yeah. yeah. And he sang about it, which is good. And you know, I'm often wired for sound, right? Carrie doesn't live here anymore. Where's she gone? She's just another message on a payphone wall. It's a story. But lately, I haven't had a lot of time for him. Awful. I remember he was on something on uh, one chat show, and uh, I think it was Dares or Michael. Um, asked for someone, and uh, I said, uh, so you've asked me, he said, yeah, he said, well, everyone um, knows that Elvis sold more records uh, after his death than when he was alive. Little dig there against Elvis, he goes, yeah. well, um, I've just overtaken his record for sales in the UK. 
Right, so he sets up that Alvis, Alvis is only selling because he's dead. Yeah. And anyway, I've still beaten him in the UK. <laughs> and I just yeah. think, yeah. Yeah. Always... And where'd you get, and where'd you get the quiff from and the way to sing? Where'd you get that from, Cliff? Mm. Where, where did you think of that? But it's those people who, he's just desperate for the credibility that he's never going to have. I like it when he went around last year going, they're not playing my record, they're not playing my record, they're not playing, oh, go on, play it. Number one. Yeah. Ha, full It was number one, the yeah. Millennium Prayer. I know. Yeah. Well, it was, you know, it was the Millennium, wasn't it? It was, but I don't know who's buying it. I mean, I know, you seem to claim it's some kind of, like, 60-year-old women, but they're not... Yeah, are is, they yeah. really a commercial force now? Yes. Oh, yeah. Car seems to know that. Well, like, when you're born, you're a little baby, wrinkly and stuff. When you get older, you, you sort of morph into a baby again. And you go through the same phases, so when you're young, you buy singles. You get old, you've got nothing to do all day. you got all your pension money, what will I buy? Cliff Richards on the telly, here's my video, buy me song. You see... That started off as quite a sensible point, because I actually think they do it. But what was all that alien stuff <laughs> about when you're born, you go wrinkly and you go wrinkly again? So it's sometimes you mix, like, normal things that human beings say with I don't know what. Well, look, when you're a baby, you've got oh. a little bald head, no teeth, you get old, what happens? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a philosopher? Are you an official <laughs> philosopher? Because, <laughs> I mean, it sounds like it. <laughs> oh, Carl, play a record. You're a gem. You're a diamond. XFM 104.9. Good to hear the happy Mondays again. We're nearly through. We are indeed. We've had a little bit of chat. We've had a few laughs. We've had a few tears. We have indeed. We've, yeah. uh, we've, we, we've introduced a new feature. Looking forward to that next week. Yeah, we, so it's, it's just going to be wall-to-wall -wall features, isn't yeah. it? It's going to yeah. be, oh, Well, I had an amazing. idea for a feature which you didn't seem to like, which what? was something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. Well, explain it. And yeah, the, something well, old, an old song, something yeah. new, a new song. Yeah. Something borrowed, a cover version. Yeah. And something blue, just a melancholy and beautiful song. Right, okay, but does it have to be all four, or can it be anyone? No, it's all four. You can play that over the course of the show. Or maybe just have oh. a set four songs in a row, and that's that section. So, so that so like feature would be like this is either an old song or like a new song. Yeah, that's good. I think we've done that a few times. No, it's not. It's we've not covered that, that. Well, what's the difference? Play. Oh, I'm playing a song from a film. Just because you give it a title, <laughs> it's just a song from a film. You could play that anyway, couldn't you? Brilliant. Man. It's all you've, nonsense. You see, cheers, Carl. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, my ideas are good, aren't they? Because mm. they're not only sort of accessible, but there's a little bit of depth there. I think it's. Fair enough to let him have his little feature at the end of the show, though. Just, you know what I mean? Oh, give him up here, this song for the cool. lovers. Come Excellent. Well, that's, yeah, but that's not till after song two by Blair. I remember the days when Carl didn't even want to be on the air. I remember the days when he was, he was told by the establishment that he wasn't allowed to talk on the air. And now, it's like, he's, as far as he's concerned, he's a third member of the team. He's protected by yeah. me. <laughs> right? Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Song two by Blur. We're running out of time. It's 5-2. Just got time for Steve's song for the ladies. Wedding present, Rick, from the album uh, Saturnali, I think it's pronounced like that. And it's track three, Dream World. A song Looking forward for the to ladies. it. Looking forward to it. Goodbye. The only thing that annoys me with weddings is the gift. It's the gift thing. Because, like, you buy these gifts, right? You spend a little bit of money, maybe. You know, I, I like to be a little bit lavish if I go to a wedding. You oh. Know? Well, well, come on. You get a gift, right? You package You're it up. You're laugh. And... I don't know about you, Rick, but you, I like to see the response. When I give a gift to someone, I want to, I want to see that, the feedback from that. You yeah, know, this is very much, you know, I, I want to see what it is that Jane bought them on, on you know, yeah, and exactly. put my name to it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> sometimes I have to, oh, thanks for the, I go, oh, no worries, <laughs> no worries, yeah. no worries. Yeah. But, you know, certainly, I mean, we've talked about it before, but certainly, you know, it's the, the amount of, the amount of money spent and the amount of time given to the gift should be correlated by the amount of the response you get. Absolutely. If you give a book token, a shrug is fine. <laughs> <laughs> but if I give, you know, a sizable, I want to kind of, I want them to be showing it to friends, if it's a bar, I want them to show yeah. it to barman, you, other you people, strangers. Go, look what Steve Merchant got me, yeah. he's the greatest man in the world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. When you go to a wedding, you turn up with a gift, you could have spent, you know, upwards of 15 pounds on it. <laughs> you turn up, you walk in, you say, excuse me, where's the bride and groom, I want to give them this gift. And so Bloke, normally the brother-in-law says, oh, yeah, no, 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 and, um, they'll get back to you. In a week. It may be six to eight weeks after the honeymoon. They may be write you a note. They won't thank you personally, they'll write you a note. It'll be a general thank you. And your, general your, thank you. your name in different type. <laughs> yeah, but it might have some vague reference to, you know, to yeah. what you did, but it won't yeah. really be personalised. Yeah. The it's set of mugs are going to be in different types. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Steve Merchant, <laughs> yeah. for your wonderful gift. We uh, we love mugs. <laughs> yeah, yours. Yeah, <laughs> and a photocopied signature. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, no, it's not right, is it? Oh dear. And, and, and also, uh, of course, as well, if there's uh, and if there's a baby involved, you know, perhaps they, you know, they they had a kid out of wedlock, and that's mean? where they're getting married. There's normally a little baby signature as well. Oh. Like, oh, I, like the baby signed it. Uh, From Paul and Sharon. 
a little Billy. <laughs> <laughs> be Ben. Be Ben, ben these days. Ben. I reckon. What do you think, uh, Karma? What's the wedding, by the way? Did you work it? Um, Suzanne sorted something out. Yeah. What? Um, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, actually, no, we, we're going away. I'm a week away with them. Well, that's, that's, that's your gift? Yeah. What are you going away? No, we're going away to Cornwall or something. And, uh, uh, yeah, that's it. We've, we, we, we've sort of paid for the, for a place to stay in there. Coming along and that. And their gift is to spend a week with you in a confined space. I love it. They'll, they'll have a great time and that. Will they? Yeah, it's fine. Can yeah. I, sorry, can I get a pen? I'm making a note of how many times you say and that during today's show. And so far there's three. I've noticed three. I'm just gonna, can I just make a note of it? Because I think we can have a competition here. <laughs> and if you can predict how many times he's gonna say and that, mm -hmm. the closest one wins um, some of the crap DVDs that we've got on offer. Hold on, tell, tell them we've got ladder 49. Definitely. <laughs> Landed Ben Folds on XFM 104.9. We've had an email, Rick, from Simon Whitaker. He says, uh, he's throwing the question to Carl. Have you seen the video for that Ben Folds song where there's apparently a monkey working the sound desk and shifting the piano? I'm so, uh, yeah, you want to check that out. Talking of monkeys, um, working the sound desk. <laughs> um, we've also had a lot of emails directed Smooth. to you. Yeah. A lot of emails directed to you, Carl, asking if you saw this program that was on in the week. The, I, no, I think, I didn't see it. I, think I it know, called, I know. The, the strangest, the, the strangest village in Britain. Yeah. Did he watch it? He called me six times during it. <laughs> he called me six times. Erudite. Now just explain briefly what this was, because I didn't see it. Well, it was, um, uh, a sort of a, an experiment, um, for, I think, oh, I can work out from the sort of seventies, um, and it, it was sort of run by, from what can make out, mainly sort of German, uh, Christians. Right. And, um, what it was, it was, um, uh, people with various disabilities, or mental illnesses, uh, Down syndrome, uh, uh, autism, b bewildered, you know, and, and they were living normally in the community. And there was 300 people in the village, half, um, had some sort of, uh, um, problem, mental problem or, or disability, and the other half were sort of carers. And, uh, um, I mean, it was, you know, it was, it was very, very strange. And where is this village? Uh, it's, it's somewhere up, in this village. It's up near Whitby, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Okay. But he called me, uh, he called me at various points, you were watching that, uh, and it started off, he, he went, geez, if that's the beginning, what have they got coming up? <laughs> then there was two fellas, and it, 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 the phone rang, and it went, what is going on? And it was two, um, blokes. Who had created their own language, <laughs> okay. and they are going what do you know? And you go what do we do? And uh, what uh, you know? It was an interesting program. Anyway. I love documentary like that. But what made it twice as good was that I knew that Carl was getting confused. Yeah, he was get. There was one bloke that went round interviewing people, and you just have a string of questions, and you go, have you had, ever had curly hair? What's your favourite animal? Have you ever seen a badger? All uh, right, and um. Carl was getting stressed. It was stressing me out. Because he was trying to think of the answers quickly enough. <laughs> that, yeah, he was sort of saying, you know, uh, do you like mosaics and that? And I was like, oh, I do it. And, that, and that, the next question was coming in. It was like, it was like Malik's <laughs> Malik. You know, that sort of, <laughs> that word association thing. It was, yeah. like, I was stressing yeah. me out. But he said he wanted to go there. He actually said, oh, could I go for a holiday there? And I went, well, I, I doubt that. I don't know. Maybe you could go on a, a visit. You know, oh, that, that would be great, wouldn't it? To st for Carl to walk in there. But the thing about it, it would be like, Carl would be the ruler. He'd be the king. It would be that, in the kingdom of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. I mean, he would just die. I don't know. There was some of them were quite clever. Really? Yeah, I don't think he'd, I don't, I, I think he'd probably be average. Yeah. I, don't th I don't think he'd... <laughs> okay, he'd you know, I mean, No, I don't, I don't think he'd shine. Because <laughs> yeah. a lot of them were quite good at some things, weren't they? He didn't like the, um, the angry bloke who punched them. There was a, um, this really sort of sweet Down Syndrome woman called Nan. And, um, uh, she hadn't hung her coat up and this angry, um, bloke was going, if you don't hang your coat up, I will. And he punched her, didn't he? Yeah. And really poor Nan got it in the uh, neck from everyone. There was another woman bullying her, wasn't he? That, yeah. yeah. But he liked the little, um... The the, the 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 little dancing to a fellow with a woolly yeah, hat who was helping right. that if, woman. If I went there, he's the one who had sort of hunt down and say, come on, let's go for a pint or something. Sure. But, uh... Incidentally, do you like mosaics? We didn't establish that. Uh... <laughs> he's still thinking about it. <laughs> what was his name, that one, that you, the, 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 that you liked and you wanted to hang around with? What was his name? Uh... uh I can't remember. I can't he was good, I liked him, he was nice, wasn't he? Yeah. He yeah. Fell, he's the one that fell over, then, and then, um... Proposed marriage to that woman, didn't he? Yeah, I remember. Um, I was on a. I don't know if this is all right to talk about. I mean, it happened, so you know, not worried about. It's all right to talk about. Everything's but, all right to talk was, about. But I was on the train, right? 
uh, coming from Manchester back to London, right? Yeah. And, uh, got on it, it was like a Friday night, and it was heaving, you know, like the, the, the last train is and all that. And, um, absolutely chocker. Right? Yeah. So I'm walking through the carriages, <laughs> thinking, oh, is he in his seats anyway? Is it? Anyway, everyone's like, it's, it's heaving, right? It's people stood up in the doorways, you can't get in the toilet and all that. There's not going to be any chair knocking about. You know, so. Walking through, and anyway, I see this one empty chair sort of in front of me, right? I think, oh, why aren't anyone sat there, right? I'll just rush to that, get to that, I'll get myself a seat. Plunk myself down, right? And, uh, sort of turn round, you know, see who I'm facing, you know, see who you're sort of having a chat with. Little fella there, <laughs> right? Little, uh, well, Down syndrome kid. Right. right. Sat there. And, uh, he goes, all right. And I thought, oh, right. Not, not bad, but do, do you know what I mean? They're always talking, aren't they? They ask a lot of questions. <laughs> right, so I was like, oh, here we go, two and a half hours. And I couldn't get up because the thing is, that's obvious. Sure. Right? So that's, that's like mean. I don't, I, I never want to be mean, do you know what I mean? No. At the end of the day. So, um, so anyway, so I think, I oh, know, I'll go to sleep. <laughs> Clever. Right, so I shut my eyes and he leaves me alone and all that. So, uh, so then, my phone goes. And I think, right, what do I do? Do I ignore it? Or do I open my eyes and see who it is? Anyway, I open my eyes, it's Ricky calling about something. About nothing, probably, actually thinking about it. It wasn't even worth answering, right? So anyway, I'm awake then, aren't I? So he's like, hello. And I'm like, all right, mate. And he says, uh, he says, you're muscly. And, uh, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, uh, you know, why? So I said, I don't know. Just, just stand. It's, again, stressing me out, because I'm thinking, why am I? Why am I muscly? I don't go to the gym. And, you know, I mean, I'm not muscly. I'm in good shape and that. Well. So, uh, so then, uh, he wants an arm wrestle. <laughs> On a crammed train from Manchester. So I've got another hour and a half of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when so, you talk back, he'd soon have got up and left. <laughs> if you just started asking him questions, he'd have got up and left with the dribble you come out with. So anyway, uh, <laughs> do you know when you're under pressure, you're thinking, well, he's said that I'm muscly, you know, all right, so do I do it or not? What, and there's people watching, you know, not joining in, not sort of having a laugh and that with me, just, just like watching but pretending they're not. Oh, And I'm God. at one of those table seats, so, it, and he kept saying, come on, I want to arm wrestle. So, and he was getting loud, and I thought, oh, I best just have an arm wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? I best just have an arm wrestle. Well, what do you mean? Done, get it over and done with. I had to. Uh, he's, if he's going to keep asking, I had another hour and a half on the train. Oh God. So anyway. Oh uh, my God. I'm, I'm thinking he won. Well, I'm, yeah. Well, I'm I'm thinking, were people putting bets on? It How was it working? It was stopped and just as well, really. Was really? Stopped. Stopped. No, he, he, and why was it getting? No, no, no. He, he sort of, he was, he was winning. I was struggling a bit. Right? Yeah. And he was really like, you know, taking my arm down and then he sort of let go and started laughing. And I thought, thank God he let go because I would have made, you know what I mean? If I lost that, <laughs> everyone's in the train looking and all the rest of it. <laughs> it's suddenly serious yeah. to him he's got to win this. Pilkington, Pilkington. But then he just, uh, then we were chatting about favourite food and that, he liked sausages. <laughs> and I said, you know, he said, do you like sausages? I said, yeah, they're alright, I like a bit of Chinese and that as well. And he was saying, oh, I can't have Chinese, not allowed Chinese. Why? Uh, don't know. He just said uh, it's not allowed to have it. But right. uh, but yeah, I d had a good long chat about about stuff and that. But so you enjoyed it in the end. In the end, it was it was all right. Yeah, it's uh, just what is it? Mm, okay. No, but it's that thing, isn't it? It's it's, oh, it's when it, whenever you're faced with something different, yeah. it's always awkward, isn't it? And that's the thing. You're talking about him now, are you? And I, and I I think I did all right because everyone else was ignoring him, but yeah. I probably made his day pretty good. Yeah. We were I, bloke. I like the idea that that newlywed couple are probably thinking that's going to be a similar journey down to Cornwall. <laughs> Out of all the people in the world to have a chat with, do you know, um, what's his face? That German doctor. Which one? The guy that, that displays the human body? Guns, someone. Guns right. Traven or something. All right, yeah. Um, well, I don't, is he, is he a proper doctor? Because it's just that it's always, I mean, I could cut a body up, I never see him sort of put it back together. Is, is anyone keeping an eye on him, sort of going, well, who is he, actually? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he is a proper doctor. I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't answer everything. Like, he doesn't say, I, I don't understand why the intestines have to be that long. I don't, I don't know why it just can't go from the throat to the belly. 
exit, straight dark line down, out the arse. You must know. Well, no, because uh, the, the way he, he dragged it out and it was like miles long. Yeah. Pointless. No, it's not pointless. It's just, just, have a, just have a straight, do you know no, what I mean? Straight it's what you're talking about. Again, the evolution sort of worked this out for us. It really works. I don't think you're going to improve on it. What I mean is that's probably that long because years ago they were eating dinosaur and that might have took a lot of indigestion or something. I don't know how, how chewy it was. It might have been quite fatty, dinosaur meat, and it needs to go through all that. Now, we're eating, like, yoghurt. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> we, we, don't, we don't need anything that, you know, is, is, is doing that much work anymore. All the food is mashed up. And in aura, right? <laughs> all her food is mashed. <laughs> right? She doesn't have to chew anymore. She's got teeth, but she doesn't need them. And that's how. how <laughs> She's got teeth, but she don't need them. No, but that's well, how we're moving on. Well, she her intestines removed then. Well, no, but this is that what I'm saying. That's our other problem, wouldn't we're, it? We're changing everything all the time, aren't we? I mean, there's some fella who was looking at on the internet. Um, identical twins, right? They were sort of sick of looking like each other, so they were like, "What can we do?" Right? And one of the twins said, you have my arm, right? <laughs> and he, he had his arm taken off and stuck on his, his twin, so his twin's got, like, three arms. No, it's not true. <laughs> it's on the website. <laughs> no, it's what? not true. What, um, for a laugh? They were born so what, they did have no, what, like, what, what doctor's doing this, then? Well, they're old enough to sort of say, this is what we want, and... No, 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 no. Doctors don't go, well, if he wants another arm and I'll take them, uh, They don't... Doctors don't do that. What sort of practice is this doctor going around and go, Dr. Jekyll? I mean, Carl, think of what you're no, saying. But Where would he have stopped? Can you put his head on my knee? No, it's up to you. No, <laughs> sign this. Hey, if you sign this, you give my consent. But, but we, you know, it isn't. Oh, what, what do you think these doctors are doing? Just to do as they're told. They don't do as they're told. They do if someone wants it, and, and twins sort of, it can get you down, can't it? Being a twin, because it's like. Sorry, what would this solve, though? I thought you said he, he, he gave one of them a, a bigger nose or a beard or two front teeth that would, to make them look different, right? Not... I'll tell you what we could do. Go on. Um, would you like one arm? Go on, what are you thinking? Well, me three, you one, therefore not twins. <laughs> Novelty. I mean, you are a mental man. But they can do it now, can't they? There's no sort of... There's, there's no line drawn anymore. They don't go, you're crazy, we're not going to do that. Yeah, in Saw 2, not in the real world. No, they don't do things like all this. Alright, there's another bloke, right? I don't know the sort of full ins and outs of it. Go on, you surprised me. But <laughs> what he asked for, um, something happened to his, his, his tackle. Right? Mm -hmm. His penis. Uh, yeah, right. Um, so he was at the doctor's and they were like, oh, what can you do for me? It's a bit embarrassing, I've got nothing down there, right? <laughs> so they were like looking at it going, yeah. Um, Doctor, I don't know if he started, like, rubbing his chin with his finger or something. Looked down. He's thinking... <laughs> got an idea. Um, you know, you've got a lot of fingers. How many of them do you use? The patient's like, yeah, I see what you're thinking. <laughs> they cut off one of his fingers, sewn that on to where his, his tackle is. He's happy. Well, that's different, though, isn't it? Well, That's where they've really taken different. tissue. I <laughs> know, but they've—I assume they—they they fashioned it into more of a knob than a finger. If you were doing that, use a sausage. I mean, why lose a finger? For well, I'll tell you why. Because your finger has your your tissue, your blood type, and therefore would graft uh, to near testicles. A sausage is a thing <laughs> that's made by a butcher out of offal, okay, that really can't be grafted onto any part of the human yeah, body. But... That's why they very rarely use any meat products yeah, in, uh, in, in surgery. surgery. <laughs> I know, yeah. Use, well, I mean, why not use a sausage? You're a mental case. I always remember this story when I was a kid about some bloke, he had, um, throat cancer, right? And his doctor said, carry on with your life, right? It's not gonna be that good, but just carry on. Um, but don't eat meat. And he was like, oh, I love meat. He's like, yeah, but just don't, you know, have your veg, keep yourself strong, but don't be eating that anyway. He was, he was fed up because he loved his meat, and his, his wife was feeling a bit sorry for him one day. And thought, you know, I'm sick of him looking fed up and that. All oh, he wants is some meat, for God's sake, give him some meat. So she goes to the butchers, gets him a big piece of like steak and what have you. He can't believe it. He's like, oh, brilliant, cheers for that. Anyway, um, <laughs> he's got the meat on his plate, just about to tuck in, and the cancer comes out <laughs> from his throat. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> no, it's some. I know it sounds really weird, but it's something that that I was told about years ago when I was growing up. What are you talking about? It was just some some bad illness, some cancer thing, and it sort of it was it was coming out, waiting for the meat. It was. It was <laughs> It was sort of dying. Again, it, again, a lot of your medical uh, knowledge is from is from the film Alien. So this guy with throat cancer, okay, yeah. as opposed to it being a disease of the cell, it was like a living the alien. It oh, was alien. so it was a, it was a, uh, it was the animal. It was the little animal cancer. That's why. What he are wasn't you talking about? Meat. He wasn't allowed to eat meat. So it's sitting there. So it's actually sitting there in the throat. Why? I tell you what I'd have done if I'd have had some cancer in my throat. I'd go, <coughs> there you go. Rid of that. What are you talking about? So what happened? Um, <coughs> he choked to death on this thing, and the wife was like, "Oh, I shouldn't give him the meat after all." Just That's listen, to your, story. listen to your story. It's, it's all there's loads of weird stuff like that there that is. happens in medical stuff. Well, the terrible thing is, you if you if you got testicular cancer and you eat meat, your bollocks come out of your trousers, and they're they're all over the plate, yeah. and you have to be asked to leave the restaurant. Okay, then listen. Right, I'm gonna. I've found some things that I think will interest you. And I want your first thoughts on these, okay? Now these are facts that I've sourced, mm. okay? What's the what's the actual topic? Well, you love animals, don't you? You're interested in animal some facts. Some of them. I don't. Mm. I don't love them. They, they, some of them fascinate me and stuff, but a lot of them also get on my nerves. I don't know how an animal can get on your nerves. They just they just do. Okay then, here you go. Right. Um, there's a frog, Carl. Just a little frog, a poison arrow frog, that contains enough poison. To kill over a thousand human beings. Why is it that annoyed? It's not annoyed. Well, why is it going about killing a thousand people? No, it has the potential to. It has enough poison, has enough toxin in it that could kill a thousand human beings. But does if it does it need that? Whereabouts is this? Where's it living? Rainforest, I think. And does it need that sort of power? Is it in that much? Is it is, is it getting threatened a lot? Is what I mean. Well, no, because it's saying, don't come near me, and it shows it with its colours, it's got the colours that say, it doesn't want to be eaten, it doesn't want people to chew a bit, right, and go, oh, I'm an idiot. It's saying, look at my colours, don't eat me, Don't you don't want to come near me. But then why give it bright colours? Because now it's standing out. Yeah, and it's going, don't eat me. Yeah, but make it a colour that fits in, like camouflage. Why, why make it orange? Of course it's gonna stand out and then they'll attack it and then it'll turn around and bite and kill a thousand men or whatever. No, it doesn't bite, it's the fact that if you were to eat it, you would die. Yeah, but who's, I mean, who's gonna eat it? Well, things that eat frogs. The French. <laughs> <laughs> and they yeah. go, Sacre bleu! <laughs> you have killed me and 999 <laughs> of my friends! But why, why is everything like surviving like this though i thought it was all about survival of the fittest not yeah. the one who looks the hardest well but survival of the fittest is whether you're chosen or not by nature no but i i survive if i could go about killing a thousand men at one bite it's not fair it doesn't bite it's well whatever if it licks you or whatever but no it it, not seem... if it licks you if you lick it well i'm not gonna lick it it's not it's not gonna happen <laughs> i don't i will not be licking a frog so it's it's of no danger to me so I could still kill it, and there's no chance, at no point, am I going to lick a, a little frog's head. Not when it's alive or when it's dead. <laughs> I love the fact it's all about you. It's all about how it relates to you. And he's annoyed that they're, like, they're getting away with something. He doesn't, he doesn't like any sly animals. He doesn't like animals hiding. He doesn't, he, then he wants no, he doesn't want animals um, killing things. Then he wants them to kill things. He doesn't know what he wants. When they say survival of the fittest, they don't mean that, say, lions have been working out in a gym. It means, the fittest, it means the fittest gene pool, and the fittest gene pool is a gene pool that's still around. That's all it is. You think that everything, slugs, cats, are all somehow, they, their, their ambition is to be like us, or to, to have the but, attributes but, like us that they can speak, they can talk, they can think, only, they can act. I only think that because when you see people with these pets, lizards, cats, whatever, they treat them like the humans. So I think if you do that enough times, they're going to start getting familiar with Again, certain... Again, Planet of the Apes. No, yeah. he's I'm thinking talking, of Planet say like of the Apes. You, say like you with your cat, the way you talk to it, you give it a little cheeky massage and that when it's stressed out. And no, no, cat. no, you made that up that it's it was stressed cat. out. It's... I'm just playing with my cat, right? If anything, the, the, the cat is to de-stress me. Black Rebel Motorcycle Club. We're all in love on XFM 104.9. Um, sorry about, um, Rockbusters. Uh, that's the end of it, definitely. Because it's...
it, it was it was dreadful. Do you know what I mean? It's not. Do you know what I mean, Steve? Yeah. It's quite funny, but that was that was awful. I, I mean, we've apologised for that quiz so many times. I know we've given it. Uh, I think it's two comebacks. Like it, no, they don't like it. They they don't like it because it's like it, that's it. too that people. No, no, that, that's the end of that. Um, less adverts next week. Sort that out because yeah. it's just it's awful. Twenty minutes of adverts. Do you know what I mean? It's not what people listen for. So. Um, right, redeem yourself. Have you got the film thing you're in? Right, yeah. I'm in a film. Uh, it's Pulp Fiction this week. Right. Right. Uh, changed it a little bit, tweaked the storyline a little bit. <laughs> okay. It's just To make uh, it better, yeah. It's just a- do you know I've talked about Suzanne's hair and that? Yeah. About when she got it caught, didn't like it and that. Yeah. So it's sort of about that. Uh, listen to it, there'll be a question at the end. You can win some good stuff. Yeah, well. Right. So, and this is the scene where they're in the restaurant, do you know, when they're about to do yeah. the, the robbery. Yeah, please. Except it's not a restaurant, change that, it's a barber's. Right. Alright? Okay. Alright. Oh, there you go then. Oh, is there gonna be a question after this? Yeah. yeah. Say that. Okay. Alright. Uh, girlfriend came in here earlier. Had a haircut, I'm not happy with it, look at the state <laughs> of that. Well, d don't laugh. Yeah? I mean, I don't, I don't want to cause any fuss, but just... Just want you to sort it out. I'm afraid I can't do that. Well, you can do that, cos it looks a mess. Look, my friend, this is just where you and I differ. Well, well, you, you've got to do something, cos look at it. When she came through the front door at home, I thought Dave Hill out of Slade had walked in. Funny, I was thinking the same thing. Look, we- I don't want to cause any problems or anything. She hasn't even seen it properly yet. She sort of had it cut and came straight home and didn't- didn't look at it. Suzanne, just look in that mirror. Look what they've done to your head. God damn it, what is it? <laughs> Suzanne! Get out of now! We're not gonna do anything stupid, are we? I'm the manager here. There's no problem. What do you mean it's not a problem? Look at the state of her hair. Be calm, cooperate, and this will all be over in a minute. I won't go home. No, we're not going anywhere until they sort your hair out. I'm, I'm not walking home with you, with your hair like that. It's, in, it's embarrassing, so... So let's just get it... You die. No, forget having it die. Just get it cut. Colour's not a problem. Just sort it out. Just get rid of... Let's see what we can do. Right. Good. Look at it. Look at the state of it. I'm trying real hard. Suzanne, just keep your head still there so you can... Just hang in there, baby. You're doing great. I'm proud of you. Just sort that bit out there. Just cut that. My barber says I've got the, uh, the hair of a Chinaman. Have you, have you heard that before? <laughs> what? What's, uh, what's so funny about that? Is it, is it serious or what? Freaking me out. If my answers frighten you, you should cease asking scary questions. It's almost over. There you go. No, it's not. It's not brilliant, but that'll have to do, won't it? I reckon we'll have to buy her a, uh, a hat on the way home. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> do you think Suzanne's listening? It's alright, isn't it? I like, the fact, <laughs> I like the fact that in that she's represented with a sort of dimwit southern accent. Yeah. Your girlfriend, so I'm yeah. sure she'll appreciate that. Alright, it's well. nice, yeah, it's a nice- I, I don't know what kind of copyright infringements <laughs> <laughs> that is made. <laughs> yeah. Right, well, the question is, what did I say is odd about my hair? Odd about your hair? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, right. yeah. Fans of the show will know that already, I'm sure. Yeah, so, uh, email in, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk, or, uh, yeah, just email, actually. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Bud. Right. Yeah, you can win some tat. <laughs> usual address. That is a beautiful record. Yeah, this is Thunder Road by Bruce Springsteen, as recorded by Badly Gone Boy. Badly Gone Boy doing his version of Bruce Springsteen's Thunder Road. Good effort. FM 104.9. Tricky song to uh, do a good version of, but not good bad. Good effort. Not bad. Um, Badly. Tell you what, who's also made a good effort. Go on. Stephen Gunning mm. of Tooting. He's correctly identified that Carl's hair is like that of a Chinaman's. Or it was. Uh, yeah, and many other people have emailed in saying, how can we know what your hair's like, because you are a bold mank. Yeah. So people have correctly... Uh, is it, is our language okay on this show, in general? Mm. I've told you that, we, you know. Be careful on that. Yeah, why don't you try putting some effort into it as you get Mondays off for this two hours? You come up with Rockbuster clue that no one can get because it was impossible, it wasn't even a clue. Yeah. 
I've got, okay. got your headlines. I've done Pulp Fiction, right? I taught you about that fella, the builder fella, and, and his eyes and that. You don't even know what you're talking about. You don't even know what you've taught me. It's sort of like you borrow information. It, 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 it's like one of those things that, you know, what are those things called, um, uh, read, write once, read many. It, it can just pass it on and it's, it's <laughs> yeah. yeah, one of those CDs you can just play once. Well, it struck me That is you and information. It goes in, if you tell someone once, it's like you've lost it. It's like you've, it's like passed the parcel <laughs> with knowledge. It's gone now. You don't even remember what you told me. Like <laughs> a chain letter. What? Just, you mean chain letter, don't you? Shut up. Um, it struck me when we were listening to his phone call to you at the very beginning of the show, I don't know if you might have missed that, but basically there was a message that Carl left from Ricky, but about halfway through that message, there was the feeling, I don't know if you noticed, but like the words started to fall apart, it was like he wasn't going to make it. Every time Carl opens his mouth, it's the equivalent of walking across one of those rickety bridges in Indiana Jones, <laughs> but might, you might not make it to the other side. <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah. Oh, look at him. Anyway, we've had a few laughs and we've had a few insults. Yeah, but, um, so we're trying to sort of really, honestly, I'll try and sort out some else as opposed to block Rockbusters next week. Mm -hmm. Um, less adverts, I think. Ideally. Um, what else? Oh, better, uh, better chat, better music, better presenters. No, come on. We got rid of Monkey News. What's it? Oh, right is there no Monkey News? No, it's gone on this week. Don't talk, sh t there must be some Monkey News. It's not like it's real news. You tell us stories about chimps from the 18th century. It's not, don't give me all, nothing all, happened yeah. this week. You just didn't look at the internet. Did look. The and there's no was, news. There nothing was, happened. There was one little bit of monkey news about, um, <laughs> how you can now buy tea that's been picked by little chimps because it, because it tastes good. Right. That's, that's what they're saying. Right. Why does it taste good? What I do they know. do to it? I don't know. It just annoyed me. Is it, is it those chimps from the PG tip thing? <laughs> well, that's, that's <laughs> annoying Are they dressed up, having funny conversations? Well, like, that's the thing. Everyone made a fuss about, you know, that's cruel, making them pick a piano up. Yeah. If I was a chimp, I know what job I'd prefer. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Being removals rather than standing <laughs> in the field picking tea and that. Yeah. <laughs> I love the fact that he probably thought that was a documentary. Yeah. <laughs> he thought it was a, a trailer for a Channel 4 programme. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we'll be back next I've week. I've got a little treat for them. Right, that winner of the DVD, watch the behind the scenes footage because you see Carl's little round head. So they're enjoying that. Who won that, by the way? We've given uh, that away, haven't we? Yeah, we forget who it yeah, was. It's gone. Oh. Don't bother watching the rest of the stand up, though. It's a bit poor. <laughs> <laughs> Leave you with 50 cents outfit. Fiddy, I call him Fiddy. I call him Fiddy Cent. Back next week. Fiddy. <laughs> mm. Right, next that's one. Weird. That's Popsicle. That's Popsicle Hell, we call that. Right, next one. Uh, which one's the next one? Oh, what about your paper round? Right, the paper round one. Uh, paper round, I'd still say it's the best job I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> and he means it! No, I really oh. enjoyed it. It's like, you oh. know. You, you, <laughs> You don't have to work with anyone else, right? Ah, so you make your own rules. Just think of that. Um, yep. you know, um, you sort of You're around. spreading information. Well, yeah. To people, yeah, vital information. Giving a service, yeah. and no one else is around. You know, you can just do what you want and think about stuff whilst you're cycling around on your bike. It's really good. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, can you imagine the stuff he's thinking about when he's driving around? <laughs> I can't. Oh, so, <laughs> getting in the head of a salamander. <laughs> so anyway, I, I loved it, and even though I only got like fifty p a day, right? No matter what the weather was like and stuff, I used to get up at half past four and uh, go and do the round. And um, why did you get up at half past four? Because I wanted to watch the Pink Panther at five thirty, so <laughs> I wanted to get me paper round done. I said, why didn't you watch the Pink Panther? And then, and then he, went, he went, oh, I can't sit there thinking I've got my paper round to do. <laughs> It'll ruin it for him. Yeah. So is it a good job or not? So 4.30 four, four I was up, up and about, and this morning it was like winter, really bad winter, bad snow, you know, freezing cold, really windy and all that. And my mum said to me before I went to bed, she said, don't be getting up tomorrow, I'll give you the 50p. I said, it's not about the 50p. <laughs> so, you know, people want the papers and stuff. <laughs> so, um... Conscientious. <laughs> so anyway, I went to bed thinking, you know, that's it, I'm, I'm, I've told her I'm still going, so, you know, whatever. Go to sleep, get up in the morning, and, uh, put all my kit on. And I, I used to have layers of clothing on, because it was really cold. They had, like, a big anorak on, with the third on. They had, like, waterproof pants. And I got my paper round bag. And, uh, I went downstairs to get out, and tried to open the door, and it was locked. So, oh, God, so, uh, uh, so she'd locked it so I couldn't go out, so I'm searching around the house looking for the keys. She must have hid them somewhere. So, oh, God, you know, I've, I've 
I've got the papers to do. So I thought, how can I get out? So I went upstairs, climbed out of the bathroom window. God. Right, and to try and jump out of the bed bathroom window onto the porch. But the problem was, I had so much gear on, I was like the Michelin man. <laughs> so I could hardly, I could hardly move as it is. Yeah. And I try to get out of the window, and I, I, I'm like, try to stretch down like that, get me foot on the, on the porch. And my bag got caught on like the hook of, do you know like how you have a hook so you can put the window open? Right, yeah, the yeah. little yeah, arm goes yeah. on. My bag had got caught on that. I was holding on to the, like, the, the wall and my foot on the thing so I couldn't sort of pull it, pull it away in case I pulled it away and then fell on my head. Yeah. So I'm stuck there. Dangling. Dangling. My dad comes back from working nights. Yeah. He thinks I'm a burglar. <laughs> Gets out his gun. So, <laughs> so he's shouting and stuff, going mad and going, Dad, it's me. And he had to give us a hand with using a... <laughs> he's heard that wily trick in Manchester before. <laughs> <laughs> he had to help me using a washing prop thing. A big stick. What did he do? Well, he said, just hold on for your dear life, and I'll sort of push the paper bag off the hook. Why and didn't he go upstairs and sort it out? It was at that point where I was in the middle, there was nothing you could do, do you know what I mean? Mm. It's oh, at that point where you've just got to make a decision. Yeah. And by the time you go upstairs, who knows what might have happened. Sure. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You've got to act there and then, <laughs> don't listen around. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so and you can hear downstairs, now here he is, the Pink Panther. <laughs> yeah. Dad! The Pink Panther. Hurry the up! Panther. Ever so pink. <laughs> oh. So that, that was close to death, because I must have been about 30 foot in the air. So, he th uh, uh, to cut a long story short, he gave me about four or five near death experiences, and he went, and the whole point of this, he went, so that's why I think I'm going to die of something horrible, like cancer. And I went, why? He went, right, you ready for this? Yeah. He said, well, I don't check my balls. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> he said, I don't like the feel. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, Carl, always check your balls. Do you I check your like feel? Why don't you like the feel of your own balls? It's just, I mean, you know that I don't like bodies anyway. Right. Do you know what I mean? It worries me a bit that you've got all that going on in your body, right? And your skin's keeping it all in place. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, 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 stop. We're going down a whole other avenue of discussion. Let's play a track. Let's come back to it. All right. This is Carl, the uh, producer of Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant on XFM 104.9. We're playing out some of the best bits. Hope you're enjoying it. Here's another one. Oh. His homework was to come up with those stupid lateral thinking problems. Uh, we, may, we maybe should give an, a, an example of the... Uh, oh, of the um, Romeo and Juliet, right? Romeo's asleep on the bed, Juliet's on the floor, covered in water and broken glass. What happened? And you ask all these stupid questions, and it's... Romeo's a cat and Juliet's a goldfish. Again, oh, what am I thinking? Yeah. Yeah, go on then, Carl. Right, um... Yeah. There's a bloke lying on the floor, right? He's cut his head, blood's coming out of his head, <laughs> and all his mates come running up, and they're all stood round him. Yeah. And, uh, they don't take their hats off to, as a mark of respect. That is outrageous. Why didn't they take their hats off? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm wow. laughing, but it's probably as good as the oh, real absolutely. ones. absolutely. A bloke's fallen with his... Yeah. He's lying on the floor. Yeah. He's dead. Yeah. His mates come running he's, up he's, like, oh. wasn't it Was it important that his head was cut? Um, I don't know. I mean, would, it, would, it, would it have been okay if he'd have been wearing a hat? He wouldn't have been dead if he was wearing a hat. What, what's your answer? No, you're meant to answer questions. You don't just go, what's your answer? You say, where's well, it turns out you go, no, and I have to guess. It's obviously like sort of motorcycle stunt team or a parachute Why didn't they take their hats off? Because they're probably still on the motorbikes or something, or... Well, yeah, but if you mark, mark a respect to someone, you could take your helmet off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting angry! What, they're parachutists? <laughs> why, can they, why can't they take their helmets off? Because they're still they're coming down from the sky. Still... But he's on the floor dead. Well, yeah, they... But they can look down and see him on the floor. Are they on the floor, Carl? They're on the floor as well. They're walking, they? aren't they? Yeah, well, they sort of stood there looking at him. They're stood there. Yeah. They're stood on the floor looking they're at him. They're soldiers. Why? But why if they're Because it might be in a battle zone. They might have their helmets on. And he's been right. shot in the head. No. They, well, that does work. <laughs> you see, this is my point. That one works. That one works. Unless you've given us a piece of information where that doesn't work. What, yeah. what, what's the difference? Why, do, why is yours different to he's been shot in the head in the trenches and they're looking at him and they keep their helmets on? I just don't don't think it matters as much. If they're in the trench, they're already <laughs> guarded a little bit. So they could take their hats off. It's the best mate, for God's sake. <laughs> I'm just dwelling on this. Are they normal hats? What kind of hats are they? Answer. No! Don't get ratty! What right. kind of hats are they? Baseball well, hats? If I told you what sort of hats they are, you'd have the answer. Whoa! Okay, I've got to guess what sort of a hat it is then, have I? Right. Uh, 
Um, is it a trilby? No. Is it a bowler? I know what it is. What? They're spacemen. No. Oh, that's a good that one. That one works as well. That's, yeah. This is my point. I like that one a lot. It works. He's fallen on the moon, and there are oh, not that the moon happened. It was set yeah, up, wasn't it, in the studio. Field. We know that, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, Carl, what's your answer? Builders on a building site. <laughs> Why is that different to soldiers? <laughs> because bricks don't fall in wars. <laughs> <laughs> but bullets fly! <laughs> right. Let's play a record and we'll come back to it, Carl, oh. while you think about what you've done. Oh, yeah. Uh, you've uh, embarrassed Let's yourself. play some classic Swede. Yeah, and this is for David and Kieran, I think, who wanted a <laughs> bit of, bit of butler. XFM 104.9, I'm Richard Baines with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Steve. <laughs> well, we were talking about the news just now, and uh, there was a story I heard in the week, I think it was on the radio, and I don't know all the details, but what I heard was that a number of, I think it was Falkland, uh, maybe Gulf War, war veterans were, I think, suing or complaining to the government because they wanted compensation for post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but it seems to me that if you're in the army and you're a soldier, a certain degree of trauma is kind of inevitable. I mean, after all, if you're any good at your job, you are going to see people getting killed. So I don't understand what the ins and outs of it are. I don't know <laughs> why. He's already came back and Tony Blair met him and go, all right, well, not really, no. Go on, what was the matter? Well, if she, there was people shooting at us and everything, it was all muddy. Well, calm down, don't cry. Well, I will. <laughs> there was a drill sergeant just kept shouting, saying, look at you, stupid boy, where's well, this gun not clean? Well, I just cleaned the gun and it was fine, and now he's telling me to clean it again. Yeah, the boots, uh, they were, they were oh, shiny. Well, he's got to do that, it's more distant. His neck was as big as his head. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but you don't know what they, you know. I don't know what the ins and outs of it are, but, um. Uh, is it, what you got to do is make sure you know what you're going into, that's what I do, you got to check the small print. So if I was, you know, going over to, like, the, the fault runs or, you know, the gobs, I'd put my hand up and go, will, uh, will it be horrible? And you at the back, yes, it will be horrible. <laughs> it, it will be horrible, yeah. yes. It will be horrible. There will be shooting and lots of death and everything. I go, right, I'm not gonna go. And they go, exactly. okay then. Okay. That should be fine, yeah. Should be fine, yeah. Just got to go. Does anyone else scared about this? Uh, pretty much all of us. Okay, then we'll, we won't send anyone <laughs> yeah, then. Exactly. Um, my brother, my brother went into the army, right, cause, um, cause he couldn't get a normal job. And my dad said, you know, if you don't get a job by such a date, that's it, son, you're going in the army. <laughs> And, um, oh. so when, when was the Falklands? Was it about eight, 81. Right? And he joined back in like 81 or something. And uh, he, he, I don't know, he was in older shot or something. Oh, yeah. And uh, he wrote back to my mum saying, uh, you know, a bad time to join, bad time in this. So she wrote. <laughs> what bad time to join? That's so sweet, Carl, isn't it? That's all like, dear dad. Yeah, well done. Um, <laughs> don't know if you've noticed. Yeah. Uh, I was on the doll, that, that's for sure. Uh, thank you for joining, uh, a month before the Belgrano. Anyway. Uh, go on. My mum called up, spoke to the sergeant, and said, can you leave him out of this one? Can you leave him out of this one? What, he, the Falkland War? He's only just joined and she called him Chuck, which he got done for. Like, she, she's one of them, I think it's a northern thing, like, saying, how are you, Chuck? Yeah. And she called the sergeant Chuck, and he, he, he the sergeant said to her, like, my brother, uh, your mum, you know, she's called up and asked if you can not go. Which, uh, of course, you know, I mean, uh, it, it, we'll see how it goes. But can what? You tell what her? do you mean? Why did the sergeant even entertain this? Well, <sighs> Pilkington, come here. Your mum's been giving me a bit of earache. Now, listen, tell her I've told you, but can you call her? Because she was really, she called me Chuck and everything. Can you call her and say you don't mind? We're not really, oh, please, because I've promised her I'll say you want to go. No, please, say you want to go. Why was he entertaining this phone call? Because he was new to the army, I suppose. Who? No, I mean the sergeant. Uh, I don't know, maybe so, they do that. So what happened? Did he didn't go in the end? So he didn't go, no. You can't do it! That's got, ludicrous! I love it though. Oh, okay, we went over the top. No, I've, I've got a note. Yeah. Is this, is this really your mum? Yeah. Okay, now this seems to be in order. Now you, because I noticed it says, um, uh, I do not want to go into the army, I don't want to go and fight, and it's crossed out and it says, my mum says don't yeah. go into Now you didn't write this yourself. No, no, my mum wrote this. Okay, you definitely wrote this yourself. You're, you're, you're gonna have to just, um, fill envelopes. No, I'm, I'm sure if, if he was needed he would have had to go, but I think they made a bit of a special effort and they sort of said, oh. Well it wasn't conscription anyway. Oh no, obviously but it was were the, the other army, soldiers going around just going, <laughs> Wilkinson. <laughs> No, he ended up being a mechanic in there, and he got kicked out for, um, going for a packet of fags in a tank. <laughs> <laughs> what? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you mean he nipped down the shops yeah. in a tank? Yeah. 
I don't believe that, Carl. You Honest to God. That, and he went off with the sergeant's wife. So that didn't help, and he ended up getting kicked out. Sorry, your your brother's a genius. I love this. I love this. Well, first of all, um, he gets a call from his mum, go and let him up. He goes, oh, God. Then he goes, uh, uh, where is, where's Pilkington? His mum's on the phone. He's, where is he? he um, he's near your house, Sarge. Near my house? Well, why is... No, no reason. Uh, well, when he comes back, when he's finished, tell him his mum called. And can he get me a packet of hags? <laughs> tell him to walk this time. Wow. This is ludicrous. The, so the sergeant phoned out that he was sleeping yeah, I, with his wife? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, did, I was Did your mum phone out and say, let him off? <laughs> <laughs> no, let him off this time. Him. Can he... Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. But well, he misses it. I mean, I haven't seen him for about 11 years, but ever since he came out, he's just kept getting into trouble and that. And the army, you know, people slag it off, but I think if you're a certain type of person, it's good, it's good for it you. It didn't straight him, either, did it? No. He was going down the shops in a tank, he was shagging someone no, behind their back. Yeah. really weird. It's like, back then, he was like a proper adult, and he had a house, and he collected crystal with his wife and that. <laughs> and now, he hasn't got any of that. Has he got the wife? No. Has he got the crystal? Don't think he has. And he oh, right, I seriously, I haven't seen him for about 11 or 12 years. Oh, so I haven't even spoken to him. Uh, Carl's stories always start off nice and funny, and then they just leave me empty and slightly yeah. depressed. I don't know whether to hug him or shoot him, put him <laughs> out of his misery. <laughs> Can we take Carl to the... Uh, phone in if you think I should take Carl to the vet and have him put down. Because it's just too stressful. <laughs> this is one I'd like to leave you uh, with, a song for the ladies. Start this on the edge of town from the amazing album of the same name, Springsteen. See you next week. Bye. Yeah. Oh dear! <laughs> Dutchman has two white feet. Yeah, he's having some operation or something, and uh, what they have, they put the wrong foot on him. He's got two right feet or something. Well, maybe it was only a right foot that was available. Good dancer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. What, what well, else? in real news, I was um, I followed that thing with uh, it was that fellow that got into the palace when Bush was there. Right, an undercover journalist. journalist yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it would have been a problem. If he was a terrorist, mm. but it's sort of like, and, and as the pilot said, you know, all our tests are to expose terrorists, not journalists. Yeah. I, I just think it was, it was no big deal, really. Yeah. I think it was much more big a deal for well, a journalist than anyone else. Like, well, okay, well, all the journalists in the world can pop up, as long as, as long as no terrorists get in. Yeah. We're all right. Exactly. Yeah. A, a bloke just got through a terrorist, now an ice cream seller. Yeah. That's right. It was like the waiting hand for a figure. I can't believe it. It's Baz Bamingboyne from the <laughs> Daily Mail. Yeah. And that, I think that's Gary Bushell. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. But, um, it was just that he... All he did wrong, though, was just lied on his CV. Well, I think he did. But he... everyone lies on their CV. Of course. Of course. Oh, everyone actually, gives I don't, references. I don't think I've ever... I don't think I've ever done a CV. I, I tried to lie. I did one once. When I was at Ulu and I was an events manager, I applied for a job at Radio 1 for events manager. Didn't even get an interview. Yeah. So I just stopped the CV lot. Sure. And I just, you know. The one knocked back and that was exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. No, yeah. So, uh. You've lied on your CV, have you, Carl? Yeah, loads. Yeah. It's just, um. It's like some of them a little bit of. Yeah, no. Yeah, loads. Yeah, go on. Come on. There was one radio, when, uh, on. there was a job going at Granada. In fact, this isn't even lying and I still didn't get the job. Go right? on. But, uh, well, Granada. you don't get a job just because you don't lie. It's not. Have you lied? No, you got the job. <laughs> yeah. No, but there was a. They ask you loads of stuff, don't they? That you think, well, that's got nothing to do with the job. I don't know why you're bothering me asking me s certain stuff. Right? Qualifications, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. But well, it was languages. Yeah. Right. What did it say? It just said, uh, you know, put your name, put your address, languages, right? And um. What? Oh yeah. What and I you, just. What, what, you don't speak any other languages, do you? Well, I just thought English. Quite good. <laughs> you didn't! No, I did. Honestly, I asked Suzanne. I think you told me this before. Did you really put English quite good? Yeah, honest to God. Didn't get, didn't hear that. <laughs> well, you know what they meant now, that you know what the, you know what your error was, don't you? Uh. Are you fluent in French, German, Chinese? Yeah, but I didn't want them to think I've got loads of big words and that. Do you what? know what I mean? Well, I don't use loads of big words and stuff. No, they meant, no do point. you speak any other languages? It's any other languages, Carl, not the they ones you're They assume that you can language. speak because you're filling out a form. Yeah. Oh, well, it's like language is none. They, yeah. they, they assume you can speak something and they probably think it was English. And to put quite good when you are English. Yeah. English is your first language, yeah, I'm quite good at it. I see your point, though. You're it's true, though, isn't yeah. it? <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. I, I'm not sure quite good is accurate. <laughs> no, poor. English. <laughs> yeah, weak. Poor. <laughs> weak. <laughs> so you didn't get the interview, no? What did Suzanne say when you told her you put that? She just laughed. It was really? too late, it was too late to do anything. How's her hair? Do you want to talk about it? She's off today, so. Is it alright, is it? Oh, she's listening, you mean? She's at home today. But it must, it's probably alright now, isn't it? Because a bad hair day, it doesn't last. Yeah, yeah, last... it'll be nice. It'll be well, nice, not today. <laughs> You're scared of her, aren't you? No. I mean, I don't want to- You've learned your- Oh, you've learned your lesson that, you know, you can't talk about people like that. Because it upsets them. Well, plus, I can't do it all now, because we're doing Pulp Fiction later. And it sort of involves her head. <laughs> so- Brilliant! Yeah. So that's- Excellent. There's me thinking that you're being considerate. Yeah. All worried about- We don't want to use up the material <laughs> until later. <laughs> Play record! Travis. Beautiful occupation. What's the best job you've ever had still, Carl? Talk about occupations. It is still- Paper the, round. Is it still the paper round? <laughs> yeah. That's ridiculous. <laughs> no, it was good though. If you look at it, like, you know, what I liked about it, you're your own boss. No, you're not. You're not your own boss. <laughs> no, the, the guy, guy who runs his agents, agents is your boss. Alright. But then when, once you get out and you've got your papers and that, you, you sort of, you're on your so own. Do you want you as long as you deliver the papers exactly to the places he said you are in the time he said? Yeah. It's freedom, do. isn't it? <laughs> Any jobs you wouldn't do? Uh. I've just thought of one that you wouldn't do. Go on. With your sort of mild homophobia. Well, I'm not. Proctologist. What's that? Basically sticking your finger at other people's arses. Right, well, no, I wouldn't do that, no. Why have you got to do that? <laughs> What do you mean, why have you got to do well, that? why does anyone need that doing? Does they got to look if they've got an arse ache or something? Which trainee doctor makes that their speciality? <laughs> do you know what I mean? That must be, um, right, we've got a place for horses, and it's, it's you, Meadows. You, you yeah. came last. Oh, seriously, what? I'm not the arse doctor, am I? Yeah. You came last. Oh, I'm a bun, a bun GP. I can't yeah, believe it. Yeah, yeah. You got to, oh, I can't believe this. Yeah. That must be it, mustn't it? Well, or, presumably no one would choose it, no one would purely, if they can have the brain surgery, Well, if it, what if you're brilliant but you're shy, you couldn't look people in the face? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You could yeah. be in a, you could do anything you want, you know, I just, I just don't want to look at them, I just want to do their asses. Yeah. Really? <laughs> just want to do the asses. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, look at Carl's face! You didn't, you didn't know there was such a thing as an ass doctor, did you? No, not really. Specialised, he does nothing all day but that. <laughs> <laughs> well, he probably has a sandwich about <laughs> one o'clock. Yeah. Washes his hands. What oh. do you mean there's nothing all day but that? You don't say that about a brain surgeon, a thoracic surgeon, do you? No, but that all day. That, that's not good, is it? <laughs> I love the fact that I can blow his mind. Yeah. We think there's things that people take for granted. A dentist just looks in mouths all day. Yeah, but that, that, oh. That's, <laughs> that's a bum what? job, that, bum job. <laughs> Just think of that. Oh. So what, what do you need to know then there? It's a lot, it's a lot to know. You gotta have nice nails. Yeah. No rough, no rough edges. Well you'd be alright, cause, cause you've got that job and no biscuits to the old people cause you had nice hands, didn't you? So, yeah. And I know a lot about biscuits. I know my biscuits. Do you? Yeah, yeah, I know which ones they like and that. Do you? What do they like? What do old people like? Bourbons. Uh, rich Do they tea. really? Cause that's my least favourite. I, I would never eat a bourbon. I, I could be starving and I wouldn't eat a bourbon. If you want to let us know what your favourite biscuit is, <laughs> uh, email in. If you've got your yeah. that XFM. But I'll tell you what, so with all them eating biscuits, I bet they get arse problems, don't they? So you could double up, couldn't you? You could be handing out biscuits in the morning and checking, <laughs> checking out. So some... what, what, why would you go and have that done then? What sort of problems then? What do you mean? Loads of problems. Oh like what? Prostate. And they've got to go there, they, they have to, like, have a little, little, you know. Problem. Well, that, there was that, I told you that story, that, that bloke, um, um, uh, it's not an apocryphal tale, because it's, it's about an orderly's report, and, uh, this is the bloke that filled out the form of what happened. He went into hospital, basically, with a, a sauce bottle up his ass, And, um, on the report, uh, he put, he said, uh, obviously, you know, pleasuring himself using a, a sauce bowl. And on the, um, the report he had to fill out, he said that he'd been shopping <laughs> at Safeways and he'd come in with his shopping and he'd, he'd forgot his key, so he'd put his bags down <laughs> on the step, right? And he started climbing up the drain pipe to get in, right? But as he was climbing up, <laughs> his trousers and pants fell down. 
<laughs> he slipped and fell and the sort of bottom went up his ass. And the orderly said this story would be somewhat believable if Safeway sold their sauce bottles with condoms already <laughs> attached. <laughs> it's like a game of kaplunk. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so he put, I love that he put a condom on it. I wonder if that was so he didn't want to get an infection from it, or he wanted to use it on his chips later. <laughs> so he um, waste not want them. Bob Dylan, It's All Over Now, Baby Blue from 1960-something. <laughs> Bit of trivia for you, Steve. Go on. That is the last record we ever played on the old XFM before we were fired. Mm, I bet that was a moving moment for about eight people. <laughs> Um, I just thought of summer. You know that, that, that thing we did about, they said that we just cared about the money selling it to America. Yeah. If we cared about money, yeah. would we be here now? Uh, do you know so what I mean? I, know, I, I know. think this proves that we don't do things for the money. <laughs> exactly. Jesus. All right, um, Carl? Couple of emails. Monkey Matt's emailed us. Who? Monkey Matt. I'm oh, Matt, yeah, go on. Yeah. He says, How's uh, the monster? <laughs> he's alright, he says, uh, Carl has missed a cracking headline from the sport. Hide and seek champion found dead in cupboard. <laughs> I hope it's real. I don't know if it is. <laughs> I doubt it. Just looking through some of the news stories that Carl didn't make it into Carl's news roundup. Yeah. Um, Bong. just this one you might, might be interested in. Headline, woman says partner ran off to become vampire. Yeah. And it says a young mother says her partner has dumped her to become a vampire. Rebecca Roberts from Somerset mm, says Matthew Barrett yeah. fell for a blood worshipping woman in a US cult. The 23-year-old mother says she, he began shaving all his body hair, dressed in black, and used Rebecca's lipstick to redden his eyes. Rebecca caught him performing weird blood rituals in front of his computer at night, cutting himself to prove commitment. She said, I thought it was just a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got a right to one. I was pleased he found an interest. Brilliant. This is apparently from The Sun. Uh, apparently he's left. He's gone to America. He's living in this o Ohio-based cult. But it's the last bit where she's been asked whether or not if he came back, would she take him back? Sure. And this is where I wonder if the journalist, you know how journalists are supposed to just report the news, be objective. Yeah. I wonder if maybe the journalist here has maybe had some interference. Made the quote better for Possibly, them than, go on. because it says, um, I never thought this would take over his life. Now, if he came back, I'd say fangs, <laughs> but no fangs. <laughs> I can't believe it. Imagine you're the woman, Rick. Okay. And I've come round to you. I'm the journalist. And I've okay. come in and I've said, I can't read about this. All it's I like, have to do is not say that yeah, thing. You've okay. come, you've come, I don't see you're obviously quite upset. You're yeah, gone gutted. Off. Um, if he came back, would you take him back? Definitely not. Right. Really, what would you say to him if he came just back? Just get lost. Right, but I'm, I'm really pissed off with you. Would you perhaps say something a bit more pithy? Pith not in this situation, <laughs> no. <laughs> you're he, upset. He cuts himself, he drinks blood, he's left me. Sure, no, sure, sort of. I'm not interested, mate. Because I'll tell you what. Go on. I mean. I like what you said there, but I wonder yeah. if we could condense that a bit more. If he came back, would you say- Go away. Would you say something, would you ever say something like, thanks, but no thanks? No, because that's how, it makes it flippant, because I'm really angry. I know you're annoyed. And I'm but... upset, so I wouldn't sure. say, I but certainly what... wouldn't say thanks. I'd say, I might say no thanks. But what if, you, what if you sort of said it like aggressively, like you were giving him the finger, thanks, but no thanks? Like you didn't really what, mean sort it. sort of sarcastically? Sarcastically, would you possibly I say- I might say, thanks, but no thanks, and right. that'll be it, and, that's right. that, and, and I'd leave it there, I'd yeah. never, and I'd never change that. Sure. I'd never change those words. Can I ask you a question? Go on. Do you like puns. N hate them. Right. I don't like it's Countdown, I don't like QI, I don't like any of those past Cambridge, Oxford type. I, ha I hate ha puns. If you had to say thanks but no thanks in the form of a pun, what would you maybe say? I wouldn't. I never would. Right. I'd say thanks but no thanks. I would, you know, I, I mean, I feel embarrassed that I'd even say that because I don't think I would even say thanks but no thanks. <laughs> okay. But if I did go that far, I'd leave it there. Sure. Sure. So, have you ever noticed, as I have, go on, the similarity between the word thanks and fangs. Not really. It's, it's only, very similar. Not fangs, really. Fangs, F, fangs. T, H, there's a K. Fangs very much. G. It's A and S. Well, the A, the N, and the S, but that's about Would it. Would you agree it sounds marginally similar? Uh, yeah. Sort Is of. it possible you might one day say fangs, but no fangs? I wouldn't know. Right. I could put that though, could I? But don't say it, I said it. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. Fangs, but no fangs. Yeah. This is the thing, this is the thing. Just, if you ever read an article in the Sun, the Mirror, anything, do not believe it. Really seriously question and query it, because... If it ends with fangs, no if fangs. If it ends with a pun, yeah. almost <laughs> certainly they never said it. <laughs> yeah. well, stop I mean. looking at naked men, then. Well, no, you but sometimes you can't help it because it's been hot, and it's like you say, there's people walking around with vests on and that. So anyway, what I'm saying is, say if some incident happened, I'm walking about with my top off. Right. Girls are laughing at me. Right? Why? Don't know, they might. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. 
So they wouldn't look at your body, they'd all look at your head. So, so what I mean is... Yeah. Rewind that, right, and imagine all that happens again, but I've, I've got someone else's body. Right. Whose right. body? Uh, just some fella who's died and I, and my body was injured and they said, we've got a new body in. You right. can have it. We'll yeah. stick your head on it. Yes. Yeah. Now say if... They're if, laughing at you. Uh, they're, they're laughing at the body. They're laughing yeah. at the body. Yeah. But at least I'd be able to sort of go, I know it's a mess, but it's not mine. At least I don't have to claim ownership. So, so all of this extraordinary technology that can make a head, put one head on another person's body, so you can go, eh, it's not my body. No, no. But, but it's not your own. I'm not being funny though, so if you have a body transplant, right, and you're there, you're at home, yeah. naked, you look down, yeah. lovely penis and a set of testicles. Yeah. Right? What do you do with them? What do you mean, what am I doing with them? Well, do you like them? Well, you wouldn't you wouldn't mess about with them as much as if they were your own. <laughs> but if you did mess about with them, would you feel guilty that you were messing about with another man's testicles and penis? And it's the full body. Yeah. No, because they're not my hands either. So what you're doing is watching someone else wank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've been away filming in a sweltering London. We've had a heat wave here in the capital city, haven't we, Carl? It's been hot, right? Been up to a hundred degrees, record-breaking temperatures. Yeah. What have you been doing though? Getting to see the place, having loads of walks, and I like to have walks. You know, watching what <laughs> like people a dog. are doing. Yeah, when when he jumps off the couch and starts exactly. scratching against the door, Suzanne thinks it's time. <laughs> it's, it's, walk. it's just good thinking time, though, isn't it? Uh, as well, having a walk, you've got no other clutter going on around you. Right. And you just think about a lot of stuff, and you know, like like say with the weather being hot and stuff, a lot of insects knocking about. Right. So I've just been watching them. <laughs> so so while we've been filming, you've been watching insects. Yeah, just seeing because everybody knows insects are out there, but no one's. Keeping an eye on them. <laughs> what, what are they up to? What are you worried <laughs> about? Loads Steve, you wouldn't be laughing like that if you'd, if you'd watch them. Because they, they do some weird stuff and that, yeah. is what I mean. What yeah. sort of stuff? Any examples? Uh, I saw a bee have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> you saw a bee have a heart attack? Yeah. How were you sure it was a heart attack? Because what happened, I'd, I'd been Did it clutch its chest with all six legs? No, I'd Were there some other little bee paramedics? No, no, I'd, I'd just been out in the park anyway, just looking at, you know, uh, caterpillars knocking about, uh, <laughs> butterflies and stuff, so I was sort of... <laughs> was the, when Suzanne goes to work, she goes, Carl, don't you waste the day, I want you to do some constructive stuff. <laughs> but, but the thing is, so, I'd been in the park and I was aware of the insects that are around us more than, like, most of the time. And I come out of the park, just crossing like a, a sort of a busy road and what have you, and I saw this bee to the right of me, sort of in the air, and it was a big one, and I was a bit like, oh, let's watch that, and um, it just fell, it fell from the air in front of me, and it was on the pavement. And I thought, oh, what's going on here? And I, I, I looked at it for a bit, and it was really still. Gave it a little kick, just to see if there was any movement. Nothing. Stone sort of, what's the saying? Stone cold dead. Yeah! Stone cold be dead. So, yeah. uh, that, that I was... I like the fact that this bee suddenly saw Carl and had a heart attack. Yeah. It'd never seen anything that round before. Yeah. It just thought, it, it had approached him because he thought it was a sunflower. <laughs> My right. god, it's a giant walking orange. Every dream has come true. <laughs> oh. No, but it just summed up life for me. I thought, that, that's, that's like us, isn't it, at the end of the day? They have heart attacks. Stress. Are living you putting them to stress, do you? Well, it's in London, isn't it? You know, everything has stresses from living here. And they are bald, aren't they? They've got fur all over, but they lose the... I'm always overweight. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fat, bald bee! Oh. So what did you... It fell to the floor and you, you instantly... You just kicked it, you didn't attempt no, to revive it. No, I waited a second it. and just looked at it to see if there was any, you know, leg movement or wing. And there was nothing, and then when I sort of kicked it, it was sort of hard. It had hardened already. It's just rigor mortis, rigor had, mortis had set in. Did it put you in a bad mood for the day? Because I know things like that can just send you over the edge for the day. Uh, death and that does a bit. Suzanne doesn't like me talking about death. What riveting conversations do you come up with? 
No, just things like uh, one of our mates has had a baby recently, and I just was saying, oh, when that's sort of our age, we'll nearly be dead. Think of that. That's the first thing he says is a new life brought into the world. <laughs> I know. Well, when he's our age, we'll be dead. Yeah. No, it's Maybe weird. they'll let you do the speech at the christening. Well, yeah, I've been watching loads of stuff. I've been watching Ants. You mentioned Ants. Uh, I've had a lot of moths in the house. They're sort of sad. I mean, you say it like it was a day. garden party. <laughs> yeah, well, but, but all I'm saying is I look at more about what its life is like. Because if you watch something long enough, is what I'm saying, you can see that it's, it's a bit clueless. It's the same way about ants or, you know, they're hard workers and all that. I watch one, it's going back and forth all the time. They go one way and then they stop and go the other way. They try to look busy in front of the mates. But if you watch one... <laughs> if you watch one long enough, it's back and forwards and it's like it's done nothing there. I'm going to carry this twig back and forth until I can knock off it four. There's a lot of that going on. Is there? Because uh, there's not... There's none of that going on. There is. <laughs> no, like I say, the moth. Depressing little... sort of thing. Why is it depressing? It hasn't got eyes, does it? You just look at it, and it doesn't know what's going on. I just don't... Th I think if you haven't got eyes, you shouldn't have wings. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rule. If we could put that into practice, please. <laughs> That's a great rule. That's a fantastic rule, isn't it? Yeah. If you haven't got eyes, you shouldn't have wings. <laughs> ah. I just was reading something about an octopus. That's... That's like a killer octopus. And it annoyed me that this was knocking about now. Because <laughs> I didn't know, I thought they were quite friendly. <laughs> Whenever you see them in cartoons and that, they're always happy, aren't they? And then suddenly, like, they've, they've sort of brought the whole sort of, uh, creature down. Do you know what I mean? No, what do you mean? Well, just, just, you know, when, when you see them in films, they, they're running about and that, and everybody likes an octopus. <laughs> but this one that's on me, it, it, was, it was your fault, really, because you told me about that frog that's going about killing people. No, I didn't say that. Uh, so I looked it up on the internet at, like, other creatures and stuff. Dot and com. there's, uh, yeah. there's uh, some octopus that's in the sea. Uh, <laughs> and what it does, y you don't even have to, like, threaten it. It just spits in the water. And if that stuff gets on you, does you in. Again, I'm... Uh, mm. So in a way it's good knowledge because... I mean, I don't go in the sea anyway because it's full of stuff like that. But that's just reassured me that I'm doing the right thing. If they're knocking about, just gauzing everywhere, <laughs> uh, you don't even have to be near one. You don't even know if it's been spitting and stuff. It can kill you. It just seems unfair. I haven't harmed it. I haven't gone near it. Why is it getting annoyed with me? Doesn't seem right. So that's where a knowledge has, has not helped that octopus out. Because now, when you eat them, I just think, yeah, have another one. Do you know what I mean? Get rid of them. <laughs> another conversation with himself. Another conversation with himself. OK, Carl, I'm just going to throw an animal at you. Tell me how weird it is, what bits annoy you, how you change it, OK? A crab. I would have changed it. Yeah. Does it annoy you? Do you think it's weird? Um, they are weird. <laughs> but they're at that size where they can get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it suits them. OK, um, good. Would it, would it change anything? Um, in a way, you know, what you're saying about things not working, he can't walk forwards. But... So why hasn't something happened? Why haven't they said, do you know what, these arms are too clumsy? We need to have them so they can slot away easier and we can pull them out when we need them instead of <laughs> clumping around with them. Because they do struggle. You see them struggling with their arms. Yet they're still here, they're still doing that, they're still designed that way. What's the weirdest animal? So you think the octopus is the weirdest animal on Earth? Yeah. Why is it any weirder than a dog? Because it couldn't be further away from us. <laughs> a dog has got human eyes. <laughs> If, if a jelly, honestly, if a jellyfish had a pair of eyes like ours, I probably wouldn't worry about him that much. But like I said to you, it's that way that they haven't got eyes, they're floating about. I can handle some fish. They look, they look like as they've got eyes. You can make eye to eye contact with them. <laughs> when do you a jellyfish. Make it? What are you looking at? It's a snidey thing, like I've said to you. You can see see a lot in eyes. Do you know what I mean? They say don't trust him. Why? It's his eyes. Jellyfish haven't even got any, and I don't trust them. In terms of um, design and everything, and 
Uh, if you lined everything up, say if I'd come from another planet yeah. and everything was lined up in a row and they said, right, we're going to give you a crash course in what's knocking about on this planet. Yeah. And you go, right, go on then. And you go, this is man, here's woman, here's a dog, here's a cat, here's an octopus, here's a... I go, hang on a minute, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> Wild Horses by the Rolling Stones on XFM 104.9. Well, uh, I think uh, the listening public would have enjoyed knob news there. Oh. So, I, I mean, it's, you, you, there, is, there was a lot of knob news this week. I was surprised. You know, I would have thought it would be hard sometimes to get knob news together, but... Uh, I would have thought it would have been part of a bigger news programme, but, I mean, I don't think we'd dedicate a whole, sort of, uh, you know, like John Craven's news round. Yeah. A whole five minutes to <laughs> yeah. knob-related news. Yeah. It was, there was other news, was there, in the week at all? Uh, Carl, it wasn't just yeah. all knob-related, you didn't just research. No, they're the ones that sort of stand out. <laughs> uh, there was Christ on a crisp. Right, uh, what's that? That's, that's obviously a, a crisp that someone vaguely thinks looks a bit like Robert Powell. Yeah. Yeah, uh, what a load of twaddle, yeah. Uh, there was a bloke who can, uh, blow up balloons using his ears. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, look okay. at him. Just yeah, well, it's, it's, yeah, well, it's all connected, isn't it? That's, you know, you're just, you're just redirecting it, aren't you? Pointless, I mean, though, isn't it? It is pointless. No, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sort of downplaying it like it's no big deal, but it is pretty impressive. It's not. When was the last time you blew up a balloon? Oh, I don't know. That's what I mean. <laughs> it's not needed. It's not, it's not impressive. That's what I mean. That's what but I mean. But you can say that about any form of sort of like bizarre entertainment. I, d I don't think you have to hang yourself from hooks, but a lot of people go and see Jim Rose Circus. I mean, I wouldn't. I, 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 I don't see the... But would you go and see that? What, a man blowing up balloons did? No. If, if it was a mate of mine, I'd go, do that thing you can do. I'd, you know, to, to, to a group of new friends, I'd go, all right, then I'd get on with it. You know, it's, it's, it, it, to me, it's, it's, it's below um, a, a, an average card trick, doing something like that. Apparently, though, he does make balloon animals with his penis, so, uh, <laughs> which is pretty good, isn't it? With his ears, so. It's always a snake. <laughs> so he's got a snake. I go, yeah, well done. That's a good news. Right, right, now listen then. Uh, what about another feature we'd like doing? What? Song with a story. Okay, he's been working on this, hasn't he? Yeah, he has, hasn't he? He's yeah. like a producer, isn't he? Yeah. But with a completely uh, round head. Just, just, you know, I was saying that, you were saying I don't like music, but I'm saying I do if I can hear what they're singing about. And there's a reason to sort of so listen to it. So have you turned into 50's dad? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> no, but you know, it's like, it's nice to have a song where you go, you know, I can't turn it off because I need to know how it ends. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's like a mini- great. It's like, like a, a mini film. You can't film. sit through a film unless it's got a grotesque in it. You can watch The Elephant Man because he's getting a glimpse of this- he's waiting to see the bloke's face. That's all he's waiting for, right? And so, uh, three minutes is about as much as you can maintain his- uh, well, uh, well, last week we did, uh, Babushka. Yeah. Uh, you know, that woman dressing up, mm. kind of sort of tricking her husband, then it sort of backfires and that. Mm. Um, don't know how it- Ended properly. I don't know if they split up or whatever. But this week, <laughs> this week, there's no follow up. Kate Bush isn't now penning the the, the sequel. Mm. Right, go on into what's this week? Pinball Wizard. Right. Okay. What's the story there? Um, it's about this sort of deaf, dumb, and blind kid. Right. Who's good at pinball? What's that? So I don't believe he would be good at pinball. But even if he is, it's a lot to give up, isn't it? Just for that. We didn't give it up. No, but it's not like, it's not like, well, you can't even say to him, oh, you know, a lot of bad news and that, but you've got that pinball. It's just a bit, bit rubbish. I mean, does he even know he's playing pinball? <laughs> is what I'm saying. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And it's not hard, it's just moving the thing, you know, just hitting the buttons hard. Yeah. It's not like, you know, if he was good at Pac-Man or something, you'd go, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, it wouldn't scan, would it? <laughs> well, I mean, what, what were they thinking of? What were the who thinking of when they wrote this? Well, let's have a listen to it. But, yeah. you see, now, being the deaf man wizard. It kind of works. Yeah. He, um, he's deaf, dumb, and blind, though. Yeah. That's pretty grim, isn't it? It's rubbish, isn't it? Well, don't say that. Oh, I mean, that's alright, I can't hear you. No, but it is, it is like, it's, it's just the worst, isn't it? I can't imagine what that would be like. It's pointless. I'm being a tapeworm or something, isn't it? It's just... <laughs> no, no, but uh, what I'm saying is what sort of a life is that? It's, it's horrible. It is a bit like being one of those creatures deep in the ocean. Well, look, look, look can, I just, can I just answer your questions? It must be terrible. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Job done. But would you want a song about it and 
you know, he's just, he's got that pinball. But it's not a real person. We're too, I mean, well, we, we were getting on to the realms of well, that's, people's that's a bit, that's a bit. But he is not a bloke that existed they sang a song about. Well, listen to it. Anyway, that's- well, It's not a true story. I don't need to listen well, to it. Let's have a listen. Oh. Okay. Pinball Wizard by The Who. A little song with a story there. A little, a little deaf, dumb and blind kid. Thoughts, Carl? I just, uh, it's depressing, like I say. Uh, I don't know why. Is he enjoying, is he enjoying playing the, the game? I don't know, let's get Pete Townsend on the phone. Carl, what are you talking about? I was just trying Listen to Listen to the lyrics, right? Deaf, dumb, blind kid. He can't hear, uh, no bows and bells. He can't see any flashing lights. He plays by sense of smell. Now, I'm pretty sure that isn't a scientific document Pete Townsend is reading out there when he wrote this song. He's making it up. But I d but the thing is, with all songs or stories, there's got to be a little bit of realism to it. What, do you know what I mean? Why, why, why bother putting money in it? Just let him hit, hit the buttons if he's happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's a fair point. That is a fair point. That is a fair point. Yeah. That is great. Yeah, oh, well, I think you've made Daltrey and Entwistle and the whole crew look fool, like fools. Yeah, they won't get fooled again. Yeah. Um, oh, nice. We're supposed to do it. I mean, of all the things, I mean, it is horrible. We're not, like, having a go. This is what I always worry about when we play. But at the end of the day, that's what he's singing about, so we're not having a go. No. And well, it's not a real person. It doesn't really exist. Uh, I say again, it's a fictional person playing pinball and always getting a replay. Okay? This what? fella's saying that he's good at pinball, he's played from Sarah to with, but there's this little deaf and blind kid. He can't believe it. He cannot believe it. If you had to lose something, Steve, right? Uh... It wouldn't be money. <laughs> That's true, <laughs> <huh? laughs> Your sight or your, uh, or your ears? What? That's too much. I can't decide. That's, uh, that's too painful. Sight or your ears? What about, what about you? <laughs> Intuitively, it would be hearing, because I, I couldn't... Uh, no, no, I think it's got to be sight for me. Yeah. Well, you're always together, so that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, listen, is it almost time? Well, I've got to ask Carl. Sorry, I've got to ask oh, Carl. Oh, sorry, go on. Go, Carl, what would you rather be, deaf or blind? <laughs> when did this question ever really come up? Today. When is it, when the doctor goes, well, listen, um, you've got to ask someone. Well, we can operate, we can either lose your eyes or your ears. Yeah. It's up for you. This, this is a never a decision that has to be made by anyone ever in life. It, but go on then, would it, you rather it, be, would you rather uh, be blind or deaf? It depends where you live. Like. I'm not even sure these are PC terms, blind and deaf anymore. Would you rather use your sense of sight or sight of hearing? Depends. What, depends where you live. What do you mean it depends where you live? Well, if, if, if say if, uh, say if you lived in, like, a barren sort of, you know, Africa or whatever. Right. right. Now to see, right? Sure. So, you could lose your, lose your sight. Sure. But, but if you lived in a woman's locker room. Well, if you lived in you, <laughs> Quite, quite noisy. Yeah, it's quite noisy. Yeah, you stop banging that door. Yeah, I'll have my sight. Yeah. yeah. But, if it, but if you live in, like, New York, low to see, but a little bit noisy. Sure. So... Perfect. That is a brilliant answer. <laughs> Unbelievable, <laughs> once again. Can we have monkey news? Oh, I this this show's like one long monkey news, isn't oh. it? When you're tuning in to hear <laughs> Carl Pilkington. I don't know, I'll tell you what, why don't we play a little short track? Right? What was your short saying? track? What? Uh, what is it, Steve? It's, it's Green Day. Green Day. Like. Play a bit of Green Day. We'll cram in the monkey news. We'll play the ads. Justin's there. That'll be that. Right. Go on. That's what we'll do. Right. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news! Right. There's this monkey, right? Yeah. And it had been, uh, do you know you hear about monkeys being badly treated and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah. So, uh, anyway, it goes into this, this home. It's 14, this monkey. It's called, uh, Matty, right? Goes into this home where it's looked after. What um, do you mean home? Just like, uh, just a little monkey home. Right. Okay, so, so zoo. Yeah, kind of, yeah, but they haven't mm. got any other monkeys there, right? What have they so got there? They've got just other animals and that, but, but not that many monkeys. But anyway, because, mm. because he's there on his own, again, you know- When you say monkey, do you mean a chimpanzee, by the way? Because you usually do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I so, can't believe that, um, journalist thought this was scripted. Oh, really? So, uh, so anyway, yeah, so he gets, he gets sort of pally with the people working there and that, and, uh, <laughs> it's smoking fags, he's having a drink at night and all this, right? What do you mean he's having a drink at night, huh? It's all here. It's all here. Steve, I mean, we haven't really got time, but- Well, you know, let's say it's all here like it's proof. You've got another stupid story that well, someone has put onto the internet. Someone sitting at home in their bedroom mm. has put onto the internet. So he's having a fag, he's drinking a lovely glass of Bang Rock Station. <laughs> yeah, the wine is perfect.
perfect for a barbecue. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's loving life, it's forgetting about its past and everything, right? When this- this other monkey comes along. Oh. Oh no. That was brilliant. Go on. Right? That comes in, something's said. <laughs> Right, forget it then. Forget it, forget it. Alright, this is Carl, the, uh, producer of Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant on XFM 104.9. We're playing out some of the best bits, hope you're enjoying it. Here's another one. And now it's Carl's bit. It's Carl's, it's the re-education of Carl. He's like Liza Doolittle. And now he's, uh, he's coming to, or Lawnmower Man, if you've seen that film. More like Lawnmower Man, if you've seen the film, you know what I mean. Um, uh, and uh, his home was to just study quotes, really, on, on happiness and stuff and general well-being. He's not a big happiness uh, quote fan, are you, Carl? Not really. So what have you done? You've, you've come up with something, haven't you? Right, yeah, I told you, right? Because a lot of these are just things you say every day. They're nothing special. Um, <laughs> so what I'm doing... Well, you say them every day. <laughs> well, <laughs> the sort of things you come out with and you don't even think about it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're, in, they're on the TV all the time, people on the radio are saying these sort of little quotes. Sure. And, um... What I've done is, remember that programme on Channel 4, Faking It? Yeah. Where they got some, like, posh kid to be on a door and all that. What I've done, <laughs> I've, um... <laughs> Imagine if that was the pitch <laughs> for the show. <laughs> the Channel 4. You just gonna get yeah, a posh kid on a door or something? Yeah, yeah, come, come in, come in. Yeah. TV yeah. producer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, go on. So, what I've done, <laughs> this little book of quotes, uh, happiness quotes, I've, um, I've picked two that are real. Okay. And I've made one up. Right. <laughs> and we've got a guess. And you've got a guess. Okay then, go on. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't we, when we've heard them, we won't confer. No. You'll write down yours, yeah. A, B or C, and yeah. I'll write down mine and we'll sure. see how Okay, it Carl, off you go. Right, and just cos I'm, I'm looking at this book, it doesn't mean I'm actually reading. No, I know, Don't no, worry, no. We're, we're clever. No, no, we know, we know, we can't yeah, see, yeah. like, call my bluff. Yeah, okay. go on then. Nothing is worth more than this day. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The way I see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh God! My head's gonna burst. No, hang on. My head's gonna burst. No, hang, hang no, on. this might not be cold. Oh, it might not be. How do you know I haven't tweaked them a little bit? Yeah, good okay, point. Fair good enough. point. No, good point. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you got to pull with the rain. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. No. It's not here. Come on. Cat food. <laughs> Cat food, come on. It stinks a bit. But, if you don't put up with the smell, the little kitten will die. <laughs> Steve! Steve! I don't know what to say! <laughs> I don't know what to say! Imagine this is faking it! Imagine their faces when he says that and they're going, oh my god. Oh. Carl, play a song, mate. <laughs> oh, we'll have to confer on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Go on in. Right. Uh, first one. Nothing is worth more than this day. Excellent. Next one. What does that mean? Well, cherish, cherish yeah. now, cherish your yeah. time. Okay. Because you, you, you can't get it back and, yeah. you know, That's right, um, I saw it. carpe diem, whatever it is, seize the day and all that. Okay. If you want the rainbow, you've got to put it with the rain. Yeah, of course. Yeah, rough with the smooth. You know, it's not all plain sailing, but, you know, rainbow's beautiful, but it comes because of the rain, which you might not like, so... Yeah. Make the most of everything and, yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> Cat food doesn't smell good, <laughs> but if you don't put up with it, then the little kitten will die. Right, now, Carl, that is a good effort. Now, that one's yours. I mean, obviously, right? Right. Right, no, no, but it's a good effort, right? I mean, it slipped seamlessly into the others. Yeah. I don't think it didn't. No, but it's, it's good. I mean, we knew it, we knew it was that one, but, um, what I will say is, it's good, but what you don't know, maybe subconsciously, is, I mean, it, it, it's n very similar to, uh, the putting up with the rain and the rainbow, but what, that's good. Why do you think that? Well. What, what does mine mean? Well, uh, even, well, even though it smells bad, it's good for something. Right, so see, I, what, I didn't look at it like that. What, what do you look at? Uh, I, I kind of thought... Was yours more specifically about cat food, <laughs> generally? Because <laughs> <laughs> you know normally they like, it's an analogy. Yeah, or a metaphor for something, you know, much well, well, no, the way I... I mean, Do it. Dolly Parton, who I think did the rainbow rain thing, she wasn't specifically concerned about weather conditions. No. It was a sort of general idea. Yeah, it was all about yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's what I've done. Go on. Okay. Well, I've what, used what, an everyday thing. Yeah. 
uh, and put it with today's problems, right? Go on. So like, um, my girlfriend, <laughs> yeah, um, she might like to go shopping for clothes. I hate it. Right. But because of, because I love her, I put up with it. Ah, oh, that's nice. Yeah? Yeah. So, you, you love that little curtain. You can't stand the smell of the stuff you gotta feed it. But because you love it, you go, well, you know, I'll pull with this just for a few minutes and then I can, like, squeeze its head later and give it a little- <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> squeeze its little head. No, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, well, that's just the thing that I do with cats. Put it in a bag and drown it in a lake. <laughs> I can feed it and I can throw it against yeah, the wall. Exactly. So you, yeah. didn't, you didn't see it like that, did you? No, that's very good. So it's about love, is it? It's about putting up with the bad things yeah. for, for, for something you love. Yeah. Well, that's nice. But, 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 but Carl, good. you seem now to be convinced and rather smug that you've tricked us and that you've fooled us and that we didn't understand it. Well, well I say that's your fault, not ours. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, though. I mean, look, that man in Forrest Gump, he was a bit of a nutter. <laughs> And he, he came up with the life as a box of chocolates thing. Yeah. Now, if that was in this book, you say, oh yeah, brilliant, you know, a good bit of work. But if he was sat here doing the show with you, yeah. you'd be taking the mickey out of him. Sometimes I feel he is. <laughs> No, but, Carl, I could, I could, in fact, if people are out there, we're too lazy, could you write down everything Carl's ever said? Because I think we could publish that. Yeah. He said one today, he saw my, um, uh, salamander, it's not a euphemism, <laughs> he saw my salamander and it's just sitting there in the tank. Your exotic pet. Yeah, and he's worried about us not being lid on, and he said, I went, what were we worried about? He said, he said, well, he said it sits there for 24 hours a day, Obviously planning to get out. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got nothing else on his mind, and it's, the, the daft thing is, he has actually got the like the lid ripped up a little bit. <laughs> And they'll be looking up there. Yeah. It's going to get out. But what's the worst that could happen? What's oh. it thinking? What do you think it's thinking, this salamander? It's got its eye on the DVD player. <laughs> 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 I can have him be down the market. <laughs> class. Class. I <laughs> have <laughs> right the I love the fact you had at least three minutes to get that right. I know. Prepare and get that right. I know, but my mouth was full of uh, Maryland cookies. Mm. Yeah. You know, last week, mm. th this would, oh, this would blow your mind. He came in, do you know what he bought for himself at uh, about ten? Penguins. Mm. He buys penguins still. No. Or wagon wheels. Oh, I've never liked wagon wheels. <laughs> you not being a fan? No, no, but I'm oh, sorry about that. It's the Clash and Rock the Casbah. Mm -hmm. Um, talking about records, have I told you that time my brother in law, um, uh, he was moving out of his place, I think moving in with my sister, and I was about like, um, I don't know, 13, um, and so he was about, I don't know, 30, and I moved in, and uh, he brought around all, um, uh, his records when he was storage to, to leave them at our house, right, mm -hmm. and he had all these old sort of records, 50s and 60s records, and, I was like, and, uh, um, and, uh, they, uh, put him upstairs, and I was looking through them, and, uh, it's just all like Elvis stuff and Beatles stuff, and there was a mate of mine who loved Elvis, okay, right. and he had, um, oh, well, loads of chemicals, <laughs> yeah, he had loads of chemicals, and I was into chemistry, and, uh, he said, I swapped me some chemicals for them, so I sort of nicked about five Elvis singles, and I got all these chemicals, and, uh, and then the guilt just hit me. I just thought, well, he's going to notice that. And I just, I, one night, I just came downstairs and I confessed to my mum. And she went, all right, well, I won't tell him, but you've got to be good. And it's sort of like I was just really, really good for a year. <laughs> and then I remember um, when I was about 18, uh, my brother was talking about it. And he said, did you ever um, uh, play those records I left for you? <laughs> Brilliant. He told my mum, he said, these are for Ricky. She just didn't she tell me. She was sharp. Wouldn't oh. she? She, she, opportunism there. Oh, that's genius. And, uh, that was it. That's, that's but, why I was good. But you've <laughs> never, you've never stolen anything since, have you? No, I don't, I don't, I don't. Except know. that spate of, uh, of shoplifting after that <laughs> to teach your mum a lesson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I went round, uh, and, uh, arson. Mm. Uh, no, no, I did, I, I, I just couldn't believe it. I just, oh, That's it was terrible. I, I remember, um, and I think all kids go through a phase of shoplifting. Well. Um, and I, I, when I was going through it, mm. um, I used to just, just little things, just like magic markers and, uh, magazines, Mars bars, that sort of thing. Yeah. And one day, right, uh, that me, me mate, Anthony, his mum called up my mum and said, I've got to, uh, I've got to meet up with you. I've got to have a word with you. And, uh, she said, what about? She said, I don't want to talk about it over the phone. So she goes, oh, right, well, yeah, come round tonight then. So anyway, my mum sees me, she, she don't want to be in an awkward position and, like, be a bit embarrassed and what have you. So she sees me and she goes, right, Anthony's mum's coming round. What have you been doing? Yeah. So I go, oh, God, I said, I've, I've been nicking stuff. 
it just goes like what? So, not, not big stuff. I've, I've had a few calculators and uh, Mars bars and stuff. How many? I just work it out. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Works out at 7.2 <laughs> per day. So, um, how so many calculators do you need? So, <laughs> so it was when that phase. You failed, Mars. Every, <laughs> everyone wanted a calculator. It was like a trendy thing, wasn't it? Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. In Manchester a couple of years ago, yeah. So, um, <laughs> so anyway, so I told her all this and I confessed to like, Computers will make it there, won't they? <laughs> I confess that there's magic in the back <laughs> yeah. of battery. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> confess to nicking all this stuff. She comes round. She only wanted to borrow some money. <laughs> Brilliant. She said, really oh, I, I don't like asking. I was a bit embarrassed to ask you over the phone, but can I borrow 20 quid? Oh, that's fantastic. And there's me. <laughs> that's great. And it's oh. sort of thing to yours. And did you- And he went, hold on, I'm going to work out the interest on that. I'm back at 10%. She'll owe like you four yeah. pounds forty. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did, dear. So, so, your mum was a loan shark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, what? and, uh, did, 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 uh, did she mention she that went, you I just, I just stuff with your, with that other- Because yeah, what I'm saying is, presumably you've got no, your mate in no, 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 no. Right, you know, that's, that's great. Anyway, should we have some more music? Yeah, yeah, we've been waiting for it. What are you going to play, Carl? We've got the Cooper Temple Claws. Oh, brilliant. So you're talking to your cat, Rick. Is it answering back much? How are the conversations going with your cat? Well, it's, I have more intelligent conversations <laughs> with my cat than I do with yeah, him. Yeah, here's one, right? Me, we, when my gran died, right, um, she, she had this rubbish dog, right, and that's all we got left. Um, it was called Fluffy, and, like, my gran looked after it in a way that it was treated like a human. Do you know what I mean? Had a little coat on when it went out and all that. Um, anyway, so she died. We get left it. My dad's like, oh, bloody hell, right? Uh, before you know it, it was a wreck. Because we, we weren't sort of bathing it the way she bathed it. We let it out. We wanted to go out. It got covered in oil. It used to go under the car and everything. So it's, it went from looking like this fluffy, you know, poodle to just being a bit of a wreck. It got it by a car. It ran sideways like a crab and all that. <laughs> in the now, course of how long? A month? Probably about two, two months or something. Yeah. Now, so it went from being over-treated to just being treated like a dog. Yeah, but a dog, dog isn't, uh, you know, is not a, a indigenous species anywhere. We sort of bred those from, you yeah, know, change jackals it. All or, I'm and wolves. Saying is and... Change it, take away the dog thing. I mean, that lizard thing you've got. Salamander. It's, it's still sort of treated as part of the family, even though well, it it's not. As, I mean, how is it treated as part of the family? Just the way, you know, it's looked after that big area that it's got to itself. We, we stick it in a case and feed it a cricket now and again. It, how is that like one of the family? It doesn't matter because it's in your flat. It is in Carl's family. It's, <laughs> it's, it's in your flat, in it, and it's sat in that corner. I just mean, as time goes on, yeah. things, things get educated as they get older. How old's that lizard? You don't. How old is it? About 15 years old. Right. Now it knows more now than it did when you got it because it's been in those surroundings. It's had its eye on things. It's no. 15, so presumably it listens to a lot of Linkin Park. It <laughs> goes on the internet a lot. <laughs> no, but do, do, you, do you know what I mean? You've already proved your point. It's like that fella who kept hitting the dog on the head with a stick. Right. I've Pavlov, at no point did he hit a dog on the head with a stick. But he kept doing it and eventually the dog went, I'm sick of this. And wandered <laughs> off, <laughs> <didn't> <laughs> it? Pavlov yeah. there. Brilliant. Do you know what I'd like to do? A programme where you rewrite, you paraphrase someone's theory. So Pavlov's first. We could do, uh, um, Freud. Give us, you know, what do you know about Sigmund Freud? The father of psychoanalysis. Right, come on in. I don't know anything on him. Here's an interesting fact. If the, f the frog annoyed you, this might annoy you. A blind chameleon will still change colour to match its surroundings. You're aware that the chameleon can... Yeah, whatever it, whatever it sits on. Yeah. But then what, what happens when you put one of them on a mirror? <laughs> <laughs> no, do, does it get stressed out or what? What's, what's it copying? <laughs> well, it probably doesn't need to copy anything because it looks at itself and it goes, Oh, it looks like that. It's brilliant. God, that was fast. That's the fastest I've ever done that. That is brilliant. So they, they can go any colour, there's nothing, you can put them on anything and they'll go to the thing. I, I, I don't want you to have a chameleon because you'd just be trying to see what it could and couldn't do. Try and do. catch it out. I know, yeah. Pop it on some tartan. But yeah. well, again, say like, say like the frog thing, right? Pop it on the telly. Yeah. <laughs> couldn't do it fast enough. <laughs> Why does the chameleon need that skill of copying a colour? Because at the end of the day, that's, that's mainly sticking in, in the woods, isn't it? By trees, by grass. Right. Why can't it just stay green? That's all it needs. That, that, those colour changes are only for camouflage, aren't they? I don't know. Some of them are for attraction, some of them to show moods, anger. No, I but I just think we're encouraging them. You see, maybe this is evolution or whatever, but at the end of the day, because they can change colour, 
they're wandering out of their area. They can be wandering about, you know, through a car park and everything, just because they'll go, well, I don't want to get seen, change the colour of co concrete. Whereas... Or into the colour of a Fiat Punto. But they should just stay green. Stay green, right, stay in the woods and stay safe. <laughs> Information for <laughs> chameleons. some advice for chameleons. <laughs> oh, God. Stay green, stay in the woods, oh. stay safe. Good night. Oh, God. Um, right. <laughs> uh, the only time a turkey whistles is when it panics. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas time, then. Yeah. What do you think of that, Carl? It goes from one extreme to another, doesn't it? You've got a frog. He's going mental. It's not going mental. Killing thousands of people. No, that's not. That's got that sort of power. Then you got a turkey who's whistling for help. <laughs> <laughs> you think that you should redress the balance a little bit? You want to give? What would you do? Give the frog the ability to kill five hundred and the turkey five hundred? Um, I don't think you should be killing. Uh, I reckon ten. Ten, because you've made your point with ten, haven't you? Do you well, think that he's got a thousand in his lifetime? Like he's got a thousand to kill? I don't think you understand. I just think he doesn't really kill a thousand people. It doesn't mean someone goes, Frog, you have the power to kill one thousand people in your lifetime. Choose them wisely. <laughs> but I just think if it needs that sort of power, power. it should be fighting evil. Well, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's knocking about the wrong area, isn't it? If it's under that much danger, move. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the other day about, um, you know, your body and everything, because it is amazing, isn't it? How it works. Oh, yeah, yeah. Does the brain control you, or are you controlling the brain? I don't know <laughs> if I'm in charge of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Nor do I, There's Carl. a surprise. Nor do I, Carl. No, do, do you know what I mean, though, by that? Does well, the brain control you, or do well, you control you, the when, brain? Well, when you, like, don't you ever sort of think sometimes? Say if you're making... But you I, are I was the making, brain. No, no, but I was making a shopping list, right? Going, right, I need some, uh, rice, uh, kidney beans. Uh, and I thought I had everything, and I sort of was rolling up the paper, and then then something went, oh, an onion. Your so brain some, Something that. went, an onion, was yeah. it Suzanne? No, well, my brain, my brain <laughs> sort of went, you forgot something. Yeah. I, I didn't think I'd forgot. I was no, no, you that. are your brain. No, no, <laughs> but don't you understand, the brain, my brain was in, I was in control of my brain. <laughs> When I was writing down rice and kidney beans. But you're not in charge of the onion. That's another part of the brain that's in charge of the onion. <laughs> the onion, the onion sector. Yeah. No, but I put the paper away, putting my coat on, ready to go, ready but to go and get well, the yeah, rice. Yes, but, yes, but your onion lobe kicked in. <laughs> what, so you, you put the paper in your pocket, you got the coat on, then you just suddenly hear then from it, nowhere, it was just like, it was onion. Like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even thinking about that shopping list. It's in my pocket, I'm thinking, do I need my gloves, it's cold out. Yeah. And suddenly, onion. And it was like, oh yeah, onion, yeah, I had to get the paper out. So what I'm saying is, who's, this, in, the, who's in charge? The brain, the brain, the mind, the brain is the... What are you doing but who's in that's charge? That's just, you forgot, you forgot the onion and you remembered the onion. You must have forgotten things in the past. No, but not, not like that, not where, like, it just made me think, that was weird, who, who reminded me of that? You did! <laughs> yeah, but I'm not... <laughs> no, you are your brain. It's not like there's you, then there's a brain, then there's an extra one looking down at it, about, oh, the, the, you know, the, the, the meta brain, the thing above it. No, but your brain, your, how does your brain work? <laughs> you give it information, don't you? Well, it takes- Do you mean you give it information? Well, it's, it's doing if I, it, if I sat in a room with nothing, not feeding it anything, it wouldn't know anything. No, but it, it, it's this thing but that then, there's two yous, it's this thing that there's- There's, there's Carl this, and Carl's brain. Yeah, there's, there's not- there's not a duality in this. If you- if, if you go- if you go, come on, come on, now think. That's the brain saying that to itself. It's- it, it's not- there's not two people in there having an argument coming, come on, brain. And the brain's going, oh, don't you start, I was thinking then. And the other thing's going, brain, onion. And the brain goes, Carl, onion. You are your brain. If you are anything, you are, you are your mind, your brain, your collection of memories, your personality. You're not what you look like. Does that answer your question, Carl? Uh, what do you think of then? You were thinking of a tortoise on a skateboard then when I did that last <laughs> sentence, weren't you? <laughs> you know, whilst you've been working on that, I've been travelling about a bit. Mm. Went to um, Dorset, right? A uh, nice beach there. Uh, and you know those huts you get? Like a hut on the beach and you... Oh, where you get changed. You can get changed in it, but they, they're better than that. It's like you can put a telly in it. Uh, sofa if you want. Oh, you don't mean the Victorian changing yeah, huts, yeah, you mean like... Yeah, sort of things. It, it's sort of bigger than that. Yeah. And, um, 
We were walking down there and there was a really sort of big fat family in one of them. There was about four of them. And you could tell that they'd never had a game of anything, do you know what I mean? They yeah. just sit down there eating ice cream, looking at the sea and what have you. And the weird thing is, the little fat kid, the youngest one, who must have been, I don't know, about eight, he was really fat to the point of you couldn't see his neck. Yeah. And he sat, he sat at the front of his mum and dad and his older sister. He sat there and he had a frisbee and I thought, look, they, they don't want to play with him. I mean, that's, that's an active game to play, isn't it? Yeah. For a frisbee. As we got closer, he was just using it to eat Maltesers out of. <laughs> 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 I just thought, even, again, you know, the one active thing he's got he's using it to eat out of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Extraordinary. And that just sums up what people are like you know, when it comes to keeping oh. fit and activities. Oh, that's fantastic. One thing I've, I've noticed, because I occasionally go to the gym, and you know those guys who work out constantly to give themselves extraordinary physiques? Just they, you know, they're on the trip, they're on the weights, and they're really... You know, I notice in the summer particularly, those guys cannot wait to get their shirts off. Yeah. Everywhere you see, they're walking around. If they've got a good good torso, they are walking shirts off. Even, I think, if you go to nightclubs, I notice there's always one guy who's thinking, well, I have put so much work into this body, I have got to get my shirt off on the dance floor. A vest, yeah. You know, it comes straight a, off. A brand new tattoo. I'm not covering that up. Exactly. I've paid a lot for it. Let's see it. Yeah, yeah. But that's what we were saying about bodies. I can't remember why we were talking about it. We've got to a point in science now that you can change a head. Right. No, well, that, that doesn't make any sense at all. It, it was a programme, on. it was done in the 50s or 60s where they stuck a, a monkey's brain on a stick and had it wired up and it still worked, right? Right, okay. And that was in, like, the 60s or right, whatever. Right, okay. Well, so, to, well to, to say to change a head makes no sense at all. Because just, if you put a, a, a different head on a different body, you're changing the body. Yeah, I know, well, that's what I'm about to say to you, though. What? That's what I'm saying. That I'd be more confident if... I had someone else's body, because if anyone dissed it, I can go, oh, no, it's bad, isn't it? But it's what not are you mine. talking about? Well, it's, it's like, say, um... As opposed to someone else's head? Yeah. Well, what it would be me, would it? The head is me. Well, of course it is, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah, so what do you mean? Me. You'd be happier having someone else's body? What, than your own? What I mean is, say if, um, you're wandering about, uh, for some, for some reason, there's an incident. You have to take your top off and that, and everyone's looking at you, right? And you're a bit sort of, you know, you haven't got the muscles and that, you haven't got the six pack. Right. Uh, which isn't that nice anyway. I don't know why that's become a nice thing, really, seeing the insides of you. You might as well. <laughs> I mean, I know not... I came up with the see through skin idea, but it's, it's a bit weird, isn't it? You can see stuff. No, no, it's the muscle in front of the. No, it's not. Sometimes it is. You can it's, see not the, like, it's not the tubes. outline of your no, organs. No, you can't see tubes. You can see tubes and veins and stuff. Well, you can see veins. Yeah, well, I don't want to see that. That's why we've got skin over it. It's going well, isn't it? It's, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Well, I'm looking forward to Pop Idol. Pop Idol? I've not been watching it. I, You're I, joking. Yeah, I don't know what's happened, really. I've lost interest. Oh, well, it's, it is like most things. Like the, 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 the preliminary rounds, um, Always that's when excited. all the real freaks and no-hopers, you know, um, but some of, I, I, sometimes I watch those sort of things and I sort of laugh and I think, oh dear, I shouldn't be laughing at him because he's not just rubbish, he's verging on the mentally ill. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So as mm. people that go along, you want to go, who, who told you to go along? What, what were you thinking? Right? Well, it's the fact that there was no one to stop them going. That's what's even more terrifying. Yeah, I know. Um, and uh, Simon Cowell's good. Oh, you, he's this great is value, yeah. He's amazing. Foxy. I like Foxy now. I know, I've warmed to He's uh, come round, Dr. Dr. Fox. Fox. He's, a, he's a lovely little shiny tree Now, often I man, notice he's not always there week, uh, week in week. Is that because he's off doing medical uh, operations? He's got his practice still. He's got the practice, he's got to maintain that. Yeah, um, and, uh, you know, he's, he's on. Uh, Isn't it the big ones tonight? I mean, when I say the big ones, <laughs> Capital Radio. He's still on. <laughs> Capital Radio yeah. that he's got yeah. to do. So, uh, you know. Isn't got, it some of the big names, though? It's uh, Darius Dinesh tonight. It's Darius and the Fat Boy. And the Fat Guy, The big yeah. thing that makes you... Oh, I noticed in the sun today is saying, vote for me because of my mu musical talent, not because I'm huge and you feel sorry for me. Yeah, well, that's good. Mm. I think that's right. But he's, he's, he has got a great... Darius, know, I noticed, he shaved his beard off. He looks... He's a, he's a new man. He looks slightly laughable, though. He's got quite a weak chin. He's having a laugh. Well... He's dissing Darius. I'm not looks. claiming to be a pop star. Well... Oh, can you feel the love in the room? Yeah, that's a little song. No, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, my favourite all the way through has been the little fellow with the stutter. I'd like Darius to get. You know, yeah, I think he's. It's almost certain he's going to win. I don't think I there's think any so. Or that Welsh girl who was very good. Oh, yeah. The one that made Pete Waterman cry. Yeah, that yeah. was great. Yeah. Um, uh, she was good though, wasn't she? she yeah, was good, they're yeah. great. They're they're really good. Um, but you know, it'd be nice to see Fatty 
get some he's recognition. Too I mean, he's just a weird shape, though. It's it it, it turns my stomach, and I'm one to talk. On. No, I know. He's just you know. He's just doing his job. It's you know glandular. Yeah, it's not as greed. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, he's got a good voice, and, and why not? We've good had luck to him. we've had Demis Roussos in the charts. Yeah, Alison Moyet. There's not been a fatty for a while, has there? Who's been a big star? Uh, oh. I mean, Moyet may well have been the last one. Jer um, Jerry Watts, she sorted herself out after becoming famous. She was pretty big, wasn't she? Who? Jerry Halliwell? Yeah. She, yeah, she was never a bloater. Have you seen this bloke off Pop Idols? <laughs> yeah. It's like he's got three Jerry Halliwells strapped to his waist and then wearing a big coat over the top. <laughs> to smuggle them in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to a, to a no-Halliwell zone. I reckon he's, I tell you what he's gonna do, I reckon he's gonna take it off <laughs> and it's just a big fat outfit and it was like to prove, you know, the prejudice of the world. Yeah. All right? Yes. Hey. And how come that little fellow with the starter doesn't start when he's singing? Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. I know that's cleaned up actually. I, I bet she's not up, even Welsh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and apparently, is, apparently Darius is not a knob. Daddy Warhols on XFM 104.9. About 20 past two, the Ricky Gervais show. With Steve Merchant. Yeah, he's still here. The Christmas ads are come on, I notice. They're on now. And I noticed, I was watching last night, watching Telly last night, and, um, do you think that the, uh, advertising executive for Cabra's Roses Chocolates just comes in once a year and they go, what you got this year? And he goes, what about some workmen and some old ladies singing thank you very much, thank you very, very much? Yeah. Just shot in a street somewhere. Yeah, that'd be fine. It worked last year. Yeah, pretty much. Every, so that's been going, like, like, since I can remember. They've never I've never seen a, another advert for Cabra's Roses except there's, that. Exactly. Well, there's certain things that conjure up Christmas, like oh, you've you, you got your turkey and all that, and yeah. you've got, you, you got your roses. Yeah. Walrus. Walrus. Yeah. Well, what, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got all, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Pizza. Walrus. <laughs> Drink driving. <laughs> Oh dear! I, God, sorry, I forgot what I went in for. Um, <laughs> what were we doing? We oh, were right. doing something. Be careful. There's something. a lot of money involved here. Yeah. Steve. <laughs> oh, you can't. Don't, don't, don't stitch me up. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? I was reading the paper this week that uh, Charlotte Church, yeah, you know, little kind of singing sensation. She's been slagging off the firemen who've been um, salvaging people and and no, she stuff. Been slagging yeah. them off. Well, Be apparently, I, no. What but I saw on the say? news. I saw on the news that she's uh, apparently, and she claimed that she'd been misinterpreted. Right. But the new Channel Five News thought this was a big enough story to say that Charlotte Church had been um, saying that the September 11th tragedy had been blown out of proportion. Right. That's and she's just been to slagging off the firemen. No, but that's what they said. They said that she f she felt that they they were being held as kind of heroes and they were just doing their job. Right. Oh, well, that is, that's, yeah, yeah, that's a little bit stupid to say anyway, a little bit insensitive and, you know, yeah. But it's right. sort of, because it's like, did you read about... Why, why do you care? Why does anyone care but who's what she her? thinks about September 11th yeah. anyway? It's the same with those things like, during a presidential election, or, when I'm actually, it's, 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 these things they preach, uh, Billy Piper says, I've always voted Labour. <laughs> I know. Who's going to go, go, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, H from Steps, he's a Conservative, hold on, what's going on? Yeah. I don't know if he is or not. I'm, 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 I don't I'm, know, well, I know just, that, um, You know, that was just an example. I don't know, I don't know what either of them vote, to be honest. All right, let's not get into it. I think Faye and, Faye and Claire from Stets are both BMP members. I can't remember. I remember reading that somewhere. That's but so I not true. I that is so be certain. untrue. He cannot takes that back certain. now. I cannot be certain. Right. I think that is definitely read. untrue. I read it on the net and it's often wrong on the net. Right. Definitely, definitely he's going to retract that now, Definitely. Aren't you? Yeah, what I'm saying, I'm saying I, it's almost certainly untrue. I read it on the net. Oh, right. Yeah, and those things are always untrue. Okay. All right. He's dissed the net now. Yeah. You dissed oh the net. I can't you, believe it. Did you Let's dig ourselves out of this hole now. Well, uh, Blue, now I definitely can quote this because yeah. I read it in the sun. Yeah. Blue were being uh, interviewed by, you know, Blue, the pop band Blue. All rise. Have you bought that album yet, Rick? I imagine that would be on yeah, your no, Christmas I like list. it. One for the money and the, the free ride. ride. Yeah. Anyway, Blue um, were being interviewed by The Sun for when they were going to web chats by uh, the lovable Dominic Mohan. Yeah. And uh, for some reason they got around to September 11th, and one of the members of Blue said, again, church-like, yeah. um, I thought he's been blown out of all proportion. What about all the whales and elephants that are dying oh, every yeah. day? And the other band were going, shut up. Yeah, shut they were up. it was pretty, they gave a transcript they, of it going, shut they, up. They had to do a, um, a retraction. He said, sorry, I didn't know. I'll... Yeah, was it? He said, I'm, I, I, obviously, I'm very passionate about whales and elephants, and uh, perhaps, perhaps a bit misplaced. All the proceeds that I'll receive from our next single, I'm going to give to the September 11th Foundation. Yeah, and then he went, can I give some to the whales? And then he's <laughs> done, no, done it again. Don't, don't worry about the whales. But this is what I mean. It's, why are people asking the members of Blue? Yeah. You know, or Atomic Kitten, what yeah. they think about September the 11th. I know. They should just be working in a chippy, those people. They're lucky, <laughs> they're lucky to be on the telly. <laughs> the, se the, the Atomic Kitten girls, really, I mean, do they not look like they should be in a chip shop? <laughs> or just uh, hanging around outside an offie drinking diamond white cider? They will be soon. They will be soon. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry. Although Hearsay's new single, I've dissed Hearsay before, but they've come out with a, a, you know, a little poppy thing. I think Can I surprise you, Rick? I prefer Liberty. 
I prefer a little bit as well. Yeah, a little bit funky, a little bit with more damn yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, XFM 104.9. Once again, our opinions on current pop bands. <laughs> yeah, if yeah, you'd like I, to have your, uh... Hold on, though. Go on, shoot. Isn't it about time for, well, you know, a hip-hop track? Have no. we got it? Can you song, dig it up? Song for the Lovers would be good. Song oh, for the Lovers. Oh, I'll do that now. I'll do song for the Lovers. Now, this is a beautiful song. It's by Simon and Garfunkel. It's only one minute, 49 long. It's it's called April Come She Will. It's the song for the lovers. Play it really. See, yeah, I awesome. quite like to put out a compilation like song for the lovers, maybe, you know what I mean? But I'm worried obviously the title's ironic, we're taking the Mickey out of those things, but quite serious about the, all the songs we play. Yeah, exactly. I'm worried about it people perceive it a bit like Simon Bates' is our tune yes, album or yeah. something. Steve Wright's Sunday Love Songs. Yeah, yeah. But um lovely. Yeah. When you yeah. think that you listen to like some dance track, you buy it and it's like five minutes long, the same thing, repetitive beats. Yeah. And then you hear that a minute and a half. Classic. Do you know what I mean? Hey, have I made my point, Rick? I, I think, think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, the youngsters yeah. are dying. If anyone knows what my point was there, please <laughs> give us a yeah, call. phone in and he's made it well. <laughs> yeah. Carl, have you got some what have you got lined up for us? Some R E M. I don't oh, think we about the Oh Strokes on XFM one oh four point nine. It's the Ricky Gervais show with me. Steve Merchant, Cheers. Carl Pilkington. The oh, K-Man. Well, it's, uh, time for the- well, I think people wait for this now. <laughs> I never knew, really, since I was doing the show, that I actually had a bit of a knack for film reviews. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because- I discovered I try and talent, get, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I'll probably- probably be asked soon by Brian Orn or Jonathan Ross to do something on that sort of thing, or maybe my own film, mm, so mm, I don't mm, know. Mm, mm, mm. TV or- The anyway. clock's ticking, it's only a matter of time. Yeah, okay, th this week I've chosen, uh- Well, wait uh, a minute, let's play the jingle. Okay. The film review and that. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah? Because yeah. you're Yeah. Yeah? Okay, okay, here we go. This week I've chosen My Left Foot. Right. Okay. Now, My Left Foot is a film about a bloke called Daniel Day-Lewis, who's all mental, except for, um, his left foot, right? But, and he has arguments. I can't remember, he has arguments with his dad, so I wasn't watching it properly. But, he, even though he's mental apart from the foot, he does stuff with the foot that we could, we not, you know, could do all over and he uses that to his best. I think he might write a book or something off paint. And the moral of this story is, you know, even if you're, you've only got a foot that works, you can still win prizes because it won the Oscar. Okay. Um, am I right in saying that you're bringing a book out of these collected? Maybe for the Christmas market. I think I might. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I see. There's obviously obvious market films there. reviewed, sort of. You know, what with, with it's a different, it's a different outlook on it, mm. and mm. a different approach. I'm just, yeah. I don't just sort of like stray. Well, I'll tell you what, it's an approach that doesn't really use grammar, <laughs> which, uh, which you don't see that often <laughs> in film reviews. Um, <laughs> but no, once again, what would you give it out of ten? Uh, I just, uh, I didn't really concentrate. I can't remember a lot okay. about it, but it won a, an Oscar, so I think it won an Oscar or summer, so nine. Okay. Dolly, well, that was my left foot, which is probably available on sell through video, maybe in a bargain uh, bin. Five ninety nine, probably on TV this Christmas. That's to be confirmed. <laughs> Talking about jobs and that, though, I was reading the other day about, um, like, you know, rubbish jobs that people have had and stuff. I haven't got time when I work, man. <laughs> just, I just get on with it. I'm not squiddly diddly. <laughs> Fingers in pies, different jobs. Go on. Uh, do you know Ivor the Terrible? Ivan. He, uh... It's, yeah, his Russian... Yeah, that was the Welsh fella. Who yeah. was, who was bloody awful, <laughs> but not as bad as his Russian cousin. Ivan, yeah. go on. He, uh... He had a fella doing some work for him, right? Yeah. This fella built his house. Yeah. Uh, after it was done, right? Yeah. Uh, the terrible fella was like... Uh, <laughs> fella, Ivan. He, he yeah. was going, oh, it's brilliant. You've, you've done a good job there. Yeah. I don't want you to build another one like that. Took his eyes out. Just stopped him making an house like that. Again. Blimey. That's why bad, did, isn't it? Why did he take away his trowel? Then he could have <laughs> seen yeah. that he couldn't have built a house without without a trowel. He can't build a house without a trowel. Yeah. Oh, we, I suppose yeah. he I, I suppose he probably later thought that. Once he'd been nicknamed Ivan the Terrible. Yeah, yeah. He but thought, why? Why? Because you I, gouge people's eyes out. Yeah, but I didn't want to build another house. I know, but take his trowel away. What would I have been then? Well, <laughs> Ivan the crafty, at most. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, uh, uh, Ivan the jealous. You know, Ivan yeah. the spoiled brat. But yeah. 
Ivan, you, I go tell someone's off. That, that is bloody terrible. I'm surprised you're not called Ivan the. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, you're gonna get on an issue like with Vlad the Impaler. Yeah, he's mainly remembered for impaling. People. Yeah, he did a lot of other stuff. He did a load of great charity work. He did. It, the impaling is the thing that's really yeah. gone down in history. <laughs> <laughs> when were you reading about Ivan the Terrible? No, it's just or a Ivan the Terrible is the the, <laughs> the thing you remembered from this uh, informative article? No, it was it was just little bits like that talking about him. There was a thing about uh, someone who worked for that that fellow who painted the ceiling, Sistine and, Chapel. Yeah, there, okay. there was a thing the, the, a woman who worked for him in his house, and um, I love how you assimilate information when it's just bordering on the academic or just or just the interesting and true. It's wonderful. Ivor the Terrible gouged someone's eyes out, spilt him an house. The f that fella who painted that ceiling <laughs> had a woman work for him. Imagine if you wrote that down in an essay. Imagine if you wrote that in a school essay. Well, you'd probably end up with not, not getting a grade or... Yeah, or, or thinking you've turned yeah. up to more than you had. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, the go woman on. who lived with... Yeah, the woman who lived in a shoe, go on. Yeah, there's this woman who, uh, who lived with him and, yeah. uh, she like, you know, go out and do all this shopping and that. Yeah. Uh, but because she couldn't read or write, he used to have to draw everything that he wanted. Why couldn't he just tell her? I don't know. No, Maybe but just... no, 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 wait. That's an excellent point. Could she talk? Yeah, but if it's a big list and that, loads of different coloured paints But why couldn't stuff. she draw, draw on a piece of paper? Why did he have to do it? Because he's a better drawer, isn't he? <laughs> That's the point. That's it. That is, we were just looking for the logic of the story. You found it. You done it. Play a record. <laughs> I don't owe you anything. By the Smiths on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Carl, over to you. This is the uh, the time where we play. Well, the world famous <laughs> quiz, isn't it? Rock busters, isn't it? Yeah, which is. Blackbusters, but with music. See you later. Cryptic clues and that. Do you want to say? Not Steve? really. Not Steve? really cryptic, but we've got a number of DVDs to give away, uh, including some uh, teachers' DVDs. We've got a bunch of CDs here, and also Ricky Gervais's uh, live stand-up DVD, Animal, Animals, brilliant. which cool. is not good at all. I really would not encourage people to buy that. It is well. weak observations, poorly performed. <laughs> I would recommend The Office series two on DVD. Rubbish That's in that. Available. I'm awful in that. You can actually see me forgetting some of my lines. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Right then, so cryptic clues, um, just an example, might be new, I reckon people will be staying in today because it's raining and that, so, yeah. might not have heard it before. Yeah. So, like, uh... Or they have and they're not listening. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, whatever. Uh, oh good, you gave up on that, did you? Three, three... <laughs> well, give us an example of the sort of thing. Uh, that, that, uh... Jeez. All right, maybe don't. Listen, don't uh, that long. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a broadcaster. And, uh, yeah. yeah, words are my tool. <laughs> Go on. All right, forget Come that. Come on, Baldy. Right, three, three clues. Then here's the first one. It's a band or an artist. Yeah. Right. I'm going to the northeast. What are you going there for? Good point. Good question. Right. <laughs> so, well, yeah, if it would have been why you're going to the northwest, that's a different yeah. matter. Go going on. to the northeast. What are you going there for? Right. Yeah. S is the initial, so it's a band or an artist who's who starts with an S, and that's the clue. Right. Second one. Uh, oh yeah, she's uh, she's related to the man in the lamp. Right. That's G. Right. She's related to the man in the lamp. Right. And the third one is uh, the Jamaican fella would love to live there, but it's a little bit pricey. <laughs> Oh God! I feel an accent coming. That's on. one where you're gonna have to think about it with the accent. I the imagine. Initials there, D S D S for that one, right? So the Jamaican fellow would love to live live there, but you know, a bit dear and that, and a bit pricey. So, uh, <laughs> so, so give us some again quickly. Right, the first one. I'm going to the northeast. What are you going there for? That's S. <laughs> She's related to the man in the lamp, you know. That's G. Changes And the it. Jamaican fellow would love to live there, but a little bit pricey. Mm -hmm. And okay. that's DS, so uh, email in or text and that. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. What's or the text? text? 83 XFM. Uh, yeah. What's that? Surprises. So. Brilliant. Right. Play some ads? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, Go on then. It's, it's, right, has uh, anyone got all three? No. No, right, okay. So there's some. Right, I'm going to be. Ang I'm going to ban Rockbusters. Because, okay, go on then. What are the clues again? Tell me the answers. Well, give us the ones that they did get. All right. Well, they did get 
Um, she's related to the man in the lamp. What's that? That was G. That Gina. Was, that was- that Genie. Was Genesis. Right? Genesis. Like Genesis. So, <laughs> G- the sister of the genie, Genesis, Genesis, they got that no, one. No, 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 no. What, what, what's the band's name? Genesis. No, 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 Genesis. say the band name. Genesis. 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 Right, okay. Well, I don't get it, because genie is nothing well, like that. Well, they did, so don't right, worry okay. about it. Stop worrying about the answer, stop worrying about that, all right? The third one was, uh, the Jamaican fella would love to live there. Go on. But it's a little bit pricey. Go on. Right? That what was, was the initial? DS. Deer Streets. What? Right? So it's a Deer Street to live on. Deer Streets? Oh yeah, I don't have no of them. They, but what, they're a band? That's, that's Dire Straits. No, it's not Dire Straits! It's not Dire Straits! Oh, Deer Streets! The Jamaican fella. Go on, go on, there. make it sound like that. Like Deer Streets. Deer Streets. <laughs> Do it again. Streets. No, it's still not. Keep going. I haven't got it yet. Dear, Go on. Dear Streets. They got that one as well, so... Alright, well, let's hear the one they Can I do an impression of a Jamaican fella saying Dire Straits? Right. Uh, dire Streets. <laughs> yeah. It's not one, the same! The first one they struggle, struggle with was, um, I'm going to the North East. What are you going there for? Well, you know, when you say struggled with, no one got this. No one got it. Go People on then. Didn't even attempt it. Okay, go on, the North East. I'm going to the North East. What are you going there for? Seal. S seal? What? Hull. Hull's up in the North East. Hull is, yeah, Sea yeah. Hull, yeah. Yeah, so- I haven't heard of them either. Is that a seal, right? So that works. Who's, who's seal? Seal. So, oh, seal? Yeah. What's that got to do with the North, though? Seal. <laughs> that's the way I'd say it, innit? Okay, that's the end of Rockbusters. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's the end of Rockbusters. I can't believe we even brought you back, Rick. Right? I'm, I'm serious, that's the end of Rockbusters. Can I be honest with you? Go on. I'd love to hear some adverts now instead of that. Well, so would I. That is, that, adverts are better than that. Yeah. I'm just saying Laura. Doesn't matter. Laura's Fine. the one with Well done, Laura. Right? She well done, Laura. Two, but we'll give her that. Yeah. Steve, is there anything wrong with a bit of old fashioned rock and roll, yes or no? I do not believe so. Well, then there's, there's Jet, so roll over DJ on yeah. XFM 104.9. Who are you? Ricky Gervais, who are you? Steve Merchant. Who's that little bald mank, mm -hmm. whinging twat over there? Carl Pilkington. Yeah, sure. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No. Oh, go on. Rick, as you know, there's always <laughs> junk lying around in this uh, studio, and not all of it is Rockbusters price. <laughs> um, no. And there's, uh, I just be filming the playlist. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, I was uh, just flipping through an old copy of the Guardian Guide from last week. Sure. You know, the little listings thing. Yeah. And you know, I don't know if people might have seen it. We did a there was a documentary on this week about the transfer of um, British sitcoms to America. Yeah. And uh, we did an interview for that because they're remaking the show over in the States. I'm just flicking through and I just, I noticed there's a little write-up about it here. And it says, uh, da -da 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 -da. and it says, quoting me, it says, We don't care if David Brent becomes a woman, burble Steve Merchant, eyes bulging with imagined riches. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, my eyes bulge normally. That's not me being well, greedy, that's you know just the me. thing I did uh, on it when I sort of like rub my fingers together and do that stupid Brent, but people say that seriously. I know. I know. Yeah. It's extraordinary. Oh, some people got it, but, um, I think it was something in the paper the next day said, uh, uh, Gervais's mannerisms could have been transferred as, uh, dollar signs. Well, I was really yeah. sarcastically. <laughs> I was doing it like that. I was pretending that I just cared about the money. Yeah. So, yeah, irony, yeah. Uh, you see, people say Americans don't get irony. Most people here don't get irony. Absolutely right. That's yeah. why they think this show's rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we fooled them. Yeah. We've had the last laugh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We think it's really good. <laughs> exactly. Carl, come on. That that was. Uh, let's have some news. Let's have some. Let's do some proper radio. Have you, all, 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 the, all your news comes from Anna Nova, doesn't it? That's what will Doctor Fox do about now at two o'clock? He'd do some it's amusing news. news. It's coming up for two, and here is the uh, news with Carl Pilkington. Well, like I said, it's just it's just headlines, and that. I don't bother reading on if no I like point. the headlines. And it's all from Anna Nova, story. not yeah. from a newspaper. Or it's not made up or anything. These no, are okay then. Well, let's so. see. Let's see. Okay, imagine Trevor McDonald doing this. It's, These uh, are real news headlines. Okay then. Well, they're real. They're real to Carl. Okay, here we go. And here is the news with Carl Pilkington. Bong. Man hidden. Man hid in wardrobe to avoid work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. All right. Bong. Teenager gets stuck in washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> Bong. Bush man has two right feet. <laughs> <laughs> Bong. Cow hit by train lands on farmer's wife. <laughs> <laughs> That is the real news to you, isn't it? <laughs> That's brilliant. Oh, did, oh. <laughs> oh.
I like this great. bit of the cow flying through the air! Yeah. And the wife going, oh no! Yeah. If everything was at the same size as us, what would be the best thing to be? Say like a tarantula. Yeah. And a tiger. What would happen there? To a, a, a 15 stone tiger versus a 15 stone tarantula. Yeah. Well, I'd imagine the 15 stone tarantula. Right, so it's just weird that, isn't it? It's a good job that they're small. Yet things are getting bigger because we're messing with the world. But it's a ridiculous thing to say, isn't it? Because what would it eat? 15 stone. The biggest you'll find is like a foot long beetle or something like that. It's big though, isn't it? Yeah, and that's about as big as they get. He's I wouldn't worry that. about it. Mm. <laughs> Again, based on nothing, he queries it's not, you. But it's like fish, isn't it? How they say about a goldfish. Yeah. That thing about a woman who went on holiday and mm. stuck it in a bath. Mm. She came back, it was seven foot. Right, that didn't happen. No, that's a well-known thing about No, it's not a well-known thing. What? I'll tell you why. Because a fish would only grow to its surroundings anyway. So... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You have to put it in a bigger tank. Yeah, in a bath. No, a seven-foot fish in a bath. It just fit the bath exactly, did it? When she got back off holiday... Don't talk shit. It's what was well it eating? What was it eating? How long was she gone for? <laughs> Two million years? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she, she went to Mars and back. Ted, you're not going to believe this. Come up here. How many fish do you see that have naturally died? It's always been caught by a man or a shark set it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't just see dead fish washed up, do you? Well, most things that don't die of old age. Yeah, that's weird though, isn't it? Well, no, because it's a, you know, it's a jungle out there. No, worse than the sea. The sea is like full of, uh, you've got an enemy round every rock. <laughs> I love it! I love it! I think it's like a wall into crabs <laughs> exactly. and young squid. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's, it's like the policeman that comes into your school. Yeah, yeah. Carl, have you ever seen the programme Inside the Actors Studio? Uh, no. James Lipton interviews famous actors and gets world, uh, words of advice about, uh, you know, how, how they work and how they act. But at the end, he always asks a series of questions, which is based on a French series of questions that a guy called Bruno Pivot used to, uh, to give people when he interviewed them. So I'm going to ask you some of these questions, I'm just interested to see what your response is. And, you know, answer them quickly, you don't have to think about them too much. Mm. What is your favourite curse word? Uh, I don't think I've got one. Uh, knobhead. <laughs> that sums everything up, and I think it's... But it you wouldn't call your nan a knobhead, would you? What would you call a nan? Well, yeah. Nobed's all right, isn't it? Because she, she, she sort of gets it. It's one of them things that everybody understands, but it's not too offensive. Right. What a Nobed. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do, though, if you were swimming, right? It was a nice little thing. You were on holiday, right? And there's this octopus there, and you're going around, right? And, it, and you just see it start spitting at you. Poison. What yeah, would you say well, to it? Well, it's too late then, isn't it? And I'd kick it. <laughs> and I'd say, Nobed. I, I would... Uh, but what's the point? What's the point in getting annoyed now? Because it's done its, it's done its stuff, hasn't it? Yeah, I don't know kick it and call it a knobhead <laughs> under the water. What is this octopus thinking? Oh, God. Oh, I'll go, you fucking eight-legged shit. I'm you, not bothered. I'm not bothered. You, I don't know what you're you saying. fucking, fucking cunt yeah. of a mollusk. I'll just spit at you again. Not bothered. You slimy little fucking boneless wanker. This is why the face is. Are you is still good. talking to the octopus? <laughs> <laughs> What's been going on? What's been going on? I've been to hospital. I was rushed to hospital, like emergency and that. Had a uh, tube put up my knob. You had a tube put up your knob? Yeah. What was the story? Uh, kidney stones. Oof. So, shouldn't really be here, to be honest, doing this. He said rest and that. Climbing them stairs on the way in. To be quite honest, it doesn't look like you're expending a lot of energy at the moment. It's, it's like at Zuki, we're going, all oh, that sloth move today. Calm down. Yeah, but I had to get here. It's been raining. Yeah. I had to come up the stairs. I had to carry the computer. Yeah. Well, that's not entirely true, because your girlfriend was carrying it. I saw her outside. Yeah, but, but I'm just saying. And, oh. then you, and then you handed it to me and said, Steve, oh, carry this. So. mighty. Yeah, I know. That's already a lie. Christ almighty. Whinging. Not whinging. I'm in show business. I know loads of people that wake up every day with a sore knob, feeling like they've had their kidneys probed, and they, they you know, they would say they're unconscious. 
So they yeah. don't whinge about it, they get straight back onto it. They, you know, <laughs> a lot of them on TV now. Yeah, straight back to hosting game shows. <laughs> So, you rest the hospital. So, tell, take us through the take us through the events because it does sound quite dramatic. You started feeling a bit of pain, did you initially? I felt a bit of pain. I thought, you know, yeah, maybe I just pulled a muscle or something when I've been wrestling with Ricky and that because mm. you don't know what damage has been done. <laughs> uh, so I just think, oh, it'll go in a minute, and then it didn't. It got a bit badder. It did. It, it got badder, did it? So then I thought, I, I, oh, I, I was I was crippled. I was lying on the floor in agony. Looking on the internet, looking for sort of Still solutions. Still looking at monkey news. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was just, I just put in like belly ache and stuff, and they were saying me loads of different things. Um, and I, what I used to do when I was a kid, I used to always just get a cold ashtray and put that on my belly. And the coldness used to get rid of the badness. <laughs> Amazing. The cold has got me. Well, what? Like, like a witch doctor. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this, this, this is like... A witch doctor who happens to work in a pub. It's like a, some sort of 5th century remedy yeah. written in mud. <laughs> yeah. Coldness doth get away with the badness. Yeah. Uh, uh, why specifically an ashtray? Just because they were they sort of old cold. <laughs> <laughs> They're old I cold? Do, I don't know what this is. It's... I love this idea that he's, he, uh, he's uh, had the operation and he comes round and they're talking to him and uh, his, his girlfriend gets a phone call and, go, and, and they say, uh, Mr Pilkerton's it's got maybe complications, he's just talking rubbish. <laughs> yeah. She goes, oh good. Yeah, he's back to his old self. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What, 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 is it, why specifically an ashtray? Sorry, because it's old cold, I understand it's old it's, oh, cold. Oh yeah, we understand, we, every, <laughs> everyone who's done a medical degree understands old cold, but, but, uh... <laughs> old, yeah. old cold belly badness. <laughs> if you want to buy that book, Old Cold Belly Badness, it's, uh, uh the, yeah. the history of abdominal surgery by Carl Pilkington. No, it just, you know, it, if... So, if but you, you put it in the freezer or something first? You can do if you want, but they're normally cold anyway. <laughs> sort of thick glass and that, it holds the cold. But we're not smoking our house, so I had to use a plate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's mad. It's a plate's not going to work. A pla Famously, a, pla a plate oh doesn't God, work. No. <laughs> oh, God, no! So you put a, a, a uh, you put a plate on your belly, but that didn't yeah, do any. No, that, that yeah. didn't work. So uh, called Suzanne and said, "Oh, I'm in agony here." She said, "Go to the doctor's then." Good advice. So a lot of people have done that straight away, as opposed <laughs> to going through the plate. Ashtray. ashtray. <laughs> yeah. So he went to hospital and they went to hospital and he said, Have you got an ashtray? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they went no, this, is, an ashtray. this is no smoking. <laughs> so anyway, so then we get in a cab and what have you go there. I have an X ray. His voice is even more boring than usual, it's isn't, it? isn't it? Yeah. Fuck me. And they put me on a drip and everything. Give me some morphine and stuff. And found out that I had kidney stones. So that's why I was in hospital, and they get them out by. I can't even. I don't know what's gone on. To be honest, oh, I've on. got some tube inside me, from my kidney to my bladder. That's helping me stuff get about. That's and so there's a little tube up the end of your knob, into you. Yeah, it's not there now. It's right. It's high up. Right. So it's high up between my kidney and my bladder. But why didn't you have the thing where they go in the side? You had the choice to. Because I said to the doctor, I said I'm not a doctor. I said, what do you he think? He went, stop putting yourself down, <laughs> Carl. He said, we need you in the operating theatre now. He just said, you know, I said to him, what, what should I have done? Because he said, if you want, go home um, and we'll get you in again or something. I said, something like that. And I said, no, I might as well have it done properly. Have it done now whilst I'm here. Sorry, the choice was have it done properly or go home. It was it was something like that. He said, he said there's, there's something you can do. And I said, oh. Flash it out. Um, no, because it's too big. It's something like seven millimetres. And it was, it's basically because you don't drink enough water. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, I said, what do you think I should have done? And he said, tube up the knob. And I said, hmm, not my favourite one of the choice, but if, you, if that's what you think. So he said, yeah, have that. He did me little diagrams, which didn't help. He was like showing. How big like, did he draw your knob? Uh, sort of normal size. <laughs> yeah, was it? Yeah, it was all right. You weren't offended by uh, But he wanted into detail. It's just you know more the tube and stuff in your yeah. bladder and your. Kidney. What was your ball bag like? Did he draw that? He didn't do that bit. He left that bit out. Okay. Right. But, um, but he said, oh, "We'll just pop that up there," and uh, and then that's when Ricky turned up to visit. 
uh, came in laughing at me because we sat there in like me underpants and stockings. <laughs> in stockings? Yeah. Yeah. Why were you? He was there. In? No, he wasn't in bed. He was sort of out of bed with his little drip. Right. He had his little box of shorts on, just sat there, right, in his pants, right, and he had stockings on. Yeah, because they stop clots or something. They put them on your legs. It's like you know when people have got big veins and they go on a plane. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you said you're not a doctor. <laughs> no, but I've, I've seen it because Suzanne's mum did it and it was, she put them on ridiculously early, like three days before we were going away and <laughs> never been away before and it, everything was like over the top, do you know what I mean? She was like, I best put them on. And, uh, so, so I put them on and they like, I don't know what it is, it's something when you're in, when you're under, your blood doesn't move about the same. Right. And it can clot up in your leg. So you wear these tight tights. And I came in to cheer him up, didn't I? Yeah. Was that a nice cheery experience, him coming in? Uh, I had a headache at the time. I think I was a bit stressed out. <laughs> uh, well, he's just a man you want at that, at that point. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it's weird how it suddenly all happened quick. And uh, I woke <sighs> up and there was an Irish woman over me going, are you all right? Are you all right? And I said, oh, it's stinging a bit. She said, I'll give you some more morphine. And I sort of put my head up to have a look at my tackle because I wanted to see... If it was still there. What, what was attached to it. Do you know what I mean? Because they said something about they might leave some string hanging out of it. So they can pull the tube out. It makes you talk. So, uh, <laughs> so I, had a, I had a look for that. Couldn't couldn't see any of that. Yeah. Uh, but as you put the morphine in, all the muscles in your body go funny. My head just collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the 77th annual Golden Globe Awards, live from the Beverly Hilton Hotel here in Los Angeles. I'm Ricky Gervais. Thank you. Um, You'll, you'll be pleased to know this is the last time I'm hosting these awards, so I don't care anymore. Um, I'm joking. I never did. Um, NBC clearly don't care either. Fifth time. So, I mean, Kevin Hart was fired from the Oscars because of some offensive tweets. Hello. <laughs> Lucky for me, the Hollywood foreign press can barely speak English. And... They've no idea what Twitter is, so I got offered this gig by fax. So let's go out with a bang. Let's have a laugh at your expense, shall we? Remember, they're just jokes. We're all going to die soon, and there's no sequel. So, yeah, remember that. Um, but you all look lovely, all doled up. You came here in your limos. I came here in a limo tonight, and the license plate was made by Felicity Huffman. So. No. Shush. It's her, it's her daughter I feel sorry for, okay? That must be the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to her. And her dad was in Wild Hogs. So, lots of big celebrities here tonight. I mean, legends, icons, yeah? Look, at this table alone, uh, Al Pacino, Robert De Niro. But... Baby Yoda. Uh, oh, that's, that's Joe Pesci, sorry. Um, I love you, man. Don't have me whacked. Um, but tonight isn't just about the people in front of the camera. In this room are some of the most important TV and film executives in the world. People from every background, but they all have one thing in common. They're all terrified of Ronan Farrow. <laughs> He's coming for you. He's coming for you. Look, talking of all you perverts, it was a big year... It was a big year for paedophile movies. Um, surviving R. Kelly, Leaving Neverland, Two Popes. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Many talented people of colour were snubbed in major categories. Um, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about that. The Hollywood foreign press are all very, very racist. So, <laughs> fifth time. So. We were going to do an in memoriam this year, but when I saw the list of people that had died, it wasn't diverse enough. It just, no. It was mostly white people. And I thought, nah, not on my watch. So, maybe next year. Let's, let's see what happens. No one cares about movies anymore. No one goes to the cinema. No one really watches network TV. Everyone's watching Netflix. 
this show should just be me coming out going, well done, Netflix, you win, everything, good night. But no, no, we've got to drag it out for three hours. You could binge watch the entire first season of Afterlife instead of watching this show. That, that's a show about a man who wants to kill himself because his wife dies of cancer. And it's still more fun than this, okay? <laughs> Spoiler alert, um, season two is on the way. So in the end, he obviously didn't kill himself. Just like Jeffrey Epstein. Shut up. I know he's your friend, but I don't care. <laughs> you had to make your own way here and your own plane, didn't you? Right. But m seriously, most films are awful. Lazy. Remakes. Sequels. I've heard a rumour that there might be a sequel to Sophie's Choice. I mean, that would just be Meryl Streep going, well, it's got to be this one then. All the best actors have jumped to Netflix and HBO, you know. And the actors who just do Hollywood movies now do fantasy adventure nonsense. They wear masks and capes and really tight costumes. Their job isn't acting anymore. It's going to the gym twice a day and taking steroids, really. Have we got, a, have we got an award for most ripped junkie? No. No point. We know he'd win that. Um, Martin Scorsese, the greatest living director, made the news for his controversial comments about the Marvel franchise. He said they're not real cinema and uh, they remind him of theme parks. I agree. Although I don't know what he's doing hanging around theme parks. He's not big enough to go on the rides, is he? <laughs> it's tiny. <laughs> right. The Irishman was amazing. It was amazing. Um, look. It was. My fact, my, it was great. Uh, long, but amazing. Um, it wasn't the only epic movie. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, nearly three hours long, Leonardo DiCaprio attended the premiere, and by the end, his date was too old for him. So... <laughs> Even Prince Andrew's like, come on, Leo, mate, you know. You're nearly 50, son. Um, the world got to see James Corden as a fat pussy. <laughs> he was also in the movie Cats, but no one saw that. Um, and the reviews, oh, shocking. I saw one that said, this is the worst thing to happen to cats since dogs, right? <laughs> But Dame Judi Dench defended the film, saying it was the role she was born to play. Because she... I can't do this next joke. <laughs> because she loves nothing better than plonking herself down on the carpet, lifting her leg and licking her own minge. <laughs> furble. Furble. She's old school. Um, it's the last time, who cares? <laughs> oh. Apple roared into the, the TV game with a morning show. A superb drama, yeah. A superb drama about the importance of dignity and doing the right thing, made by a company that runs sweatshops in China. So, well, you say you're woke, but the companies you work for, I mean, unbelievable. Apple, Amazon, Disney. If ISIS started a streaming service, you'd call your agent, wouldn't you? So, if you do win an award tonight, don't use it as a, a platform to make a political speech, right? You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. You know nothing about the real world. Most of you spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. So, if you win, right? Come up, accept your little award, thank your agent and your god, and fuck off, okay? So... It's already three hours long. Right, let's do the first award. The first award... The first award is for best actor in a television series, musical or comedy. To present the award are a couple of actors off the telly, what can I say? <laughs> Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> In a little while, we're going to see a, a short clip from The Irishman. Um, it's 88 minutes long. <laughs> right. 
In the meantime, here are Sofia Vergara and Matt Bomer. Welcome back. Still having a good time? Good. As you know, the meal tonight was all vegetables, as are the members of the Hollywood Foreign Press. Please welcome their president, Lorenzo Soria. Knives Out has three nominations tonight. Yeah. See what can happen if you don't dress people up as cats. It's, it's that easy. Here are two of the nominated stars, Anna de Armas and Daniel Craig. I've got nothing negative to say about these next two presenters because the big one could snap me in half. So please welcome Zoe Kravitz and Jason Momoa. Kill me. We're nearly done. Jesus. Three, it's already three. Right, um, last one, last one. Come on, guys. Our next presenter starred in Netflix's Bird Box, a movie where people survive by acting like they don't see a thing. Sort of like working for Harvey Weinstein. You did it. You, I didn't. You did it. Shut the fuck up. Please welcome Sandra Bullock. That's it. Good night. Thank you. Please donate to Australia. Have a great time. Get drunk. Take your drugs. <laughs>